Yuan Haoran refrained from further argument, and when Director Gu Tong Tan arrived at the training ground, she assessed the situation and said to Yishiak Suan, hand him over to me. Glancing at the old man, Gu Tong Tan seemed considerably weaker. The man might have a chance to escape if turned over to her. Yishiak Suan wasted no time and handed the man to Director Gu Tong Tan. Follow me, Gu Tong Tan instructed the old man. Lurch forward, the man slowly trailed behind Gu Tong Tan, but he made a sudden, desperate lunge at her as they reached the door of the training ground. Sensing the danger, Gu Tong Tong swiftly pivoted and delivered a punch. In that moment, the old man experienced true despair as Gu Tong Tong's formidable aura was even more terrifying than Yishiak Suan's. With one blow, the old man was launched over 20 meters, crashing through the wooden door behind and finally collapsing against a wall. Lifeless, slightly frowning, Gu Tong Tong gazed at the corpse on the far wall and muttered to herself, Oops, maybe a bit too much force. Yuan Haoran shook his head, watching from the side, as an An Myoji attempted to sneak attack Gu Tong Tong, a pervert. It was like courting death to the extreme. Even Yuan Haoran would find it hard to defend against Gu Tong Tong up close. The students who passed out were quickly taken to the hospital, eyeing ambulance, with officers from the 13th Division overseeing. Yi Xiaq Suan was breathing normally, but these individuals would likely remain unconscious for a couple of hours. As for the An Myoji's body, it was taken directly to the crematorium. Diplomatic issues were not Gu Tan Pong's concern. With the strength of HUAZ nowadays, those who went against them could be disposed of without much consequence. Gu Tan Tan just needed Wu Wen's to prepare a report. When they left the karate studio, it was already night time. Yi Xiaq Suan had intended to grab a meal at Su Yi's place, but Su Yi mentioned he had other matters, so she left on her own. Someone was eyeing Su Yi as a potential target, but they hesitated to make a move with Yi Xiaq Suan present, so Su Yi wanted to give them an opportunity to act. There weren't many pedestrians on what on street at night. Su Yi was walking on the stone path when suddenly three dark figures cornered him. A mere mortal wants the three of us to act. These three were human immortals from Fengjing Town, and Su Yi remembered their faces from when they first arrived in town. The one speaking was the kid they met in town. Su Yi furrowed his brow slightly, not wanting to create more trouble, knowing that his actions could lead to significant consequences in the world. The incident in Tiu Town was just meant to deter those human immortals, but if they crossed the line, clang, a dagger flew out and landed at Su Yi's feet, the hilt sway. Kid, you might as well end it yourself. I can't be bothered. The child had his hands behind his back, looking coldly at Su Yi. Su Yi glanced at the dagger in front of him and asked, Aren't you afraid of the sword spirit of Tiu Town? The child chuckled. The sword spirit may be formidable, but its master is nothing special. Tonight, the master must die, and the sword spirit will find a new owner. Very well. Su Yi smiled, realizing the human immortals were quite arrogant. They must have realized Yi Xiaq Suan's cultivation level wasn't high. With their abilities, killing her before she drew her sword was entirely possible. You have three brats. If you don't end it yourself, I will subdue your soul under the nine nethers, enduring torment until complete annihilation. The child grinned oddly, glaring coldly at Su Yi. Is that so? While speaking, the dagger on the ground was already suspended in midair. The three human immortals watched coldly, not believing Su Yi, as a mere check cultivator, could do much. Three. Two. The child smirked, counting down, extending to fingers as a cluster of purple-black flames emerged from his fingertips. The light around the flames twisted, seemingly capable of devouring everything. One. As the child finished counting down, the purple-black flame surged towards Su Yi. Su Yi lifted his eyelid as the dagger suspended in midair crashed into the flames. The child sneered, for they knew the fire of nine nethers was powerful and difficult to evade. Even a powerful golden immortal would struggle if touched by it. While Su Yi's strength was lacking, the fire could eliminate any gold core cultivator and imprison their soul until it perished. The dagger given to Su Yi was just made of ordinary iron, and in contact with the fire of nine nethers, it would disintegrate instantly. The other two human immortals were merely spectators. Killing a low-level check cultivator wasn't worth their full effort. When the dagger clashed with the nine nethers fire, strangely, it didn't melt but passed through and skate. The child's pupils constricted. How could the dagger pierce through the nine nethers fire? He tried to dodge, but his body wouldn't respond. Was this the entrapment of the Dao loss? Sout, the dark dagger lodged in the child's forehead, blood slowly dripping. Meanwhile, 
The nine nethers fire hovered three inches in front of Suyi. Suyi stared at the purple-black flames, murmuring, fire of nine nethers. The child, until his last breath, couldn't understand where things went wrong. He glared, eyes slowly losing focus. How could a Czech cultivator like Suyi manipulate the Dao loss? The other two human immortals were also dumbfounded. Their companion was a disciple of the third generation under the Blackwater mysterious emperor, a strong figure in the immortal realm. That he died at the hands of a mortal cultivator was unthinkable. And why did the nine nethers fire stop in front of that cultivator? Su Yi exhaled, and the nine nethers fire before him instantly extinguished. The two immortals were in disbelief. Could a mere cultivator do this? They exchanged glances, sensing trouble, and fled in opposite directions. Su Yi showed no signs of terrifying power, but his actions made them feel an unprecedented crisis. They just wanted to survive. Although Suyi didn't move, the dagger in the child's body transformed into a flash of black light. In a blink, the bodies of the two immortals lay on the street. Suyi turned and waved his hand, reducing the corpses to dust, leaving no trace of blood. Simultaneously, the human immortal known as the top assassin under the Dark Emperor's seat, Yulon, set his sights on Yishak Suan as if a posed snake. He knew Yishak Suan possessed a divine sword, but unless she summoned the sword spirit, they posed no threat. However, if successful, he could obtain the legendary divine sword and become invincible. Yishiak Suan remained unaware that she had become someone's prey, with Yuan Hauer and Nancy, Zhu Cheng still accompanying her. So he had just unsealed all the bindings on the sword spirit from afar. The sword spirit sensed the release seal, Zhou filling its essence. Was it finally free? At the same time, it sensed the lurking Yulon in the shadows. The title of the first god of killers for Yulon is not just an empty name. Right now, he is only five meters away from Yexiaxuan, but he has only glanced at Yexiaxuan the entire time. Not even a single extra gaze, let alone leaking any aura. He is well aware that for some people, if you happen to look at them one too many times, it may raise their alertness, especially in a situation where there is an intention to kill. A true assassin, before making a move, appears just like an ordinary person. It is only in the moment of action that it is a real strike, giving no chance for the opponent to react. Jianling also sensed the presence of a mortal nearby because it is so powerful. However, it is unaware of what the mortal wants to do. Would it dare to make a move against Jexiaxuan right in front of it? Perhaps it wouldn't have the audacity. Yulong does not leak his aura, and Jianling is not a good entity either. It pretends to have seen nothing. It probably understands Suyi's meaning not causing a commotion. If you don't start any trouble, then you're not causing trouble, right? Yulong couldn't have imagined that a Jianling, not only having gained sentience, but also being so sly. Yuan Haoran and Zizu Chang have been walking with Yexiaxuan for a long time now. The two of them were chatting casually with Yexiaxuan, who was completely unaware of the danger about to befall her. Finally, her driver pulled the car up in front of them. Yexiaxuan, possessing the refinement of a young lady, even if she didn't particularly like Yuan Haoran and the others, still smiled and said, My car is here. Let's chat another time. Naturally, Yuan Haoran and the others wouldn't persist and follow her into the car. Instead, they turned and left. Right at the moment Yexiaxuan got into the car, Yulong, who was standing next to her, narrowed his eyes it's now. Yulong was only five meters away from Yexiaxuan. He flicked his wrist, a small sword fell into his hand, and he executed the immortal technique, Daxuvoid technique. He appeared behind Yexiaxuan like a ghost. A cold light flashed, aiming towards Yexiaxuan's neck. Yuan Haoran and Zizu Chen, who had just taken a couple of steps away, had no clue what had happened. The next instant, a middle-aged man with a thin face, holding a small sword, slowly fell in front of Yexiaxuan. There was no trace of injury on his body. His eyes widened, not even knowing how he died. The strongest aspect of mortal beings is their spirit, but compared to Jianling, the difference is enormous. Jianling had already noticed his presence and, at the moment he made a move, directly obliterated Yulon's spirit in its spiritual form. As Yulon's body fell, Yuan Haoran and Zizu Cheng turned around slowly, looking at the corpse on the ground, a puzzled look on their faces. They hadn't even noticed when this person had come over. As for how he died, they had no idea. Just by analyzing the small sword he held, it could be deduced that he was an assassin. Someone who could approach Yexiaxuan in their presence, Thinking about it was terrifying, even more terrifying. How did this person die? 
They hadn't even seen Yex Yaxuan make a move. Jianling had obliterated Yu Lan in one strike, and then, contentedly, it saw praise from Yex Yaxuan, narrating how dangerous the situation had been just now and how, at the critical moment, it saved the Swordmaster's life. Yex Yaxuan, shocked, glanced at the body before her, then with some doubt, asked Jianling, didn't my master seal you? The seal was inexplicably released just now. Jianling said excitedly, This person should be a mortal immortal. Sword master, should we go massacre the town? How dare these mortal immortals target you? Massacre the town. Massacre the town. Jianling was incredibly excited. Had Siyu released all its seals just for it to take Yaxiaxuan to massacre the town? It would only take a moment to massacre these trash mortal immortals. Suddenly, a person fell in front of Yexiaxuan. If this had happened before, she would have inevitably panicked. However, after experiencing so much, she calmly said to the driver, Wait here, I have something to do and need to go now. After making a phone call to Gudington and informing her of the location, she drove away straight to Su Yi's residence. Su Yi could release Jianling's seal, so he must have known about what had happened here. Yexiaxuan wanted to ask Su Yi what to do next. Should they really go massacre a town? Fengjing Town, Moon Sparse and Stars Bright. Su Yi strolled leisurely through the town, easily evading the soldiers stationed outside. This matter no longer required their involvement. The Da Yun beneath his feet rotated, encompassing the entire town within his blockade. Now, absolutely no one could escape. They had already been warned once, but these mortal immortals could not stay quiet. And they even dared to set their sights on Yexiaxuan. Even his disciples dared to act against him. In that case, these mortal immortals had no reason to exist in this world. You're still alive. A mortal immortal noticed Su Yi's presence. He knew that someone had gone to kill Su Yi. But now, to see Su Yi still alive and having entered their territory, wasn't this seeking death? With this mortal immortal's shout, more people appeared on the streets. Each of these mortal immortals, if released outside, could easily contend with a small cultivation sect. However, in Su Yi's eyes, they were just slightly stronger ants. One of them made a move against Su Yi. To him, Su Yi seemed somewhat problematic. But that wasn't important. For a Czech cultivator, killing was just that killing. This mortal immortal was extremely fast and, in the blink of an eye, had reached Su Yi. Sporting an evil smile, his right hand turned into a claw, a dark shadow looming, forming a terrifying ghost claw aimed at Su Yi's neck. Tough. Su Yi didn't even bother to lift his hand. He took another step forward. And the mortal immortal exploded when he was within half a meter of Su Yi, disintegrating like dust in a flash. The surrounding mortal immortals were all dumbfounded. They had initially thought Su Yi was sure to die, but what they saw made them doubt their own lives. How did their companion die? Su Yi continued walking forward, and this group of mortal immortals finally realized that this person was not simple. They unleashed various secret techniques, trying to bombard Su Yi. Thirty odd mortal immortals simultaneously launched their attacks and the surrounding spiritual energy turned incredibly violent. They were convinced that even if Suyi was a real Daluo Golden Immortal, he would still die and enter their group assault. Suyi had no intentions of defending himself. Countless attacks rained down on him. With him at the center, rock splinter and dust flew in a 10 meter radius. He should be dead by now. One mortal immortal watched the rising dust ahead, feeling uncertain. At this moment, they discovered that, with their strong spiritual sense, they couldn't perceive Su Yi's existence. Another mortal immortal took a deep breath, saying, I've been watching anime recently and learned of a certain law. What law? Where there's smoke, there's fire. The dust gradually dispersed, and Su Yi's figure appeared once again in front of the celestial beings. Hiss. Not a hair out of place. How is that possible? The celestial beings on Earth were all dumbfounded. Just now, they had all attacked with all their might. In their eyes, even if Su Yi could withstand these attacks, it should still be quite difficult. But Su Yi not only was unharmed, but not a single hair was out of place, and he was spotless. Kill him. These terrestrial immortals already felt fear from the depths of their hearts. Someone shouted, and all the terrestrial immortals launched another attack. The spiritual energy in the town had already been fully mobilized, but unfortunately, the moment Su Yi stepped into the town, None of the terrestrial immortals could use the spiritual energy outside the town anymore. Outside the town, as calm as ever, the soldiers stationed to guard the town patrolled back and forth. They glanced into the town, but saw nothing unusual, 
as if the town remained calm. In the monitoring room of Section 13, all the screens monitoring Fengjing Town were pitch black. Wu Wens quickly reported this to Lao Yan and Gu Tong Tong, and all the elites from Section 13 headed to Fengjing Town. So you walked slowly forward, and with each step, dozens of terrestrial immortals fell dead, their bodies disintegrating along with them. Who is he? Run. Go quickly and report to the great emperor. As he walked, the houses in the town also turned to dust, disappearing. Any terrestrial immortals who tried to escape to the town's edge instantly perished. So you remained expressionless, not emitting any intimidating aura, but all the terrestrial immortals had already lost hope. Even in the immortal realm, they had never encountered such a terrifying enemy. Tang Yue had received the message and quickly took out the hidden dragon pearl, attempting to use the formation to reconnect to the immortal realm. However, he found that the hidden dragon pearl had no effect. Fengjing Town seemed like an isolated dead place. Fight him. Use the blood sacrifice technique. The terrestrial immortals had been frightened by Su Yi, but they were not willing to give up. Within a short 10 minutes, more than a thousand terrestrial immortals were reduced to less than 400. 200 of them gathered together, preparing to exchange their lives for injuries and fight desperately against Su Yi. The 200 terrestrial immortals burned their divine souls, generating an extremely powerful killing formation. Unless it was the Emperor of the Immortal Realm, there was no doubt that they would perish. The 200 terrestrial immortals stood together, their brow centers emitting rotating dim lights, their eyes filled with endless killing intent. However, Su Yi stopped in his tracks and allowed them to activate the formation at will. They were all people who were going to die anyway, so if they wanted to struggle, let them do so. Perhaps this way, they could die more peacefully. The flesh of the 200 terrestrial immortals rapidly shriveled, quickly turning into withered corpses. However, the dim lights at their brow centers gathered into a spot, as dark as ink. Doom. The dim light carried a terrifying ore and smashed towards Yi. In almost an instant, the houses and rocks within a hundred meters radius were all swallowed by the dim light. Yet, Yi still made no move, simply standing there. The dim light stopped in front of Yi, three inches away. Hum. Yi sighed softly, slowly extending his palm and grasping the dim light. Then, he opened his palm, causing the dim light to disappear. Too weak. Yi had also considered suicide at one point, but he found that he simply could not die. Even if he stood there facing the saints of the primordial era in their prime, they would still be helpless. As for these terrestrial immortals now, 200's blood sacrifice killing formation. What about 2000? The remaining terrestrial immortals were all petrified by Su Yi's actions, consumed only by fear and despair. They had never encountered such a perverted individual before. Tang Yue had already emerged from the old mansion. When he saw the scene in front of him, he couldn't help but spit out heavily. See, so the old man was afraid of him. Tang Yue had also found some clues. Yu Guoan had spent a lot of money to buy an old mansion in Wadong Street for someone. Many old men had gone over that day. No wonder the old man had the Tang family retire here. Tang Yue clenched his fists, gritting his teeth as he shouted at Su Yi. Su Yi, I am Tang Yao's son. Please spare us. I promise that all the terrestrial immortals will abide by the law in the future and will not commit any more offenses. Su Yi glanced at him and said, There's no need for that. As his words fell, the group of terrestrial immortals in front of him and Tang Yue let out a piercing scream, turning into tiny fragments and dispersing into the air. There was no need to repeat the warning again. If someone did wrong, it was not always forgivable. In less than 10 minutes, not a single soul was left in Fengjing Town. Su Yi arrived at the Tang family's old mansion and found Tang Yaon's corpse. Tang Yaon's body had been hastily buried in a vegetable patch in the mansion. Su Yi took a deep look at the vegetable patch. He didn't care how Tang Yao would die, who in the world could live forever besides him. Su Yi then found the hidden dragon pearl and observed the formation surrounding it with narrowed eyes. This is a formation to connect to the immortal realm. Why did Hei Shui want to open the channel with the hidden dragon pearl? Su Yi swiftly activated the formation. He knew how to connect to the immortal realm, but he felt that the so-called immortal realm wasn't that meaningful. Many gods in the immortal realm had their physical bodies destroyed by him tens of thousands of years ago. Unable to survive in this world, they had created a parallel world to forge a spiritual body. If Su Yi forcefully entered their world, it would probably cause the entire immortal realm to collapse. Su Yi's finger touched the hidden dragon pearl, and the golden dragon inside slowly began to swim. 
A dim golden light shot straight into the sky. You fools, didn't I already say it? Just escape the immortal realm. Why open the passage? If you can't make it in the immortal realm, can't you make it in the mortal realm either? A majestic voice resounded in Su Yi's ears. Su Yi frowned slightly and said, Little Blackwater, what are you talking about? The immortal realm was already akin to a parallel world. When the passage to the immortal realm opened, the celestial beings could descend to the mortal realm and see everything there. However, after descending, the return journey might be a bit costly. Usually, unless one truly intended to spend their life in the mortal realm, no celestial being would descend. The Blackwater Zhuaming Emperor would never take such a risk to descend. As Su Yi's voice came through, the Blackwater Zhuaming Emperor was stunned. Little Blackwater, it had been tens of thousands of years since someone had called him that. There was only one person referred to him like that. Senior Su, is that you? During the primordial era, Su Yi was known as Su Dunyao, and countless powerful beings referred to him as Senior Su. At that time, the Blackwater Zhuaming Emperor was just a little kid. The great emperor of Hai Shui Zhuaming holds a high position in the immortal realm, but in front of Su Yi, he can only consider himself a junior. He once received guidance from Su Yi, which allowed him to achieve the status of immortal emperor. However, tens of thousands of years ago, Su Duanhen perished, and no immortal emperors or saints were spared. At that moment, everyone realized the terrifying power of Su Duanhen. Even the strongest saints were mere ass in his presence. What's going on in your immortal realm? Su Yi asked. What's the situation with so many of your disciples descending to take over bodies? Faced with Su Yi's inquiry, the great emperor of Hai Shui Zhuaming was almost frightened into descending to the mortal world to kneel before him. Senior Su, the four immortal emperors in the immortal realm are attacking me. I have no hope left and can only let my disciples descend to the mortal realm, the great emperor of Hai Shui Zhuaming said weakly. I heard that the spiritual energy in the mortal realm is abundant now. Oh, Su Yi contemplated for a moment and said, Many of your disciples have been eliminated by me. The great emperor of Hai Shui Zhuaming fell silent for a moment and then nervously asked, Senior Su, those juniors were ignorant. If you taught them a lesson, it was justify. They deserved their fate. If someone else had killed his disciples, as an immortal emperor, he would seek vengeance. But this was Su Yi. He was even afraid that if Su Yi became displeased, he would directly annihilate their entire immortal realm. Fine. That's it. I don't want to meddle in the affairs of your immortal realm, but tell those immortals and demons who want to descend to the mortal realm that they must report to the 13 places when they descend and abide by the laws and regulations of the mortal realm, Su Yi told the great emperor of Hai Shui Zhuangming. Though they had a history, Su Yi had no intention of helping him. Each place had its own rules for survival, and the competition in the immortal realm was fierce, where the weak were destined to perish. A immortal emperor, as long as they didn't encounter a freak like Su Yi, should be able to protect themselves. Certainly, I will make sure to spread your message throughout the entire immortal realm. The great emperor of Hai Shui Zhuaming didn't dare to delay. Su Yi's words were like supreme decrees, and once spread, even the saints would not dare to disobey. The great emperor of Hai Shui Zhuaming now had a glimmer of hope amidst the siege by the other for immortal emperors. Though he wasn't directly suppressed, his disciples were constantly under attack, making life unbearable. Now, with Su Yi's decree, the situation seemed different. The name Su Duanhen was a taboo existence in the immortal realm, and even the great emperors like them wouldn't dare mention it lightly. However, conveying Su Yi's decree to the other for immortal emperors would surely make them wary, depending on Su Yi's tone of delivery. As long as those fellows felt they had close ties with Su Yi, the crisis could be easily resolved. Su Yi didn't care about their thoughts and simply said, that's it, before breaking the spell. Modern technology is much better. Su Yi couldn't help but appreciate modern lifestyle. A small phone could facilitate video calls, unlike their reliance on treasures and spales from mere voice calls, which seemed quite backward. Su Yi put away the hidden dragon pearl and disappeared into the darkness. As he left, the illusion naturally dissipated, and the soldiers outside the small town only discovered that the town had suddenly changed. The once peaceful town was now in ruins, with no sign of life and the entire area pockmarked as if it had experienced a century-old war. Old Yan, Gu Tan Tan, and a group of people arrived at the town, followed by a larger force with new weapons designed for dealing with cultivators. Upon seeing the scene, they fell into silence. After a while, Old Yan squinted and took a deep breath. This place has been through a massive battle, 
Ku Tan Tan nodded solemnly. I can see that. Who could it be? Is there someone who can compete with over a thousand earthly cultivators? Old Yang was puzzled. Where have those earthly cultivators gone now? Ku Tan Tan looked around and said. The attacker was very powerful. Wu Wen's added. Many houses are missing. I wonder if it was done by earthly cultivators or mysterious figures. Old Yan pondered. Could it be the one from Kunlin Mountain? Ku Tan Tan asked Old Yan. Can someone from Kunlin Mountain take on a thousand earthly cultivators? Old Yan was speechless. Over a thousand earthly cultivators. Who could confront them head on? Even the powerful figures on Kunlin Mountain would struggle to face ten earthly cultivators simultaneously. Over a thousand. Old Yan couldn't fathom who possessed such strength. Those who descended from the immortal realm were not kind-hearted. However, regardless of who did it, it's unlikely that all the earthly cultivators were killed. They must have moved to another place after feeling threatened by you, Old Yan said, crossing his arms behind his back and sinking into contemplation. Based on Wu Wenzi's report, just drawing her sword, Ishiak Suan had intimidated all the earthly cultivators. Could it be Ishiak Suan's doing? Moreover, the ability to intimidate so many earthly cultivators instantly indicated the terrifying nature of her sword spirit. All the clues probably lied with Yishiak Suan. Move to another place. Ku Tong Tong looked around, stating, I feel like all those earthly cultivators are dead. Old Yang and Wu Wen took a deep breath simultaneously. In such a short time span, with a military presence outside the small town, someone was able to stealthily eliminate over a thousand earthly cultivators. Whether they are alive or not, seal off this town first, and then keep an eye out for the earthly cultivators. Old Yang was also perplexed. He was already retired, but given the recent events, Wu Wen's had no choice but to involve him, making things somewhat challenging for Gu Tan Tong. Above all, with so many recent significant incidents, Old Yang found it difficult to stay out of them. Thirteen places personnel are surrounding the town of Fenjing unaware that the instigator Su Yi had already returned to his courtyard, leisurely lounging in an armchair watching TV dramas. He used to enjoy reading physical books, and now, he wanted to quickly adapt to the modern lifestyle one phone to handle everything, a life so convenient and swift, still held some appeal to him. While Su Yi was engrossed in watching a tomb raiding TV drama, Yi Shiak Suan drove up to his courtyard. Yi Shiak Suan entered the courtyard and shouted excitedly, Master, Someone wants to kill me. Oh, so you didn't even lift his head, continued watching the TV drama, and casually asked, Do you have an Aki membership? Do you have an Aki membership? Ishiak Suan stood in front of Suyi, at a loss for words. Master, I mean, someone wants to kill me. No, it must be because Master was too engrossed in watching TV dramas and didn't quite catch what she was saying. Suyi slowly raised his head, at that moment. An advertisement popped up on the phone. Maybe that's why he raised his head. Aren't you supposed to be dead? His tone was as calm as ever, without a hint of nervousness. Yi Shiak Suan bit her lip and said, You don't care about me at all. So you didn't bother with that question and said, If you don't have a membership, help me open one. I'll pay for it myself. Yi Shiak Suan impatiently reached out her hand and said, Give me the phone. So you could only hand the phone to her. Ishiak Suan picked up the phone and operated it, asking, What's the payment password? Su Yi raised his head in disbelief and said, You really don't have a membership. If I want to open one, wouldn't I know how to do it myself? Tis, do you know how to open a membership? Ishiak Suan found it even more strange. This old man could open a membership by himself, which was even more surprising than his stinginess. Su Yi sneered and reached out his hand. Yi Shiak Suan cancelled all the operations, unwillingly gave the phone back to Su Yi, and then stood behind him to see how he would operate. Su Yi followed the instructions, opened a 6 Yuan new user experience, entered the verification code, entered the payment password, then cancelled the subscription renewal. Everything left Yi Shiak Suan dumbfounded. A person who couldn't even order bubble tea by themselves could proficiently open a video membership. The most surprising part was that he only opened the first month's trial. This stingy behavior was truly unexpected. Master, are you that poor? Yi Shiak Suan almost forgot her original intention of coming over. I was just about to buy you an annual subscription. So Yi raised an eyebrow. An annual subscription costs over 200. I only need to watch this one. Yi Shiak Suan said. How about I transfer some money to you? You have so much money lying around with me, 
and your disciple isn't short of money either. No need. I don't spend much money on a daily basis, so ye couldn't be bothered to explain to ye Shaq Suan. Life of great wealth and luxury, he had experienced it before. The indulgent life of luxury wasn't that meaningful. Yi Shiak Suan probably wouldn't understand Su Yi's mindset. Just like some rich old folks who have millions and still pick up trash on the streets daily. It's not that they don't have money, but having money or not doesn't make much of a difference in their lives. Well, anyway, if you need money, just let me know. Yi Shiak Suan paused for a moment. She thought, even if she told Su Yi that someone wanted to kill her again, he would probably just calmly say he knew. Forget it. There's no need to mention it. Master, I haven't had dinner yet. Yi Xiaq Suan thought since she was already here, she might as well have a meal. So Yi put down his phone and said, There's no food in the fridge, let's go out to eat. Um, okay. Although she couldn't taste Su Yi's cooking, dining with him was also a good thing. Let's go to that Yangzhou beef place from last time. Su Yi thought that the boss named Yan Yong Sheng was quite nice, he had given him a free meal last time, so he wanted to support his business this time. Yi Xiaq Suan looked at Su Yi and said, Are you sure you're not going to see a young lady? She shouldn't be working there anymore. Su Yi didn't think when Qian Meng would still be working at the Yangzhou beef place to earn money. Embodying a secular goddess, she hadn't possessed someone. When Qian Meng's life should have undergone a huge change by now, Lin Yun was a good example. How do you know? Yi Xiaq Suan raised an eyebrow. I feel like you just want to see that miss when working there. So Yi put away his phone and stood up. Having a beautiful woman playing the zither while dining does indeed enhance the mood. Just as expected, the Zhou lies not in the wine. Nevertheless, Yi Shaq Suon still drove Su Yi to the Yangzhou beef place. On the way, Su Yi's desire to learn increased again, asking, How do you drive this car? Yi Shaq Suon asked, Do you want to learn to drive? Is it not allowed? Of course, it's allowed, so. As Yi Shiak Suan drove, she explained the functions of the car's components and how to operate them to Su Yi. Su Yi was quick to learn, and after listening, he said, Isn't this similar to riding a horse, huh? Yi Shiak Suan didn't know how Su Yi connected driving a car with riding a horse. The brakes and the steering wheel are like reins. The handbrake is also like reins. Stepping on the brake is like me shouting whoa. Stepping on the gas is like me shouting drive. Su Yi became more excited as he spoke and then said, Let's switch positions, I'll drive. Ah. Yi Xiaq Suan was stunned by his eccentric theory. Are all the car's components merely equivalent to reins? Accelerating and braking were all based on shouting. Ah what? Switch positions. Su Yi couldn't resist trying it. You don't have a driver's license, and Yi Xiaq Suan thought for a moment and said, this horse may be a bit fierce and could easily lead to fatalities. Don't worry. I promise not to hit anyone. Su Yi, a person like him, couldn't control a spirited horse. When he didn't know how to drive before, he managed to move Zhou Zhan's car forcibly. And he didn't hit anyone. It's just that driving that way wasn't fun. Yi Xiaq Suan had to stop the car and switch positions with Su Yi. She then sat at the passenger seat, fastened her seatbelt, gripped the handle next to her, and said, Master, drive slowly. Don't worry. After Su Yi got into the car, he stepped on the gas pedal. The car zoomed out, almost hitting the car ahead, but Su Yi managed to forcefully stop it in time, scaring the driver in front who stuck his head out of the window and cursed loudly. Yi Xiaq Suan initially thought Su Yi would be very angry, but he just awkwardly rubbed his nose and gave an embarrassed smile, apologizing to the driver ahead. Sorry, slow down. The driver in front finally calmed down and drove away. Su Yi stepped on the brake and said, This car is indeed a bit fierce. Yi Xiaq Suan was also quite frightened and said, Master, how about we find an empty space to practice tomorrow? And you don't have a driver's license. It's illegal to drive on the road without one. If you want to learn, enroll in a driving school. Let a professional instructor teach you, all right? Well, that's fine. Su Yi had to temporarily give up on the idea, having studied law. Driving without a license seemed to be illegal, and the penalty could range from a fine of over 200 yuan to a maximum of 2,000 yuan, as well as up to 15 days of detention. It's better not to engage in illegal activities. By the way, is your car better or Gudanton's car better? So Yi finally asked a question that had been on his mind for days. Yi Xiaq Suan was slightly taken aback, remembering their 13 estates minibus, couldn't help but smile and said, My car is definitely better. So Yi said, their car can accommodate more people. Fine. 
I'll send you a minivan next time as a token of respect for you, master. Ishiak Suan was annoyed. Mocking his car could carry more. Why not drive a truck? It could even carry a load of pigs. Yang Zhou Beef. When Su Yi and the others arrived at the entrance, they could already hear the pleasant sound of the ancient zither. As Yi Shiak Suan got off the car, she smiled and said to Su Yi, My dear master, the little missy is really here. This smile was obviously not very sincere. Su Yi nodded and said, This time it's much better than last time. Ha! Huh? Is there no more pretense at all? In Yi Shiak Suan's view, with her master's skills, not to mention knowing the past 500 years and the next 500 years, he should be able to figure out whether this person is in the store just by thinking about it. So obviously, her dear master came here to find when Kian Man. What's the point of saying he'll take her out to eat? Indeed, men are all liars. So he walked into the store and indeed saw when Kian Man playing the zither. This time she was playing Chang and S8 sceneries. Although it didn't give the immersive feeling like when Suyi played last time, from any tone you listened to, there were no flaws. It seems that this Liu Ayu's accomplishments in music theory were quite profound. Suyi wouldn't intentionally avoid her just because Liu Ayu was a terrestrial immortal, of course, provided that this woman didn't have too many ideas. The moment Suyi entered, when Kian Men looked up and glanced at Suyi, and the rhythm of her fingers was obviously disrupted, the owner of the Yangzhou Beef Restaurant, Yang Yong Shen was standing beside her. He had always been a person who liked traditional arts. Since when Qian Meng was playing in his store, he stood by and listened. Now his address to when Qian Meng had changed from Miss Wen to Teacher Wen, showing great respect. Teacher Su, you're here. Yang Yong Shen, upon seeing Su Yi, also smiled and took out a good cigarette from his pocket, lit one and handed it to Su Yi. Su Yi didn't refuse. Just as he received the cigarette, Yan Yan Sheng saw that he didn't have a lighter and handed one to him the next moment. Boss Yan, I'm here to eat this time. You can't give me a free meal again, or else I won't feel comfortable coming here next time. So you really like this kind of peaceful life, and Yan Yan Sheng left him with a good impression. Understanding propriety, cultured, and with the generous spirit of a person from the rivers and lakes. However, so you didn't like freebies. All right, no free meal, but teacher Su, when you come to eat, I'll give you a discount. Yan Yong Shang had a compassionate smile on his face. He knew that always giving free meals might not make people feel comfortable, so discounts were necessary. After some small talk, Su Yi didn't speak to when Qian Meng and led Yi Xiaq Suan to a table by the window to order dishes. Yi Xiaq Suan ordered two pounds of beef and some side dishes, then said to Su Yi, By the way, master, do you think I can defeat this girl without using the soul-breaking technique? Su Yi's gaze lingered on her for two or three seconds, smiling but not saying anything. Do you even need to ask? A Golden Core Initial Stage Cultivator without magic artifacts, competing with a terrestrial immortal, probably would end up being beaten to the ground. Yi Xiaq Suan wasn't a fool, and Su Yi's smile didn't need words to express the answer. The beef was soon served, and when Qian Meng stopped playing, then walked over directly. Can I sit here? When Qian Meng was straightforward and pointed to the seat next to Su Yi upon coming over, Yi Xiaq Suan didn't know what to say. Are girls nowadays so bold? But since she was a disciple, she couldn't just refuse to let her sit. Su Yi, however, said, You sit across from me. When Qian Meng hung her head and sat next to Yi Xiaq Suan, Su Yi asked, Did Li Yuaiya send you over? When Qian Meng nodded silently, blushing all over her face, then, Biting her silver teeth, she said, I asked her to come out and talk to you. As soon as she finished speaking, her eyes changed, her face no longer blushing, and her whole person appeared charming and fascinating, with autumn-like eyes flickering. Senior, you finally came to see me, Li Youayu said, with a completely different tone from before. Her eyes seemed to be able to allure people. Even Yi Xiaq Suan sitting next to her couldn't help but stare. This woman is probably a born seductress, captivating in every move. With Wen Qian Meng's already beautiful and innocent appearance, paired with Li Yuayu's current demeanor, is this the legendary pure yet alluring combination? Yi Xiaq Suan vowed that if she were a man, she would definitely not be able to resist such a woman. Si Yi, on the other hand, stared at her and said, I'm not here to find you, just came to eat. Senior, how can you say that? Is there anything delicious in a meal? Li Yuayu blinked and coquettishly said, Why don't you come to my place, 
Whatever senior wants to eat, I can prepare it for you. With this demeanor of a thousand charms waiting for one's picking, if it were another man, they probably would have already succumbed to bring her home. Eat beef. What's so delicious about beef? It's more interesting to play with people. So Yi raised an eyebrow and said, Do you believe I can eliminate you without harming Wen Qian Meng? At this remark, even Li Youayu couldn't help but be stunned. He was too indifferent to the fragility of delicate things. Senior, you're joking, of course, I believe. Then speak sensibly. Su Yi didn't emit a hint of killing intent, but Li Youayu didn't dare to gamble. Someone who could suppress her with just their spiritual power wouldn't find it difficult to eliminate her. As for whether it would harm Wen Qian Meng, her being eliminated was already enough, and whether Wen Qian Meng would be alright was no longer important to her. Alright. Does Senior had any questions for the younger generation? Li Youayu felt that since Su Yi came to this store, he must have come to find her, since he wasn't here to kill or seduce her. There must be something to ask. There had been many terrestrial immortals descending today. Could it be that Su Yi wanted to ask her about this? I don't have any questions to ask. I just came to eat. Su Yi didn't really care about the terrestrial immortals. He had already killed so many. A few more wouldn't make much difference. As long as it didn't affect his normal life or endanger the people around him, so you wouldn't bother. Li Youayu. It seemed that she had been overestimating her own importance. Forget about it, since the senior doesn't like the junior. Let when Qian Meng die with you. Li Youayu could still feel an unseen pressure in front of Suyi. After all, Suyi was an existence that could eliminate her at any moment. The next moment, when Qian Meng blushed, buried her head, and dared not look at Su Yi. Li Youayu's words just now were a bit too explicit, wasn't it to direct to go to someone else's home? If it were her, she definitely wouldn't have said such things. If Su Yi had really agreed just now, and Li Youayu followed him home, when that thing happened, she could still feel it, just unable to control her own body. That would be too terrifying. Yi Xiaq Suan had been completely speechless since when Qian Meng came over. There were actually two people living in this body. When Qian Meng was already pretty, and this pitiable appearance was also very moving, and her former appearance was also very seductive. How could her master withstand such temptation? While she was in a daze, Yuan Haoren and Zizu Chen also entered the restaurant. The Yangzhou Beef Shop was originally near Qingzhou University. In terms of Yuan Haoren's attention to Yi Xiaq Suan, when he sensed that Yi Xiaq Suan's presence was nearby, he immediately searched around like a hungry wolf that smelled meat. Finally, he stopped in front of the Yangzhou beef shop. He was certain that Yi Xiaq Suan was inside. Thanks. Brother, I'll treat you to beef. Yuan Haoren walked into the shop without looking around, as if he didn't know Yi Xiaq Suan was inside. Thank you. Brother Yuan, Zizu Cheng, also a fan of Yi Xiaq Suan finally noticed something. As long as he got too close to Yishak Suan, his sword couldn't be drawn out, not even a hint of sword energy could gather. As soon as Zizu Cheng entered the shop, he sensed something unusual. He subconsciously placed his hand on the sword hilt and tried to pull it out gently, only to find it wouldn't budge. Zizu Cheng looked around the shop and immediately spotted Yishak Suan. Brother Yuan, Missy is over there. He didn't dare to have any improper thoughts about Yishak Suan but he hoped she could give him some guidance. After speaking, he walked towards the table where Yishak Suan was sitting. So he naturally noticed these two entering. When the food arrived, he started eating with his head down. Heavenly being. Yuan Haoren Nanzi. Zhu Cheng finally noticed that when Qian Meng was also here. Last time on King Yun Mountain, Iyoayu fought for when Qian Meng, and her strength was remarkable. Furthermore, Ordinary cultivators usually avoid heavenly beings, as those guys didn't see them as equals at all. Just a heavenly being. Yuan Haoren was not afraid of Li Youayu. With his strength, he was confident he could match Li Youayu in battle and walked over directly. See, Su Cheng was truly conflicted. He wanted to learn swordsmanship from Yi Xiaq Suan. But whenever he got close to her, he felt powerless like a cripple. In this situation, if someone were to attack him, he would be very passive. Yuan Haoren wanted to sit at the table where Yi Xiaq Suan was, and at the same time, chose to ignore Su Yi. He walked up to Yi Xiaq Suan with a slight smile and said, Miss Yi, what a coincidence, you're dining here too. I wonder if it's convenient for us. Su Yi put down his chopsticks, glanced at Yuan Haoren, and before he could finish his sentence, he smiled and said, not convenient. Find another table for yourself. What this guy wanted to say, so you didn't need to think twice about. Did I ask you? 
Yuan Haran raised his eyebrows. He didn't care about Su Yi from start to finish. He was just a small Czech cultivator. Even if Yi Shak Suan liked him a bit now, once she calmed down, she would realize this person was not worthy of her. Since Su Yi spoke, Yi Shak Suan naturally wouldn't hesitate anymore and said, Yuan Haran, our table is indeed not convenient. You should find your own table. Yuan Haoran felt that Su Yi was being so arrogant only because Yi Shak Suan was backing him up. A guy who id behind a woman, not striving for progress, was just a waste. How could he be so brazen, in front of him without a lesson today? Miss Yi, you can't always shield him. This time, Yuan Haoran didn't back down. Instead, he said to Su Yi, Su Yi, if you are a man, compare with me properly. I won't bully you. I'll match our realms, fight without using any spell, purely physical combat. When Si Yi heard the term physical combat, he couldn't help but think of the fencing he had been practicing recently. Kiss. Is his mind being corrupted by modern thoughts, or is he gradually adapting to modern life? If this was considered adaptation, it might be a bit terrifying. Yi Xiaq Suan knew the strength of her own master and didn't want to interfere anymore. She said, It's up to you, as long as he agrees. Fight with Su Yi, this Yuan Haoran really didn't know what was good for him. Su Yi put a piece of beef into his mouth and said, If you lower your realm to mine, I won't be able to beat you. Then what do you want to compare? I'm willing to accompany you. Yuan Haoran couldn't swallow this indignity today. No matter what they compared, he wanted to teach Su Yi a lesson. I won't compare. Just eat your food. Su Yi felt that the beef in front of him was quite go. He wasn't going to fight this fool. If you don't compare... Yuan Haoran couldn't figure out how to threaten Su Yi. After thinking for a while, he simply sat next to Su Yi and said, If you don't compare, I'll just follow you all the time. Playing the fool, as you wish. Su Yi didn't care about this. There were so many fools around. Even if he didn't make a move, there was a way to deal with this guy. Yuan Haoran actually asked the waiter to bring a pair of chopsticks and sat next to Su Yi. Eating. The originally polite young man had entered the shameless mode. Zizu Cheng stood there foolishly for a moment, thought for a bit, and sat at the next table. He had no choice. Su Yi had chosen a small table by the window, only suitable for four people, and there were steps on the outside. He couldn't behave as shamelessly as Yuan Haoran did. Yuan Haoran sat stubbornly next to Su Yi, picked up the chopsticks, and started eating. Yi Xiaq Suan secretly glanced at Su Yi's expression, saw that he wasn't angry, and decided not to say anything. More people. More chopsticks. Su Yi ate quickly, and the beef in the pot quickly disappeared. He waved to Yan Yan Sheng and said, Mr. Yan, how much? I'll pay. A total of 480. I'll give you a 20% discount. You pay 380. Yan Yan Sheng smiled, took out his phone, and said, Mr. Su, why don't we add WeChat? You can transfer the money to me. Sure. Su Yi took out his WeChat QR code and let Yan Yan Sheng at him. He liked having people at him on WeChat, except for the people he didn't like. I don't know this person. He just came to share a table. Let's split the bill. I'll pay for both of us. And if when Qian Meng didn't eat, we won't count her share. You can ask him for the rest, Su Yi said. Yang Yong Sheng probably heard some words not too far away. This person insisted on sitting at their table, probably because he saw that when Qian Meng or Mr. Su's companion was pretty and wanted to hit on them. When they refused, he still insisted on sharing the table. He would have to pay for this money. Su Yi turned his head and glanced at Yuan Haoran, asking, Do you have any objections? Don't tell me you don't have money. In front of a goddess, being too stingy would surely deduct points. What do you mean I don't have money? Even if I'm treating Miss Yi, you pay 120 for yourself. I won't pay for your meal. Saying that, Yuan Haoran took out his wallet, but when he looked inside, he was dumbfounded. Yuan Haoran had been practicing at home before this King Yunchen competition similar to Su Yi and Zhang Luolin before him. He wasn't very familiar with modern electronic products. At most, being able to make and answer phone calls was considered good enough. So when he left, he still brought over 10,000 yuan in cash. However, he found out that there was only a hundred yuan left in his bag, and all his bank cards were missing. Although he may have spent some of the money, it shouldn't have disappeared so quickly. What's more, just a moment ago, he vaguely felt that his swollen wallet suddenly became lighter, clearly indicating that it was stolen. Yuan Haoran stared blankly at Su Yi and said, You took my money. Su Yi chuckled, Are you trying to say that I could sneakily steal your money without you realizing it? But your wallet was in your arms. 
With these words, Yuan Haran began to doubt life. Could someone really take his money without him noticing? Obviously, Su Yi didn't have that kind of ability. The only person present who could achieve this was probably Yi Xiaq Suan. Yuan Haran's gaze lingered on Yi Xiaq Suan's face for half a second before quickly looking away. Truly, she was the woman he set his sights on, capable of sitting across from him and taking his money away. The most considerate thing was that she left him a hundred yuan. Boss, add me on WeChat. I'll transfer the money back to you. Yuan Haoren didn't care much about losing over 10,000 yuan. All right. Yang Yongsan was a businessman at heart. Even though he didn't particularly like Yuan Haoren, he couldn't refuse a customer's request to add him on WeChat. Yuan Haoren pulled out his phone. Puff. His phone suddenly emitted smoke and exploded in his hand. This was clearly Su Yi's doing once again. As a cultivator, the sparking phone didn't have much impact on Yuan Haoren. He threw the phone on the ground, still believing that Yi Xiaq Suan was behind it all. Because there was no way Su Yi had that kind of power. He hadn't felt any manipulation of energy just now, and Yi Xiaq Suan was sitting across from him with a mischievous smirk. Could it be that Yi Xiaq Suan was actually interested in him, and did all of this to borrow money from him, and develop their relationship? On the side, Yan Yan Song was taken aback, quickly asking, Young man, are your hands okay? I'm fine. Yuan Haoren didn't care about these trifles. Just now, Yi Xiaq Suan's light laughter almost made him fall into a daze. If all of this was orchestrated by Yi Xiaq Suan, nothing else mattered. After confirming his hand was fine, Yang Yang Song felt relieved. Miss Yi, could you lend me 160 yuan first? This meal is still on me. I'll return the money to you tomorrow. Yuan Haoren could only try this approach. Borrowing money from a goddess was embarrassing, but if she was pulling the strings behind everything, the situation would be different. Yi Xiaq Suan naturally knew what was going on, all thanks to Su Yi. Her master was just giving Yuan Haoren a small lesson, so why would she loan him money? I'm sorry, I didn't bring any money with me. Yi Xiaq Suan put on a sincere look. Yuan Haoren furrowed his brow slightly, but then quickly relaxed. She wasn't refusing to lend him money, she was probably hinting at adding each other on WeChat or exchanging phone numbers. Could you transfer the money to this boss first? I'll get a new phone tomorrow, add you on WeChat, and then return the money to you. Yuan Heron's excitement grew as he stared at the phone Yi Xiaq Suan had placed on the table. It seemed the goddess had realized that Suyi wasn't worthy of her. Yi Xiaq Suan picked up the phone and said, My phone is broken too. As soon as she said that, a call came in. Yuan Haoren. Yi Xiaq Suan calmly threw the phone into a pot and said, Now it's broken. Yang Yang Song didn't dare speak up either. He realized that everyone at this table was quite crafty. So Yi stood up, added Yang Yang Song on WeChat, transferred 120 yuan to him, and asked Yuan Haoren, Don't tell me you want a free meal. At this moment, Yuan Haoren finally woke up. The goddess didn't have any interest in him. After all, boss, give me your bank account number, I'll have someone transfer the money to you. Yuan Haoren had no choice but to have his housekeeper handle the transfer since he lost all his money and his phone was broken. Seeking directions for transferring 260 yuan over the phone, Yuan Haoren ended up fully disgracing his family. So he smiled, stood up, and said, You enjoy your meal, we'll be on our way. Yuan Haoren felt wronged. He had only been at the table for a few minutes and had eaten just a few pieces of meat. If only he still had money on him, but now he had to deal with all this trouble. As Su Yi and the others left the restaurant, Yuan Haoren had his housekeeper transfer the money to Yang Yang Song. He hadn't forgotten what he had said earlier and followed them closely. He was determined to have a competition with Su Yi today. Just as Su Yi and the others left, Bu Tong Tong and Lao Yang arrived. They had tracked Su Yi's phone location and found them easily. The sudden disappearance of the human immortals from Fengjing Town and the recent assassination attempt on Yi Xiaq Suan by human immortals couldn't be mere coincidences. As long as Yi Xiaq Suan used her phone, they could locate her through the 13 offices. Since Yi Xiaq Suan was with Su Yi, it made things even simpler. Miss Yi, we have something to ask you. Lao Yang was still polite towards Yi Xiaq Suan. He had witnessed Yi Xiaq Suan's power on King Yun Mountain. In Wu Wenzhou's report, Yi Xiaq Suan had made thousands of human immortals retreat using her sword spirit. Such a powerful individual was not someone he dared to offend. What is it? Is it related to human immortals? Yi Xiaq Suan inquired. She had almost died at the hands of the dragon hand before. 
but luckily her sword spirit had intervened. Lao Yan was likely going to discuss that incident. You already know. Is it not your doing? Lao Yan's eyes widened slightly. All he could think of was that the attempted assassination on Yixiak Suan had failed, leading her to retaliate and slaughter all the human immortals in one go, leaving no bodies behind. What do you mean? Yi Xiaxuan was still unaware that all the human immortals in Fengjing town had died. Seeing there were no outsiders around, Lao Yan directly said, the human immortals in Fengjing town are all missing. Tan Tong said they were likely all wiped out, with no bodies left behind. Yi Xiaxuan couldn't help but be surprised. They were all dead. Thousands of human immortals. So Yi had just mentioned and that if she hadn't suppressed her power, she wouldn't have been able to defeat Wen Qian Meng. Who else could eliminate over a thousand human immortals other than Su Yi? D4. She thought Su Yi didn't care about the assassination attempt on her, but she hadn't expected things to escalate to this extent. Mr. Yang, those few human immortals are but a few. If they die, then they die. Even if Miss Yi is the one who killed them, there's no need for all this fuss, right? Hearing their conversation, Yuan Haoran mistakenly thought that the people from Section 13 were here to cause trouble for Yi Xiaq Suan. In situations like this, he would definitely stand up for Yixiak Suan. Human immortals never see cultivators as equals. In their eyes, it seems like they are a higher form of life. If Yixiak Suan killed a few human immortals, it would not be excessive to say it was for the greater good. If Section 13 still bothers about this, they must be out of their minds. Mr. Yan took a deep breath and said, Young Master Yuan, you probably don't know how many human immortals there are in Fengjing Town. Yuan Haoran chuckled. How many could there be? At most five or six. It's not that I'm saying this, old Yan. Those human immortals who descend and possess others are not good people, so killing them is no big deal. Yan calmly stated, there were a total of 1,388 human immortals in Fengjing Town, and they all disappeared overnight. Based on the battle traces in the town, it is highly likely that one person wiped out all the human immortals. Over a thousand, Yuan Heron's speech became hesitant, knowing full well how terrifying human immortals were. If it was a one-on-one -on -one fight, he could probably hold his own or even defeat them. But if he was surrounded by two human immortals, all he could do was run. Even legendary ancient gods might not be able to wipe out over a thousand human immortals in a single night. Yuan Haoran stared at Yi Shak Suan, swallowing hard and asked, Miss Yi, it wasn't really you who did this. Was it? If it were true, Yi Shaq Suan could rightfully be called the guardian deity of the human race. Such a being was beyond his concern. Yi Shaq Suan awkwardly smiled and said, It really wasn't me. Mr. Yang mentioned, From what I know, Miss Yi's sword can intimidate all human immortals. Before the human immortals in Fengjing town disappeared, you were also targeted by a human immortal, although that human immortal is now dead. Miss Yi, I've come here not to blame you, Mr. Yan said. You should know that since over a thousand human immortals appeared this time, there's a possibility of even stronger ones in the future. I just want to confirm whether these human immortals are dead or hiding. Mr. Yan's address to Yixiak Suan also became more respectful. In the world of cultivation, strength commands respect. In a harsh tone, Yixiak Suan, with her immortal sword, could easily disregard Section 13. Could even Gu Tan Tan fight against Yi Shiak Suan? Yi Shiak Suan shattered Yuan Heron's eight trigrams formation with a single sword. This unparalleled sword. This unparalleled strength. It really wasn't me. Yi Shiak Suan thought for a moment and asked, Can I go see the scene now? Of course. Mr. Yan had no choice but to be nervous about this. If there was someone capable of wiping out such a large number of human immortals, then even if more human immortals appeared in the future, they would not be afraid. He even hoped that Yi Shiak Suan was the one who did it. Nowadays, cultivators are more law-abiding, it's mostly the human immortals who disregard Section 13, showing no respect, being unpredictable. It would be difficult for Section 13 to handle them, if they committed a crime. But if Yi Shiak Suan had such power, she could truly intimidate those human immortals. The tip of the sword points to justice. If your fist isn't strong enough, Reasoning with people is meaningless, Z. Zhu Cheng also quickly followed. They got into a van and headed to Fengjing Town. Su Yi originally said he didn't want to go, but he couldn't resist Gu Tan Tan's insistence on going together. Would he accompany them to see his own crime scene? It was really dull. Along the way, Yuan Haran was like a curious baby, asking questions non-stop. He wasn't part of Section 13, 
so it was already quite rare for them to allow him to witness the scene in person. When they arrived at Fengjing Town, Yi Xiaxuan couldn't help but feel a bit frightened at the scene before her. She had visited Fengjing Town before, and there were still many rebuilt houses. However, now, many areas had been leveled to the ground, with some horrifying craters, as if a century-long war had taken place. Miss Yi, do you know who did this? Mr. Yang could sense something from Yi Xiaxuan's expression and instinctively felt that she knew who was responsible. I, I don't know. Yi Xiaxuan deny, not willing to betray Si Yi, her master who was always lucky. Mr. Yang then asked, may I ask where Miss Yi received her training? While saying this, Mr. Yang couldn't help but glance at Su Yi. He remembered Gu Tong Tong saying that she had a feeling Su Yi was more powerful than her. Gu Tong Tong's intuition was rarely wrong. According to the information, a month ago, Yi Xiaxuan was not a cultivator. To become a Foundation Realm cultivator in just one month and wield an immortal sword, what kind of heaven-defying opportunity did she encounter? Yi Xiaxuan reply, I have no master. I learned my swordsmanship from the sword spirit. As soon as she finished speaking, the sword spirit transformed into a bright young boy before everyone. Who are you people? How dare you interrogate my sword master like this? As the sword spirit appeared, Mr. Yang and others felt an extremely terrifying pressure, almost kneeling down. So Yi raised an eyebrow, and the sword spirit disappeared, sealed once again. This guy was really too flamboyant. Ah, sealed again. The sword spirit couldn't help but complain. I gave you my soul. Why would you seal me? That enough to act so recklessly. Yi Xiaxuan didn't show any sympathy for the sword spirit. It was too arrogant. If Su Yi didn't seal it, Yi Xiaxuan felt she couldn't control it. Sorry. My sword spirit is a bit unruly. Yi Xiaxuan awkwardly smiled, knowing that the sudden appearance of the sword spirit would bring immense pressure to those present. It's no problem, Mr. Yang said verbally, but he secretly assessed Su Yi. Su Yi looked a bit pale. It seemed he was shaken by the sword spirit's spiritual pressure. Could he really be just a chair finding minor cultivator? Yuan Haoran took a deep breath and said, Mr. Yan, it seems that there is another supremely powerful figure among my human race. The residual Dao rhymes in the air. If I can comprehend even a bit, I can make a breakthrough. Yuan Haoran requests to cultivate here for a while. If Mr. Yan agrees, I am willing to serve Section 13 for a year. Su Yi was somewhat surprised, it seemed that this descendant of Yuan Chia also had some talent to feel the Dao rhymes left after his battle. Three years. I will let you cultivate here for a month. Old Yan was certainly not a great person. On the way here, Gu Tong Tong had told him that the residual Dao rhyme in this place could help in cultivation. The current Fengjing town is a cultivation holy land surpassing any blessed ground or hidden land. If it is another month, the residual Dao rhyme should dissipate. Teal. Yuan Haoran didn't hesitate at all. His current cultivation level was already comparable to the peak of the Golden Core stage. Even in a battle with the expert at the Nassan Soul stage, he might not necessarily lose. However, breaking through again would probably not be so easy. Without the chance of becoming immortal, he would probably stop here in his lifetime. Finally, such a chance of becoming immortal appeared, and he absolutely could not give out. As for pursuing Yishak Suan, just one month, he could wait. Only by becoming stronger could he compete better. Su Yi was only a chair refining cultivator. His lifespan would not exceed 150 years, and his aging rate was extremely fast. In a few more years, he would not even be worthy of Yi Shak Suan. Old Yang looked at Zizu Cheng again, but Su Su Cheng said, If Miss Yi is also cultivating here, I am willing to serve for 13 places for 3 years and cultivate here. The residual Dao rhyme left by Su Yi is not something that everyone can perceive. At least Zizu Cheng had no feeling at all. He only knew that at the moment the sword spirit appeared just now, something seemed to have loosened in his heart. Whether he could break through by cultivating here, he was not sure. But he knew that as long as he followed Yi Xiaq Suan, he could definitely break through. Old Yang squinted at Yi Xiaq Suan. This was his ultimate goal. With Yi Xiaq Suan's cultivation level and talent, she should have already sensed the residual Dao rhyme here. Cultivating here would surely lead to rapid growth in cultivation. If Yi Xiaq Suan could also serve for 13 places for 3 years, then during these 3 years, Waxio would definitely be more stable and prosperous. However, Su Yi knew that Yi Xiaq Suan was dull-witted and would never be able to perceive the residual Dao rhyme here like Yuan Haoran. Even though she had been following Su Yi for so long, no matter how Su Yi restrained, she would unintentionally leave behind some Dao rhyme. 
It went without saying about the painting Su Yi had given her before. Lin Zuo had quickly broken through with just a few words. Seeing his own disciple, Su Yi couldn't help but think how stupid she was not to have broken through to the Golden Core stage yet. Fortunately, the cultivationists of this era were weak enough. If it was during the primordial era, taking such an apprentice would be a disgrace. For example, those big shots said to Su Yi, your beloved disciple under your guidance has been cultivating for a month, should have reached the level of a golden immortal by now, right? Su Yi. However, told them, my disciple has only reached the golden core stage, and it's just the early stage. I guess that person would be laughed to death. I won't stay here. Yi Xuan was not willing to cultivate in the same place as Yuan Haoren. Besides, wasn't it more pleasant to stay by her master's side? Her master always smelled so nice. Well, not that, but following her master, her cultivation would surely progress faster. Wasn't the residual Dao rhyme here left by Su Yi, with a living person by her side? Why would she leave and cultivate in such a desolate place unless she was out of her mind? Old Yang never expected that Yi Shiak Suan would refuse, hesitated, and said, Miss Yi, have you thought it through? Yi Shiak Suan said firmly, Yes, I will not cultivate here. Cultivate? She actually didn't like cultivating that much, she just hoped to mooch foo and drinks in front of Su Yi every day. Running errands for Su Yi was already satisfying enough. All right. Old Yan also miscalculated. Zizu Cheng also said, Then I won't cultivate here either. That kind of Dao rhyme, intangible and invisible. Without Yuan Heron's talent, even if one stayed here for 10 years, there might not be any progress. Let's go then. Su Yi naturally would not be bored enough to stay here to cultivate. He had lived for so long without cultivating. Wait. Yuan Haoren suddenly shouted, staring at Su Yi and said, Yan Lao, is this Su Yi from your 13th place? Old Yang nodded. Does young master Yuan have some misunderstanding about Su Yi? No misunderstanding. I just want to challenge him. Yuan Haoren said, if we don't fight this one, I can't calm down to cultivate. Unknowingly, Su Yi seemed to have become a demon in Yuan Haoren's heart. This guy's cultivation level was not high. And he sounded polite when he spoke. But for some reason, Yuan Haoren was really annoyed with him. If they didn't have a match, he really couldn't calm down to cultivate. Old Yan chuckled. Young Master Yuan, you're joking. Su Yi is just a chair-refining cultivator. Challenging him like this, isn't it bullying? We won't use cultivation levels, just fists. I won't use magical techniques. And he won't use spiritual energy. Just a simple martial arts match. Yuan Haoren's eyes were sharp as he said. Isn't that unfair to him? This, Old Yang slowly looked at Su Yi and asked, Su Yi, what do you say? If you don't want to fight, no one can force you. Yuan Haoren came from a prestigious family, so his martial arts skills were naturally excellent. Even without magical techniques, an ordinary chair finding cultivator would not be his match. However, Old Yang also felt that there might be a secret hidden in Su Yi. Su Yi thought for a moment and said, sure, you can use your magical techniques, Show me what you've got. I'll just use my magic tools. Is that okay? Yuan Haoren laughed heartily. This timid turtle finally stopped hiding behind women. You want to use a magic tool? Go ahead. Let's see what treasures you can bring out. Speaking of magic tools, so he had quite a few in his sleeve. But no matter which one he brought out, it would surely shock the world. Xuan Zhuan, let me borrow your sword. So he turned to Yishak Suan and said, Ahem. Yuan Haoren was almost infuriated. Can you be more shameless? Borrow Miss Yi's immortal sword. Don't you have any magic tools yourself? Didn't you say I could use any magic tool I wanted? My magic tools are all to high level. I'm afraid of scaring you. So I'll just borrow Zhuan Zhuan's sword for now. Any problem? Su Yi was upright and fearless, not showing any change in expression. Leaving Yuan Haoren speechless for a moment. Damn. I've never seen someone as shameless as you in my whole life. Yuan Haoren was truly infuriated to the point of internal injuries. His whole body was more valuable than that phone on Su Yi. Are we fighting, or not? Su Yi said, I promised, didn't I? Old Yang and Zizu Cheng next to him also felt that this guy was too shameless, borrowing an immortal sword to fight. Who could possibly win against that? Fight? I don't believe this sword spirit will listen to you. Even if the immortal sword falls into your hands, it won't change the fact that you're trash. Yuan Haoren was already so angry that he couldn't think straight. So he once again lifted part of the seal on the soul, allowing the sword spirit to condense into a physical form in front of him. 
Then he said to the sword spirit, don't kill, just get them to yield. The immortal sword spirit, especially a sword spirit with independent consciousness, should be very proud by nature. Even for a sword master, without sufficient strength, the sword spirit may not fully acknowledge the master, and there is even a possibility of the sword spirit backlash, turning the sword master into a servant, Z. Zhu Cheng is probably the most knowledgeable about swords among this group of people. He also believes that Su Yi cannot possibly command such a powerful sword spirit. However, in front of Su Yi, the sword spirit truly behaves like a child. After hearing Su Yi's command, it softly murmurs, to spare a life. Too difficult to spare. Listen, is this even human speech? Yuan Haoren, excited, quickly says, can't I stop fighting? What a joke. This sword spirit can intimidate thousands of immortals in the human world. If Yuan Haoren were to fight it, what if it couldn't control its power and directly killed Yuan Haoren? Who would he cry to? If you say you want to fight, you have to fight. If you say you don't want to fight, it means I am losing face. Su Yi is somewhat displeased, staring at Yuan Haoren, saying, either you admit defeat. Admit defeat. Yuan Haoren clenches his teeth fiercely, actually being told to admit defeat to a shameless chair refining cultivator. Moreover, admitting defeat, in front of so many people, how will he survive in the cultivation world in the future? If you don't admit defeat, then fight. Su Yi lazily waves his hand towards the sword spirit. This Yuan Haoren guy is really annoying and needs to be taught a lesson. The sword spirit, hearing Su Yi's words, is eager for this guy not to admit defeat so it can move around and maybe impress Su Yi who might then not seal its power. Yuan Haran's eyes twitch fiercely what a nuisance. The sword spirit standing in front of him gives off a feeling of being so powerful that it is unimaginable to contend with. The immortal sword spirit materializes. Even if it was 2000 years ago, the two immortal swords left by true immortal John Dowling back then only developed a bit of basic consciousness. As for the materialization of the sword spirit, that would take several thousand more years. Just thinking about the sword spirit in front of him is terrifying. But admitting defeat is impossible. The Yuan family, how could they lower their heads to trash like Su Yi? I won't admit defeat. Yuan Haoran bites his teeth, vigilantly watching the sword spirit. The sword spirit currently only looks like a five-year-old child, with a round melon-like head, pink skin, and eyes as clear as black and white, giving off a harmless appearance. Hehe, <laughs> refusing to admit defeat. Huh. Once the sword spirit finished speaking, it already appears in front of Yuan Haoran. Before Yuan Haoran can react, he's been thrown out, landing heavily a hundred meters away. His clothes have turned into shreds, countless sword marks covering his body, and he looks completely beaten, his life hanging by a thread. I, I haven't even made a move yet. The sword spirit stands in place with an incredulous expression, mist rising in its eyes, turning back to look at Su Yi innocently. It really didn't make a move. It hadn't even touched Yuan Haoran, and he still collapsed. Su Yi did say to spare a life. What if this little guy died here? Su Yi would have to seal its power for tens of thousands of years. Woo woo. Go check if he's dead. The sword spirit is on the verge of tears. Yi Xuan is also startled and hurries to check Yuan Haoran's injuries. Lao Yang and the others follow closely behind. If Yuan Haoran dies here, won't the Yuan family come looking for trouble with them? However, Su Yi slowly walks forward. He underestimated the strength of the sword spirit. It's not something cultivators of this era can confront. Even if the sword spirit didn't attack, just releasing a bit of its aura is enough to annihilate them. Unfortunately, this sword spirit doesn't know restraint. Thankfully, it didn't act, or with Yuan Heron's cultivation, one death wouldn't be enough. Spare a life. Su Yi is slightly troubled. Considering Yuan Heron's current condition, only a breath of life remains. If Su Yi doesn't intervene to heal him, Yuan Haran probably wouldn't survive. Oh well, seeing that Yuan Chang'an's descendant is quite interesting, it wouldn't be right to end his bloodline. Su Yi still has some pills in his sleeve, concocted during idle moments. He picks the lowest grade one, passes it to Yi Xiaq Suan in the next moment, and it ends up in her hands. Yi Xiaq Suan is perplexed. When did she get a round thing in her hand? When she opens her palm, she sees a pill not much larger than a grain of rice. The pill emits a faint golden light, indicating its extraordinary quality. Lao Yang stares at the pill in Yi Xuan's hand. His eye, only a slit earlier, widens, an immortal pill. This refined aura is definitely from an immortal pill, and it's the kind of rare immortal pill 
that could change a cultivator's destiny. If this pill were thrown out, it could lead to chaos among all cultivators in the world. Ha! Huh. Yi Xiaxuan finally realizes. This must be from Su Yi to save Yuan Haoren. Hearing Lao Yan's words, she chuckles, I only had this one. Let him take it first. Lao Yan swallows hard. If this were a hundred years ago, he might have entertained thoughts of robbery. Yi Xiaxuan doesn't realize the pill's immense value in this era. As Su Yi gave it to her at this moment, it must be to save Yuan Haoren. Yi Xiaxuan simply stuffs the pill into Yuan Haren's mouth without hesitation. As the pill enters Yuan Haren's mouth, it turns into a golden liquid flowing into his stomach. In just a few moments, Yuan Haren's body emits a faint golden light. The visible wounds heal rapidly, scabbing over and dropping off, and the previously injured person is instantly restored to health. Yuan Haren suddenly opens his eyes, and his black pupils sparkle with a golden light. He feels the effects of the immortal pill in his body. Without saying a word, he sits down cross-legged and starts cultivating. Is he okay now? Yi Xiaxuan watches Yuan Heron's appearance and asks instinctively. Lao Yan trembles and adjusts his glasses, saying, Of course, with this kind of immortal pill, Miss Yi is indeed generous. The situation just now can be described as resurrecting from the dead. With such an immortal pill, if taken while forming the Yuan Yang, the foundation would definitely be more solid. Even the top sex would preserve such a high-grade, immortal pill as a treasured spirit medicine. It's fine. A healer's heart is as big as the sky. My grandfather often taught me that saving a life is better than building a seven-tiered stupa. Yi Xiaxuan appears, indifferent, not realizing the significance of the immortal pill. Su so Yi walks over, glances at Yuan Haoren, and realizes that Yuan Haoren might be benefiting from his actions. He isn't sure if what he did was right. There are certain things that shouldn't exist in this world. Originally planning to give this young boy a small lesson, he unexpectedly gave him a stroke of immortal luck. Oh well. Since they were acquainted with each other's ancestors, and Su Yi has no use for these pills, he just hopes Yuan Haoren won't be as annoying in the future. Yuan Haoren had just started his cultivation, while Zizu Cheng was also stunned in place. Although he was not obsessed with swords, he had his own insights into swordsmanship. When the sword spirit appeared again, he could already feel that unparalleled sword intent. He had a realization in his heart, but he was still unable to condense any trace of sword intent in the presence of the sword spirit. There seemed to be something unclear and inexplicable in his heart. Could it be the sword heart? Zizu Cheng's heart was pounding, strong and powerful. He clenched his fists, extremely excited, staring at the figure of the sword spirit, gradually entering a state of absent-mindedness. What's wrong with him again? Yi Xiaxuan turned around and noticed that Zizu Cheng seemed to be in a trance, but he did not sit down like Yuan Haoren did, just standing there blankly, like a wooden stake. Lao Yan said, he seems to have reached enlightenment. Enlightenment? Yi Xiaxuan really didn't understand what enlightenment was, because he hadn't taught her these professional terms, in fact, she had reached enlightenment twice while following Su Yi, but she was unaware of it herself. Otherwise, how could she have quickly reached the Golden Core realm? Su Yi's heart was also filled with mixed emotions. He had finally taken on a disciple, but why was he so foolish? He had been holding the soul breaking for a few days, he had even let the soul breaking acknowledge him as its master, but he had not achieved much in swordsmanship. On the other hand, a newcomer, who had only seen the sword spirit once, had developed a sword heart. It seemed that this era did have its own immortal genius, but his disciple was just a little too foolish. Director Gu, there's nothing else, I'll go back to sleep. Su Yi pursed his lips. This trip was really boring, and he might as well go back and watch TV dramas. Gu Tantan asked, aren't you going to cultivate here? I can't feel any Tao principles here, so I won't stay. Su Yi said, actually, I don't really like cultivating. Suit yourself. Gu Tantan was not the kind of person who restricted others. If Su Yi didn't like cultivating, did she have to force him to stay and cultivate here? Su Yi, are you going back with Miss Yi? Lao Yang said, I'll have Zi Wu take you back. Lao Yang also thought that Su Yi was somewhat special. Just the aura emanating from Su Yi made him a little unreadable. However, he didn't want to delve into it. There were only two possibilities. The first possibility was that Su Yi was just an ordinary chat or finding cultivator, but he had a close relationship with Yi Xiaxuan, and he was quite resourceful. At least from the incident where he borrowed the immortal sword from Yi Xiaxuan, Su Yi's bottom line was quite low. Sometimes, their department needed comrades without scruples like him. 
The second possibility was that Suyi had been pretending to be a fool all along, and he was actually a high-level expert behind Yi Shag Suan. The immortal sword was a gift from him, the human immortals in Fengjing town were killed by him, and even the immortal Dan given to Yi Shag Suan just now was from Suyi. If the second scenario were true, then Suyi would undoubtedly be an extraordinary expert. An existence like him didn't want to reveal his identity. If their department forcefully investigated him, it would only arouse resentment. So, pretending not to know anything was the best course of action. Lao Yang had already instructed someone to start testing the artifacts Su Yi had replicated for them. In one day, those imitations were made indistinguishable from the real ones. Su Yi was indeed a talented individual. Ku Tong Tong also chose to stay in Fengjing town to cultivate. At the same time, Lao Yan had called in some experts from their department and set up tents everywhere. After a month, the overall strength of their department would definitely see a significant improvement. After Su Yi and Yi Shak Suan got into the car, Lao Yan was still pondering over Su Yi's figure. Su Yi turned back and met his gaze, and the two of them smiled at each other, seemingly very candid. When the sword spirit appeared earlier, Su Yi didn't forget his current identity and forcefully acted as if he was struggling. He thought his acting skills were already perfect, but Lao Yang still had some doubts about his identity. It was fine if he had doubts. Even if Lao Yang knew his identity, he wouldn't dare to spread it around. However, Su Yi did not want to interact with people in an invincible manner all the time. That would be too lonely. When he met people, they treated him with great respect and awe. There was no friend by his side. It was even more difficult for him to live a normal life. Although Su Yi found Yuan Haran annoying, he didn't want to kill him. Instead, he saved his life with the immortal Dan. Under normal circumstances, Su Yi was not a killer. Even if he didn't like someone, it didn't mean he had to kill them. On the way back, Wu Wens kept advising Su Yi that this trip to Fengjing town was a great opportunity. It was rare for Su Yi, as a staff member of the 13th Division, to be able to directly enter and cultivate there. Wu Wens encouraged him to improve his cultivation. Su Yi just politely thanked him for his kind words. When he returned home, he took out his phone, half lying on the old chair, ready to continue watching his dramas. Master, did you kill those human immortals? After Wu Wenz's car left, Yi Shiak Suan had a lot of questions in her heart that she wanted to ask her master. So Yi clicked on the drama he hadn't finished watching, made a sound of acknowledgement under his breath. This seemingly insignificant gesture was like how ants were drowned when Zhu Dian left them out to pee under the tree. Yi Shiak Suan was somewhat excited and continued. So, you also knew someone wanted to kill me, and then you unsealed the sword spirit, right? So, the immortal Dan you gave me, go and pour me a cup of tea. So Yi furrowed his brow slightly, realizing that his disciples seemed to have too many questions. Oh, Yi Shiak Suan hurriedly ran to the house to pour Su Yi a cup of tea. When she picked up the set of Song Dynasty Jun porcelain tea set, she remembered that she needed to bring the cup back from Changsheng Lane tomorrow. After all, it was her master's belongings, and it wouldn't be right to sell it to someone else. The entire Changsheng Lane was hers now. She bowled a pot of water in the kitchen and prepared a pot of tea, then brought it out. Master, is that immortal Dan really powerful? In theory, why not just give one to Grandpa Lin? While Yi Shiak Suan was pouring tea for Su Yi and asking questions, she said, Wouldn't it be easier that way? Su Yi calmly replied, I have many ways to cure old Lin's illness. It's just that if I did that, wouldn't it make you seem useless? Yi Shiak Suan seemed to have understood. So, it turned out that her master just wanted her to contribute a little, that's all. Yi Shiak Suan poured herself a cup of tea and asked, Grandpa Lin's illness should be cured tomorrow. Should I inform Lin Yun to come over? Su Yi paused the show, looked up at Yi Shiak Suan. This girl was probably the first disciple who poured him tea and then poured one for herself. It seemed that times had indeed changed. In the past, when the master drank tea, the disciple only dared to stand by. Su Yi believed that if there had been a chair next to him, she would have sat down without hesitation. Yun is old Lin's relative, you should naturally inform her. After Su Yi finished speaking, he continued watching his TV drama. Although the plot of this tomb robbing drama had many discrepancies with the actual process of tomb robbing, watching these loopholes seemed quite interesting. This way, he could also understand how people of this era viewed tomb robbing. Su Yi was drinking tea in the yard and watching TV dramas when old Lin leisurely walked into the yard. Grandpa Lin, have you had dinner? 
Yi Xiaxuan quickly greeted Old Lin as he entered. Old Lin's spirit was still good, but his expression seemed somewhat unnatural. He chuckled and said, Little Yi is here too. That's good. I was just about to ask Su Yi to call you. Su Yi remained seated without moving and said, Old Lin, care for some tea? This is a good tea that you can't find outside. How good can it be? It's not as good as my Iron Goddess of Mercy that goes for 13 yuan a bag, Old Lin said, as he sat down on a stone bench. Yi Xiaxuan quickly poured a cup for him too, saying, Grandpa Lin, this tea is really good. Give it a try. The teacup in Su Yi's hand was priceless, and the tea leaves were rare in the world. Yi Xiaxuan had brought back a strand of tea leaves for her grandfather to see, only to find out that the tea leaves in Su Yi's home were actually poor golden melon tribute tea classified as a national second-level cultural relic. Such items had long been extinct, with only a small piece in the Kyoto Museum. Yet Si had a whole box of it at home, casually brewing and drinking it on regular days, truly extravagant. Old Lin took a sip, smacked his lips twice, and said, Not much different from my Iron Goddess of Mercy. Si Yi chuckled, You can't see the forest for the trees. You have no respect for your elders. Old Lin retorted without anger, then said seriously, I came over to tell you something. Su Yi took a sip of tea and reply. Just say it. It's not like you want to invite me to play Mahjong tomorrow, right? I have class tomorrow. You're at an age where it's not good to interrupt the studies of a young and outstanding college student. You think you need to study? Old Lin retorted playfully. Then said, I want to say that I'm giving up treatment for my illness. Why? Yi Shiak Suan asked in surprise. Grandpa Lin, we've been preparing for this for over half a month. It should have been curable by tomorrow. Why give up now? You don't trust my medical skills. Yi Xiaxuan could only think of this reason. Old Lin quickly explained. How could that be? During this time, with your care, I can feel that my health has improved a lot compared to before. Su Yi asked. Did your granddaughter find you a more skilled doctor? If Su Yi wanted to know the reason, he could actually calculate it. But he couldn't do that. His karmic debts were too heavy. And once he divined the result, Old Lin would most likely not survive. You don't need to worry about that. I just don't want to be treated anymore. Old Lin sighed and said, I'm old anyway. What's the point of living so long? Having said that, he looked desolate and somewhat resolute towards death. So he stared at Old Lin, probing his aura. He could clearly sense that the Che in Old Lin's body was depleting at an abnormally fast rate. Over the past period, with Yi Xiaxuan's treatments and the martial arts Yi taught, the speed of Che loss in Old Lin's body had slowed down significantly. If treated again tomorrow, he should be able to live another 10 years easily. But now, it was clear that Old Lin himself no longer had the desire to live. He didn't want to live anymore. And at his age, it was no longer just a medical issue. Old Lin, what's happened? Yi stayed calm. When it came to matters of life and death, he wanted Old Lin to make the decision himself. If Old Lin wanted to live a few more years, with Yi Xiaxuan's current skills, it should be treatable, which would have minimal impact on Su Yi's karma. But if Old Lin had already given up on living, even Su Yi would be helpless. It's nothing. Old Lin slowly got up, turned to Yi Xiaxuan, and said, Girl, come with me. I have something for you. Yi Xiaxuan glanced at Su Yi who nodded slightly, indicating for her to go. After about 10 minutes, Yi Xiaxuan returned, holding a painting in her hand, with a jade bracelet added to her wrist. Master, I feel that Grandpa Lin isn't in the right state, Yi Xiaxuan, though not as capable as Su Yi in sensing the Che in Old Lin's body, could still detect something unusual. Su Yi nodded. I know. Grandpa Lin gave this bracelet to me. Yi Xiaxuan handed the painting to Su Yi. This painting is what Grandpa Lin asked me to pass to you. Su Yi slowly opened the painting, finding a portrait of himself inside. However, this painting was passed down from Old Lin's ancestors. Su Yi vaguely remembered that Old Lin's ancestor had been a top scholar who had once painted a portrait of him, and included a poem by Li Bai. In the heavens, the white jade capital, twelve towers, five cities, the immortal strokes my head. A bond of longevity I receive. Lost in the world's pleasures, my mind is tangled. The 96 saints in idle glory hang like floating clouds. Even a top scholar who painted his portrait dared not use his own poetry. So you remembered that the young man had said only the poems of the poet God were fitting for him. It seemed Old Lin had figured out something. So you smiled and slowly put away the painting. 
He wondered whether Old Lin saw him as the person in the painting or the descendant of the person in the painting. Living for so long inevitably led to connections with numerous people. After all, there were just too many acquaintances after all these years. So he didn't want to delve into why Old Lin suddenly gave up treatment. He could only guess that it must have something to do with Lin Yun. Tell Lin Yun that her grandpa doesn't want treatment anymore, Su Yi said. Yi Xiaq Suan hesitated and whispered. Grandpa Lin wants me to keep it from Lin Yun. I think Grandpa Lin is preparing for what comes after. Su Yi smiled. Don't tell Lin Yun. Master, how can you still smile? Shouldn't we advise Grandpa Lin to accept treatment? It can obviously be cured, Yi Xiaq Suan said. If you want to convince him, go ahead. Su Yi slowly stood up and said, I'm going to bed. Tidy up here. Watching Su Yi walk away, Yi Xiaq Suan stomped her foot in frustration. Despite the fact that his master could easily cure Grandpa Lin's illness and, by all accounts, should have tried to persuade him given Grandpa Lin's condition, why did he give up? Yi Xiaq Suan finished cleaning up the tea set and stood at the doorway to Su Yi's bedroom. There was no nose inside, so she returned to Old Lin's yard, only to find that Old Lin had also turned off the lights and gone to sleep. What were these elderly people thinking? Why could they just sleep as if it didn't matter and it was a matter of life and death? Perplexed, Yi Xiaq Suan drove back home, thinking that she would bring everything she needed the next morning and make sure to cure Grandpa Lin's illness. Yi Xiaq Suan did not tell Lin Yun about the matter. After returning home in the evening, she prepared all the equipment and medicinal materials needed for the next day. The next day, as soon as it was light out, Yi Xiaq Suan arrived at Old Lin's courtyard with everything she needed. Today, she didn't even bother to look for Su Yi right away. She still felt that Su Yi was too heartless. Since Su Yi asked her to persuade on her own, she would do just that. Upon entering Old Lin's courtyard, Yi Xiaq Suan knocked on the door, only to find that no one answered. By this time, it was already past 7 o'clock. Based on Old Lin's habit, he should have been practicing martial arts in the courtyard by 7 o'clock. Elderly people tend to rise early, so it was not unusual for them to be awake by 5 or 6. Call Ling Yan, Su Yi said. Yi Xiaq Suan didn't know when Su Yi had arrived in the courtyard. She turned and asked, Master, do you mean to have Ling Yun come back and persuade Grandpa Lin together? She thought Su Yi had a change of heart. Su Yi calmly said, Let her come and handle matters. What? Yi Xiaq Suan's eyes widened. How is that possible? Even if Grandpa Lin refused treatment, he's already dead. From taking the medicine, Su Yi interrupted. Yi Xiaq Suan looked at Su Yi in shock and asked, If you already knew, why didn't you stop him? Yi Xiaq Suan could somewhat guess Su Yi's capabilities. If Su Yi knew that Grandpa Lin had committed suicide by taking the medicine, he could have stopped him when he was taking the medicine. But he didn't. Su Yi asked, Why should I stop him? Why? Yi Xiaq Suan threw the medical kit in her hand on the ground, saying loudly, Isn't he your friend? How could you do this? Su Yi raised an eyebrow and said, You better watch your tone when talking to your master. I, I just think you're too heartless. Yi Xiaq Suan bit her lip, almost on the verge of wanting to sever her apprentice relationship with Su Yi. From the first meeting, she had biases against Su Yi, but later she realized that Su Yi was indeed very capable. Learning some of Su Yi's secrets even ignited a hint of admiration from her as a young girl. But in today's incident, she found Su Yi to be too heartless. Su Yi's eyebrows relaxed slightly and he said calmly, at his age, wanting to die also requires courage. I respect his decision. Normal people may not decide their births, but if there's something that makes them determined to die, that something is surely more important than their life. Perhaps in the eyes of others, suicide only causes grief to family and friends, but Su Yi knew that this old man next door was definitely not suicidal. He had been getting up early every morning to practice martial arts just to take care of Lin Yun for a day or two more. So if he could hide his suicide from Lin Yun, it must have been for her sake. Life is indeed precious to ordinary people, but it was no longer the same for Su Yi. He had no desire to die, as there were still many beautiful things in the world waiting for him to explore. But he never stopped others from seeking death. When Lao Yi on King Yun Mountain sought death, he didn't stop him. And now when Old Lin sought death, he wouldn't stop him either. Yi Xiaq Suan still couldn't understand Su Yi's idea of respecting the decision. In her view, if a loved one sought death, she would definitely try to stop them. But now, there was nothing more for Yi Xiaq Suan to say. So she called Lin Yun to inform her of the death. In less than three minutes, 
Lin Yun descended from the sky and landed in the courtyard, asking, What happened to my grandfather? She couldn't wait for a car and didn't care who saw her. Yi Xuan didn't know what to say, staring at the gate. Su Yi said, Go in and see for yourself. Lin Yun pushed open the gate and rushed in. Yi Xuan asked, Master, should we go in? You go in. I won't, Su Yi said. Having witnessed so many separations between life and death, he slowly turned around knowing that if old Lin had passed, it would greatly affect Lin Yun. Reincarnation with memories was truly complex. When a person possessed two completely different sets of memories, their personality was likely to change. Old Lin was probably the closest person to Lin Yun in this world. If he die, what would become of Lin Yun? Would she fully embrace the alternate set of memories and become a different person? So you didn't know if the memories she inherited were exactly as written in her book. After only a few minutes, Yi Xuan came out. Ling Yun came out in the afternoon, and Su Yi could clearly sense the sadness and coldness emanating from her. At this moment, her aura had unexpectedly become stronger. Was she using the bond-breaking technique of Zi Hai Shui? Su Yi furrowed his brow slightly, knowing that in ancient times, Immortals often severed all emotional attachments to immerse themselves in cultivation. He vaguely remembered that the Blackwater Dark Emperor had a set of bond-breaking techniques, but the guy himself never practiced it and instead indulged in various affairs. How did she end up learning this technique? Lin Yun descended the steps, her gaze slowly fell upon Su Yi, and the surrounding air seemed to freeze. She had murderous intent towards Su Yi. Su Yi could clearly sense the killing intent emanating from Lin Yun. Su Yi. I'm sorry, Lin Yun said, then wielded a fruit knife from her hand. The full force of a Yuan Ying expert strike, determined to kill Su Yi. Su Yi smiled faintly, and simply tilted his head slightly to the right, causing the fruit knife to embed into the wall behind him. Xiao Yun, what are you doing? Yi Xuan shouted, not understanding why Lin Yun suddenly attacked Su Yi. Lin Yun's eyes softened, but gritting her teeth, she said word by word, kill him. To achieve the Tao, for those who practice the bond-breaking technique, they must first sever all their closest ties. Killing Su Yi, Su Yi asked with a smile, Am I that important to you? Lin Yun fell silent, then appeared to meters in front of Su Yi, striking at his heart with a palm. If Su Yi were just an ordinary Che cultivation practitioner, this strike would surely sever his heart's vein. Unfortunately for Lin Yun, her full force palm strike hit Su Yi squarely without even a breeze stirred up. Su Yi chuckled, if killing me is the way for you to achieve the Tao, then you will never achieve it in this lifetime. Lin Yun's eyes were filled with disbelief. How was this possible? Su Yi was just a Czech cultivation practitioner. Her full force palm strike, which could definitely kill a fully grown elephant, didn't even make Su Yi budge. Su Yi continued with his smile. Let me remind you, before you kill me, killing Ding Miao Miao is also meaningless. It's just a bond-breaking technique, a rubbish martial art. Zi Hai Shui himself didn't even practice it. There would come a day, and Lin Yun would realize this. What kind of person are you? Lin Yun inherited the legacy of the Blackwater Zhuangming Great Emperor, and her cultivation had already reached the peak of the Yuanying stage. Logically, she could be considered invincible in the current world. However, her full-powered strike couldn't even shake Su Yi. What level has Su Yi's cultivation reached now? I am Su Yi, also known as Liu Xiu. Su Yi straightforwardly admitted without concealing, but you are not Yin Lihua. Ling Yun withdrew her palm, gazing at Su Yi, her eyes constantly changing, the complex mix of memories making her mind a mess. I, I am Guo Shantong. Ling Yun furrowed her brows deeply, sinking into her memories. Su Yi responded, You are Lin Yun. Guo Shantong died over a thousand years ago. It is already the 21st century now. Lin Yun felt a moment of confusion, staring fixedly at Su Yi with an incredibly complicated expression. You are Liu Xiu. Yes. Do you also have memories of reincarnation? No. I am just Liu Xiu. I have never died, Su Yi said plainly. Deal with old Lin's affairs properly. Lin Yun couldn't comprehend, hesitantly asking, So, you have been alive for over 2,000 years. From the Eastern Han Dynasty period until now, isn't that over 2,000 years? Su Yi didn't answer but said, All that doesn't matter. The events of the Eastern Han period had long passed. Su Yi had held to many identities in the past. If he lingered in the past, wouldn't his mind be even more chaotic? Sleeping at intervals, cutting off the past, 
and continuing with a new identity for a new life. Did grandfather commit suicide? Lin Yun took a deep breath, asking, Do you know why? I don't know, Su Yi said. If you need help with your grandfather's affairs, you can speak about it. No need. Lin Yun paused, saying, Thank you for your help to my grandfather and me before. In the future, we don't need to have any more dealings. Okay. Su Yi asked, You won't harm Ding Miao Miao, will you? On the side. Yi Shaxuan was already dumbfounded. This was too complicated. Her master was Liu Zhu, the same Liu Zhu known as Emperor Guanwu of the Eastern Han Dynasty, the Liu Zhu later known as the Son of the Dimension. Furthermore, why did Lin Yun want to kill Su Yi? And why did Su Yi ask her if she would harm Ding Miao Miao? Yi Shaxuan was completely confused early in the morning. Lin Yun fell into silence for a moment, saying, Rest assured, Miao Miao will always be my best friend. I already have enough power now, whether I become stronger or not doesn't matter anymore. At this point, her gaze towards Su Yi became even more complex. Whether she became stronger or not didn't matter anymore. Even if she cultivated the breaking love technique to the extreme, she probably wouldn't be a match for Su Yi. Su Yi turned out to be Liu Zhu. Having Wu Shentan's inheritance, she needed to kill Su Yi in order to prove her doubt, but the problem was she simply couldn't kill him. This undoubtedly trapped her in a dead end. Just as Zhu Yi said, if she couldn't kill him, even if she killed Ding Miao Miao, it would be meaningless. Before long, a stretch limousine appeared in front of Old Lin's yard. Many neighbors came to watch but were unaware that Old Lin had already passed away. Lin Yun carried her grandfather's body onto the car without saying a word, regardless of the neighbors' inquiries. Zisu, what happened to Old Lin? Old Zhang opposite, Su Yi asked with some concern. They had been neighbors for decades and had watched Lin Yun grow up. Lin Yun suddenly taking old Lin away made him uncomfortable. Without hesitation, Su Yi said, he's gone. He didn't want to hide this from old John. People get old and one day, they will leave. Su Yi believed old John was prepared for this in his heart. Among a group of elderly people, someone will always be the first to go. Today before yesterday, old Lin was still talking about going fishing together today. Now it's impossible. We can't fish anymore. And we've lost a playing partner for Mahjong. Although old John could accept this fact, he couldn't help feeling a bit melancholic. Su Yi said, I'll go fishing with you another day. Let's talk about it later. Do you know where old Lin's funeral is being held? I'll take you there tonight. Su Yi also knew that one doesn't ask guests to pay for funeral expenses, and old John didn't have Lin Yan's contact information. The news of old Lin's passing quickly spread on Wadong Street. Neighbors and residents were considering attending old Lin's final journey. In the evening, Su Yi called Lin Yun. Where are you? I thought we agreed not to contact each other anymore. The neighbors want to send your grandfather off. Lin Yun ultimately did not refuse. After all, she also thought that her grandfather would want his old friends to see him off on his last journey. Old Lin's funeral could definitely be considered one of the most grandiose in Qingzhou in recent decades. Lin Yun did not invite anyone, but at her home, luxury cars lined the street, attracting a large portion of Qingzhou's wealthy individuals. Flower wreaths were densely arranged. Old Lin's procession is quite impressive. He spent so much effort raising his granddaughter. Old John couldn't help but smile at the scene, where a thousand people were attending Old Lin's funeral. Z Diane Diane, held by Su Yi, heard her grandfather's words and couldn't help but think of something. Lin Yun's house was spacious, and instead of hosting guests at a hotel, she had a group of chefs come to her home to carry out the funeral rites. Su Yi and his group gave condolence money, paid their respects, and were assigned to a table near the front. It was evident that the attire of the people at nearby tables ranged from moderately wealthy to affluent. Even though they came for the funeral, their conversations mainly revolved around business, and they barely touched the food on the table. Su Yi's table of neighbors seemed out of place compared to the attire of the surrounding people. After finishing her meal, Si Dian Dian went to play in the yard with a group of children. Su Yi followed suit to ensure the child's safety after all, he couldn't let old John chase after Z Diane Diane. It had to be admitted, Lin Yun's current residence was quite nice, with lawns everywhere, and the yard also had many recreational facilities, like swings, a pool, and a barbecue area everything one could think of. Su Yi took Z Diane Diane to the backyard, where the girl wanted to play on the swing. Su Yi gently pushed her. A middle-aged woman dressed in luxurious attire approached them, followed by a boat who seemed to be of similar age to Z Diane Diane and a mortal. Are you Su Yi? 
The middle-aged woman was none other than Lin Yun's mother, Tang Shuhua. She assessed Su Yan Zi Dian Dian, asking, Is this your sister? Su Yi glanced at her and said, Neighbor's kid, you could say she's my sister if you like. She's so adorable. Tang Shuhua smiled and said, Su Yi, I've heard a little about you. Please keep your distance from my daughter in the future, or I can't guarantee the safety of you and your sister. Su Yi could tell that he was being threatened by someone. Su Yi did not respond, and instead asked, Have you been to Wadong Street in the past few days? What if I did go? So what if I didn't? Tang Shuhua sneered, You don't think my daughter would blame me, right? So you did go, right? Su Yi thought it through clearly. Lin Yun naturally wouldn't want her grandfather to die, but this woman in front of him, she must have said something to old Lin. So he didn't want to say much about old Lin's own wishes, but this woman should not have gone looking for old Lin, let alone threaten him here. Tang Shuhua seemed very dissatisfied with Su Yi's attitude. She gave a signal to the young boy beside her, and the boy shouted, I want to play on the swing too. Then he went to grab Su Diandian. Su Yi acted quickly and swiftly holding Su Diandian in his arms and said to the Bo, you can sit then. The Bo was also extraordinary. Theoretically, it should have been easy for him to grab Su Diandian, but Su Yi was quicker to hold her first. To his surprise, Su Yi's words seemed to have endless magical power. The Bo indeed sat on the swing looking silly, drooling, in a dazed state. Though he remained clear in his mind about what he was doing, he couldn't speak a word or control his body. The celestial soul of a human had been imprisoned within this body, and he would forever sit on the swing. If the swing were to be removed, he would continue to search for a swing and sit on it. Su Yi's words had an immediate effect. Dig brother Su Yi. What's wrong with this brother? Su Diandian didn't know what had happened. She only saw the boy sitting on the swing swaying with drool on his mouth. Su Yi held Su Dianian Nan said with a smile, this little bo doesn't listen in class, that's why he looks silly. Look, he's drooling. How dirty. Su Dianian stare and said, I do listen carefully in class. Okay. Dianian. Let's go home. We won't play with silly people. Su Yi turned around to leave, holding Su Dianian. Tang Shuhua still hadn't realized what had happened and asked loudly, what are you doing? The bo on the swing continued to sway with a silly smile on his face. As for the other celestial being, after Su Yi had taken three steps away, suddenly fell to the ground, eyes wide open, staring at the sky. His consciousness was clear, and his vital signs hadn't disappeared, but he could no longer control his body. Tang Shuhua was horrified, she hadn't seen Su Yi do anything, yet these two individuals were incapacitated without any apparent cause. It was a bit absurd. After Su Yi returned, he greeted Lin Yun and then left with Lao Zhang and the others. Lin Yun had learned about what had happened in the courtyard, but dared not do anything to Su Yi. Instead, she warned her mother not to provoke Su Yi anymore. The handle hadn't even been lifted, and two celestial beings were disabled directly. With such power, how could she afford to offend him? The complete destruction of the Maple Village should also be Su Yi's doing. Ling Yun could vaguely guess that Su Yi's strength was not simple. If she had known earlier how powerful Su Yi was, she wouldn't have offended him. Looking at Yi Shiak Suan by Su Yi's side, it was obvious she had gained many benefits. Although holding a good hand, inexplicably, it was played poorly. Lin Yun had realized that her own utilitarian heart was becoming stronger. She was no longer the naive girl she used to be. But she didn't see anything wrong with it. Lin Yun distinctly remembered that she wasn't Yin Le Hua but Guo Tong Shen, the deposed first empress of Eastern Han Dynasty. The more deeply in love she was with Liu Zhu, the deeper her resentment grew. Su Yi turned back, and Yi Shiak Suan picked up the teapot, carefully glanced at Su Yi, and then pitifully said, Master, please have some tea. Hum? Su Yi half lay back in his chair and asked, Aren't you mad at me anymore? Yi Shiak Suan said, I'm not mad at you. Even though I haven't figured it out, you have your reasons for doing things, it's just that everyone's principles are different, right? There's no right or wrong, just different principles. That's a very profound point. So he always acted according to his own likes and dislikes, but Yi Shiak Suan wasn't entirely wrong either. A normal person would likely stop or even call the police if they knew their neighbor was planning to commit suicide. As Su Yi was about to pick up the teacup, Yi Shiak Suan knelt in front of him head down, and said, Last time, Master asked me to pay respects to you, but I haven't done it yet, oh. Finally remembered to pay respects now. Su Yi chuckled, 
Countless people had cried and begged to be his disciple, yet this girl managed to learn a whole set of skills without even bowing once, gained a lot of benefits, and now thought about paying respects to him. Master, please have some tea. Yi Shiak Suan knelt in front of Si Yi, holding the tea water above her head, and waited for Si Yi to take it. Si Yi slowly tucked the tea, sipped it, and then handed the cup back. While they were performing the ceremony, Su Diandian saw them. She staggered into the courtyard, blinked her eyes, and asked, Brother Si Yi, are you playing house? I want to play too. With that, she picked up an empty teacup from the stone table and knelt in front of Si Yi, imitating Yi Shiak Suan's actions, and said, in a childish voice, Master, please have some tea. Seeing Su Diandian holding up the empty cup, Su Yi couldn't help but laugh, Su Diandian, get up. Your pants will get dirty, and your mom will scold you again. No, please take the cup. Su Diandian raised her head, insisting that Su Yi take the cup. Su Yi had to take the cup from her hand, pretending to take a sip, and said, All right, get up now. Su Diandian then got up with a smile, patted her knees, and said to Su Yi, It's my turn. Su Yi couldn't help but ask, Your turn for what? Su Diandian grabbed Su Yi's fingers and said, It's my turn to sit here, and then you imitate me. Hurry up. Su Yi truly didn't know whether he should give this child a beating. Asking him to kneel and serve tea, Su Yi couldn't help but wonder what would happen if he actually knelt to someone, whether that person would achieve enlightenment or drop dead on the spot. Before Su Yi could react, Su Diandian persistently demanded to kneel and serve him tea. Su Yi naturally refused, which led the little girl to accuse Su Yi of being unfair. She left crying and went home to find her mother. In recent days, there was nothing much going on. Su Yi's days were quite leisurely. Every morning, Su Dian Dian would come over to bring him some milk, and then she would stay for a meal at his place. Su Yi wanted to give Zhang Ting money for the so milk, but Zhang Ting refused to take it. He started going to school more often, trying not to skip classes even if some were boring. He finally learned how to order takeout and became proficient with various mobile phone entertainment. In the evenings, he would play computer games with Wang Junlin and others, receiving cheers and expletives when he won. One day, Su Yi was sitting in the Qingzhou bookstore reading a book when Wang Zhu was finally released. He was Wang Daegi's disciple, who had been locked up in a detention center for a month. He had attempted to escape, but was closely monitored by the guards, so he was sent back immediately. Originally supposed to be detained for 15 days, he ended up being locked up for over a month. When he returned to the King Shen bookstore, he found it filled with peculiar cultivators. Wang Zhu couldn't help but ask Su Yi about it. Su Yi casually replied that they were all customers reading books. Wang Zhu was surprised to discover that Su Yi had also cultivated his Chan had reached the later stage of the chair or refinement realm. As they conversed, another cultivator, a later stage chair refinement cultivator, approached Wang Zhu. After a brief exchange, they decided to step outside to discuss further. Su Yi goaded Wang Zhu to take action. However, upon leaving the bookstore, the cultivator suddenly stopped, turned around, and invited Su Yi to join them for the discussion. Witnessing this, John Lulolin pretended not to have seen or heard anything. This left Su Yi in a potentially precarious situation, as even though his strength was unknown, associating with him could prove to be dangerous. A gold core cultivator who knew Su Yi decided to follow them outside, but was discouraged from intervening by John Luolin. With Su Yi and Wang Zhu accompanying the cultivators, the situation escalated as accusations were exchanged, leading to a confrontation in a small forest near the school. Wang Zhu defended Su Yi and challenged the other cultivators, expressing his loyalty to Su Yi. Su Yi was touched by Wang Zhu's unexpected support, resolving to treat him more fairly in the future. Sitush gave Su Yi a glance and chuckled. Su Yi, right? Keep a low profile if your cultivation level is low. I heard you were asking him to deal with me, right? Su Yi nodded. That's right. If my brother wants to deal with you, do you have a problem with that? You are planning to make a fool of me, right? Sitush laughed heartily. Do you know what cultivation level your brother has? Just at the initial stage of Void Pill Realm, he wants to deal with me. Let him try. Wang Zhu was not a fool either. He looked at the two people next to Sitush and said, Kid, are you not too cowardly that you need help to gang up against us? Gang up against you to little trash? Do I need them to act against you? Situj sneer. Remember, I am Situj of Shu province. After saying this, Situj reached behind him and fondled with two silver throwing knives in between his fingers. You too, 
If you can last a minute, I will spare your lives. A minute, come on. I'll send you to your grave. Wan Zhu swore as he saw Sadouj take out the throwing knives and immediately charge towards him, playing with throwing knives. They must be approached closely. Hey. Satouj sneered, tossing out the two throwing knives in his hand without hesitation. One shot straight toward Wan Shu's face, while the other drew an arc and flew toward Su Yi. Damn it. I told you not to move or else. Wan Zhu cursed and managed to dodge the throwing knife feigned at him. He then retreated and drew out a dagger knocking away the throwing knife that was heading towards Su Yi. Just now, Su Yi was also thinking about how to handle this situation with a looky attitude, but he didn't expect Wan Zhu to go all out to protect him. Quite interesting. Very loyal. Let me deal with you first, then I will have a sparring session with this little chair of finer to avoid being accused of bullying you. Sitush finished speaking, and both throwing knives attacked Wan Zhu, completely ignoring Su Yi beside him. Wan Shu's dagger danced quickly, knocking away Situza's throwing knives one after another, sparks flying in the small forest. However, Wan Zhu could only defend himself and had no power to strike back. Darn it, not bad. Wan Zhu cursed. The two throwing knives were controlled by Situza's consciousness, leaving no trace to follow. What a skillful use of mental control. Pretty good. You managed to block both throwing knives. Situza chuckled and drew two more throwing knives. How about playing with another two knives? After speaking, he casually threw out two more throwing knives. Oh crap. Wan Chu's mind exploded. He was already struggling to keep up with the first two knives, and now two more were coming at him. It was like not giving him a chance to survive. The first throwing knives simultaneously attacked Wan Zhu, and flashes of cold light could be seen, leaving several blood traces on Wan Chu's body. So you looked at the throwing knives and couldn't help but think of the immortal slashing throwing knife of land pressure doused in the primordial era. Speaking of throwing knives, perhaps only the immortal slashing throwing knife of land pressure had a similar style. Hum. Although there are no throwing knives, so he had some ways with knife manipulation. Since Situj wanted to play with throwing knives, Wan Zhu would accompany him. Wan Zhu, who was already struggling to defend himself, suddenly recalled a technique in his mind. The first layer of the immortal slashing throwing knife. How did this technique that seemed to integrate with his soul suddenly appear? Could it be that he awakened some inheritance out of the blue? Like a naturally gifted Dao body. You want to play with throwing knives. I'll play with you. Wan Zhu shouted loudly. And one of the throwing knives immediately turned into a cold light and flew back at Situj, delivering a counterattack. Situj quickly drew out two more throwing knives, and the collision in midair erupted in a blaze of fire. However, Situj's to throwing knives were directly shattered into pieces. It's over. Situj could already sense the strong aura of death. Wan Shu's strike was unavoidable. The killing intent was compelling. Su Yi smirked, and the throwing knife shot by Wan Zhu suddenly exploded into countless fragments, grazing Situj's face. Situj let out a scream and shouted, You brat, I will kill you. Kill me? Wan Zhu felt like he was a god right now. The three throwing knives in front of him were supposed to have infused Situza's consciousness, yet he could easily control them. Interesting. This is getting interesting. Wan Zhu growled lowly as the three throwing knives flew towards Situj. Stop. Gu Tantan suddenly rushed in. As a cultivator fighting in the campus, she had learned about the matter and couldn't just stand by. I can't stop now. Wan Zhu's eyes were full of murderous intent. Even Gu Tantan, could she stop him? Gu Tong Tong frowned, and she was already in front of Situj, striking a palm. The three throwing knives turned into scrap iron. As powerful as the immortal slashing throwing knife technique was, Wan Shu's level of cultivation was too weak, and the quality of the throwing knives was a bit lacking. Faced with Gu Tong Tong's strike, he couldn't resist at all. I told you to stop. Did you not hear me? Gu Tong Tong was angry. She shouted and then punched Wan Zhu in the abdomen followed by a knee strike that knocked him to the ground. Then, Gu Tong Tong stepped on Wan Shu's face. Wan Zhu, who had just learned the first level of the immortal slashing throwing knife, was still no match for Gu Tong Tong. Oh crap. It's you again. Wan Zhu was truly impressed. He had been beaten up by this woman when he tried to escape from prison before, and now she appeared again right after his release. I told you to stop, but you didn't. Gu Tong Tong kicked Wan Zhu twice viciously and then turned to Yi. Shaking her head, Su Yi, a fight broke out here, why didn't you inform me? Su Yi was a member of the 13 departments, and cultivators fighting on campus should be reported to the authorities. 
I was called here too. Director Gu. He was about to hit me just now, so he pointed at Situj, whose face was covered in blood. Hu Tong Tong turned her gaze to Situj, her expression emotionless as she said, even people from the 13 departments want to hit you. Situj was completely dumbfounded. The 13 departments, Director Gu, Gu Tong Tong, he had never been to King Yun Mountain before and had not seen Gu Tong Tong, but he had heard of the woman's formidable reputation. He had to endure the full 18 tortures of the Qing dynasty once anything fell into her hands, and it was better to die than live. Just now, Gu Tong Tong's strike had indeed saved his life, but the aura she exuded now was truly terrifying. The two cultivators beside him were also frightened and dared not speak upon hearing Gu Tong Tong's status. No matter what they thought, Gu Tong Tong gradually walked up to Situj, who was covered in blood. Frowning, she said, you look miserable. Go apologize, and it will be settled. Situj also felt quite miserable. Clearly, he came out to show off his skills, displaying his flying knife mastery, but before he could enjoy it fully, he was almost killed by Wang Zhu in retaliation. Eventually, someone came to his rescue, only for him to find out that this savior was even more of a pervert. Now, do you know who I am? Su Yi glanced at Situ Ji, exuding an air of arrogance as if taking advantage of his authority. Brother Su, I'm sorry, I crossed the line. Situ Ji yielded. Situ Ji's family was not considered a prominent cultivator clan. At least in front of a pervert like Gu Tan Tan, he could only yield. It was only then that he realized that Su Yi was actually an employee of Section 13. Bullying someone from Section 13 in front of Gu Tan Tan was akin to seeking death. Well, I forgive you this time, Su Yi waved his hand, saying, Hurry and bandage yourself up. Situ Ji gritted his teeth in frustration. When did a Cha practitioner dare to speak to him in such a manner? But with Gu Tan Tan watching nearby, he didn't dare to act arrogantly. Didn't he see how pitifully Wan Zhu was beaten just now? You actually made it into Section 13. Wan Zhu was genuinely surprised. Having spent a month in custody himself, he was astonished that Su Yi, this weakling, had already become a Cha practitioner and even entered Section 13. Yes, I was recommended by Chief Ku to take on this side role. Chief Ku. Do you think I could enter Section 13 as well? Wan Zhu, an orphan raised by Wan De Gui, had no background or influence. It would be best for him to join Section 13, if possible. Gu Tong Tong pondered for a moment and said, You have to pass an assessment. That's only natural. After all, it is an official unit. It would be too hasty without an assessment, jokingly replied Wan Zhu. If even Su Yi could enter Section 13, passing the assessment should not be too difficult in his view. If Su Yi could pass, then he surely could too, without any worries. After a moment of silence, Bu Tan Tong took out her phone and called Wu Wens, saying, Little Wu, come to the school. Someone wants to undergo an employment assessment. Conduct the assessment for Su Yi. Su Yi was directly recruited by her due to her personal preferences. However, as Wang Zhu had hinted, even though Su Yi was part of Section 13, official procedures had to be followed. Hot. Su Yi didn't go through an assessment? Wang Zhu inquired, isn't he already in Section 13? Gu Tong Tong frowned, saying, I allowed him in, so there's no need for an assessment. Or, so, is the assessment just a formality? Even if one fails, they can join Section 13. Queer it Wang Zhu, it's not. If you can't pass the assessment, we won't accept you. Gu Tong Tong showed no mercy to Wang Zhu, attempting to enter Section 13 without an assessment. Who did he think he was? Then why was Su Yi accepted, feeling insulted? Wang Zhu wondered what made Su Yi better than him. After all, his cultivation was higher. I'm pleased with him. Gu Tong Tong shot him a stern look and instructed Su Yi, come with me. Frustrated by the clear differential treatment, Wang Zhu couldn't understand why Su Yi was accepted into Section 13 without an assessment, despite it being an official unit. It seemed like using a backdoor entrance, which appeared somewhat shady. When Gu Tong Tong indicated she was leaving, Wang Zhu hastily asked, And me, wait here, someone will come for you. Gu Tong Tong didn't even spare him a glance, completely indifferent. If she didn't care for someone, she meant it. Standing there, Wang Zhu felt a cold draft, a sense of deep sadness. Ideally, Gu Tong Tong should have at least provided some contact information, instead of leaving abruptly. Su Yi turned to Wang Zhu and said, Just wait. 
Director, we should be here soon. Wan Zhu nodded, sighing. It was only upon entering the bookstore today that he truly realized the multitude of strong people in this world. Without adequate strength, being looked down upon was normal. That sudden cultivation technique that appeared in his mind. Wan Zhu clenched his fists tightly, silently swearing that he would become stronger. Strong enough to make everyone look up to him strong enough to not be treated like that by Gu Tong Tong. Following Gu Tong Tong for a while, Si Yi asked, Where are we going? Wait. Gu Tong Tong stopped, took out her phone, and sent a file to Su Yi, saying, Take a look for yourself. Opening the file, Su Yi discovered information about Lin Yang, who was repressing various industries in Qingzhou City. During this time, many cultivators had conflicts with Lin Yang, leading to their powers being sealed. The directive was to engage in peaceful discussions with Lin Yun, hoping she would leave a way out for other people. Given that Lin Yun conducted herself within the law and didn't use her cultivation powers during business conflicts, whereas others initiated attacks, attempting direct assassinations against her, leading to their failures. Currently, Lin Yun controlled nearly half of the enterprises in Qingzhou City, potentially monopolizing it. Although Lin Yun had not violated any laws and had a strong legal team supporting her, initiatives had to be taken to prevent her from expanding her influence unchallenged. The best approach was to engage in discussions with her, preferably without causing any animosity, allowing ordinary businessmen to coexist peacefully. As there had never been a case quite like Lin Yun before where a powerful cultivator operated as an ordinary individual engaging in business competition section 13 found itself in a difficult position. Even though Lin Yun hadn't violated any laws applicable to cultivators, she had a robust legal team to support her, sometimes taking advantage of legal loopholes. One thing was clear such a scenario couldn't be allowed to persist. Seeing the contents of the file, Su Yi understood what Gu Tong Tong was thinking. So, you want me to negotiate? Su Yi realized what Gu Tong Tong was implying. Otherwise you want me to talk to her. Gu Tong Tong was adept at fighting, but reasoning and emotional appeals were far from her style. I had a falling out with Lin Yun a few days ago, Su Yi pointed out. Yet, Gu Tong Tong nodded. You didn't get that, did you? I said I'm at odds with her. Then it's up to you to negotiate. Gu Tong Tong remembered Su Yi saying he was good at chatting. You trust even in such words. No wonder you are you. Su Yi found Gu Tong Tong's intelligence challengeable. Glaring at Su Yi, Gu Tong Tong said, If you don't go, I'll have to act. Su Yi chuckled. Even with your skills, it's uncertain you could take on Lin Yan. I meant, I would act against you. Su Yi finally drove their bread van without a license to Xin Yi building. Master, please register. The security guard at the entrance mistook Su Yi and them for delivery people when he saw the van and asked, What are you delivering? Su Yi lowered the window and said, I'm looking for someone. Looking for someone? Sorry, if it's not a company vehicle, you can't park inside. If you're looking for someone, go to the front desk to register. The security guard didn't look down on Su Yi and them, but in this parking lot full of luxury cars, it wouldn't be good to have any scratches or bumps. Moreover, Parking spaces were already tight, so how could cars be allowed in randomly? Gu Tong Tong said, Then park on the roadside, and we'll walk in. Okay. Although Su Yi had read many books and could barely drive this van, he still didn't quite understand many traffic rules. For example, he had run several red lights on the road earlier. Hearing Gu Tong Tong say to park on the roadside, he really just parked the car casually on the roadside. Completely chaotic parking and stopping. Su Yi and then entered the lobby of Xin Yi building on the first floor and found many people sitting there, many of whom were familiar faces. Su Yi, why are you here? Bai Jia by Miao Miao was the first to see Su Yi. Walking up to greet him, then seeing Gu Tong Tong next to Su Yi, she smiled and asked, Is she your girlfriend? I'm the leader, Gu Tong Tong. Su Yi introduced Gu Tong Tong to Bai Miao Miao. Bai Miao Miao smiled meaningfully, but Su Yi was just a freshman, so called leader. Isn't it just a girlfriend? Hello. I'm Bai Miao Miao, Su Yi's friend. Bai Miao Miao extended her hand to Gu Tong Tong. Gu Tong Tong shook hands with Bai Miao Miao symbolically and then said to Su Yi, Let's go upstairs. Bai Miao Miao was almost ignored. How do we go upstairs? Su Yi asked. Gu Tong Tong naturally said, You should let Lin Yun come down to pick us up. I told you, I had a falling out with her. Bai Miao Miao, listening next to them, was puzzled. But she also realized one thing, 
Are you here to find Lin Yun? Yes. So Yi also saw Yu Hui An on the first floor. It seemed they were all here to see Lin Yun. It was unexpected that within such a short time, Lin Yun seemed to have become the big shot everyone wanted to see. The Bai family and the Yu family were supposed to be the wealthy families in Qingzhou City. Yu Huian and Bai Miao Miao wanted to see her. They could only line up downstairs. I've been here twice already and still haven't seen anyone. Bai Miao Miao chuckled. This Miss Lin is getting more and more superior now. It's not easy to see her. Ku Tong Tong seemed to ignore what they were saying and said to Su Yi, Let's go straight up. So Yi probably knew what this woman wanted, and could only say, you go ahead. By Miao Miao looked bewildered. What did it mean to go straight up? Charge in. Gu Tan Tan didn't waste any more words and walked directly towards the elevator. There were electronic access controls at the elevator entrance, and a few tough bodyguards were guarding, but Gu Tan Tan directly stepped over the access control. Two security guards hurried forward to stop her. Miss, please register at the front desk. Gu Tong Tong moved quickly, swiftly knocking down one security guard and then punching the other security guard in the abdomen. Someone is charging in. The nearby security guards had already begun to notify their colleagues via the intercom. Charging into Xinyi building was simply asking for trouble in Qingzhou, and this young woman in front of them wanted to charge straight in. Wasn't it wishful thinking? Su Yi smiled at Bai Miao Miao and then also crossed over the access control. There were a total of eight security guards on the first floor. They were all truly skilled fighters, but not a single person could withstand a move from Gu Tong Tong. In just 10 seconds, Gu Tong Tong had obtained an employee car and led Su Yi into the elevator. The whole process was rough and aggressive. You've already resorted to violence. Do you want me to negotiate with them? Su Yi didn't know what to say. Gu Tong Tong's aggressive attitude was quite impressive. Su Yi also disliked waiting downstairs to be summoned by others. I only know that negotiations must also be firm. Gu Tong Tong said, if negotiation fails, you can only use fists. Su Yi chuckled. What did she mean by using fists and negotiations fail? Just swallow the first half of that sentence and you'll only know how to use fists, right? When they stepped out of the elevator, Gu Tan Tan swiftly knocked down a group of security guards as if taking the enemy by surprise, even knocking down a powerful human immortal. They finally saw Lin Yun. Lin Yun was dressed very simply. She looked casually at Su Yi and them, saying, Come with me. Gu Tan Tan said to Su Yi, You talk first. Su Yi understood her meaning, which was just now that sentence, If negotiation fails, only fists are left. However, Lin Yun's cultivation truly had advanced by leaps and bounds. In such a short time, she had completely absorbed that drop of Su Yi's essence and blood. Although her cultivation was still in the late Yuan Ying stage, her aura had undergone a tremendous qualitative change. Su Yi could even call her the number one Yuan Ying throughout the ages. Gu Tong Tong was strong, but she might not be Lin Yun's opponent anymore. Su Yi and them followed Lin Yun to her office. Lin Yun slowly sat in her chair and asked, do you have something to find me for? Su Yi straightforwardly sent the file that Gu Tan Tan gave him to Lin Yun via WeChat. Take a look. Lin Yun opened the file and looked at it for three seconds, then threw her phone on the table and said, Your analysis of the 13 places is very accurate. My first step is to become the richest person in Qingzhou City. Then expand from Qingzhou City to the entire country and even the world. I abide by domestic laws and do not actively use the power of immortal cultivators, but I have over a hundred human immortals by my side. What they do abroad, your 13 locations can't control. Lin Yun laughed, I let them make money abroad. Bring it back to the country for construction. The country should support that, right? Lin Yun didn't seem to understand Lin Yun's intentions, but Su Yi understood. The Tang family had previously sold off all of the national assets. With such a huge amount of funds, Lin Yun could manage the business of a city. Even the Bai family and the Yu family couldn't compete with her. The most ruthless part was that she let her human immortals make money abroad. Security in foreign countries is not as good as in China, and those human immortals don't know how to do business. They might as well be robbing money. The money they seize won't be meager. With this funding to support her, which domestic businessman could compete with Lin Yun? Many wealthy businessmen in China have connections with large foreign companies. Lin Yun could completely use absolute force to control those wealthy businessmen abroad. She truly had not used the power of immortal cultivators in Huaxia. 
but the power of the 13 places had yet to reach outside the country. If I have violated the law, please use the law to punish me. Lin Yun sat upright there, staring at Su Yi, and said, You all rushed in like this, and even injured so many of my employees. Don't you plan to give an explanation? Need an explanation? Gu Tong Tong said, Fight, winner takes all. This is the rule of the cultivation world, not fighting. Lin Yun didn't even lift her eyelids and said, If you want to kill me, you can attack directly. I will not dodge, but I can guarantee that if I die, the global economy will collapse. If you don't believe me, you can try it. Su Yi started to admire Lin Yun a bit. If she had just relied on the force of the cultivators to act arbitrarily, there would always be someone to restrain her. But by doing this, even the people of the 13 departments had to consider the consequences of touching her. Over a hundred mortal immortals walked out of China. If they wanted to act against foreign businessmen or leaders, the people of the 13 departments were powerless. If Lin Yun died at the hands of Gu Tan Tan, those mortal immortals would be unchecked and do as they pleased. If they caused chaos, leading to a global economic collapse, it was not impossible. Gu Tan Tan did not expect Lin Yun to refuse so directly, and even use the global economy to threaten her. Before she could say another word, her phone rang. Lao Yan, what's wrong? Come back. Let Su Yi talk to her. Lao Yan was really having a headache now. Lin Yun's appearance posed a threat and he felt somewhat helpless. However, their technical staff from the 13 departments had made a shocking discovery by studying the replica artifacts given by Su Yi. Let Su Yi talk to her alone. Ku Tong Tong glanced at Su Yi sneakily when she said this, feeling a bit worried. What if Lin Yun targeted Su Yi? Yes. You go downstairs first. Let Su Yi talk to Lin Yun. Lao Yan became more and more certain that if there had to be a solution to the current situation, it would probably have to be entrusted to Su Yi. After hanging up the phone, Gu Tan Tan said, I'll go down first, you talk to her. Before leaving the office, she said to Lin Yun, If anything happens to him, I will really kill you. Lin Yun smiled and did not say a word. After Gu Tan Tan left the office, Lin Yun slowly got up. She walked step by step to Su Yi's side, reached out her tender hand, hesitated for a moment, and said to Su Yi, I've become stronger again. Do you think I can kill you now? Su Yi smiled. Why don't you try and find out? Forget it. No need to try. Lin Yun smiled lightly. I'm curious. How do you want to talk to me? It's simple. Su Yi said. Just kill all those mortal immortals under your command. Lin Yun's body trembled suddenly, tightly staring at Su Yi, then pretended to laugh lightly. Even if you are stronger, there should be a limit. Over a hundred mortal immortals scattered around the world. It's already good if you can find them. Do you really want to kill them all? This joke isn't funny at all. Su Yi's smile gradually faded, and he said coldly, Where did you see that I was joking with you? Lin Yun suddenly felt a horrifying pressure from Su Yi, which she felt was not appropriate. I like the stable life now. You can do what you want, but it's best to know when to stop. Su Yi never imagined he would come to this point with Lin Yun. He still remembered the first time he saw Lin Yun. At that time, Lin Yun had come to the bar for an interview, and he mistakenly thought of her as the reincarnation of Yang Xiao. He went up to chat, and later he even considered how to pursue her. But then he finally realized that even if Lin Yun was indeed the reincarnation of Yang Xia, he did not need to overly value her. After reincarnation, she was already a different person. After so many times of reincarnation, he always hoped to cut off the past. But had he really succeeded each time? He was not a sentimental person, nor could he be as relentless as the heavens. You dot 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 won't remember our past as husband and wife. Lin Yun's eyes softened and full of deep affection as she looked at Su Yi. No. Su Yi reiterated, you are Lin Yun, not Guo Shantong. Lin Yun gritted her teeth. She didn't know whether to blame Su Yi for being heartless, having hurt her in her past life and treating her like this in this life. Past is past. Let bygones be bygones, Su Yi said before he turned and left. As he opened the door, he said calmly, remember my words, it's best not to force me to act. Over a hundred mortal immortals scattered around the world. If Su Yi wanted to kill them, there were many ways, even a single thought was enough. However, these mortal immortals were all disciples of Xiao Hui Shui. Just recently, he had a chat with Xiao Hui Shui. It seemed inappropriate to wipe out all of his disciples just like that. After Su Yi went downstairs, Bai Miao Miao and Yu Hui An were still waiting on the first floor. 
by Meow Meow hurriedly approached Si Yi when she saw him getting out of the elevator and asked in a low voice, somewhat gossipy, Si Yi, you're something. Could it be that Lin Yum is your ex-girlfriend? Huh, what do you mean? Si Yi had no idea why by Meow Meow would say that. Strictly speaking, Lin Yun was his ex-wife in her past life. Current one looking for the former one. By Meow Meow teased, you're doing well. Surrounded by beautiful women constantly. If you weren't a bit too young, sister would have been ready to marry you for real. Si Yi chuckled. I remember I already turned you down once, right? From their first meeting, by Meow Meow had directly proposed to Su Yi, and he had just as directly refused, showing no face. By Meow Meow cast him an irritated look, you really know how to chat. Yes, that's what they all say, Su Yi said. Next time if there's a dinner party, you can call me. The old rule, 1100 per person. Still remember that. In a few days, I have a friend's wedding. Will you accompany me? Since I don't have any company and don't want those fools bothering me, you're actually a good shield. By Meow Meow giggled. At some point, she found conversation with Su Yi quite interesting. At least Su Yi didn't stare at her chest like other men, and he didn't nauseatingly flatter her. Women like her were surrounded by bootlickers. Su Yi was different when compared to them. Sure, give me a call when the time comes. I have to go now. The leader is waiting outside. Su Yi didn't want to waste any more time. Not far away, Yu Huian was sneaking glances at him from time to time. As Su Yi walked out of the first floor door, he smiled briefly at Yu Huian and left. The two didn't even exchange a proper greeting. Su Yi returned to the place where he had parked earlier, only to see Gu Tan Tan standing there looking foolish. The car was gone. The two locked eyes, big eyes staring at small eyes. Su Yi asked, Where's the car? Gu Tan Tan stared and said, That uncle at the gate said it was towed by the traffic police. What should we do now? It's okay, I told Ziwu to go get it. Su Yi was truly helpless. At this moment, he felt like they both were like fools. Gu Tan Tan said, Now come with me to find Ziwu and you also have to pass the assessment. Su Yi couldn't help but ask, What if I can't pass the assessment? If you can't pass, then you can try again next time. Gu Tan Tan continued, But the better your assessment results, the higher your salary will be. If you pass, I'll apply for a raise for you. Do you think I really care about that bit of salary? Su Yi chuckled disdainfully, thinking to himself that he might as well pass the assessment since earning a bit more for doing the job is something. Working for a raise, who wouldn't like that? If you don't work for a raise, what else would drive you? Should he pull Gu Tong Tong down from her position as department head and take her place instead? You call a Didi. Gu Tong Tong glanced at Su Yi. Su Yi looked at her in confusion. Call a Didi. Gu Tong Tong frowned. You don't know how to call a Didi. It's using your phone to hail a ride. Su Yi squinted. You know how. No. And my phone is dead. Gu Tong Tong tossed her head arrogantly, saying, Let's walk there. All right. Su Yi confirmed. They really were both fools. How did your conversation with Lin Yun go? Lin Yun finally remembered the important matter. Su Yi said, It went well. Oh. Gu Tong Tong's tone was flat, showing no surprise. And then she changed the subject, we're now heading to the new base, passing through a food street. My phone is dead, hum? Su Yi didn't understand her meaning. Gu Tong Tong didn't explain Nan just late, Su Yi on ahead, until they arrived at a food street, surrounded by vendors selling various foods. Gu Tong Tong approached the XJ Lan skewer stall and spoke to the owner in dialect. 20 skewers. The owner quickly grilled them and handed them to Gu Tong Tong, who then looked at Su Yi. At that moment, Su Yi understood. Whether or not Gu Tan Tan could call a Didi was insignificant. Her phone was dead, she had no money to pay, and not taking a ride would conveniently lead them to this food street. He even suspected that Gu Tan Tan deliberately let him park the car on the roadside to get it towed, so they could enjoy the food street during work hours. But upon careful thought, this fool probably didn't have such deep thoughts. Along the way, Su Yi spent 188 yuan. He only had a milk tea and to lamb skewers while being as busy as a servant girl with the checkout. Surprisingly, the new base of Section 13 was located 3 kilometers from the Shinri building in a gaming club named IG. Gu Tong Tong arrived just in time for her food to be finished, not leaving a single thing. She even wiped her mouth clean, walking into the place with her hands behind her back in a somewhat leader-like manner, though it was unclear who she learned it from. Su Yi slowly followed behind Nan upon entering the base, he saw a group of youngsters playing games on computers. Gu Tong Tong led Su Yi into an office, 
then turned the mechanism, revealing a staircase leading down. So you followed Gu Tong Tong down the stairs. The underground space was wide, with laser lights illuminating it like daylight. The walls and floor were all metallic and the base unexpectedly housed over a hundred cultivators. From afar, Su Yi saw Wang Zhu and Wu Wen's. At that moment, Wang Zhu was ardently punching a metal wall. Doom. The heavy sound of his punches didn't sound like hitting a metal wall. 2,600 kilograms, it's good. Wu Wen's held an iPad. Looking at the data, then he noticed Gu Tan Tan and Su Yi. Waving at them, Sis, is Su Yi also going to be assessed? Gu Tan Tan nodded, telling Su Yi, stand in front of that wall and give it all you got with a punch. Giving it all with one punch. Su Yi was truly afraid that his punch would level the entire city. How much is considered passing the assessment? Wu Wen said, you're currently at the late chair refinement stage, passing at 1,000 kilograms. Come on, give it a try. 1,000 kilograms. So you wasn't very familiar with this unit of measurement. How could he punch to reach around 1,000 kilograms? So you stood in front of the wall, trying to control his strength. Luckily, he had sparred with cultivators recently and could vaguely keep his strength within the appropriate chair refinement range. Doom. So you threw a punch. 520 kilograms. Not bad. Wu Wen's looked at the data on the iPad, nodding slightly. But the next moment, he was dumbfounded. This iPad was specifically designed to test a cultivator's strength, showing the power and what kind of creature that strike could kill. There were nine levels, ranging from some beasts to the late Yuan infant stage. Su so Yi's punch displayed a power of only 520 kilograms, but it could kill a late Yuan infant stage expert. What kind of absurdity was this? A 520 kilograms punch was barely a tickle to a Yuan infant level expert. What's wrong? Su so Yi sensed that Wu Wenzi's expression was off. Maybe his strength was too much. Wait, let me restart the system. Wu Wen seriously doubted the system. Why would it test a technique's ability to kill a practitioner of a certain realm? After restarting, he told Su Yi, Give it another shot. Su Yi took a deep breath, acting like he was putting all his strength into the punch, then struck the wall again. 306. Wu Wen furrowed his brows, then his eyes nearly popped out. What was this showing again? It could kill a golden core expert. What a faulty system. What's happening? Gu Tong Tong, noticing Wu Wenzi's odd reaction, took the iPad, glanced at it, and said to Su Yi, Try again. Wang Zhu, standing by, was somewhat bewildered. With Su Yi's strength, why try again? Trying twice was already enough. Trying a third time. Su Yi narrowed his eyes and saw the contents on the iPad with his spiritual sense. He suddenly realized an issue. If he overthought, he would unconsciously trigger the Dao will win striking. This kind of impact couldn't be calculated solely by force. He must restrain himself. He hadn't expected technology to have advanced to this extent. So Yi prepared himself again, forcibly suppressing the will of the great Dao, and punched the wall. 1080. Wu Wen's looked at the data on the IPAD. This time, the power was obviously much greater than before, but the system only showed the ability to kill a Tibetan Mastiff indicating standard peak cultivation level. Gu Tan Tan didn't understand the system very well, so after confirming everything was normal, she tossed the iPad to Wu Wen's. It seems like there really is a problem with the system. Wu Wen's quickly realized that no matter what system it was, problems could occur. The bizarre situation just now clearly indicated a system issue. Let's go, I'll take you to test your spiritual power. Wu Wen swiped the iPad a few times, saving Su Yi's recent data. Spiritual power. Su Yi was a bit puzzled. Could such an intangible thing be tested as well? Yes, our department's Dr. Lee has recently developed a testing device that can accurately measure the spiritual power intensity of cultivators. Wu Wen smiled. This system, which tests strength and killing power, was also developed by Dr. Lee's team. Oh, really? That's impressive. Su Yi genuinely admired. Testing strength, he could understand. But testing killing power and spiritual power seemed a bit excessive. He wondered what method would be used for this so-called spiritual power test. So he could hide his true strength, but how could he hide his spiritual power? Wu Wen's led them into another room. This room looked more like a scene from a sci-fi movie, with all sorts of strange gadgets, including some metal armor and various modern weapons. So he walked up to a piece of black metal armor, feeling its cold metallic surface. This is the 089th combat armor developed by Dr. Lee's team. Theoretically, when a Che practitioner puts it on, 
they can fight a Golden Kerr expert solo, facing two different realms in combat, Wu Wenz explained. Why do you say theoretically? Su Yi asked. Regarding defense, the 089 armor can basically ignore the attacks of Golden Kerr experts, but after a check cultivator wears it, they might not keep up in terms of speed, and Golden Kerr experts can generally fly and escape. While the armor positions them in an invincible status, it could be challenged if the Golden Kerr expert wants to flee. Wu Wen's elaborated, as he was explaining, a middle-aged man with a nearly bald head walked over, somewhat angrily saying, what do you mean by challenging? Just wear this 089 armor, and I can find any kid with first-year spiritual power in the base to kill a Golden Kerr cultivator easily. This left Wu Wen's momentarily speechless, standing there awkwardly. The middle-aged man glanced at Su Yi and said, Young man, would you like to give it a try? Wearing this armor, you can have a good fight with a Golden Kerr expert. Su Yi raised an eyebrow, finding it quite interesting. Seeing Su Yi's interest, the middle-aged man continued, Let me tell you, aside from its incredible defensive abilities, I've equipped this armor with the latest Allo Combat Blade, infrared heat imaging positioning missiles, and a high-energy sniper rifle combined with target analysis systems, even if you're not good with guns, you can still snipe at Golden Core cultivators. Is it very complicated to operate? So you found it really interesting. From the initial reverence for the gods, to seeking immortality, to the current reverence, without fear, it has been a difficult process for humanity. Nowadays, there may not be many immortals, but there are still cultivators far more powerful than normal people. Even so, these powerless old scholars are still thinking about how to resist them. They are tough people. Operating it is even simpler. As long as you wear the armor, you can fully control it with spiritual power. By the way, young man, have you tested your spiritual power yet? The middle-aged man became increasingly excited, eagerly looking at Su Yi. Unable to contain himself any longer, Wu Wenz intervened, Dr. Li, please, the 089 armor was just successfully developed. In other aspects, it's fine, but controlling it with spiritual power to fight against others could easily lead to accidents unless we find someone with exceptional spiritual power. Dr. Lee responded sternly, We've solved this issue yesterday. Now, someone with first-year spiritual power can easily control it. Woo. Please arrange for a test later. All right, Dr. Lee. Just wait a bit. First, let them test their spiritual power, and then I'll arrange for a trial. Wu Wen's, faced with the conservative old scholar, was somewhat helpless. Dr. Li was indeed talented. Many of the high-tech equipment that the department were designed by him, tailored for cultivators. However, it could be said that once these weapons were revealed to the world, they would inevitably cause international discussions. These weapons were too extreme, but they also had many downsides. Dr. Li nodded and said to Wu Wen's, You take them in, I'll show them the data. Once Dr. Li left, Wu Wen's turn to Su Yan Wan Zhu, saying, Indeed, the defensive power of this combat armor is amazing. But if one goes out on a mission in it, the impact would be too significant. Moreover, the weapons on it are too destructive, risking harm to the innocent. Our department's goal is to resolve disputes between cultivators as peacefully as possible. With Gu Tantan's monstrous abilities, most situations could be resolved relatively peacefully. From Wu Wenzi's words, it was clear that the 089 armor was indeed strong but likely targeting cultivators below the Golden Core realm. There weren't many Golden Core cultivators nowadays, and even if there were, Gu Tantan could probably deal with them discreetly, much more effectively than donning such a conspicuous suit and engaging in combat. Listening to Dr. Lee, it was easy to infer that the combat armor was designed for slaughter, leaving no room for retreat once it was on, making it unusable in the current circumstances. Unless, putting it on could directly take down experts in the nascent soul realm, resulting in absolute dominance in terms of martial power. The armor has been tested many times before. Apart from spiritual power control, there are no major issues. Even a virtual core cultivator can only control it for 10 minutes in battle. For an average Shep practitioner, one minute is already good enough. Wu Wen Sai, I hope Dr. Li's research this time will bring a breakthrough. Otherwise, we'll keep messing around with this armor day by day. So Yi finally saw the so-called instrument to use to test mental strength. It looked very simple. Just two metal wires connecting to a metal box, which was then connected to several metal wires leading to the next room. There was a transparent glass panel separating the two rooms, 
with Dr. Lee sitting on the other side tinkering with a large computer. How do we test it? Wan Zhu was also visiting a place like this for the first time and had never experienced testing before. You guys lie down on the bed, and then I'll connect this testing instrument to your temples. You just need to close your eyes, and you will enter a VR game scene where you will see Dr. Lee, who will launch a stronger attack on you every minute. The longer you can endure, the stronger your mental strength will be, Wu Wen's explained. Dr. Lee, is he also a cultivator? Wan Zhu asked. What is his level? He is not a cultivator, but he developed this testing instrument. Inside are virtual characters that will launch mental attacks on you. The strongest level can reach the Yuanying stage of testing. As for the principle, I am not very clear, Wu Wen said. Remember, during the test, if you find that you cannot hold on, don't force yourself. This is just a test. If you open your eyes, I will turn off the instrument, or you can unplug the wires from your temples. So you seem to have understood. The Dr. Lee simulated mental attacks, and the longer one can endure under different levels of mental attacks, the stronger the mental power will be. It seems simple. As long as they found out how long an average cultivator could endure. So he could just open his eyes at the right time. I'll go first, Wan Zhu said without much questioning, lying down in front of the instrument. Wu Wen's attached the two metal wires to Wan Xu's temples and signaled to Dr. Li on the other side of the glass wall before pressing a green button. Su Yi whispered, Chief Wu, how long do you think I can last? About five minutes, Wu Wen said. A peak Czech cultivation practitioner can usually withstand up to the fifth attack. You don't have to overstrain yourself. If you feel you can't go on, you can open your eyes or unplug the wires from your temples. Okay. Su Yi murmured. Since Wu Wen said so, he would just open his eyes after five minutes. The most important thing now was to observe Wan Xu's performance. Five minutes passed quickly and Wan Zhu showed no signs of movement throughout. But in the sixth minute, Su Yi noticed a slight frown on Wan Xu's forehead. By the seventh minute, Wan Xu's brow was tightly furrowed, and his fist clenched. At the eighth minute, his face turned pale, his fists tightened, and his knuckles whitened. Wu Wen's whispered, it should be coming soon. By the ninth minute, Wan Xu's forehead started to sweat, and his body began to tremble. Wu Wen's decisively pressed the red button to end the test. Wan Zhu slowly opened his eyes, sat up, and asked puzzled, Why did it stop? It's almost over. This is just a test. If we continue, it could cause permanent mental trauma. Wu Wen smiled and said, You held on for 9 minutes, which is very good. The tenth time would be at the golden core level. You are still at the early virtual pill stage, and your mental power is already very strong. I think I can hold on for the tenth time. Wan Zhu took a deep breath and said that such attacks, as long as they are appropriate, can indeed strengthen mental power. Wu Wen struggled. Ordinary cultivators at the early virtual pill stage can only last six or seven minutes. You have done really well. Each attack's intensity increases exponentially, so there is potential for the future, brother. Fair enough. Wan Zhu responded to Wu Wen's praise with a satisfied smile, then turned to Su Yi. Su Yi. It's your turn to try. Su Yi nodded and lay down. Wu Wen's attached the metal wires to Su Yi's temples and pressed the green button. Doom. The massive computer in the next room exploded, making a tremendous noise and sparking everywhere. Dr. Lee and the personnel in the base were busy, quickly grabbing fire extinguishers to put out the fire on the instrument. Wu Wen's was a bit at a loss. Today was definitely not a good day. The instrument used to test mental strength had exploded. He certainly did not think everything was because of Su Yi. Hearing the explosion around him, Su Yi could only open his eyes directly. Sure enough, something had gone wrong. Su Yi's mental strength was terrifyingly strong, something that Dr. Li had not accounted for when developing the instrument. What happened? Su Yi pretended not to know what had happened. The machine exploded. Wu Wen's laughed. Your luck is really bad. It seems we'll have to wait until the next time the machine is repaired to test again. Is it? I thought my mental strength was too strong and caused the machine to explode. Ha ha ha. What are you saying? Wu Wen's laughed. Since Dr. Li developed this instrument, no one has been able to push the values of the machine to the limit. Even a powerhouse like Gu Tong Tong at most reached the second tier. According to Dr. Li, there shouldn't be anyone in the world who could push the machine to its limits. Are you saying Gu Tong Tong is a freak? So you squinted at Wu Wen's. Where did you get that? You heard wrong. Wu Wen's coughed lightly, changed the subject, and said, 
To be honest, Dr. Lee is really amazing. He has developed many high-tech devices for cultivators. In fact, if that mysterious person hadn't intervened before, we could have suppressed human cultivators as well, but the casualties might have been a bit heavy. So he smiled and asked, how exactly are these mental levels classified? Although he had not undergone testing, so he still intended to learn more about these new things. Well, mental strength is difficult to explain. According to Dr. Lee's calculation method, lasting for 10 minutes already counts as the second tier, and each additional 10 minutes raises the tire, Wu Wen's explained. Cultivators below the Golden Core stage generally only have the first tier of mental strength. Golden Core cultivators can reach the second or third tier, and even high-level union practitioners can usually only reach the sixth tier at most. Gu Tong Tan is truly an exception. She endured for 90 minutes without changing her expression. Later, she simply fell asleep. Dr. Lee told us that Gu Tong Tan's mental strength could be considered the strongest on the surface. Wu Wen's laughed and cried. Actually, Gu Tong Tan's mental strength should be above the ninth tier, but Dr. Lee said that further testing wouldn't yield any results. Forget it. Why am I telling you all this? Is mental power the strongest on the surface of the earth? Su Yi just smiled. Actually, testing can be done without equipment. Come with me. Wu Wens didn't care about saving the equipment in a hurry. He took Su Yi and them to another room. The things in this room were relatively simple. Mostly fitness equipment and some daily necessities. There were also teacups on the table. Sit down first. Wu Wens poured a glass of water for Su Yi and Wan Zhu each. Then, he placed an A for paper on the table and said to Su Yi, Su Yi, you are still at the level of check cultivation. Have you tried using mental power to control physical objects externally? UH, Su Yi didn't know how to answer. A long time ago, when he had nothing to do, he tried to control the planets of a few neighboring star systems, since there were no living beings on them. Changing their trajectories was just like playing around. Sometimes, he would also control some smaller meteorites to create a meteor shower. Try to see if you can make this paper float with your mental power. If you can, you have already reached a first-class standard, at least considered an initiation. So he asked, Generally speaking, can the level of check cultivation control this paper? Wu Wen's nodded, of course. But since you haven't learned it, it might be a bit difficult. Some more talented individuals can already use their thoughts to control small things directly. So he asked again, So if I can control this paper, does that count as passing the assessment? Naturally, it does. Wu Wen struggled, but don't think it's too simple. Many colleagues who were assessed before took half a month or even a month to easily control some small objects. All right. Su Yi nodded. Since he was only at the level of check cultivation, he just needed to show some impressive performance and pass the assessment. So, he stared at the paper on the table, waited for more than a minute, made a very determined look, and finally, the A for paper slowly floated in the air. Wu Wenzi's eyes lit up. Very good. Just in a short time, you can make the paper float. Now, try this coin. After placing a one yuan coin on the table, Su Yi stared at it for a while. The coin moved slightly to the left, then he solemnly said, I can't do it. Wu Wen's nodded, it's okay. With more practice, you should be able to do it later. I have a rough idea of your level now. Wu Wen's looked at Wan Zhu and said, Wan Zhu, it's your turn. Wan Zhu smirked, and the cone on the table suddenly flew up into the air and spun rapidly before landing forcefully, actually embedding three centimeters into the wooden table in front of him. Wow. Wu Wen's couldn't help but gasp. Your control of mental power has already reached this level. When you enter the Golden Core Realm, wouldn't you be able to fly a sword directly? Wu Wen's had learned a lot from Lao Yang recently and was generous with his praises for newbies. Fly a sword? Wan Zhu was even more proud. His gaze shifted and a 20 kilogram dumbbell in the room suddenly floated, flying slowly towards him. I can do it now. Impressive. Wu Wen's praised. With your skills in object manipulation, you've probably been practicing for several years. I just learned today. Wan Zhu modestly smiled, subtly revealing his arrogance. Just learned today. Wu Wen surprisingly played along, looking astonished. So you noticed Wu Wen's expression, which couldn't have been more fake. But in thinking about it, Wu Wen's didn't have much of a choice. Gu Tong Tong was less mature in handling things compared to a child, and Wu Wen's used to be all about official business. If both leaders were like this, 
the pressure on their subordinates would be enormous. Wu Wen's had no choice but to change his way of doing things, striving to become more approachable. Wang Zhu asked, Can I officially join the 13th Division now? Not so fast. Wu Wen said, In terms of abilities, you have fully met the requirements of our unit. But to join our unit, there is an important step. What step? Taking classes. Next, Wu Wen's brought the two of them to a classroom where many people were already seated. Sitting at the lectern was a middle-aged man with glasses. This man didn't appear to be strong, but his charisma was truly impressive, even so he couldn't help but glance at him. When they entered, the middle-aged man was giving a lecture on patriotism. Even Wu Wen's didn't dare to interrupt him, leading Su Yi and them quietly to the last row to sit down. Students from Peking University and Sengkyu University, using the knowledge they studied to help foreigners expand the market, defeat our Chinese companies. Everyone here, I know, you guys are not ordinary people. Any one of you can easily defeat me with just a flick of a finger. But where should your power be used? I'll tell you, you should use it to defend the country. Use it to protect your loved ones, your partners, and those lovely laboring people. So you listen to the professor's lecture. Wu Wen's whispered in their ears, This is Professor Jung Kong from Jejian University. You can call him Brother Kong. Just listen. Hum, how should I put this? The 13th Division is a national security unit that specifically deals with matters that ordinary agencies cannot handle, including but not limited to handling affairs between cultivators. Therefore, the political ideology of the employee certainly needs to be positive and progressive. It's necessary to make these people have a sense of belonging and pride towards the country, willing to contribute to the prosperity and stability of the nation. While this may have some brainwashing connotations, so you thought it was okay. At least humans should have faith. In the past, it was about loyalty and patriotism. Now it's about loving the country and the people. And this really isn't wrong. If it weren't for this, how could society be so stable? Su Yi found Professor Zhang Qiang's lecture interesting. Brother Kong was quite entertaining, his language wasn't refined, even a bit rough, and at times, he'd exclaim something like damn this and that, but listening to his lectures made people inexplicably comfortable. Not bad. Wang Zhu also listened to Zhang Qiang's lecture. Being a native of Huaxia, he naturally had a sense of belonging to the country, so he found it easy to accept Brother Qiang's lecture. Initially resistant, as he listened, he even began to applaud. Interesting. Wang Zhu, with your abilities, you can join our unit for an internship first, but you still have to study this course. There will be a teacher coming to give lectures every three days. Wu Wen's led them out of the classroom and said, it's not all instructor Qiang's classes. Even though you are cultivators, you still need to be familiar with some modern technology. There will also be professors teaching physics, chemistry, literature, and language. Sure. I have no objections, Wang Zhu said. I used to live in the mountains and never had anyone teach me these things. Ha ha. That's right. It's also our 13th division. It might not be easy to invite these professors elsewhere. Wu Wen's chuckled. You can learn a lot from these professors' classes, so pay attention. While Wu Wen's was speaking, Lao Yang arrived with Gu Tongpong leading the way. Chief Yang. Wu Wen's greeted Lao Yang and then introduced. This is our new colleague, Wang Zhu. Hello. Lao Yang shook hands somewhat absentmindedly with Wang Zhu, occasionally casting sideways glances at Su Yi. This is our former chief, Chief Yang. Hello, Chief Yang. My master mentioned you before. Wang Zhu was not a fool. The young chief in front of him was a genuine Yunyang stage expert. Even though he seemed friendly, he was definitely not someone to mess with. Well, young man, study hard. Lao Yang nodded, then said, I need to discuss something with Su Yi, so you all can continue with your work. Wang Zhu was a bit stunned. Did he just mention his master? Normally, should Chief Yang ask who his master is, then they should establish a connection, right? This was not following the usual pattern. Looking for me? Su Yi's face bore a slight smile. Lao Yang must have noticed something, given those subtle glances earlier. Well, would you be worried that I would eliminate you to keep things quiet? Su Yi chuckled. Upon hearing this, Lao Yang trembled and nearly knelt down directly. You're just joking, sir. Lao Yang took a deep breath and decided to come clean. Perhaps this was his chance to cultivate his Tao. After all, he had been stuck at the Yuanying stage for many years. If he couldn't break through, it seemed like there was no direction in his life. Even as a Yuanying cultivator, life was finite, and he felt his time was running out. 
Hence his decision to step down and let others take over. Su Yi said, It seems you really have figured out something impressive. Lao Yang continued, I have studied criminal investigation for decades. Mainly because the counterfeits made by seniors can reveal their true forms under certain instruments. I deduce that those counterfeits must have advanced illusions on them. Since I couldn't see through them, it was obvious that seniors' cultivation was extraordinary. Su Yi asked, Anything else? Lao Yang added, Miss Yi's cultivation has advanced by leaps and bounds, especially after her contact with you. Also, there were reports that Yuan Wu Yu and Lin Yi appeared together on Wadong Street and purchased a house, which happened to be your residence. But rest assured, this information will never be leaked out. Lao Yang omitted a few crucial details, such as Zia Shan disappearing after meeting Su Yi and the earthbound immortals in Fengjing Town vanishing after the assassination of Yi Shaxuan. Moreover, Su Yi almost effortlessly made Lin Yun compromise, and although she still controlled most of the Qingzhou market, she had ceased her former ruthless ways. Lao Yang wondered if Su Yi's influence on Lin Yun was gained through using temptation. But all signs pointed to Su Yi not being a simple chair-finding cultivator. Hearing that Su Yi had caused the system to malfunction with a punch, leading to the spiritual power testing the equipment exploding, and assembling all these coincidences together, there was no denying the doubts. So he nodded slightly and said, I actually just wanted to experience a bit of normal human life. You don't need to be too nervous, but it's best not to spread information about me. Of course, Lao Yan assured Su Yi, with you around, I feel relieved. All right, if there's nothing else, I'll take my leave, sir. Lao Yan suddenly raised his voice, sounding excited. Yes. Su Yi looked at him. May I ask, sir? What realm are you in exactly? Su Yi calmly responded, I have no realm. No realm? What did that mean? Lao Yang's cheeks quivered, but gathering courage, he asked. Then, the elixir Miss Yi gave to Yuan Haoran, did it come from you? Yes, I gave it to her, Su Yi confirmed. Do you want one? Lao Yang immediately said, not to conceal anything, given my approaching lifespan limit, if you are willing to bestow an elixir upon me, I would be sincerely grateful, that if you don't wish to, that's fine. I only seek your protection for Huaxia. At this point, Lao Yang knelt before Su Yi and knocked his head three times against the ground. Lowering his head to look at Lao Yang, Su Yi said, There is an elixir, but I'll be frank with you. Those whose fates I've altered may face additional calamities. I only recently discovered this. Are you sure you want the elixir? Overjoy. Lao Yang quickly knocked his head three times again, saying, Please bestow the elixir, sir. So he added, as I've clarified, I can grant it to you. Whether you take it or not is entirely up to you. So he was generous with his elixirs, but he couldn't guarantee that giving it to Lao Yang would avoid other potential dangers. Whether it would lead to good or bad outcomes was on him. He had given an elixir to Yuan Haoran because the injuries he suffered were indirectly caused by Su Yi. In that karmic context, any effects on Yuan Haoran would likely not have adverse effects. But Lao Yan's situation was different. Ultimately, it was his responsibility to face any fortunes or misfortunes. So he also didn't dare to give Lao Yan overly powerful elixirs, so he picked a slightly lower grade one from his sleeve to give to him. Lao Yan took the elixir with both hands, looking at the faint golden light emitting from it, couldn't help but gulp hard and asked, Senior, what kind of elixir is this? I don't remember the name but judging from the patterns on it, it should enhance cultivation. I just don't know if you can withstand it. So you really couldn't remember the name of this elixir. Anyway, he made it in his spare time. From the patterns on it, ordinary cultivators who consume it would definitely see a direct surge in their cultivation. As for what realm they would reach, that remains unknown. Also, even if Suyi gave a lower grade elixir, it was definitely rare in the world. After consuming it, if one couldn't handle the effects, it was not impossible to die from explosion. Hearing Su Yi say this, Lao Yang hesitated while holding the elixir. After taking a deep breath, he said, Thank you for the reminder, I will be careful. The elixir was something he had asked for himself, and Su Yi had given it to him. If he really exploded and died after taking it, then no one could be blamed. Su Yi nodded and asked, Is there anything else? Lao Yang carefully put away the elixir and asked again, Senior, was it you who took action in the human immortal incident in Fengjing Town? Yes. There's no need to guess. 
everyone in town is dead. So Yi knew what La Yang was worrying about. Since it had already been discovered by him, there was no need to hide it from him anymore. Lao Yan trembled all over. Although he had guessed this earlier, hearing Su Yi confirm it from his own mouth still shook him. Seeing that he hadn't come back to his senses yet, Su Yi had no choice but to leave the office by himself. Not long after he left, Wang Zhu found him. Su Yi, do you have plans for tonight? Not really. What do you want to do? Su Yi didn't think Wang Zhu, this bow, was honest and well behaved. Most likely, he was scheming something mischievous. Although Wan Zhu seemed a bit foolish, being foolish didn't mean being honest. Wan Zhu smirked and said, I just got back, can you help me invite Zhuan Zhuan out to dinner? I want to treat her. Si Yi chuckled, can't you invite her yourself? The key is, even if I invite her, she might not come. You have a better relationship with her, so if you invite her, she's more likely to come. Wan Zhu had some self-awareness. Although he was a bit silly, he had a grasp of the situation. Su Yi pondered for a moment and said, I recently learned a new term that fits you well. What term? Wan Zhu stared, laughing mischievously. Is it handsome and charismatic, irresistible and gallant? The one you're referring to is Yi Zhu. What you're doing is being a sidekick. Wan Zhu's smile turned even more twisted. Brother, your perspective is too narrow. Oh, Su Yi acted as if he wanted to hear more. Being a sidekick to one person is being a sidekick, but if you're a sidekick to ten women, you can't be called a sidekick anymore. So Yi pondered for a moment and concluded, Playbo. Just call me a Playbo. You help me invite Zhuan Zhuan first. Wan Zhu put his arm around Su Yi's shoulder and said, Don't worry, if it works out, I'll definitely not treat you unfairly. Once I have your back, no one will dare to bully you in the future. Thanks. Su Yi took out his phone and called Yi Shak Suan. Wan Zhu quickly said, Su Yi, tell her you're inviting her to dinner. We'll set up a chance encounter. Su Yi had nothing to do anyway, so he decided to see how capable this guide, who was a sidekick to ten women, really was. Xuan Zhuan, are you free tonight? Yi Shak Suan originally had plans for the evening, but when Su Yi called, she naturally said, I'm free. What's up? This time she was smart asking Su Yi about the situation first. In case it was something like going to fight someone, she didn't want to look silly after spending the whole day doing her makeup. Su Yi said, I'm inviting you out for dinner. What would you like to eat? What about hot pot? Yi Xiaq Suan didn't really care what to eat, as long as it wasn't the beef shop in Yangzhou. Ever since she went to that beef shop and saw Wen Qian Meng, she still had a psychological shadow. Compared to when Qian Meng, she didn't even feel like a woman. That woman's big bear was a complete blow to her. You choose the place. So Yi didn't know much about modern food. So if he had to choose a place, he'd probably just randomly pick one. Yi Xiaq Suan paused and asked, Are you coming alone? Wan Zhu, being a cultivator, could hear the voices over the phone and quickly nodded in agreement. He wanted it to be a chance encounter. If Yi Xiaq Suan found out he was there too, she might not show up, which would be embarrassing. So Yi could only say, Yes, I'm coming alone. All right, let's go to the ultraviolet restaurant. Where should I pick you up? Yi Shiak Suan was very straightforward. She said, At 6 o'clock, I'm at the IG club. How? Are you going to meet a celebrity or play a professional game? Neither. Then let's talk later. After hanging up the phone, Yi Shiak Suan lay back on the bed, turned over, got up and started looking for clothes. She had a lot of clothes in her closet, but since she was having dinner alone with her master, she decided to wear the outfit Su Yi made for her. As she was choosing her outfit, someone knocked on her door. Apart from her father, Yi Jingwo, no one usually knocked on her bedroom door. She placed the clothes on the bed and then opened the bedroom door. Dad, there's a dinner later. I won't be able to make it. I have another appointment. Yi Xiaq Suan didn't even know it herself, but when she said this, there was a girlish smile on her face. Do you have a boyfriend? Yi Jingwo stood at the door, looking at his precious daughter, and asked, When will you bring him home for me to see? Yi Jingwo was an experienced person, and based on Yi Xiaq Suan's demeanor, she looked just like a girl in love. Where? It's my master. Yi Xiaq Suan shot her dad a look, blushing, and said, Dad, what are you thinking? Are you in a hurry to marry off your precious daughter? Upon hearing that it was her master, Yi Jingwo couldn't help but feel a bit heavy in his heart but smiled and said, Dad naturally can't bear to part with you, but you'll have to get married eventually. Have an early relationship, 
preferably with someone three or four years older than you, or five years, is fine. He was already being quite subtle. Even though Tu Suyi, who looked young, Yi Shaq Suan could call him grandpa and it wouldn't be inappropriate. I'm not thinking about that for now. Yi Shaq Suan hugged Yi Jingwo's arm, acting spoiled, and said, Dad, tell Uncle Zhao that I'm going to have dinner with my master at his restaurant tonight. Save me to seats, okay? Sure. Yi Jingwo had no choice. There were some things he probably already saw, but couldn't say it aloud. He could only indulge this precious daughter of his. Ultraviolet restaurant? Where is it? Upon hearing about the ultraviolet restaurant, Wan Zhu was immediately puzzled. So Yi glanced at him and said, Use the navigation. Don't you know how? Ho. How is that possible? Wan Zhu took out his phone, opened the navigation, and fumbled on the phone screen for a while before finally finding the ultraviolet restaurant. All right, I know where it is. You guys go ahead first. I will pretend to be eating there too. Then you can find an excuse to leave. Okay. Su Yi was not worried that Yi Shaq Suan would be taken advantage of by Wang Zhu. With Yi Shaq Suan's current cultivation level, Wang Zhu really wasn't a match for her. The two then wandered around the IG club. Su Yi looked at the players in the club under Hu Wenzhi's guidance. These players all looked very young. They were all playing a game called League of Legends, and according to Wu Wenz, they had even won world championships. They seemed very talented. At 6 o'clock, a commercial Mercedes-Benz stopped at the entrance of the IG club. Yi Shiak Suan called Su Yi and he went out directly. Wang Zhu was still waiting inside the club. Master, do you mind meeting with someone you don't know? Yi Shiak Suan did not drive herself. This car should have been arranged by the hotel. I don't mind. What's the matter? Oh, it's mainly because this restaurant has a rule, which is to only entertain 10 guests at a time. And these guests all dine at one table. No problem. Yi Shiak Suan was dressed in the outfit that Su Yi had made for her. She looked like a fairy on earth. By the way, what are you doing in the IG club? Su Yi said. This is Gu Tong Tong's new base. Gu Tong Tong? Yi Shiak Suan curled her lips and said. Why aren't you eating with her? Su Yi calmly replied. She was walking down Food Street this afternoon and eating along the way. Yi Shiak Suan raised her eyelids, squinted her eyes, and said resentfully. You went shopping with her. Home. Su Yi paused and said. By the way. Wan Zhu is out. He's out when he's out. What does it have to do with me? Yi Shiak Suan was already a little upset now. Su Yi smiled and said. He wants to happen to meet us later. Meet. Yi Shiak Suan's face fell. Puffing up her cheeks she asked. You're not trying to sell me to him. Are you? Su Yi raised his eyebrows. Smiled. And said. Can you be sold? I can't be bothered to talk to you. Yi Shiak Suan rolled her eyes saying, if he wants to meet us at this restaurant, then it depends on whether he's capable of doing so. He will use navigation. Su Yi was confident in his plan. When I'm halfway through eating, I'll find an excuse to leave. You handle things from there. Yi Shiak Suan pouted, her eyes misting up as she stared at Su Yi, saying, Master, do you know, you are really too much. Su Yi hadn't fully comprehended the situation. Looking at Yi Shiak Suan, not sure what to say. Was he being too much? That Wang Zhu kid was indeed clueless and not worthy of his disciple. But hadn't he already told her about it? When Si Yi leaves later, she can simply refuse him. This kind of bootlicker. When Si Yi isn't around, just reject him to leave. Wang Zhu should be most proud of his own cultivation level. When he sees Yi Shiak Suan's cultivation level later, he will likely be ashamed and leave in embarrassment. What Si Yi is doing may be a bit too much for Wang Zhu. But why does Yi Shiak Suan feel that he is being too much? Yi Shiak Suan turned her head away, not looking at Su Yi, blinked away the tears about to fall, clearly not pleased. Su Yi took a deep breath and asked, Why are you crying? I don't want to talk to you. Yi Shiak Suan sneaked a glance at him, then looked away again. Her master was really being too much. She only wanted to have a meal with Su Yi, but he had already arranged to meet Wang Zhu later and run off midway through. Never mind whether Wang Zhu can enter the restaurant, this behavior is completely unacceptable. Angry. Very angry. She needed to be coaxed. Yi Shiak Suan waited for a full 30 seconds, and the music from a certain TV drama's opening credits started playing in the car. She slowly turned her head to look at Su Yi. And this guy was already watching TV shows on his phone. Yi Shiak Suan now wished she could punch her master to death. Su Yi had no intention of coaxing her. When she said she didn't want to talk to him, he just started watching shows, this was just disrespectful. Ten minutes passed, 
So Yi suddenly looked up at Yi Xiaxuan. Yi Xiaxuan quickly turned her head away, not looking at him. Now you want to coax me? Too late. It's too late to coax me now. Xuan Zhuan, my phone is out of service. Can you top up my phone bill? Yi Xiaxuan took a deep breath. At this moment, she was somewhat glad that Su Yi was just her master. If Su Yi was her boyfriend, she would have buried him in a pit already. Oh, right? Su Yi is her master, not her boyfriend. Fine. Yi Xiaxuan had to take out her phone and start topping up his phone bill. The maximum amount per top up on Alipay was 500. 500 per top up. Su Yi received a text message that the top up was successful. But his internet was still not working, he struggled for a while but still couldn't watch the video. He thought he owed a lot of phone bills. Second 500, Su Yi continued to fumble with his phone. Until he topped up 5,000 yuan in a row, Su Yi couldn't help it anymore. He handed the phone to Yi Xiaq Suan. Can you check how much I owe? Didn't you already pay it off? Yi Xiaq Suan checked his balance. There was still over 4,000 left. But she quickly understood that this old man didn't know that after his service was cut off, he needed to use flight mode or restart his phone to regain internet access. At this moment, she seemed to suddenly understand the meaning of the sentence her father said when she went out. It's best to find someone who's three or four years older than you. Five years is fine too. It seems her old father had seen some issues and was subtly hinting at her. Humph, two old fools. At this moment, Yishak Suan's anger subsided. She put Su Yi's phone in airplane mo and returned it to him. Then quietly watched as Yi continued watching his show. Her emotions were complicated. Master. Yi Xiaq Suan suddenly called out to Su Yi. Su Yi looked up at her. If once you can meet us later, can you not leave? Okay. Su Yi nodded, then bowed his head and continued watching the show. Yi Xiaq Suan finally had a slight smile on her face. She had overthought things. She had known Su Yi for a long time. Wasn't he always a grumpy straight man with a permanent frown? Most importantly, Su Yi treated her like a junior, like his disciple. There was no special affection between them as between lovers, but she kept hoping for something more. The Ultraviolet Restaurant is a sensory restaurant in Qingzhou City. Each dish here can be considered a work of art, with over 20 gourmet set menus, each featuring various specialized themes. Information about each dish is displayed on the wall. There are three set menus available, all priced at 4,000 yuan per person. The molecular gastronomy here not only ensures you'll be full but also satisfy. In addition, you can enjoy a visual and auditory feast. What's special is that dining at this restaurant requires booking three months in advance on the official website. However, with Yi Jingwo's connections, such matters are naturally exempt. Does the little princess of the Yi family still need to make a reservation if she wants to eat here? Su Yi and his group went directly into the restaurant. But once you had a bit of a hard time, he managed to find the ultraviolet restaurant with difficulty using navigation, but was stopped at the door by the gatekeeper. Originally thinking of using his skills to sneak into the restaurant, he discovered that there were experts at the Golden Pill Realm in the restaurant. If he hadn't declared himself as one of the 13 employees, he might have been severely beaten up. Lon, are you really going to marry into the Yi family? What will they do if you do? In another commercial Mercedes-Benz car, a man in a suit with a pale face hugged a hot-bodied woman, listening to her complaints. He couldn't help but laugh and said, So what if we marry into the Yi family? Even if it's the little princess of the Yi family, she will still have to call you sister once inside, right? But I don't want other women to share you with me. The woman insisted in the man's arms. The man known as Lon smirked and said, Can you handle me alone? Shouldn't I find a few more sisters to share the burden with you? You are so annoying. The woman giggled repeatedly her eyes sending seductive signals as if she couldn't wait to start a fierce battle in the car. Just wait. I'm only interested in the Yi family's wealth. I heard that the Yi family had some trouble recently. Yi Jingwo was expelled from the family. Now it's Yi Jingshan who holds all the power. And he only has one precious daughter. Long cocked his legs and said, Coincidentally, Yi Jingshan wants your husband to be his son-in-law. Just go along with his wishes. Ha ha ha. So, Am I going to watch you be affectionate with other women later? I don't believe it. I'm going to drain you dry right now. The woman began to act. The driver was about to go crazy. These two were just too much. Did they treat him as invisible? So he finally experienced what a sensory restaurant is all about. For ordinary people, the layout here is absolutely exquisite. When a table of 10 guests is assembled, 
Each dish served is accompanied by strong lighting effects in the room. It makes you feel like every bite you take is a scene from the world, under the sunlight, in the midst of a forest, or like being in a myth. Once upon a time, dining was merely about replenishing energy, but now it has become a unique form of enjoyment. So he also enjoyed this process, as he saw it as an experience of human progress. As for these lighting effects, he found them rather ordinary. If he wanted, he could even make people feel like they were dining in the vast expanse of the stars. Next time when we eat at home, I'll let you experience even better effects. So he could sense that Ji Xiaq Suan's mood didn't seem to be very good. After all, she was his own disciple. How could he not be happy? Okay. Yi Xiaq Suan's personality was actually quite easygoing. After eating a bit here and understanding some things, she was already in a much better mood. Especially after figuring things out, she was no longer upset with Su Yi. She smiled graciously at Su Yi, and even had the urge to feed him, but after giving it some thought, it seemed too intimate, so she let it go. They were eating when a young man in a suit changed seats and sat next to her, politely smiling and asking, Are you Miss Yishak Suan? You are. Yishak Suan carefully looked at the man in front of her, unable to remember where she had seen him before. Do we know each other? Have you forgotten? Ten years ago, I played at your house. The young man smiled. I'm Long Hao. Do you remember now? Long, Long Hao. Oh, what a coincidence. You are dining here too. Actually, Yi Shaq Suan didn't remember who Long Hao was, but since her family used to have frequent visitors, and many children came over. Since he put it that way, she could only pretend to remember and give face. Yes, yes. What a coincidence. I didn't expect to meet Missy here. Long Hao tried hard to hide his evil thoughts. Yi Shaq Suan was truly stunning. Compared to Yi Shaq Suan, all his previous women could only be considered ordinary, not worth mentioning. If he could get a woman like her, even if he had to give up the wealth of the Yi family, it would still be worth it. What a coincidence. Yi Shaq Suan looked around and noticed that Wang Zhu didn't come, which was good. Miss Yi, do you have any plans after we finish eating later? Long Hao noticed Yi Xiaq Suan's distracted mind and had to make small talk with her patiently. Just going back home after eating, Yi Xiaq Suan clearly didn't want to engage with Long Hao too much. Just when she finally had a meal with Su Yi, why was someone else coming to chat with her? How about I drive you home? It's not safe for a young lady to go home alone. Long Hao totally ignored Su Yi's presence. He had observed Su Yi when he was nearby just now. Although Su Yi looked extraordinary, he dressed casually and there were no intimate gestures between him and Yi Xiaq Suan as a couple. Since Yi Jingxian told him that Yi Xiaq Suan was dining here, the implication was quite clear. Yi Jingxian didn't want Yi Xiaq Suan to be with this young man, regardless of whether Yi Xiaq Suan liked him or not. This should be the criterion of the Yi family. For a prestigious family like the Yi family, they naturally wanted to find a son-in-law who fit their status. In other words, this man in front of him was not at the same level as him at all. So Lan Hao became even more unrestrained. No need. I have a car to pick me up. Yi Xiaq Suan refused directly. If Long Hao hadn't suggested driving her, she could have treated it as a chance encounter. But once these words were spoken, Yi Xiaq Suan immediately became alert. Obvious intentions. Long Hao hesitated for a moment, but in the end, couldn't resist saying, Miss Yi, I must confess, our meeting was not accidental this time. Yi Xiaq Suan turned slowly, stared at him and her tone became icy. Are you following me? Miss Yi, please don't misunderstand. It was my father who sent me here. Long Hao tried to maintain a smile, thinking that his smile was quite friendly. Oh, I don't need a bodyguard. You can leave after you finish eating. Yi Xiaq Suan's first thought was that the person in front of her was the bodyguard driver her father had hired. After all, her father didn't know how powerful she had become so she realized she should take the time to show her strength in front of him, so he wouldn't worry unnecessarily. A bodyguard. Long Hao's mouth twitched fiercely. Was his elegant and gentlemanly appearance akin to a bodyguard? Miss Yi, you have misunderstood. I am not the bodyguard your father hired. Long Hao felt depressed. How could the smooth-talking dragon prince like him fail so miserably? Well then, you can leave too. Yi Xiaq Suan was annoyed by his antics. How could someone suddenly appear during what was supposed to be a pleasant meal? And to top it off, he was sent by her father. She decided she would definitely criticize her old man when she got back. He really knew how to ruin the mood. Miss Yi, let me formally introduce myself. I am Long Hao, 
the legitimate son of the Long family in Tianjin. And Wanhang Pharmaceutical is our family's business. Our families have had business dealings in the past, Longhouse said. Seeing that Yi Shek Suan remained unaffected, he smiled and whispered, and, I am a cultivator. A cultivator, enough to make ordinary people look up in admiration. Yi Shek Suan's cultivation had almost broken through to the middle stage of the Golden Core, but she still didn't know how to judge someone else's cultivation level through their aura. She could vaguely see that Lan Hao was a cultivator, but she didn't know his specific level. She stared at Lan Hao in confusion, wondering what level he was at. He seemed quite weak. Miss Yi, you should know that there are cultivators in this world. Lan Hao thought he had finally caught Yi Shiak Suan's attention. With a smug smile, he said, Let me be direct. I like you. Be with me. Yi Shiak Suan's gaze towards Lan Hao no longer showed confusion, but instead, she looked at him as if he were mentally challenged. Lan Hao continued, as long as you're with me, I promise to only love you in the future. You had better see my father for a checkup. Really a good kid. Just brain dead. Yi Shiak Suan finally couldn't hold back. He came in like that, scaring her. Clearly, his mind was not functioning properly. Most likely, he went crazy due to being consumed by cultivation. Don't you believe me? Long Hao didn't get angry but instead smiled and gazed at the cutlery in front of Yi Shiak Suan. The utensil slowly floated, and the knife headed straight towards Su Yi's face. In his mind, he thought, Don't you like this pretty bow? I'll disfigure him now and see if you still like him. Men can only conquer women with immense power. The lighting in the room was strong, and the other diners were immersed in the fine dining and beautiful scenery without noticing what was happening here. Yi Shiak Suan was shocked to see Long Hao actually attacking her master. Her mouth slightly agape, she even forgot to help Su Yi remove the knife. Mainly because, this person not only had mental issues, but also executed this suicidal move excellently. Harassing her was one thing, but daring to lay a hand on Su Yi. Just as the knife was about to scratch Su Yi's cheek, it suddenly made a sharp turn, circling around before swiftly embedding itself in Lan Hao's thigh. Ah. Lan Hao let out a agonizing scream. Next, a fork jumped from Lan Hao's plate and plunged directly into his vital area. Let's go. Su Yi had lost his appetite and stood up, pulling Yi Shiak Suan's hand to leave. Glancing back at Lan Hao, Yi Shiak Suan marveled at how ruthless her master could be, not knowing if a cultivator could recover from such injuries, but with current medical technology, getting a prosthetic was possible. The horrific scene with Lan Hao quickly caught the attention of the other diners in the room. One look at his wounds made them vomit everything they had eaten. It's too bloody. Security. The staff quickly pressed the alarm button. Su Yi and the group reached the elevator, but their path was blocked by a towering security guard. Liao Yangxing, who was the head of security at the restaurant and the same Golden Kerr expert Wan she had encountered before. He had a file with 13 offices. A Golden Kerr expert. Liao Yangxing stared at Yi Shiak Suan, immediately recognizing her cultivation level. Then his gaze shifted to Su Yi. At first glance, he seemed like an ordinary person, but on the second look, he appeared to be in the later stage of chair refining. Something must have gone wrong just now, but it didn't matter. Are you waiting for the 13 offices people to arrive or should I take you to them? Liao Yangxing glared at Yi Shiak Suan, waving his hand to set up a closed barrier. Those outside the zone could not see what was happening inside. So Yi said to Yi Shiak Suan, Come on, let's spar more. He didn't bother to explain anything. Since Liao Yangxing had set up the barrier, and Yi Shiak Suan lacked combat experience, it was a good opportunity for her to practice against a formidable opponent, the Golden Kerr expert. Yi Shiak Suan almost cried. Another fight. She had come here to eat. After the meal, getting into a fight wasn't good for her health. Lay a hand on me. Give it a try. Liao Yangxing sneered, forming a Dao seal with his hand, his body emitting a faint Buddhist light, a practitioner of the Buddhist sect. Liao Yangxing reached out his palm, and Yi Shiak Suan suddenly felt the surrounding scenery change drastically, as if she had landed in the palm of his hand. This is like the palm from the Buddhist scripture, the Five Finger Mountain of Buddha, Su Yi muttered thoughtfully. In reality, Liao Yangxing's hand merely extended towards the empty space, not even touching Yi Shiak Suan. All her sensations were illusory. Her mind was trapped in Liao Yangxing's Buddhist realm, feeling like a wooden man immobilized in his palm. It was evident that he was trying to trap her without causing harm. Are you alright? Liao Yangxing's eyes widened in disbelief. 
He had heard Su Yi mentioning the name of his technique earlier. Su Yi raised his eyelids and said, I have a problem. Then he stood there like a wooden statue, not even blinking, seemingly trapped in the realm of Liao Yongxing's Buddhist world. The muscles on Liao Yongxing's face twitched. Was this too fake? Who are you? Liao Yongxing wasn't a fool, Su Yi clearly hadn't fallen for his technique, but how could someone at the refining stage ignore his Buddhist realm? Su Yi remained still, continuing the charade. After all this cooperation, why ask questions? His emotional intelligence sure was low. He didn't want to lay a hand on this axe monk. However, Liao Yongxing's move was quite a test for Yi Xuan. He wondered if she could break through this drastically weakened Buddhist realm using her own skills. Su Yi was obviously not trapped in Liao Yongxing's realm of the Palm Buddha, but he pretended to be affected, especially since Liao Yongxing only saw Su Yi's cultivation at the chair or finding level, but directly ignored his realm of the Palm Buddha. There was a sense of weirdness in between. For a moment, he couldn't figure out Su Yi's situation. As long as Yi Xuan didn't escape, he could continue to confront them. The people from the 13th department would notice the situation here and come over soon. Su Yi continued to stand there without moving, and Liao Yongxing did not dare to easily make a move against Su Yi. Only Yi Xuan was unable to free herself from Liao Yongxing's realm of the Palm Buddha. She was completely unaware that her soul was imprisoned, but she could clearly feel that the surroundings had changed. Liao Yongxing seemed to have transformed into a giant Buddha, and she was within the palm of the giant Buddha. No matter how she ran, she could not escape. This palm seemed to connect the ends of the earth, vast and boundless. Could this be the real Mount Five Fingers? I don't want to be pressed for hundreds of years under Mount Five Fingers. Yi Xuan's thinking now was surprisingly clear, without a trace of fear. She knew that even if she couldn't see Su Yi, Su Yi must be by her side, with her master's protection. How could anything happen? The current situation was at most a test from Su Yi to her. She quickly organized the things Su Yi had taught her and realized that everything in front of her should not be the real world. How could she break free from this giant palm? Yi Xiaq Suan's soul struggled in the realm of the Palm Buddha, trying to find a way to escape. Outside, Liao Yongxing couldn't help but say to Su Yi, enough with the act. It was really annoying to watch and quite hurtful. Su Yi could only helplessly glance at him, this guy didn't know when to stop. Who exactly are you? Liao Yongxing lived as a recluse in the secular world and was a Yuanyin cultivator after all. His Buddhist techniques had no effect on the person in front of him, which made him have to think deeply. Could it be that this young man in front of him had an extremely high cultivation level, or was there some magic tool on him? Su Yi smiled and said, I am just a small chair refining cultivator. You don't need to think too much. Your realm of the Palm Buddha can't trap me, probably because my mental power is different from others. By the way, do you understand what mental power is? Liao Yongxing looked at Su Yi expressionlessly, trying to see through him, but found that no matter how he looked, Su Yi was just a chair refining cultivator. But how could a chair refining cultivator have powerful mental power? Why are you hurting people unjustly? Liao Yongxing was already tired of arguing with Su Yi and said, just because you are cultivators doesn't mean you can do whatever you want. Su Yi chuckled. The person I heard is also a cultivator. Besides, he was the one who attacked me first. It's normal to get injured if he's not as skilled, right? Then you wait here. I will inform the staff from the 13th department. You can explain these disputes to them. Liao Yongxing was originally a monk. If he could avoid fighting, he would. This kind of dispute was best handled by the people from the 13th department. I'm actually a staff member from the 13th department, Su Yi said, as he handed the work permit given to him by Wu Wens to Liao Yongxing. Liao Yongxing took the work permit and looked at it carefully. He said firmly, but you have violated the law. Su Yi was not angry and said, there are surveillance cameras in the room. A check will reveal the truth. You will report this matter, and I have no reason to deceive you. After a moment of silence, Liao Yongxing also felt that Su Yi's words made sense. Moreover, once the matter was reported, the people from the 13th department would definitely come to investigate, so deception would be futile. I will trust you this time, Liao Yongxing said, as he was about to release the realm of the Palm Buddha. However, Su Yi quickly said, wait, let her come out on her own. It seems you are thinking too simplistically. Liao Yongxing spoke without the calmness of a Buddhist. Since you know this is the realm of the Palm Buddha, you should know that if I don't release her, she won't be able to come out. 
Liao Yangxing said this with great confidence. He had a higher cultivation level than Yi Xiaxuan. Once this secret Buddhist technique was deployed, Yi Xiaxuan would have no chance of escaping. It was impossible to break through. So Yi looked at him and smiled without saying a word. Liao Yangxing, a monk who returned to secular life, actually had a good temper, but was provoked by Su Yi's smile, triggering his competitive spirit. There is something peculiar about you. Let's have a bet. Shall we wait? Su Yi actually didn't believe that Yi Xiaxuan could break out of this person's realm of the Palm Buddha. After all, he knew how incompetent his disciple was, but he still wanted to give her a chance. If she could escape on her own, she would definitely gain some insights. Wait. Since you are a staff member from the 13th department, get Director Wu here, Liao Yangxing said, indifferently. If Director Wu comes, and she hasn't come out on her own yet, I'll release her. However, at that time, you will have to eat vegetarian food and recite Buddhist scriptures in Baofeng Temple for a month. Eat vegetarian food and recite Buddhist scriptures. Su Yi was truly afraid that if he had to eat vegetarian food in Baofeng Temple for a month, the Buddha and shrine in the temple would descend directly to the mortal world. Throughout his life, he had never worshipped any deity, nor did he like going to temples or Taoist temples. But since Liao Yangxing brought it up, he wouldn't back down and say, all right, if she doesn't escape before Director Wu arrives, then you have to eat a piece of pork in front of me. So he could tell that the man in front of him, although he had returned to secular life, had probably never eaten meat in his life. If he still abided by the rules after renouncing, he really was boring. Liao Yangxing frowned and said, All right. They made their bet, and Su Yi called Wu Wens, saying he had injured someone at the ultraviolet restaurant and was being detained. He told him to come and bail him out. Wu Wens said he would come immediately, but they waited for more than two hours and didn't see Wu Wens' shadow. Yi Xiaq Suan was still standing there, sweating profusely. Many people at the elevator entrance wanted to pass, but they were stopped by the barrier set up by Liao Yangxing. They thought they had encountered a dead end and panicked, fleeing in fear. So Yi looked at Yi Shak Suan and thought, this girl is really stupid. She can't even break out of her realm of the Palm Buddha, was all the sword intent he taught her in vain. If the Buddha, Shakyamuni, knew that Su Yi's direct disciple was trapped in a realm of the Palm Buddha he created, he wouldn't know whether to be happy or fearful. In the past, those big shots all knew that Su Duanhen was extremely protective. His disciples were only ones he could discipline. If anyone else dared to touch his disciples, they would face his overwhelming rage. A person from the Buddhist sect had trapped Su Yi's disciple and even made a bet with Su Yi. If he won, he would make Su Yi vegetarian food and recite Buddhist scriptures at the temple. If they did win, it would be an unprecedented event. Would any Buddha dare to make him recite? Su Yi originally thought that even if Yi Xiaxuan's talent was a bit lacking, she should be able to break Liao Yangxing's Buddha's realm within an hour with a single sword. When facing our people before, she even used her protective sword energy. Logically speaking, having followed Su Yi for so long, breaking this minor Buddha's law shouldn't have been a problem. But it wasn't until half past eleven at night when Wu Wen's called again that Su Yi asked, Director Wu, when did you arrive? I'm already downstairs. Give the phone to Senior Liao, I'll talk to him. Wu Wen's and Gu Tong Tong were actually near the area for a while. They weren't in a rush, in fact, they even had a late night snack nearby. According to Wu Wen's, Su Yi, after all, had hit someone, so it wouldn't be a big deal for him to be detained and taught a lesson. He also knew that Liao Yangxing was a person of the Buddhist sect, so at least he wouldn't harm Su Yi's life. It would be fine to go a bit later. It's better for you to come upstairs. Su Yi had a verbal agreement with Liao Yangxing. He was not unable to bear losing, but their premise was based on the time of Wu Wen's arrival indicating the end. Wu Wen's didn't understand what Su Yi meant. Was Liao Yangxing going to make things difficult for him? Wait. I'll be right up. Wu Wen hung up after speaking. Liao Yangxing stared at Su Yi and smiled. This girl seems unable to come out on her own. I can afford to lose. Su Yi was indifferent. It was just living in a temple for a month, right? It couldn't be blamed on others, it was his disciples' foolishness or his excessive trust in Yi Shak Suan. Several hours had passed, and they still couldn't break through Liao Yangxing's formation. If Liao Yangxing were the type to kill easily, Yi Shak Suan would have been a corpse by now. So he glanced at Yi Shak Suan indifferently. If his disciple was too weak, she was destined to have a short life. From past experience, those who benefited from Su Yi's favor would rise quickly, but at some point, 
they would face unimaginable tribulations. Unfortunately, Tsui so couldn't intervene. If he forcefully intervened, more tribulations would follow endlessly. Tsui so feared nothing, and almost any tribulation could be overcome, but overcoming those tribulations came with a price. The most unforgettable memory was over 80,000 years ago, when Yang Xiao faced heavenly tribulation. Tsui so blocked it 99 times for her, but in the end, he triggered his inner demon, which destroyed the entire cultivation world, and even Yang Xia perished by his hands. Tribulations were not insurmountable, but they could only be faced by themselves. The more Su Yi intervened, the more severe things would become. Perhaps this was destiny at work. Wu Wenzi's speed was definitely not slow. He took the elevator up, and just as the elevator doors were about to open, Yi Xiaq Suan's eye suddenly burst with two beams of light. A powerful sword in ten surged out, causing the building's electrical circuits to fail, the ground to crack open, and everything to plunge into darkness. Liao Yongxing coughed up a mouthful of blood heavily, obviously not feeling well. So he couldn't help but laugh, it seemed he didn't need to eat his meal of repentance. What Yi Xiaq Suan currently comprehended was the sword, so he used to break Yuan Heron's innate Dagua formation on Yunjin Mountain. Not bad. To actually comprehend some sort of intent. How is this possible? Liao Yongxing stared fixedly at Yi Xiaq Suan. The astonishing sword intent made even him feel palpitations. Clearly still in the early golden core stage, and with no increase in cultivation, how could there be such sword intent? Yi Xiaq Suan had just reached true understanding within the Buddha's realm. She thought that only Su Yi's sword could break through the golden Buddha's hand. Through continuous contemplation, the rhythm of Su Yi's sword strikes kept appearing before her eyes. She started by imitating and gradually comprehended. Without even drawing her sore, the golden hands around her seemed to be pierced by countless swords, cracking open, eventually shattering along with the golden Buddha statue, exploding at last. Still fighting. Yi Xiaq Suan also stared at Liao Yongxing. If he wanted to continue, it didn't matter. She was overflowing with confidence now, even feeling like she could shatter heaven and earth with a single sword. Cough. Liao Yongxing had been a master for a long time, when has he ever been challenged like this? And the opponent was simply a young girl at the early Golden Core stage. This cross-level challenge was a bit unimaginable. Just now, Liao Yongxing felt his Buddha's realm starting to collapse. Before he could retract it, it was shattered in an instant, and the unparalleled sore intent even harmed his primordial spirit. At this moment, Yi Shaq Suan held the broken soul sword slightly behind her, the sword intent surging, able to ignore cultivation realms. Liao Yongxing vowed to the Buddha that he had never seen such terrifying sore intent in his life. Even though Yi Xiaq Suan had far lower cultivation, he had no confidence to take her sword head on. The level of cultivation seemed more like the wealth ordinary people had. What it transformed into would depend on the cultivator themselves. Although Liao Yongxing was at the union stage, Yi Xiaq Suan's current momentum was simply too strong. The wooden sword in her hand made him feel genuine fear. If they really fought, he would die. This illusion even made Liao Yongxing doubt life a bit. How could a golden core cultivator threaten a mid-union expert? I concede. I surrender. Liao Yongxing sighed inwardly and said, Miss, your sword intent is a rare sight across the ages. I surrender. Upon hearing Liao Yongxing's words, Yi Shaq Suan smiled brightly. Si Yi, however, just smiled faintly, glanced at her, and seemed somewhat dissatisfied. This girl had poor talent and lacked diligence. Keeping this up, trouble was bound to happen sooner or later. He was beginning to regret taking Yi Shaq Suan as his disciple. With such talent, how would she fare in the future? It looked like he would have to intensify her training when they returned. Wu Wen's forcefully pried opened the elevator doors and walked out, looking at the three individuals in front of him. He quickly said to Yi Shaq Suan, Miss Yi. Don't be impulsive. Senior Liao won't do anything to Su Yi. He thought Liao Yongxing was making things difficult for Su Yi, leading Yi Xiaq Suan to draw her sword. In his eyes, aside from the mysterious person who massacred Fengjing Town, Yi Xiaq Suan's strength was the strongest, especially with the unparalleled immortal sword in her hand. Even Gu Tan Tan probably couldn't defeat Yi Xiaq Suan. Liao Yongxing, despite being a mid Yunying expert, would definitely not have a good time against Yi Xiaq Suan. It's fine, we're not fighting anymore. Yi Xiaq Suan explained. A person named Lan Hao took action against Su Yi. 
Then I couldn't hold back and had to teach him a lesson. Is everything okay? Yi Xuan smartly took the blame upon herself since her master didn't like revealing his strength. It's okay. I'll go check on how he's doing. And negotiate as much as possible. Previously, Si Yi had told Wu Wens that he had hit someone. But now it seemed it was Yi Xuan, the expert, who had acted, making it easier to handle the situation. The arrival of Wu Wens made Liao Yangxing breathe a sigh of relief. He was originally a recluse practitioner, although he was the security team leader here. The situation was obviously somewhat complicated, and right and wrong had not yet been determined. He couldn't just have a life and death struggle with Yi Xuan, especially if they really fought. He didn't stand much of a chance. Liao Master, this person is also from R13 department. I believe there must be some misunderstanding in the middle. I will take him away for now. I will investigate the matter clearly. Sorry for the trouble. Wu Wens had become extremely slick in handling these matters. He forced a smile on his face, trying to downplay the situation. Liao Yongxing could only wipe the blood from the corner of his mouth and said, I believe you. Thank you for understanding. Wu Wens then gestured towards Su Yi. It was time to make a move. How could young people not understand that? Su Yi noticed the expression on Wu Wens's face, but he had no intention of leaving. Instead, he smiled at Liao Yongxing and said, Let's go. I'll treat you to a meal. Forcing a monk to eat meat, Su Yi was capable of such a thing. Having returned to secular life, enjoying wine and meat heartily, the Buddha would understand. How could one return to secular life without eating meat? When Su Yi said this, Liao Yongxing's face turned pale, even more unsightly, and when he was injured earlier, let's do it another day. The electrical circuits in the entire building are malfunctioning. I need to go fix them. Wu Wens hurriedly went up to lead Su Yi away. Let's go. Miss Gu is waiting downstairs. He hastily dragged Su Yi down the stairs through a safe passage. Before leaving, Su Yi turned back to Liao Yongxing and shouted, Then you can eat by yourself tomorrow. A monk should not speak falsely. Liao Yongxing's face went from pale to dark. This guy was really annoying. Monks don't eat meat, but they had an agreement before. Since he lost, he had to admit it. Not lying was another one of the rules for a monk. This guy clearly knew he was once a monk, yet he made such a bet with him. See, si do you know that Master Liao used to be a monk? Wu Wenzi's face was also dark, looking more unpleasant under the emergency lights. I know, Si Yi smiled. Otherwise, why remind him not to lie as a monk? Then why did you ask him to eat meat? Wu Wens was speechless about how to deal with Su Yi. Wasn't he picking a fight on purpose? If he were Liao Yongxing, he would surely have to beat this kid up to feel better. You know, I made a bet with him. If he loses, he eats meat, Su Yi said. Don't you think it's interesting to make a monk eat meat? What's so interesting about it? You have no faith. Even though he is returned to secular life, he still maintains his beliefs. I have no choice. I can't find faith, Su Yi shrugged. Wu Wens was also speechless. Su Yi was lucky. Despite not having high cultivation, he had the protection of two goddesses, Hu Tong Tong and Yi Xiaq Suan. Otherwise, with his penchant for causing trouble, he couldn't count how many times he would have been beaten up. It was said that Su Yi had an altercation with Situ Ji today, and it was also Gu Tong Tong who resolved it. Who knew where Su Yi got such good luck with women? Continuing in this manner, even if Su Yi didn't cultivate, with two goddesses looking after him for the rest of his life, he could still do as he pleased. As Wu Wens walked in the stairwell, his phone kept buzzing. He took a glance at it and said to Su Yi, Su Yi, who said you talked to Lin Yun before? Is that why Lin Yun prevented those earthly immortals from causing trouble? I appealed to her emotionally and logically, Su Yi naturally wouldn't disclose the specifics of the conversation with Wu Wens. Looking at the messages on his phone, Wu Wens continued, Tonight, Lin Yun invited many wealthy merchants from Qingzhou City to a banquet. She has indeed made many concessions, but she also made a demand to re-establish the Qingzhou Business Association with her as the president. Okay, Su Yi responded indifferently. In simpler terms, Lin Yun wanted the merchants of Qingzhou City to hold her in high regard. With her current methods, it wouldn't be difficult for those merchants to stand with her, or even become her subordinates. The key is that tonight many people at the banquet express their willingness for Lin Yun to become the association president, Wu Wens knew that Si had a good relationship with Lin Yun. Si Yi suddenly stopped and stared at Wu Wens, Director Wu, you telling me this, you aren't trying to get me to betray my principles and infiltrate the enemy's camp, are you? Ow. This. Wu Wens awkwardly smiled, 
How could this be considered betraying your principles? I'm thinking, if you guide her by Lin Yun Sai, she probably won't go too far. You guys should chat more on non-business days. There was no way they could control Lin Yun now. If she made any big moves, they would be practically helpless. Yi Xiaxuan followed behind, carefully keeping quiet. Get her master to sell his body to seduce Lin Yun? Did they really need to resort to that? With a woman's intuition, she could probably guess that if Su Yi actively sought out Lin Yun now, it would be like adding fuel to the fire, a spark that could ignite a raging flame. Su Yi said firmly, Director Wu, I've already told Director Gu before. Although Lin Yun listened to me that day, I won't actively seek her out anymore. Although there was a group of earthly immortals under her, if she acted within the law and didn't negatively impact society, even their 13 departments should not interfere too much. Su Yi was genuinely speaking his mind. It wasn't about supporting Lin Yun. She was just a cultivator. So couldn't she live like a normal person? Did they have to constantly monitor and control her? If Su Yi revealed his true strength, would people come knocking on his door every day, or should he, like John Chang Feng, find a remote mountain to live in seclusion? Must he have some grand aspiration, like turning all humankind into cultivators, or exploring the vast cosmos? Couldn't people like them just live a normal life? I didn't plan on interfering too much, Wu Wens quickly said. Don't get too worked up. If you don't want to see her, then don't. If she doesn't cause trouble, we don't want to interfere. You can rest assured about that. Wu Wens couldn't help but wonder how Su Yi managed to make Lin Yun compromise that day. Did Su Yi sacrifice his body, and then Lin Yun did something deviant, such as showing sadistic tendencies in some aspect that Su Yi couldn't bear anymore? Wu Wens raised an eyebrow at Su Yi and then chuckled to himself, continuing to walk downstairs. I think your smile is a bit twisted. If Su Yi knew that Wu Wens, who always appeared serious, had such thoughts, he would probably kick him down the stairs without hesitation. Wu Wens coughed lightly and said with a stern face, I wasn't smiling. Let's go to the hospital to see the injured person. Let's try to negotiate. You know, don't escalate the situation. People who spoke very few words usually had a reserved heart. This was probably an accurate portrayal of Wu Wens. Negotiate? Su Yiping is usually kind to people, but not to those who lay hands on him. Since they've resorted to violence, negotiation is out of the question. As they were heading downstairs, Gu Tong Tong was already waiting downstairs. Gu Ya, I've looked into it. The injured kid is named Lan Hao, the grandson of Lan Hao Chu from the Lan family of Jinmen. Lan Hao Chu is also a golden core cultivator with significant influence in Jinmen. If not handled properly, things could get complicated. Wu Wens looked at the information and noticed a crucial point. Lan Hao had a vital part severed. Isn't that cutting off the Lan family's future? According to biology and genetics research, the stronger the vitality, the species, the weaker its ability to reproduce offspring. Therefore, it is generally believed that once a cultivator reaches the golden core realm, they need to put in many times more effort than ordinary people to have descendants. Lan Heoshu's son died three years ago, so now they were counting on Lan how to carry on the family line. But now, Su Yiping had directly cut off that possibility. Of course, Yi Xiaq Suan ended up shouldering the blame, but the situation was still difficult. Gu Tong Tong was not one to deal with these matters, but as 13 is a national enforcement unit, they couldn't show favoritism. It's not easy, so you handle it. Gu Tong Tong, not wanting to get involved, passed the matter to Wu Wens. Wu Wens then turned to Yi Xiaq Suan and said, Miss Yi, you should know Jinmen is a gathering place for cultivator families. It's best to handle this according to the customs of the cultivation world. Okay. Yi Xiaq Suan, a novice in cultivation, had no idea about the customs of the cultivation world. But given Wu Wenzi's advice, she reluctantly agreed. She would just ask her master when she got back. She believed her master must know the customs of the cultivation world. Let's first visit the hospital. Regardless of the situation, we should at least visit since he was so badly injured. Even if someone started it, we should pay a visit. Wu Wen's thought Su Yiping had just gotten into a small fight previously, but the situation turned out to be more severe than expected. In Jinmen, with its own rules for cultivators, it was sometimes challenging for 13's people to intervene, especially with the complexity of the situation. Yi Xiaq Suan was initially going to agree. But Su Yiping said, Let's not go today. We can visit another day. That person is pretty much useless now. Apart from a fight, there won't be much else. 
Lu Wen's remained silent for a moment before saying, All right, I'll go with Gu Ya to have a look first and then gather some information. Okay, then we'll leave first. Su Yiping felt it was necessary for Yi Xiaq Suan to intensify her cultivation efforts. They couldn't afford to be so lax anymore. Lu Wen's nodded, saying, I'll inform you immediately if there are any developments. Su Yiping and Yi Xiaq Suan left together. As they distanced themselves, Yi Xiaq Suan couldn't help but ask Su Yiping, Master, According to the customs of the cultivation world, how should we handle this situation? Handle it privately. There must be a way to handle it privately. For ordinary people, it might be about compensation, but for cultivators handling things privately, what should be done? Su Yiping pondered for a moment before saying, according to the old customs, this situation would likely lead to endless strife. Either you wipe out his whole family or his relatives hunt you down. Yi Xiaxuan was dumbfounded. Was this the way to handle things privately in a cultivation world? Easily wiping out a family. Was this the custom of the cultivation world? Yi Xiaxuan's mouth twitched as she said. Master, I'm the one carrying the blame for you. Su Yiping calmly responded, since you're carrying it, if a family is to be wiped out, it will be up to you. Can't we avoid wiping out a whole family? Yi Xiaq Suan couldn't accept such a cruel way of handling things. In that case, wait for them to come after your family. Su Yiping paused before adding, I mentioned the old customs of the cultivation world. Things might be different now. Why didn't you ask Director Wu about it earlier? Yi Xiaq Suan dumbfoundedly said, I thought you knew. Hey, Su Yiping chuckled. You better focus on cultivation. In the face of strong enemies in the future, only you can deal with them. As long as the soul cutting is in your hands, the seal cannot be broken. I'm already working hard. Yi Xiaq Suan felt a bit upset, unsure why Su Yiping thought she wasn't trying hard enough. Su Yiping didn't say much more and walked ahead. Yi Xiaq Suan hurried to catch up and asked, Master, do you know anything about that place in Jinmen? Director Wu mentioned and that it's a gathering place for cultivators, and there are many cultivators there. While walking, Su Yiping explained, that place in Jinmen is situated above a dormant dragon vein, but it has been dormant for many years and lacks famous mountains and rivers. Major sects usually don't pay attention to such places. Throughout history, many freelance cultivators have gathered there, forming a small circle. Doesn't that mean there are many experts there? Yi Xiaq Suan realized that, with freelance cultivators from ancient times gathering there, there should be many experts. Su Yiping reply, there are certainly a few experts but mostly they are not prominent. Cultivation is not simple, it requires skills and resources. A group of freelance cultivators gathering is merely for mutual support. Many of them seek to join major sects, but are often rejected because the inner sects now only accept geniuses. Joining the outer sect means menial tasks. With increasingly scarce resources in cultivation, any sect might indiscriminately accept disciples. After a thousand years, freelance cultivators established a rule. Those who settled there could not join any sect, or else they would be permanently expelled from Jinmen. The place became a gathering spot for freelance cultivators. In Su Yiping's view, even the major sects were not much better, let alone a place like Jinmen. When he said they were not prominent, it included Golden Koran Nasan Soul cultivators. As for the so-called experts, it was more of a casual term. Were there really any experts left in the world? Yi Xiaq Suan felt relieved upon hearing the term not prominent. In that place, do you think my strength would be top-notch? Yi Xiaq Suan, after hearing the place mainly housed freelance cultivators, wondered if she could hold her own there. Su Yiping couldn't help but smile. Are you trying to make your master laugh to death to seize my property? Yi Xiaq Suan grumbled. You said most of them aren't prominent, right? Su Yiping's face turned slightly cold. He mfft, I've mentioned and there are a few experts. With your current strength, are you assuming you can dominate the world? I taught you to understand sword intent, but you only grasped it after being trapped. You're already foolish, and now you're being lazy. Do you want to rely on me forever? So Yi suddenly got angry, which left Yi Shaksu on feeling a bit at a loss. Based on her understanding of these cultivators now, there didn't seem to be many powerful people. Among the people she had seen, it seemed that only Gu Tong Tong and Yuan Haoran were a bit stronger, as for the others. Anyway, she had never lost to them. Moreover, with a master backing her up, why should she strive? She was never passionate about cultivation in the first place. 
It was fine as long as her strength was average. She had never thought about becoming invincible in the world. Yi Xiaxuan pursed her lips and muttered softly, Isn't it enough for you to back me up? In Yi Xiaxuan's eyes, Si Yi was an invincible existence. Among so many cultivators in the mortal world, when Si Yi said to destroy, they were destroy. Even if she was not with her, casually unsealing the sword spirit in times of danger, no one could harm her. Yi Xiaxuan's voice was very soft when she spoke, but Su Yi's hearing was very sensitive. Upon hearing what Yi Xiaxuan said, his expression became even more unpleasant. Although I was the one who acted this time, it's your job to deal with the trouble. From now on, you will follow me. Whenever I cause trouble, it's your job to solve it. Even if you are on the verge of death, I will not intervene. Do you understand what I mean? Su Yi was very angry. When did it become necessary to have someone back him up when taking a disciple? I understand. Yi Xiaxuan put on a pitiful look, but in reality, she was extremely happy. The most important thing was that phrase, from now on, you will follow me. Oh, this could sometimes be understood as following Su Yi 24 hours a day. Seeing Yi Xiaxuan seeming both wronged and happy, a look that wanted to smile but couldn't, Su Yi couldn't help but ask, what expression is that? Yi Xiaxuan forced back her smile hanging her head low, and said softly, Master, you have pointed out, I will definitely work hard. So Yi nodded slightly and began to walk slowly in the direction of Wadong Street, with Yi Xiaxuan following closely behind. It was already early morning, but the nightlife in the big city was just beginning. Along the way, it was still lively, especially when they reached a street full of nightclubs, with cars lining the row, and many drunken people stumbling around. Master, do we want to go clubbing? You probably haven't been clubbing before, right? I've never been either. Yi Xiaxuan thought Su Yi. Being such a serious person, probably hadn't even been to a bar. At this time, if she could have a few drinks with her master or even go clubbing, it would indeed be a pleasant thing. Su Yi didn't even pause his steps, just said lightly, Is this what you meant by saying you will work hard? But, it's already late, and am I not always practicing the techniques you taught me? Even if we go clubbing, it shouldn't have any impact. Yi Xiaxuan had been quite diligent when learning medical arts before, but now she felt her strength was already quite go. As they walked, Su Yi said, other cultivators enter closed door cultivation for several months to several decades, practicing day and night, just to become stronger, to work hard to survive, or to seek longevity. And their aptitudes are stronger than yours. Your attitude towards cultivation, if it was in the past, you probably wouldn't live for long. Yi Xiaxuan didn't understand why Su Yi suddenly cared so much about her cultivation. It seemed that the relationship between cultivators nowadays was relatively peaceful. Glancing at Yi Xiaxuan, Su Yi said, I also thought that in this Darmanding era, the overall strength of cultivators would not be too strong. But just now, I explored the entire world and found that in Jinmen alone, there are more than 20 golden core cultivators, 5 union cultivators, 2 nascent soul experts, 2 in the Mahayana realm, and 1 in the Ascension realm, as well as many more in other major sects. I also want to remind you that just the Lawn family alone, apart from one golden core expert, there is also one in the nascent soul stage. Based on your current cultivation level, if you were to go to Jinmen, they would probably turn you to ashes. So he had not been idle while walking, Using his divine sense to explore the entire world, he found that the number of cultivators today was not as few as he had imagined. Many true experts were not recorded in the 13 offices. These people had lived for thousands of years, originally reaching the end of their lifespan, but Sui had caused the spiritual energy to recover previously, which unexpectedly prolonged their lives, with many even showing signs of breakthroughs. Major sects and large clans all had old guys who hadn't ascended. Jinmen was just a gathering place for independent cultivators, but there were also many experts there. Although there was one famous individual, in fact, even the real major sects were not considered true major sects. Those real major sects lived in seclusion, and ordinary people didn't even know of their existence. Yi Xiaxuan gulped hard, and she asked weakly, Master, is this nascent soul stage very powerful? Only then did Su Yi remember that he hadn't told Yi Xiaxuan about the realms of cultivators. He explained, you should already know about chair refinement, foundation establishment, and golden core. Beyond that are Yu and Ying, nascent soul, Mahayana, and ascension stages.
Each major realm's strength is almost insurmountable. You are currently only at the early Golden Kerr stage. If you were to encounter someone from the Nassan Soul stage, I suspect they could annihilate you with just one move, and you wouldn't even have a chance to draw your sword. Yishiak Suan couldn't help but ask, Then Master, what realm are you in? You should already be in the Ascension stage, right? So you laughed embarrassingly. What you see is me at the Cherifiman stage. As if I believe that. Yishiak Suan rolled her eyes. Her master was so strong, he was probably at least an expert in the Nassan Soul stage. Little did she know that a few tens of thousands of years ago, before the Ascension stage, everyone was simply called mortals. Do I really have to go to Jinmen? Yishiak Suan was feeling hesitant. If Suyi truly stopped helping her and even forbid her from using the sword spirit, wouldn't it be seeking death to go to Jinmen? I said, from now on, you will follow me. If I go, you naturally also go. So he stopped in front of a bar named Spacebliss and said, You want to drink, right? Tonight, I will let you indulge for the last time. Great. Although Suyi had frightened her, upon hearing that she could go in and drink, Ishak Suan suddenly stopped worrying about everything. Suyi agreed to go to the bar with her not to allow her to indulge for the last time, but because while investigating the surroundings just now, he discovered that inside the bar, there was actually a cultivator at the early Golden Kerr stage, and this cultivator was drinking with Yu Huayin. Were all cultivators nowadays so eager to integrate into society? Not every cultivator could achieve the rapid progress like Yishiak Suan from an ordinary person to a golden core cultivator in just over a month. For most cultivators, if they couldn't consolidate their golden core within 200 years, they were doomed to fall. Even for those with extraordinary talents, without any miraculous encounters, achieving the golden core realm would still require years of hard cultivation. Suyi once asked those cultivators of Taoism, who day after day, year after year, engaged in cultivation, don't they find it boring? The answers from those cultivators were almost all the same. In summary, the process of becoming stronger can be addictive. Breaking through one's own limitations time and time again seems to be the path they are pursuing. After reaching the golden core realm, in order to break through to the nascent soul, it often requires countless precious materials and hundreds of years, and even if one successfully cultivates the golden core, it only extends life by 300 years. If one cannot achieve the nascent soul within those 300 years, then all previous efforts are in vain. Most cultivators above the golden core realm are either focused on intense cultivation or searching for precious materials, unless there are special cultivation techniques or special reasons, they rarely engage in worldly matters. Inside the spaceless bar, with red lights and green wine, passionate music filled the rhythmic atmosphere, where you could see wildly twisting graceful figures, a place where young men and women indulge in their youth. Yishiak Suan had been studying medicine diligently at home for many years and had never been to such a place before. Today, she was with Su Yi and wanted to give it a try. Upon entering, the bar's manager quickly came up to greet them, and Yishiak Suan asked him to find a place for them. The manager could tell at a glance that the young lady in front of him was definitely well off, as she didn't even ask about the prices, so he found them a VIP booth. Yishiak Suan casually ordered a set menu for 4,888 and then sat down. The wealthy lady didn't care about the money at all. As soon as they sat down, a server brought wine to their table, and a man, dressed provocatively and with a muscular physique, brought out a metal frame and started pole dancing in front of them. Yishiak Suan looked at the man in front of her and was dumbfounded. She had probably heard that it was usually the girls who danced on the pole at these places, but a man also. How thrilling. Suyi was also in such a place for the first time. Compared to the clean bars he was used to, this place was a bit more stimulating. Besides this man, there were many young girls who came up to Suyi to drink, with flirtatious glances and even ignoring Yishiak Suan, sitting directly next to Suyi and loudly asking in his ear, is the lady next to your girlfriend. Suyi had worked in bars before and was experienced in such situations, so he responded loudly, she is not my girlfriend. With this answer, the young lady became even bolder, wrapping her arms around Suyi's neck, holding a glass, and sweetly laughing, brother, you are so handsome, are you really without a girlfriend? In fact, I don't have one. Suyi also gently embraced the girl's waist, laughing and clinking glasses with her. But now you have me. The young lady appeared to be in her early twenties at most, 
but she was bold in her actions, even drinking directly with Sui. Yi Xiaxuan was truly dumbfounded now. What was going on? She was the one who brought Sui to this place for a drink, but in just a short while, another girl was drinking with Sui. In the world of bars, it was almost always assumed that the man would pay the bill, so they all assumed Sui would pay, and Yi Xiaxuan was no exception. Within just 10 minutes of sitting down, Suyi was surrounded by six beautiful girls, besides Yi Xiaxuan. Suyi was experienced in nightlife, so he enjoyed the attention, making Yi Xiaxuan doubt her decisions as she sat alone sipping her drink. These girls were a bit too forward. Just as one of the girls asked for Suyi's WeChat and he was about to take out his phone, Yi Xiaxuan, feeling tipsy, suddenly stood up, pointed at the girl, and shouted, you disappear right now. As a cultivator in the Golden Co realm, Yi Xuan's aura radiated outward in her anger, causing everyone within a few meters to feel a strong sense of suffocation. The girls who were just joking around with Sui moments ago were all stunned. These girls were still somewhat attractive, but under Yi Xuan's imposing aura, they couldn't help but feel intimidated. Who are you? Of course, there were still girls who dared to confront Yi Xuan. Everyone wanted to flirt with a good-looking guy. Why should she have it all to herself? I'm his girlfriend. You all get lost. Yi Xiaxuan's face turned extremely ugly, and her aura became increasingly terrifying, almost at the point of eruption. This kind of aura may ordinary people feel an inexplicable fear, and the girls who were surrounding Sui moments ago all left timidly. The bar manager quickly noticed the situation and came over to apologize. Yi Xiaxuan rarely drank, and she couldn't hold much alcohol. Seeing the manager come to apologize, she loudly said, I came here to drink, not to have people steal my man. Do you understand? After finishing her drink, she took out her wallet from her small handbag, pulled out a stack of bills, and slapped it on the manager's chest, saying, you keep an eye on those women and make sure they don't come near me. The manager quickly assured, don't worry, no women will come over. Humph. Yi Xiaxuan snorted and stared at Suyi her cheeks flushing as she staggered over to him. She then pounced on him, sitting on his thigh, and said with a mischievous laugh, Master, you seem to be having fun. Suyi's head was pinned between Yi Xuan's hands, making him unable to move, and he could only say, It's all part of the show, since you wanted to come here. I don't care. Yi Xuan sat on Suyi's lap, blushing, and said, You were drinking with others just now, so I want to as well. Drink if you want, however you want. But could you please get off me first? Sui had to keep up with the times, where even having a relationship wasn't confirmed by drinking together. Especially in places, like nightclubs, people were just releasing their pent-up hormones. But the act of drinking with his disciple like this made him feel awkward. Yi Xiaxuan, now sitting on his lap in such a ambiguous manner, made his heart beat faster, so he quickly asked her to get off first. Okay. Yi Xiaxuan nodded her head, saying okay but suddenly leaned against him, and taking the opportunity, she kissed him forcefully. Suyi was caught off guard and with his abilities, he could have easily avoided it, but he hesitated just a moment ago. He hesitated. In that brief moment of hesitation, Yi Xuan's forceful kiss succeeded. What just happened? Suyi felt the warmth on his lips, swallowed hard, and surprisingly felt his heart race. You should know that someone like Suyi, even if the whole world were to be destroyed, he wouldn't even bat an eyelid. His heart racing. How is that possible? He's not some clueless novice. He's had his fair share of women before, but it has been years since he felt this way. Could it be because Yi Xiaxuan is his disciple? Zhe Zhe Zhe. Master, what kind of expression is that? Yi Xiaxuan actually had a triumphant look on her face, making goose-like sounds softly from her mouth. She was still sitting on Su Yi's lap, a posture that couldn't be more ambiguous. Have you gone crazy? Suyi had never thought that he would be forcibly kissed by a woman one day, and that woman happened to be his disciple. He had merely played along with those women before, embracing and nothing more. But that was all in the past. After all, Suyi wasn't one to act recklessly. Hehe, <laughs> master, do you know how cute you look right now? Yishiak Suan, fueled by alcohol, even used both hands to playfully pinch and tease Suyi. Suyi felt like a little girl being harassed by a rogue. He stared at the drunken Yi Xiaxuan in shock. Taking a deep breath, Suyi finally calmed down. He lightly tapped Yi Xiaxuan's neck. She instantly lost consciousness and fell asleep, no longer behaving wildly. In her slumber, she collapsed languidly into Suyi's embrace. Both of them were not dressed heavily, 
Their bodies press tightly against each other, allowing Su Yi to feel the warmth emanating from Ishiak Suan's body. It was soft and warm, that's what this feeling was. Phew. Su Yi let out a heavy sigh, lifted Ishiak Suan up, and laid her on the couch. He didn't leave, as Yu Huanyan and that golden core cultivator were now standing before him. Earlier, Ishiak Suan suddenly released her aura. Ordinary people would only feel pressure, but a golden core expert could sense her presence. Su Yi's original plan was to let Ishiak Suan have another round with this cultivator to gain combat experience, but now it seemed impossible. Su Yi. Yu. Yu Huanyan naturally recognized Su Yi at first glance. She glanced at the sleeping Ishiak Suan next to him, a smile forming on her face, and asked, Are you working here again? After all, Su Yi used to work at a bar. Changing stores, but not professions, was not impossible. Su Yi had completely regained his composure. He raised his eyebrows lightly, smiled, and said, We are just here to have fun. Yu Huanyan cautiously asked, It seems that you have a good relationship with Yi Shiak Suan. Not just good. Witnessing the scene where Yi Shiak Suan forcibly kissed Su Yi earlier, she could tell that the two of them were most likely a couple by now. Yes. It's quite good. Su Yi nodded, glanced at Yi Shiak Suan beside him, and said, Sorry, she drank too much. So we'll leave now. Just a moment. The man next to Yu Huanyan suddenly exclaimed. Su Yi and Yu Huanyan looked at him simultaneously, not understanding what he meant. Meeting his fate, why not make friends? There's still so much wine left at your table. It would be a waste not to finish it before leaving, right? The man was quite handsome, with sword-like brows and starry eyes, tall and upright. He grinned and said, Your name is Su Yi, my surname is also Su. I'm Su Jinfu. Where is your hometown? Maybe hundreds of years ago. We were family. Su Jin Fu, Su Yi narrowed his eyes slightly. This name sounded quite famous. Some time ago, when playing games in the dormitory, he often heard Wang Junlin and others shouting something like Jin Fu Jin Fu. Cheers from the crowd. Have you heard of me? Su Jin Fu was puzzled by Su Yi's expression. Su Yi smiled. The name sounds familiar. In that case, you should have a couple of drinks. Su Jin Fu poured two glasses of wine and pushed one towards Su Yi, saying, Today, Su Yi and I seem to connect well. Why not directly become sworn brothers? After drinking this cup, you'll be a member of my Sujo Gate Su family. What do you think? Just meeting and immediately becoming sworn brothers. Wasn't this speed similar to choosing a burial ground when meeting a girl for the first time? However, Su Yi wasn't particularly wary. Since he didn't need to guard against anyone, he didn't see any harm in recognizing a relative. Most importantly, the more eccentric the person, the more interesting he found them. He wanted to see what Su Jinfu was up to. Another reason was that he also intended to visit Su Zhou Gate, and having a recognized relative from there could be beneficial. All right, I'll acknowledge you as a brother. Su Yi didn't refuse either. Recognizing a distant relative was no big deal. What mattered was that unique individuals like Su Jinfu piqued his curiosity. He wanted to see what Su Jinfu was up to. Great. Su Jinfu clinked glasses with Su Yian down the drink in one go. Unexpectedly, just coming for a drink led to so many things happening. Originally, he wanted to stir things up, but now, things were coming to him. After downing the drink, Su Jinfu seemed to become closer to Su Yi. He started asking, Su Yi, do you know Miss Yu as well? Su Yi nodded, we have met before. Ha ha, it seems like fate. Su Jinfu laughed, if nothing unexpected happens, Miss Yu should become your sister-in-law in the future. Upon hearing Su Jinfu's words, Yu Huian's expression didn't look good at all. She didn't sit down, but gritted her teeth and said, Su Jinfu, we just met today. While there are some decisions made at home, I am not your girlfriend yet. Ha ha ha. Su Jinfu laughed out loud when he heard Yu Huian's words. Indeed, indeed, we just met today. Do you think we are suitable for each other? Yu Huian looked somewhat conflicted clenched her fists, and finally said, I don't think we are suitable. Well, Su Jinfu's smile didn't fade a bit as he said, Miss you. Goodbye. Su Jinfu suddenly paused, then looked at Yu Huian with a mischievous expression and waved his hand. No, it's more like never seeing you again. Su Yi curiously observed Yu Huian and Su Jinfu. What's going on here? It seems like these two were set up for a blind date, but they didn't hit it off. However, the air of mischief around Su Jinfu made Su Yi feel like Yu Huian might have given him some leverage. After hesitating for a moment, Yu Huian turned around and walked away without saying goodbye to Su Yi. Looking quite angry, Su Yi glanced at Yu Huian's back and then at Su Jinfu. 
only to find his gaze briefly landing on Yi Xiaq Suan. Hum. Isn't this a cliché drama plot? Could it be that Su Jinfu is interested in Yi Xiaq Suan? Which is why he rejected Yu Qian. In terms of appearance, Yu Qian is no less beautiful than Yi Xiaq Suan. And in terms of figure, Yi Xiaq Suan is not a match for her. Brother Su Yi must be curious about the situation between Miss Yu and me, right? Su Jinfu looked disdainfully at Yu Qian who had left, with an air of arrogance, and said, I believe you also know that there is a cultivator called Lin Yun in Qingzhou. Su Yi nodded. Is this related to Lin Yun? Su Jin Fu toy with the wine glass in his hand and sneered. I heard that this Lin Yun is quite capable. Even the people from the 13 places couldn't handle her when they went for her. She has recently started acquiring some industries in Qingzhou. And the Yu family has naturally been affected. The Yu family wants to form an alliance with my Su family to find a bagger. It's that simple. Su Jinfu said with a malicious smile. I have to say, Miss Yu is quite attractive, but she is just a mortal. How can cultivators like us be interested in her? I see, Su Yi seemed to understand something. Lin Yun's recent actions have been quite large, affecting the interests of many merchants, and Yuan Guo must want to find a backer. Hence they came to the Su family in Jingmen. Do they want the Su family to help them deal with Lin Yun through marriage? Su Yi can understand Yuan Guo's actions, but he still underestimates Lin Yun's power. Unless the Su family has an ancestor who has ascended, they wouldn't stand a chance against Lin Yun. There were over a hundred celestial immortals in Lin Yun's company before, knowledgeable in celestial secrets. Even if there are experts in the ascension period, in this era of abundant spiritual energy, they wouldn't be able to match them. Su Jin Fu paused and looked at Yi Shaq Suan next to him, smiling, Brother Su Yi, is this young lady your Dao companion? Huh? No. Su Yi shook his head. So it has finally come to this. His target is still Yi Xiaq Suan. Oh? Su Jin Fu's eyes lit up as he asked, If I'm not mistaken, this young lady should be a golden core cultivator, right? Su Yi nodded again. He just wanted to see what Su Jin Fu's intentions were. Could it be that he decided to become swarm brothers with Su Yi because he saw Yi Xiaq Suan? This is getting interesting. Brother Su Yi, it's getting late. Why don't you take this young lady back? Su Jin Fu smiled. Having such a friend is also a cultivation fate for you. All right then. Let's have a drink next time. Su Yi decided to follow Su Jin Fu's suggestion. If he wanted Su Yi to take the person back, then he would. Su Yi just felt that things were definitely not that simple. But what does this guy want to do? Su Yi picked up Yi Xiaq Suan and smiled at Su Jin Fu before leaving the bar. As for the remaining why, Su Yi didn't care and probably wouldn't return here in the future. On the way, Yi Xiaq Suan was still half asleep, and Su Yi walked slowly down the street with her in his arms. Indeed, Su Jin Fu didn't disappoint him and surreptitiously followed behind. He probably thought his cultivation level was far superior to Su Yi's and wouldn't be noticed. Little did he know, Su Yi was watching his every move. Are there too many people around to make a move? Su Yi now understood that these cultivators were also wary of acting openly in public. If caught on surveillance cameras, People from the 13 places would definitely come knocking. Su Yi decided to head towards a secluded alley without people or surveillance. Yi Xiaq Suan had sobered up a bit by now, but she still kept her eyes closed as if asleep. At this moment, she felt a deep sense of regret for her actions earlier. What had she done? She had actually kissed her master. And even pinched his face. Oh my heavens. Thinking about Su Yi's usual stern expression, she couldn't help but worrying if she would be expelled from the sack after he woke up. Moreover, now Su Yi was still carrying her, causing her face to blush and heart to race uncontrollably. But at this moment, she must not open her eyes. If she did, she really wouldn't know how to face Su Yi. Hum? Why are we going into this dark alley? From time to time, Yi Xiaq Suan peeked through her eyelids to observe the surroundings, only to realize that Su Yi had taken her into a dark alleyway. Surely this wasn't the way to her home, or Su Yi's home. Is her master planning to toss her into a trash bin or bury her in a hole on the spot? No way. Even if she had gone too far, Su Yi shouldn't be that cruel. Could it be? It shouldn't be. If he really wanted to do something, he could have booked a hotel room or taken her directly to his home. The more she thought about it, the faster her heart raced, but she didn't dare open her eyes. Just as Su Yi wanted to know what Su Jin Fu was up to, she also wanted to know what Su Yi intended to do. Su Yi squinted his eyes. He knew that Yi Xiaq Suan had already woken up, with everything ready, 
He just needed the right moment to act. Since Su Jinfu was following them, then let's play a trick to lure him into the trap. Everything was set, just waiting for the right opportunity. Walking behind them, Su Jinfu noticed that Yi Xiaxuan was still asleep and Su Yi had taken her into a dark alleyway. This was an opportunity he had been waiting for, wasn't it? Resources for cultivation are scarce nowadays, and killing for treasures among cultivators is quite normal. He also noticed the dragon tendril on Yi Xiaxuan's neck. Although he couldn't recognize what kind of treasure it was, he was sure that a golden core cultivator like her must have something valuable on her. Since she was drunk and he didn't make a move, wouldn't that be missing a great opportunity? Most importantly, after seizing the treasure, he could shift the blame onto Su Yi. Once Yi Xiaxuan woke up, he could play the role of a hero, saying that Su Yi had stolen her treasure and then drive him away. Perhaps he could even benefit from this in the end. Isn't having a golden core realm partner better than Miss Yu from the Yu family? As for Su Yi, he could easily eliminate a Che or Feynman stage cultivator like him, vanish without a trace, and even the people from the 13 places wouldn't be able to track him down. Killing two birds with one stone, the outcome of gaining both wealth and people could not be more satisfying. In a dark alley, three individuals were lost in their own thoughts. Yi Xiaq Suan's thoughts were entirely focused on Su Yi, completely unaware that she was being watched. Su Jin Fu hid in the shadows, wearing a ghost mask and suddenly launched an attack from behind Su Yi. As a sudden gust of wind arose, Yi Xiaq Suan finally noticed that there was someone behind them, and that person was attacking Su Yi. However, would she panic? With her master's strength, who could sneak attack him? Surely, every move of that person was within her master's expectations. Su Yi had naturally been aware long ago, but he did not move at all letting Su Jinfu's palm strike his back. Su Jinfu was quite confident in the power of his palm strike. Even a master in the Golden Core stage would be severely injured if caught off guard. For someone like Su Yi at the Che cultivation stage, this palm strike would surely sever his lifeblood, causing instant death. Sworn Brothers Did he really think that having a drink together could make him sworn brothers with Su Jinfu? There were so many people surnamed Su in this world, not everyone could claim a relationship with him. Especially since Su Yi was already at the later stage of Czech cultivation, would he bring back someone like that to compete for resources with him? So it would be better not to let him stay. If Su Yi wanted to kill him, he wouldn't even need to move a muscle. If a minor golden core cultivator could harm him, that would be truly laughable. However, after taking that palm strike, Su Yi grunted, fell forward, and even threw Yi Xiaq Suan out of his arms. Ah! Yi Xiaq Suan exclaimed quickly regaining her balance in midair and landing safely. But when she turned her head back around, she saw Su Yi unconscious on the ground. How could this be possible? Staring at the fallen Su Yi, Yi Xiaq Suan shuddered and turned her gaze towards Su Jinfu, eyes filled with killing intent. She had never felt murderous towards anyone before. But seeing Su Yi being knocked out by someone, a surge of energy uncontrollably welled up within her as she drew her sword. I'll kill you. Yi Xiaq Suan's sword was filled only with murderous intent. Su Jin Fu was also terrified, thinking Yi Xiaq Suan had been completely drunk and unaware when he had attacked Su Yi. But to his surprise, she was fully conscious. What was with this terrifying sword d'intent? How could a cultivator at the Golden Core stage possess such strong sword d'intent? Su Jin Fu dared not hesitate and quickly summoned the Yin and Yan Kyan Kun ruler imitation given to him by his ancestor channeling all his energy into activating this treasure. According to his ancestor, this imitation treasure was capable of withstanding the full force of a Yuan infant expert in times of crisis. Yi Xiaq Suan was only at the early Golden Core stage, so theoretically, her life should not be in danger. Moreover, the treasure also contained a trace of his ancestor's soul, meaning that if someone tried to kill him, even if his ancestor was far away, he would know who it was. As the Ying Nan Yang Kyang Kun ruler imitation was summoned, a faint blue light shield appeared in front of Su Jin Fu. Thinking about this reassured him somewhat. Although Yi Xiaq Suan's swordsmanship was extraordinary, trying to break through his treasure with a wooden sword was far-fetched. Moreover, in terms of cultivation level, he was slightly higher. After defeating Yi Xiaq Suan later, he could bring her back to the Su family directly and use her as a breeding machine. At the moment Yi Xiaq Suan's sword was about to strike, it was as fast as a fleeting moment. The tip of the sword touched the blue light shield, shattering it as if a sharp blade pierced an eggshell. How? Su Jin Fu's pupils shrank, unable to believe what he was seeing. 
Before he could react, the Yin Nan Yang Kyang Kun ruler imitation shattered into countless pieces, and the wooden sword pierced through his chest. The violently raging sword energy tore his body to pieces in an instant, leaving a trench over ten feet long behind him. In the two buildings behind him where people were sleeping, the houses suddenly ruptured, penetrated by the sword energy. Fortunately, there weren't many people around, so no innocent lives were harmed. Yi Xiaxuan was also shocked by her own sword strike. With just one sword, the man in front of her turned into a cloud of blood mist, leaving no trace of his remains. So Yi had been lying on the ground the whole time, and he could feel Yi Xiaxuan's sword strike just now. That strike could barely pass muster. Just when Yi Xiaxuan thought everything was over, an almost translucent old man appeared before her. Who are you? How dare you kill a descendant of my Su family? Yi Xiaxuan stared at the old man, momentarily unable to speak. Was this a ghost? The old man looked at Yi Xiaxuan for two seconds and then directly transformed into a blue smoke, disappearing. It was only a trace of his soul. He felt he was not strong enough to eradicate Yi Xiaxuan yet, but he had remembered her face. This grudge would be settled by the Su family in Jingmen. Su Yi, of course, could sense the presence of the Su family ancestor's soul. If he wished, that trace of soul would be instantly annihilated. But his actions today were meant to put pressure on Yi Xiaxuan. Without pressure, how could there be motivation? Had he kissed her passionately earlier, would she regard Yi Xiaxuan as his woman? A disciple was just a disciple. But this girl seemed to have different thoughts about him, which was unacceptable. She must be eliminated sooner rather than later. Master, are you okay? Yi Xiaxuan didn't care about the rest and hurriedly moved towards Su Yi to check his injuries. At that moment, Su Yi slowly got up, waved his hand at her, and said, I'm fine. I knew you were fine. Yi Xiaxuan breathed a sigh of relief and a smile appeared on her face. Su Yi coughed heavily and said, Just my cultivation is ruined. Ha. Huh. Yi Xiaxuan was stunned. What do you mean you're fine? Just your cultivation is ruined. Su Yi felt like coughing up blood but couldn't do it, and if he did, the blood would undoubtedly be tinged with a faint golden color, which would be too strange. He totally ruined my cultivation with that palm earlier, Su Yi explained. How is that possible? He's so weak. How could he harm you? The smile on Yi Xiaxuan's face became somewhat forced as she said, Are you joking with me? Su Yi stood up calmly, patted his body, and although there was no dust, he acted as if cleaning himself off, saying, Do you think I'm a god? I wasn't on guard against that palm strike. Yi Xiaxuan's mouth twitched slightly as she observed Su Yi, but you don't look injured at all. Su Yi stared at her and asked, Should I cough up some blood to prove injury? What should I do? Yi Xiaxuan asked half believing, unable to help but inquire, how can you recover then? Su Yi, a crafty old fox, said without changing his expression, I can recover. I don't plan to recover. Being an ordinary person is just fine. Note, the translation may not be a direct word-for-word -word translation, but aims to convey the meaning accurately in English. Yi Xiaxuan didn't know if what Su Yi said was true or false but she could only take it as true. When she wanted to help Su Yi up, Su Yi waved his hand and said, No need to help, it's late, go back. Oh, Yi Xiaxuan could only follow behind Su Yi, not daring to ask more, nor daring to say more. She didn't dare to mention the incident where she had forcefully kissed Su Yi just now. They hadn't walked far when Su Yi suddenly said, You go back first, I want to take a walk alone. Yi Xiaxuan hurriedly said, Master, aren't you injured? Let me escort you back. Su Yi calmly said, I've only lost my cultivation. Walking is not a problem. You go back first. Didn't you say you wanted me to always be by your side in the future? Yi Xiaxuan pouted. Why did she feel that Su Yi was even more indifferent to her than before? Was it because of what had just happened? Su Yi turned his head slowly to stare at her, his eyes cold and clear. When I said you should be by my side all the time in the future, I meant you should follow me during the day. What time is it now? You should go back to sleep, shouldn't you? I can escort you back, sleep at your place. I can sleep on a chair, or not sleep. Yek Xiaxuan wanted to continue speaking, but she felt as though Su Yi's eyes had already seen through everything. It wasn't indifference, but rather a feeling of keeping her at a distance, which made her swallow all the words she wanted to say next. I, I'll go back then, master, be careful on your way, Yek Xiaxuan said meekly. With a pitiful look, hanging her head, her voice getting smaller. Su Yi also felt a headache. Yek Xiaxuan's pitiful appearance made him feel sorry for her. 
but for a moment, he really didn't know what to do. Being forcefully kissed by a disciple was something he had never encountered in all his years of living. It seemed like he had not been strict enough with her before. He couldn't just expel Yexiaxuan from the sect because of this incident, nor could he just ignore it. In fact, he didn't care much about what had just happened. He could just treat it as Yexiaxuan going crazy after drinking. He felt that he must be stricter with her in the future. He believed that as long as Yexiaxuan felt his authority as her master, this girl would definitely not have any more wild thoughts. So he continued walking without looking back, only to find that Yexiaxuan hadn't left, but was following from a distance. Maybe she was really worried about him. Forget it. Let her be. In fact, Suyi was not a particularly conservative person. Having lived for over 10,000 years, he always kept up with the times and was open to anything. He couldn't be bothered to deliberately do anything now, he just let things take their course. Suyi walked all the way, and Yexiaxuan followed all the way. When he returned to the courtyard on Wadong Street, it was already to 30 in the morning. Instead of going to sleep immediately, Suyi sat down on the old armchair under the Wadong tree. Come in, Suyi said in a flat tone. Yexiaxuan cautiously poked her head out, smiling brightly at Suyi. Master, surprised or not, Suyi didn't even lift his head and said, If you want to sleep, go inside. If not, focus on your cultivation. Yexiaxuan had promised Suyi that she would work hard on her cultivation, but Suyi told her to go inside to sleep. Come. She knew there was only one bed in Suyi's house. Traditionally, she rarely entered Suyi's bedroom. I will cultivate inside. Yixiaxuan smirked. Her previously low spirits instantly brightened up as she took small happy steps into Suyi's bedroom. Watching her, Suyi couldn't help but sigh softly. Where was the strictness he'd promised earlier? Yixiaxuan looked at the bed in front of her in Suyi's room, raised her eyebrows and smiled, then opened her arms and fell directly onto the bed. A slight wrinkle on her nose disappeared, and she smiled even more foolishly. She could vaguely smell a faint fragrance, so pleasant, just like the scent on Suyi. How nice. It's better to cultivate, so I won't be scolded again. Yexiaxuan squinted her eyes. She had already found out that Suyi's cultivation was probably not lost. Tricky old man. If he had really lost his cultivation, how did he notice her sneaking behind him earlier? Thinking this, Yexiaxuan no longer worried about Suyi but sat on the bed and started to cultivate. So he also had his own considerations. In this world, the best place for cultivation should be his bedroom. Although he always suppressed his aura of Tao, he also completely relaxed when sleeping. Everything in his bedroom unavoidably absorbed some fragments of the Tao. Tonight, Yexiaxuan had just comprehended a trace of sword intent. If she cultivated in his room, the benefits would surely be immense. So he had already done enough. Because of him, Yexiaxuan's luck had changed, making her likely to face a great catastrophe in the future. At that time, Suyi absolutely couldn't intervene anymore. Everything would rely on her own strength. If she wasn't strong enough, she might meet a tragic end. Currently, Suyi could confirm that Gutantan was the reincarnation of Young Shao Samsara and the inheritance she had was genuine. However, Suyi didn't necessarily have to continue any past relationships with her. After the incident with Lin Yan, he had already figured everything out. As the sky gradually lightened, Yexiaxuan still had her eyes closed, and faint mysterious runes crept into her body from all around the room as she breathed lightly. If the saints of the primordial era saw this scene, they would definitely be envious. All of these were pieces of Grand Tao. A mortal absorbing so many fragments of the Grand Tao was simply wasting precious resources. The fragments of the Tao contained various law powers and wouldn't necessarily affect her cultivation. Even if a foundation-building cultivator absorbs so many Tao fragments, the gains wouldn't be significant. If an almost saint from the primordial era cultivated in this room for a month, they would likely achieve the breakthrough to become a saint of chaos. Yexiaxuan had no idea of the magnitude of the celestial fortune she was receiving, just focusing on comprehending the sort intent she had just experienced. The sword strike that killed Sujinfu was thrust in a fit of extreme anger, she needed to re-comprehend it now. Surely it shouldn't require accumulating anger points to use it again. When she opened her eyes, she exhaled heavily and a smile appeared on her face. She felt an unprecedented sense of clarity when she recalled the sword strike she unleashed Tan the one Suyi displayed on Jinyan Mountain. Especially when she comprehended the sword strikes before Suyi's, she felt as if those strikes had been her own, 
deepening her understanding of the sword method. Just overnight, the golden pill in her spiritual sense had evolved into the form of a pale golden small sword, clearly embarking on a path distinctly different from that of other cultivators. As soon as it was light out, so you went out to buy groceries. He had been living on this street for a while and was quite friendly with the neighbors. As he walked out of the courtyard, many people greeted him. So he arrived at Zhang Ting's stall, where a few customers were occasionally buying so milk and fried dough sticks. Si Yi, you're back. Zhang Ting smiled at Si Yi and asked, having lunch at home today. Si Yi nodded, at home. Ting Ye, do you want to come over and eat with me? Not for now, wait for me a moment. Zhang Ting was clearly different from before when she was at the bar, with no makeup on her face but looking energetic. Si Yi remembered seeing Zhang Ting at the bar, where although her makeup was exquisite, one could see fatigue in her eyes. Drinking every night was not good for her. After greeting a few customers, Zhang Ting took out a bank card from her pocket and handed it to Su Yi, saying, Su Yi, thank you for before. There's 200,000 in this card, which Zhang Dan gave me last time for you. I'll pay you back first. Su Yi glanced at the bank card in her hand and smiled. Don't pay me back for now. Use this money for something. Consider it my investment. I'm just a student. I have no use for this money. He really didn't care about the money. And if John Ting hadn't mentioned it, he would have probably forgotten. Last time, Fenjia gave him a briefcase to reconcile with Su Yi. And at that time, John Ting needed money, so Su Yi gave it to her. However, at least she remembered the debt. All right. John Ting was also straightforward. Su Yi had done enough for her already. Since Su Yi said that, she might as well use the money to open a small shop and give Su Yi a share of the profits each month. If she incurred losses, she would have to find a way to repay Su Yi later. Su Yi didn't linger at Zhang Ting's stall for long. He bought some vegetables, eggs, and flour from the market. In the past month, Su Yi had gotten a better understanding of the current prices. When buying groceries, he enjoyed bargaining with the vendors. Upon returning home, he was in the middle of rolling out noodles when a car stopped at his door, and Bai Miao Miao came to visit. Last time they met, Bai Miao Miao had gotten closer to Su Yi planning to have another meal together. Today, Bai Miao Miao's friend was getting married, and she wanted Su Yi to accompany her to avoid being bothered by unsavory characters. After entering Su Yi's courtyard, she called out, Su Yi, are you up? At that moment, Su Yi was in the kitchen while Yishak Suan had just grasped the sword in tent, Tan was flipping around on Su Yi's bed. Hearing Bai Miao Miao's voice, they both came out together. Su Yi had already sensed Bai Miao Miao's arrival, so he nodded at her when he came out and said, Please have a seat. I'm making noodles. Have you eaten? Not yet. Bai Miao Miao glanced at Yishak Suan from time to time. What was going on? Every time she came over, Yishak Suan was in Su Yi's house. Today, Yishak Suan was here so early. She knew Yishak Suan lived in a suburban villa and typically wouldn't come this early in the morning. The only conclusion was that Yi Shak Suan had spent the night here. In that case, I'll cook some noodles for you. Su Yi felt somewhat helpless. She was somewhat like a customer. She had come over for a meal last time. And today it was obvious she had come over at a specific time. He invited Bai Miao Miao to have a bowl of noodles, and she later treated him to a nice meal, adding another 1,000 yuan. No matter how you calculated it, it was a profitable deal. Yi Shak Suan blinked and said to Su Yi, I want to eat too. In front of an outsider, she wasn't addressing him as her master. But by Miao Miao, this big woman who had come to find Su Yi as soon as the day broke, definitely had some ulterior motives. Su Yi glanced at her irritably and went into the kitchen. The courtyard was now left with by Miao Miao and Yi Shak Suan alone. By Miao Miao remember, when she first met Su Yi, Yi Huyen and Yi Shak Suan had set up a group chat. At that time, everyone in the group seemed to scorn Su Yi. But how things had changed in such a short period, it was hard to tell what was going on with Yi Huyan. But judging by Yi Shak Suan's actions, she probably already had feelings for Su Yi. Maybe even went to bed with him. Shall we go eat together? Yi Shak Suan smiled that by Miao Miao and found a wooden stool for her to sit on. She herself sat down on Su Yi's old armchair, looking like a gracious hostess. By Miao Miao squinted her eyes with a somewhat meaningful smile and asked in a low voice, Xiao Xuan. Did you not go home last night? Yi Shiak Suan subconsciously looked at Bai Miao Miao's big frame, trying hard to stand tall, but in the end feeling utterly defeated. No. I didn't go back. Yi Shiak Suan's cheeks blushed. 
Although she had only practiced in Su Yi's bedroom last night, she did not go home. It's moving quite fast. Dai Miao Miao wasn't surprised at all and even chuckled softly. It seems like you are planning on staying at his place for good. Asked this question. Yi Xuan nodded vigorously. Dai Miao Miao, this woman probably had ill intentions. All right, in that case, I won't trouble Su Yi anymore. After breakfast, I'll leave, said Bai Miao Mia. She had originally planned to have a meal and invite Su Yi to her friend's feast. But now that Yi Shiak Suan and Su Yi were in a romantic relationship, and even living together, it wouldn't be appropriate. Yi Shiak Suan nodded again, and curiously asked, Why were you inviting Su Yi? I had previously agreed with Su Yi that he'd accompany me to dinner for 1,000 yuan a meal. Yi Shiak Suan couldn't help but roll her eyes. Her master, who clearly wasn't short of money, was easily swayed by a meal worth a thousand yuan. If that were the case, she could just give Su Yi a billion and have him accompany her for meals every day. Of course, that was just wishful thinking. If she really did that, Su Yi would probably give her a cold look and then make her copy books, write characters, and practice martial arts. By Miao Miao gossiped with Yi Shiak Suan about the love story between her and Su Yi. Yi Shiak Suan was evasive until Su Yi's voice came from the kitchen. Yi Shiak Suan, come and bring the noodles. Yi Shiak Suan quickly got up and responded, coming. Then she excitedly walked into the kitchen to bring out the noodles. By Miao Miao watched this, feeling strange. This scene reminded her of her childhood, when her mother would call her to bring out the dishes after cooking. If they were a couple, Shouldn't Su Yi be the one to bring out the noodles for them to eat? And when Su Yi called out to Yi Shiak Suan, the tone was just like her mother calling her to eat. After Su Yi tucked to sips of noodles, he asked by Miao Miao, Are you asking me to go to your friend's wedding with you? By Miao Miao was eating her noodles with her head down. But upon hearing Su Yi's question, she slowly raised her head and carefully glanced at Yi Shiwan, then put down her chopsticks and smiled. I did have that thought. But maybe it's better not to. Su Yi had heard how Yi Xiuwan was talking about him outside. So he didn't even look at her and said, It's okay, I can go. Erm. Dai Miao Mia stole another glance at Yi Xiuwan, only to see this woman acting like a guilty child, not daring to lift her head, burying herself in her noodles, not saying a word. How is this like a normal couple relationship? Dai Miao Miao suddenly felt that the situation seemed to have become interesting again. Yi Xiuwan's words and actions just now were like that of a dog guarding food, even starting to assert her sovereignty publicly. But it was obvious that Su Yi did not acknowledge this girlfriend. Then let's go. Dai Miao Miao didn't have any other intentions towards Su Yi. She was just curious about where Su Yi's charm came from to make the princess of the Yi family lower her pride and assert her sovereignty. After we finish eating, I'll accompany you to buy some clothes. After all, it's a formal occasion. Dai Miao Miao winked and said, Consider the clothes a gift from me, your boss. Su Yi didn't refuse and instead chuckled. Boss is generous. Yi Xiu Wan continued to break the noodles in her bowl with her chopsticks, still not saying anything, her mood not looking good at all, basically not needing to be mentioned. Are you done? Let's go after we finish eating. Buying clothes will take some time. Su Yi had finished eating and then set down his bowl and chopsticks, saying, Let's go. Yi Xiuwan couldn't bear it any longer and raised her head, saying, I want to go too. Then go wash the bowl first. Su Yi had a good temper, but after breakfast, someone had to wash the dishes. Okay, wait for me. Yi Xiuwan immediately took the bowls and chopsticks to the kitchen to wash them. By Miao Miao was starting to doubt her own eyes. The princess of the Yi family was actually washing dishes. She really wanted to ask Su Yi how he did it. Yi Xiuwan was quick with her actions. In just a few minutes she had cleaned the dishes and then came out carrying a small bag. With a little smile on her face, she said, Let's go. I also need to buy some clothes. When it comes to buying clothes, how can you let other women choose for you? Let's go together. Dai Miao Miao couldn't possibly stop Yi Xiaowan, could she? As they were about to leave the yard, Su Dian came over carrying two bags of so milk. This time was when children woke up to have breakfast. Hey, brother Su Yi, have some so milk. Su Dian bit into a pack of so milk for herself, then handed another pack to Su Yi. Su Yi took the so milk without hesitation and said, You're going to school soon. Su Dian rolled her eyes at him and said, Today's Saturday. Oh, then do you want to join us at the gathering? Although this kid was a little annoying, compared to shopping with two women, 
so he thought it was more interesting to bring a child along. Su Diandian looked up at Su Yi and said, You tell my mom, when it comes to a gathering with good Fu, how could someone like Su Diandian refuse? She just worried that her mom wouldn't let her go. Let's go. I'll talk to your mom. Su Yi finished speaking and extended a finger. Su Diandian instinctively grabbed his finger, and the two walked towards her mom's stall. Yi Shiro Wan followed closely behind, while Bai Miao Miao got in her car and headed to the street. After Su Yi informed John Ting with Su Diandian in tow, he got into the car with her. Both Bai Miao Miao and Yi Shiro Wan were wealthy women so the places they shopped were not just any small stores. The car stopped at Henglon Square, a luxury shopping center in Qingzhou City. From the first floor to the fourth floor, Henglon Square shopping center housed top fashion brands from around the world. It was Su Yi's first time shopping in such a place, and the so-called big brands didn't seem that impressive to him. In his eyes, the cutting, workmanship, and materials were all mediocre. Su Yi, try this piece, and this one too. Bai Miao Miao led Su Yi into a high-end men's fashion store. Although she was buying clothes for Su Yi, she was also excited. Women are never just focused on the items they purchase, but rather on the shopping process itself. Su Yi couldn't be bothered to choose, so he randomly pointed at the suit Bai Miao Miao had chosen for him, and said, This one will do. No need to try the others. No. You have to wear this first. I still need to buy you another set. Yi Shiro Wan was not happy. Why did Bai Miao Miao get to choose clothes for Su Yi? The nearby salespeople could only smile professionally as they watched the scene. This young man was quite impressive, with two women competing to buy him clothes. Moreover, the two suits Bai Miao Miao picked were not cheat. Suit yourself, you watch Su Diandian. I'll go change the clothes. Su Yi picked up the first suit Bai Miao Miao selected and went to the fitting room. The size of this suit was just right, and when Su Yi came out wearing it, the salespeople in the store were all stunned. Unfortunately, Su Yi's previous appearance seemed like an average student, so wearing a suit might make him seem too mature, not in line with his character. But the moment Su Yi put it on and came out, it felt very comfortable. He was just naturally compatible with clothes, no matter what he wore, it looked good on him. After putting on the suit by Miao Miao chose, Su Yi looked like a dashing young noble. Belt, wallet, tie. Try them on. Yi Shiro Wan wasted no time and also put together a complete set for Su Yi in just a short while. And shoes. Change into a pair of leather shoes. Bai Miao Miao watched on the side, seeing how Yi Shou Wan was also getting serious about this matter. It seemed like she was taking it seriously. Leaving the store, Bai Miao Miao didn't mention anything, but Yi Shou Wan began leading Su Yi to a watch store. A man must have a good watch. Yi Shou Wan hadn't had a chance to go shopping with Su Yi before, so this time, since they were shopping, she wanted to make sure Su Yi was fully prepared. As they were talking, they had already arrived at the door of a Podak Philippe store. It was at this moment that Bai Yang In arrived at the door with a young man. Bai Miao Miao quickly linked arms with Su Yi and called out, Dad, what are you doing here? Hum, Miao Miao. Bai Yang In was slightly startled, his gaze lingering on Su Yi for a moment before looking at the young man next to him, his expression a bit unpleasant. Bai Yang In did not expect to encounter his daughter in such a place. He had indeed previously stated that he would no longer pressure Bai Miao Miao to marry, but recently, with the emergence of Lin Yun disrupting the situation, the major families in Jinmen seemed to have suddenly changed their attitudes and started integrating into society. Cultivation actually requires a lot of money, especially for these independent cultivators who do not have the abundant resources of major sex. They can only search for spiritual treasures and materials in the mundane world. In the past, due to the restrictions of the 13th Bureau, they still restrained themselves. Now, with Lin Yun breaking the status quo, they had a reason to integrate into society unless the 13th Bureau dealt with Lin Yun first. Moreover, due to the revival of spiritual energy, more and more independent cultivators were seeking opportunities. Big shots like Bai Yang In and Yuan Guo also realized the current situation and knew they needed a cultivation family to rely on. This was why there was the incident of Yu Hui and being set up on a blind date with Su Jin Fu. Just as the Yu family was involved, the Bai family was also not exempt. Bai Yang In had connections with the Tan family, one of the five major families in Jinmen. This time, Tan Xuan, the young master of the Tan family, who was visiting Qingzhou City, 
was instantly captivated by Bai Miao Mia. Bai Yang Yin and Ten Shu Wen came to the department store, with Ten Shu Wen wanting to buy a gift for Bai Miao Mia. In the end, he decided to give her a watch, and Bai Yang Yin set aside all matters to accompany him. However, they never expected to meet Bai Miao Mia at the entrance. What was more important was that Bai Miao Mia was holding hands with Su Yi. Ten Shuan stared at the two, his aura uncontrollably surging. After practicing last night, Yi Shak Suan's cultivation was even more condensed and restrained. Ten Shuan was only in the late stage of the Void Den realm and couldn't tell that Yi Shak Suan was a cultivator at all. And Su Yi didn't want him to see his cultivation level. So to Ten Shuen, Su Yi seemed like an ordinary person. At 25 years old and in the late stage of the Void Den realm, he was considered a young genius, and Ten Shuen had the pride to match. Miao Miao, who is this person? Ten Shuen's eyes were full of killing intent. By Miao Miao, still unaware, felt that Ten Shuen's gaze was somewhat frightening. Faced with his questioning tone, she frowned and asked, Who is he to you? When Bai Yang Yin heard his daughter's words, his face turned pale with fear. Even though the 13th Bureau had always proclaimed that cultivators were criminals and would be treated the same as ordinary people, who would willingly offend a cultivator. Admittedly, it was a crime, but where was the evidence? How much evidence could a powerful cultivator leave behind after killing an ordinary person? Meow meow. A Yang Yin had intended to matchmake his daughter with Tan Shuen. Even if they didn't end up together, they should at least avoid offending each other. Let's go. Let's ignore him. Bai Miao Miao, unaware of whom she had offended, pulled Su Yi and headed into the store. Ten Shuan's expression darkened. He hooked his fingers together, lightly flicked his fingers, and a thin silver needle flew towards the back of Su Yi's head. If this needle hit an ordinary person, it was guaranteed to kill them instantly. Su Yi walked into the store with Bai Miao Miao, completely unaware. Yi Xiaq Suan gently waved her finger, and an invisible sort energy shot out intercepting the silver needle in midair. A three-meter pillar suddenly exploded, with broken stones flying everywhere, startling the nearby pedestrians. Ha! Huh. Ten Shuan furrowed his brows and turned his gaze towards Yi Shiak Suan, realizing he couldn't see through her cultivation level. This situation basically meant Yi Shiak Suan's cultivation was higher than his, and this external release of sort energy showed that her strength was not weak. Yi Shiak Suan also glared fiercely at him, wondering if he dared to attack her master without her permission. Interesting. Ten Shu Wen sneered. Mr. Bai, it seems you already have a powerful backer. Bai Yang Yin had no idea what was happening and found Ten Shu Wen's words unsettling. This, Bai Yang Yin looked at the shattered pillar and was speechless for a moment. Is this the power of cultivators? What would happen if this power fell on a person? Bai Miao Miao also saw the shattered pillar and couldn't help but be surprised. She looked back at Ten Shu Wen, thinking he had done it to intimidate them. Earlier, Su Yi had hinted to her that he was also a cultivator. Let's go. Aren't we here to shop? But Su Yi remained calm and unperturbed, not even looking back, and continued walking into the store. These young people nowadays are so quick to resort to extreme measures. His temperament had indeed softened a lot now, or else Ten Shu Wen might not even have a body left if he had tried such a stunt a while ago. What satisfied Su Yi was the fact that Yi Shiak Suan had just displayed some abilities of a golden core cultivator. Those golden core cultivators were capable of flying in the sky, just like the legendary immortals. Yi Shiak Suan was barely managing to handle a simple display of her sword energy, which was somewhat embarrassing. Su Yi even thought about teaching her sword flight at some point. Technically, it should be easy for someone at the golden core level. By Miao Miao, seeing Tan Shuan's lack of action, entered the store with Su Yi. Let me gift you a watch. Yi Shiak Suan quickly stepped forward. How could she let her disciple do that? By Miao Miao clearly used Su Yi as a shield. If Su Yi and she were ordinary people, wouldn't Su Yi be dead by now? Sure. After entering the store, Su Yi saw the prices of the watches and realized they were quite valuable items just for telling the time. They were being sold for tens of thousands, or even hundreds of thousands, which almost overturned Su Yi's understanding of prices. Bai Miao Miao didn't want to snatch the gift-giving opportunity from Yi Shiak Suan. It had a different implication. When giving such a valuable item, as per Su Yi's temperament, he might not have accepted the gift if Bai Miao Miao had offered it, recalling the incident when he was working in the bar before. Upon hearing Su Yi's acceptance, Yi Shiak Suan quickly started selecting a watch for him. 
After some consideration, she chose a couple's watch set valued at over a million, not cheap, but not as expensive as some other watches available. Sister, can you show us these two pieces? Yi Xiaq Suan couldn't help smiling when she saw the couple's watch set. This would be the first gift she gave to Su Yi, if we exclude the belt and wallet she bought earlier. The crucial point was that it was a couple's set. Miss, you have a good eye. These two pieces are. The salesperson could tell that Yi Xiaq Suan and by Miao Miao were wealthy just by their appearance and style, so quickly praised them. Let's just pay with a card, no need for anything else. Yi Xiaq Suan was afraid the salesperson might ruin the moment by saying something that could make Su Yi refuse the gift. Miss, are you sure you want this set? The salesperson had encountered many wealthy customers, but rarely saw someone as easygoing as Yi Xiaq Suan. Yes, it's this set. You don't need to say more. Yi Xiaq Suan was feeling flustered. She doubted Su Yi understood the significance of the couple's watch set. After Su Yi and the others entered, Tan Weng Su and his group also did not leave, but instead followed in. When Tan Weng Su saw Yi Xiaq Suan buying a couple's watch for Su Yi, he couldn't help but laugh. It seemed like he had misunderstood. It turned out that the girl and that man were the actual couple. He then walked to the side and smiled at by Miao Miao. Miao Miao, I'm sorry for the misunderstanding earlier. See if there's anything you like, I'll get it for you. No need. By Miao Miao still held on to Su Yi's arm and asked, what did you misunderstand? I don't think there's any misunderstanding between us. The salesperson who was getting the watches for Si and his group was a bit puzzled. Why did she feel like the relationships in this group were off? One woman holding a man's arm, while another woman was buying couples watches with that man. Over 1,200,000. Not even blinking. What was most absurd was that the man even had a child with him. And then another man came to buy a watch for a woman holding onto another man's arm. Forget it. This situation was just too chaotic. Meow meow, you're still angry with me. I can tell now that this brother should be the couple with this lady. You don't need to deliberately hold on to him to annoy me. Ten Weng Su calmed down and felt there was no need to be so angry. Also, he didn't know who Yi Xiaq Suan really was. Yi Xiaq Suan's cultivation level was higher than his, that was a fact. It was best not to make enemies with such a person. By Miao Miao was truly annoyed. She had only had two meals and a chat with Tan Weng Su. What was he thinking? Did having two meals together mean they should already be thinking about what to name their future child? No. You didn't misunderstand. Su Yi is Miss Yi's boyfriend, but he's also my boyfriend. Two women sharing one man. Haven't you ever seen it before? By Miao Miao's anger reached its peak. She had talked with Tan Wang Su, and he seemed like the type who thought he was invincible, as if any woman who sought him would fall for him without hesitation. Two women sharing one man. Tan Wang Su was utterly astonished by Bai Miao Miao's words. The salespeople nearby were equally shocked that the world of the wealthy was something they couldn't understand. Perhaps this young man was exceptionally rich, handsome, young, and physically fit. In that case, it didn't seem too unacceptable. Maybe it was a case of judging by appearances rather than moral standards. As long as someone was good-looking, didn't commit outrageous acts, and didn't violate any major principles, it seemed like they could be understood by others. So Yi remained silent, feeling that things were getting absurd. Could someone really say such things? It seemed that Bai Miao Miao really despised this man. If Ten Weng Su hadn't acted against him earlier, or if Bai Miao Miao hadn't been so determined, he might have tried to explain to avoid ruining someone's relationship. But since Tan Weng Su had made an aggressive move right from the start, there was nothing strange about the girl not liking him back. The matter of two women sharing one man. Su Yi had experienced having 3,000 beauties in his harem, so it really wasn't a big deal. But Bai Yang Yin's mind was truly blown. His daughter was actually saying such things in front of him. If she were really with Su Yi, that's one thing. Considering the attitude of the old man towards Su Yi, it was highly likely that Su Yi was a powerful cultivator. But these two were clearly just acting. Based on his investigation, Su Yi was indeed extraordinary, but he was entangled with several women, and several seniors from their generation favored Su Yi. Whether it was true to women sharing one man, or acting, Bai Yang Yin would never accept it. Very well, Tan Weng Su stared at Su Yi, not angry but smiling. Your name is Su Yi, right? Su Yi nodded slightly and asked, What's your point? Ten Weng Su smirked, You're not bad. Locking eyes with Su Yi, 
Tan Wengsu unexpectedly launched a mental hypnosis attack on Su Yi. As a cultivator, in the late stage of the virtual Dan realm, his mental power was naturally much stronger than an ordinary person's. Although he couldn't instantly turn people into idiots like Su Yi could with just a glance, he could still perform deep hypnosis. He wanted to hypnotize Su Yi, to make him see himself as a dog. Tan Wengsu didn't believe that if Su Yi did something like a dog in front of everyone, by Miao Miao would still like him. Su Yi had recently become more amiable than before, due to the influence of the current environment. At least he wasn't randomly killing people anymore. Ten Wengsu had already made one move against him, but he was somewhat disdainful of dealing with such a small fry. But now dot 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 this was going too far. Sensing Tan Wengshu's hypnosis, Su Yi raised an eyebrow and decided to repay him in kind. The next moment, Tan Wengsu suddenly twitched, barked, stuck out his tongue, looked around, circled inside the store, and then walked up to a pillar, slowly lifted his leg. Ah, oh, what dot 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 everyone in the store was bewildered. What had triggered this behavior? Why was he mimicking a dog? Moreover, he hadn't even taken off his pants before lifting his leg to urinate. The yellow urine trickled down his pants, emitting a foul stench. Most of the people buying watches there were wealthy, but who had ever witnessed such a scene? Urinating was bad enough, but to do it in such a bewildering manner. And he hadn't even taken off his pants. Well, with or without pants, it seemed to amount to the same thing. Tan, what are you doing? Bai Yang Ying was also shocked. Ten Wengsu suddenly going mad like this. What kind of situation was this? Ten Wengsu seemed to not hear his words. He tilted his head, pondered for a moment, then decided to put both hands on the ground, stuck out his tongue, hopped around cutely. Brother Su Yi, is this big brother learning to be a little dog? Pointed out Su Dianian, somewhat thoughtfully. Su Dianian was referring to a classmate. It seemed that Su Yi nodded, saying, if you learn from him, you'll definitely be scolded by your mother at home. I don't want to learn. I want to learn how to be a little bunny, Su Dianian said, as she was about to crouch down but was pulled up by Su Yi. This was all Tan Wengshu's own doing. Su Yi had initially intended to let him off, but he insisted on courting disaster again. Su Yi's hypnosis was not like that of a virtual Dan cultivator. It was a more long-term kind. Once he was hypnotized, Tan Wengsu would be stuck being a dog for the rest of his life. And in this world, except for Su Yi, there was absolutely no one else who could then do this hypnosis. Mr. Su dot 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 please spare him. Bai Yang Yin felt somewhat powerless, unable to believe how a person who was fine just a moment ago suddenly turned out like this. Especially since his father, Bai Kishan, repeatedly warned not to offend Su Yi. Bai Yang Yin could guess that Su Yi must be a cultivator. Bai Yang Yin was unaware that Yi Xiaq Suan had also become a cultivator. With Tan Weng Su suddenly changing like this, he believed it must have been done by Su Yi. Su Yi looked at Bai Yang Yin and asked, Is he close to you? Bai Yang Yin hesitated for a moment, gestured aside, and said, Please come with me to talk. Su Yi had Yi Xiaq Suan lead Su Dian Yin and followed Bai Yang Yin to the side. At this point, Bai Yang Yin also understood it all. Indeed. It was the work of Su Yi. It seemed that Su Yi's cultivation level should be higher than that of Tan Wang Su, which explained why his father valued him so much. Mr. Su, I know Tan Wang Su has offended you, but he is now my guest. Bai Yang Yin hesitated for a moment, organized his words, and continued, I do not know how you view the Tan family's status, but I cannot afford to provoke the Tan family. If Tan Wang Su follows me and this situation arises, the Tan family will definitely come after me. Bai Kishan used to be Su Yi's servant. Compared to Tang Yaon's betrayal, Bai Kishan held great respect for Su Yi. Su Yi didn't want his descendants to face any unjust troubles. It truly made him wonder if he was to low-key at times, as there would always be some troublesome people coming to bother him. He glanced at Tan Wang Su, who had regained his senses, but was still lying on the ground with his tongue out and drooling everywhere. What? Once his eyes cleared up, the whole person felt adverse. What had he done? How did this happen? He clearly was the one hypnotizing Su Yi, so how did he end up being hypnotized instead? Though he was under hypnosis, he hadn't forgotten what he did just now. His pants were soaked, and he could feel the stares of the people in the shop. Dot 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 ah, I'll remember you. Today's grouch. The Tan family will come for you. Tan Wang Su pointed at Yi Shiak Suan. Furious. In his view, it must have been this woman. Otherwise, with Su Yi being an ordinary person, how could he possibly counter-hypnotize him? Yi Xiaxuan also looked back at him with a puzzled expression. Why her again? Last time, 
She willingly took the blame for Su Yi. And now the blame seemed to fall from the sky. However, Yi Shaq Suan's gaze landed on Su Yi. The old liar. Claiming his cultivation was ruined. Is this what being ruined looks like? Tan Weng Su roared in anger. Yet suddenly realized that his cultivation had completely vanished. To virtual elixir, he had painstakingly condensed disappeared directly, and he couldn't even feel the flow of energy in his body. Tan Weng Su glared at Yi Shaq Suan as if harboring an irreconcilable hatred. Yi Shaq Suan had also come to a realization. Taking one blame was bearable, but taking another was pushing it. She fiercely returned Tan Weng Su's stare, clearly hinting, keep staring, and your cultivation will be gone. Overwhelmed with shock, Tan Weng Su could only hurriedly flee, no longer displaying his previous arrogance. After Bai Yang and thanks Su Yan left, he quickly followed. After this incident, Bai Miao Miao's curiosity about Su Yi only grew. The sudden explosion of the stone pillar at the shot entrance, Tan Weng Su suddenly acting like a dog, and her father's words earlier, asking Su Yi to spare Tan Weng Su, made her wonder. Could it be that Su Yi was not only a cultivator, but a powerful one at that? After Tan Weng Su left, he immediately called home. While crying, he said, Dad, you have to avenge me. My cultivation has been ruined. Though the Tan family might not hold a significant position in the cultivation world, in the scattered cultivation families of Jin Cheng, they had a heritage of over 1,500 years. The family even had an ancestor in the separation and reunion stage, who was now 800 years old. Who did it? Tan Wengshu's father, also in the golden elixir stage, couldn't help but curse after hearing that his son's cultivation had been ruined. I told you to be low-key in your daily life. Don't think you're invincible. There are formidable experts everywhere. If you provoke the disciples of any major sex, you won't even know how you die. She seems to be a cultivator in the golden elixir stage. Tan Wengshu trembled all over, gritting his teeth. Even if you do not help me seek revenge, I'll die in Qingzhou. I'm now a useless person. Taking a deep breath, Tan Wengshu's father softened his tone a bit and asked, Do you know which sect she belongs to? I don't know. Tan Wengshu gnashed his teeth, but she ruined my cultivation. No matter where this matter goes, justice must be sought. Just because she's from a major sect, does that mean this matter should be left unresolved? Son, rest assured, I'll speak to the patriarch about this matter. Our Tan family members are not that easy to bully. Now return to Jin Cheng. I've heard that the Su family Su Jinfu was killed in Qingzhou, and that old man from the Su family will probably be heading there. Let's investigate the background of the person who injured you before making any decisions. His father wasn't blinded by hatred. The situation in Qingzhou was currently chaotic, and without understanding the opposing party's background, even he dared not act rashly. After waiting for Tan Wengsu to finish his call and asking if he was okay, Bai Yangin was insulted by Tan Wengshu's furious demand for clothes and his weight in the bathroom. With a determined gaze, Bai Yangin, as the head of the Bai family, understood the vast difference between mortals and cultivators. As he watched Tan Wengshu walk towards the restroom, he became more steadfast in finding a powerful and reliable cultivator for support. Su Yi, if the Tan family caused trouble for him this time, and he came out unscathed, then he would be the one. When he returned, he definitely had to ask his father about Su Yi's background. Seeing Yi Shiak Suan once again taking the blame for him, Su Yi couldn't help but chuckle. He finally realized the benefits of having her as a disciple. He might as well let her bear the blame in the future, helping her establish some enemies and building her motivation. With Yi Shiak Suan's current understanding of sword intent, unless a cultivator at the Yuanying or Ascension stage came after her, she could at least fight on relatively equal terms. If cultivators at the Nasan Soul or Ascension stage really went after Yi Shiak Suan due to these matters, then Su Yi could only resort to true retaliatory measures. Jin Men, Tiani Temple. A stone statue is enshrined here, wearing a long robe that reaches the ground, hands behind its back. Due to the passage of time, the face has become somewhat blurred. All the scattered cultivators in Jin Men worship the same deity. It is said that in the pre chin period, the status of immortal cultivators was revered, but they did not regard common people highly. At that time, an ancient god lived in Jinmen and taught some Czech cultivation methods to the local residents. Some major sect cultivators intended to make Jinmen their territory, but they were driven away by the ancient god. Over time, more and more scattered cultivators sought refuge in Jinmen. Even though the ancient god had left, 
Jinmen became a gathering place for scattered cultivators. The scattered cultivators of Jinmen erected a stone statue in the Tiandi Temple to honor the ancient god, whom they call the Supreme Highest God. At this point, the five major families of scattered cultivators in Jinmen have summoned representatives from various families to convene a family meeting. What's going on today? I remember the last family meeting was 30 years ago, right? Could it be that they want us all to return to worldly cultivation? Ancestor said we shouldn't compete with those major sects. Don't you know about this? Su Jin Fu recently, and Tu Ching Zhou An was killed. And just half a day ago, Tan Weng Su from the Tan family was crippled. It seems they encountered a disciple from one of the major sects in Qing Zhou. Isn't this a big deal? How long has it been? Both families' descendants are done for. Interesting. Shh, you brat, lower your voice. Are you trying to get our family in trouble? How dare you say such things? Outside the Qianyi temple, many who were not qualified to attend the family meeting were discussing fervently. Though it is now the 21st century and we had entered a civilized society advocating equality for all. In Jinmen, there are still clear social classes among immortal cultivators. The descendants of the five major families are often arrogant and oppressive, and they have not hesitated to bully others. Many local cultivators have had to relocate because they couldn't bear their bullying. Even ordinary scattered cultivators in Jinmen receive a certain level of protection since their cultivation strength is too low, and being alone outside could be life-threatening if they encounter devil cultivators. Most people only know about the 13 sects, but in the world of cultivation, there are many devil cultivators who specifically hunt down lone cultivators, seize treasures, and snatch cultivation daces. Without backing and with insufficient strength, cultivators wandering about are much more dangerous than ordinary people. At the family meeting, led by the patriarchs of the five major families, 18 people each took turns offering incense to the supreme highest god in the Chandi temple. Everyone, I believe you have received the news. My son, Su Jinfu, was killed in Qingzhou the other day. And today Tan Wenhao from the Tan family was crippled in Qingzhou. Should we seek revenge for this grudge? Su Changmo, the current head of the Su family, stood beneath the statue, asking loudly, if we don't avenge this enmity, how will our immortal cultivators in Jinmen establish themselves in the cultivation world? If some sect tells us to get out of Jinmen in the future, how will we handle it? Tan Faiwen, the head of the Tan family, shouted indignantly, of course, this enmity must be avenged. If we're bullied like this and pretend nothing happened, once it gets out, It'll disgrace our entire Jinmen. When our family members go out again in the future, won't they just be random targets for slaughter? Apart from the Su and Tan families, the other three major families remained silent. Finally, someone among the onlookers behind them spoke up. Su Lao, have you found out who did it? Su Changmo narrowed his eyes slightly and said, We have already found out. My son Su Jinfu went to Qingzhou with the Yin and Yan universe ruler given by our ancestor. And it also contained a strand of the ancestor's soul. Dot, dot, dot. If I remember correctly, Su Jinfu had already reached the Golden Kur realm, carrying the Yin and Yan universe ruler, but he was directly eradicated. What was the cultivator who killed him's cultivation level? Aang Cheng, patriarch of the Aang family in the five major families, stroked his beard, frowning. Could it be a master above the nascent soul stage? It would then be beyond the younger generation of cultivators. Su Changmo was interrupted but didn't get angry. He continued, No. This time, we found out that the person who killed my son is the same one who crippled Tan Meng Su. Wu Wen's from the 13 sects has also approached me. He is now waiting outside. The same person is it aimed at all the major families in Jinmen. Aang Ching wrinkled his brow. Now that spiritual energy has returned, Everything is said to originate from Qingzhou. Could it be that some major sect doesn't want us to go to Qingzhou? That person is not a disciple of any major sect. He should be just a scattered cultivator. He even went to Qingyun Mount some time ago and single-handedly seized a spiritual spot from Qingzhou University. Are you talking about that woman Yixiak Suan? I also went to Qingyun Mountain for the competition. That woman is indeed extremely powerful. She broke Yuan Heron's innate Bagua formation with one sore, but she's said to be only at the Golden Core realm. Ten Faiwen fell silent for a moment, frowned, and said, The key is, a little over a month ago, she was still an ordinary person, and as far as I know, she hadn't joined any sect. When this was said, the room fell silent. Just over a month ago, she was an ordinary person, 
Maud affiliated with any sect, and now she is a gold core expert who can break you on Heron's innate Bagua formation with one strike. The information contained in this is quite significant, especially when considering the place of Qingzhou. Besides a few people who thought Yi Xuan was exceptionally talented, most thought that she must have obtained a powerful treasure. If she was truly a direct disciple of some major sect, perhaps they would think twice before messing with her, at most sending representatives from the 13 sects for a verbal confrontation, and in the end, they might even get beaten up. But Yi Xuan is just a scattered cultivator with no background, holding powerful treasures. How could they not seek revenge in this case? Killing someone for treasure and leaving no trace of fault is also a possibility. Su Changmo's eyes lit up as he spoke before others did, and after thinking for a moment, they all showed a look of indignation, saying, This enmity, my Su family will avenge. He even said to Tan Wenfei, Brother Tan, rest assured, my Su family will seek justice for your son. Tan Wenfei was stunned. Did he act foolishly just now? He found out that Yi Shek Suan was a scattered cultivator without a background and with valuable treasures, so why did he speak? One could simply go and seek revenge, kill to seize treasures, and be done with it. And now the Su family wanted to take the initiative. Su brother, let my Tan family handle our grudge on our own. A cultivator at the Golden Core Realm, no matter how powerful the magical treasures on their body are, they can still be suppressed in terms of realm. If people like Yi Shek Suan can reach the Golden Core Realm in just over a month, then by obtaining the magical treasures in Yi Shek Suan's hands, wouldn't they be able to directly reach a higher realm? They could even ascend to the Immortal Realm or achieve eternal life. How could Tan Wenfei miss such an opportunity? In this matter, having his son disabled is already nothing. After all, once a cultivator's cultivation reaches a certain level, their lifespan will only increase, and the life and death of their descendants will become less important. Su Changmo's face immediately fell upon hearing Ten Wenfei's words, coldly saying, Your Ten Wengsu was merely disabled in cultivation, while my Su Jinfu was killed directly, not leaving behind even bones. My Su family will seek revenge swiftly. Ten Wenfei's expression was equally grim. As independent cultivators from lesser families, they already had limited resources. If something like this happened now, being able to obtain a powerful magical treasure could be like a shortcut to success. Since it was his investigation and his son had been disabled, now Su Changmo wanted to reap the benefits alone. How could that be possible? My son's revenge, I must personally avenge it. Since brother Su also wants revenge, why don't we join forces, said Tan Wenfei. Tan Wenfei naturally refused to fall behind. If he did nothing in this matter, wouldn't all the benefits be taken by Su's family? If the members of Su's family went to kill Yi Shek Suan and then returned, wouldn't it put even more pressure on them? All right, why don't just the two of us go together and demand justice from Yi Shek Suan? Su Changmo also felt that this matter needed to be personally handled. If a commoner could become a Golden Core expert in just a month with a secret treasure, how could they let someone else handle it? The heads of the other three major families understood what was going on between the two of them. They exchanged glances and Ah Aang Ching said, Brothers, today we convened this clan meeting mainly to discuss seeking revenge for you two juniors. Moreover, the other party is just a golden core cultivator without any sect, why would you two need to take action? The head of the Zhang family also said, Yes, seeking revenge for you two relatives is our duty, and the other party's realm is not so high. It's better to let each family's younger generation resolve this matter, to avoid being criticized for bullying the weak. The head of the Long family, Lan Heo Chu, suddenly said, The people from the 13 divisions are here this time to talk about my son being seriously injured by the Yi Shek Suan. So our Long family must take a stand on this matter. Su Changmo asked, Your son Lan Hao was also injured by the Yi Shek Suan woman. Why didn't I hear you mention it? Lan Heo Chu gritted his teeth and said, I was injured. What else needs to be said? A golden core cultivator who had just practiced for a little over a month managed to disable three young people from Jinmen. How can such a matter be left unsettled? Since things have come to this point, why don't we send three young people from each family to Qingzhou to see what skills is he surname person has? Long Heochu also understood that if Ten Wenfei and Su Changmo took action, Yi Xiaq Suan would undoubtedly die but the treasures in Yi Shiak Suan's hands would fall into their hands. There might be some secrets behind Yi Shiak Suan. What if she discovered some ancient ruins? Who wouldn't want to get a piece of that action? 
Sending several elite members from each family would give them some opportunities. Moreover, his long family's disciples had also been injured by Yi Shiak Suan. So why couldn't he get involved? Su Chong Mo and Ten Wenfei's faces were not looking good, but the matter had already come to this point, and the family reunion had been convened. The others were seeking revenge for them. Could they still refuse? Moreover, they were all savvy individuals, so everyone understood each other's real intentions. Even if they disagreed now, if Su Chan Mo and Tan Wenfei went to Qingzhou, wouldn't the heads of those other families join hands to go as well? If a real fight broke out, they might not end up well. That makes sense. In that case, let each family send three young people at the Golden Kur realm. As the first family of Jinmen, the Su family could only compromise in this major situation. Tan Wenfei, of course, had nothing more to say. His son had only been disabled in cultivation while Su Jingfu hadn't even left any ashes behind. Since Su Chanmo had made a concession, what more could he say? This is how the matter was settled happily. Su Chanmo then said, Since the matter has been decided, let's talk to the people from the 13 divisions, they suggest handling this privately. When Su Chanmo said this, everyone laughed. Handle it privately. Generally speaking, if there was a conflict among cultivators, settling it privately was simple. Both parties would agree to a duel set the stakes, and under the condition of not endangering lives, the winner takes all. Afterwards, they wouldn't hold any grudges. If they didn't settle it privately, then that meant involving the 13 divisions, where they would gather the parties involved, explain the Kazan effect of the matter, present evidence, and settle accounts, requiring compensation or imprisonment if necessary. Usually, cultivators rarely resolve conflicts through the 13 divisions, as it was a blow to their reputation. In the realm of cultivation, the rule was, might makes right. If a conflict arose and they involved the 13 divisions, where would their face be? Wu Wens had been in Jinmen for some time now. Before coming, he only knew about Ji Shak Suan incapacitating Long Hao the Long family. But after standing in front of the Chiabi temple for a while and hearing people around discussing, he suddenly felt uneasy. He hadn't heard anyone mention anything about the Long family. The discussions were all about the Suan Tan families all related to people being disabled in Qingzhou. Could it really be a coincidence, offending three out of the five major families? One person disabled, one wiped out, one incapacitated. Wu Wens felt that his trip might not be going too well. How could they settle it privately in such a situation? Just have a fight and it's done. How would they determine the result? And, could it possibly be the same person behind these three incidents? If they were all done by that lady Yi Shiak Suan, what should he do? If he entered, would he be beaten on the spot? After all, Mr. Su had lost his son. He didn't even ask Gu Tan Tan to come with him this time. If a fight really broke out, wouldn't he be in big trouble? Seeing the unfavorable situation, Gu Wen slipped aside and called Old Yang. Old Yang, something has come up on my aunt. He explained his situation to Old Yang and asked for advice on how to handle it. After listening, Old Yang paused and said, if these three incidents were all caused by Yishak Suan, let them do as they please. We won't interfere. Lao Yang already knows Su Yi's strength. Thousands of earthly immortals have been wiped out. What significance do those scattered cultivators in Jinmen have? Thirteen places also want to pursue peace as much as possible. But if some people insist on seeking death, there is no way to stop them. Wu Wenzer hesitated for a moment and asked, Shouldn't I advise a little? He also understood the seriousness of the situation. Although he didn't know Su Yi's strength, but the power displayed by Yi Shak Suan was already terrifying. From the last incident of the collective evaporation of earthly immortals in Fengjing Town, it is not difficult to see that Yi Shak Suan may have a powerful figure behind her. Lao Yan hesitated for a moment and said, You try to persuade them as much as possible. Settle things privately. If you can dot 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 don't mention the Fengjing incident. If they really don't listen, just let them be as long as they don't harm ordinary people. Other than that, it doesn't matter. After all, spiritual energy is reviving now. With that, Lao Yan paused, took a deep breath, and said, Ziwu, I have retired now. The work in the department will be handed over to you and Tong Tong. In the future, you should consider how to handle such matters. Don't come to ask me. I understand. Wu Wenzer also knew that if he continued to ask Lao Yan about everything in the future, he would never mature. He was also a cultivator in the early stage of the Golden Den realm. Having lived for over 200 years, 
Although most of the time was spent in seclusion cultivating, he should have matured in some ways. After hanging up the phone, someone from the Temple of Heaven and Earth came out to invite Wu Wenzer in. Wu Wenzer put away his phone, recalling the tone and method Lao Yan used to handle such matters when he was by his side, took a deep breath, nodded at the person, straightened his chest, and walked in slowly. Things should not be rushed. Behind him stood the whole country, he represented the country, even if facing any major sect, he should not show any signs of panic. As Wu Wenzer entered the Temple of Heaven and Earth, over twenty pairs of eyes were fixed on him. Several of these people were masters in the Foundation and Establishment realm, much stronger than him. If they really wanted to kill him here, it would be a piece of cake. Despite the strong oppression, his face remained somewhat pale. Sweat drops the size of Sobeans rolled uncontrollably from his forehead. Do you want to fight me? Wu Wenzer was under tremendous pressure, but he raised his eyebrows and calmly asked, or do you want to challenge our 13 places directly? Su Changmo did not release the pressure. Instead, he smiled and said, So, Director Wu, you want to use the 13 places to pressure us? What a grand authority. After speaking, he increased the pressure again. Wu Wenzer, one realm lower than Su Changmo, and facing several experts exerting pressure simultaneously, if it were any other golden den cultivator. They might have already knelt down by now. Wu Wenzer couldn't help it and spat out blood directly. The blue stone under his feet had already cracked, but his posture remained upright. Not only did he not kneel down, he even chuckled softly. Hehe, <laughs> is this the hospitality of your Jinmen? Why don't you just kill me? Su Changmo frowned, quickly relieved the pressure. He intended to assert authority over the 13 places, but didn't expect Wu Wenzer to be so tough. They really dared not kill. Wu Wenzer on the spot, wouldn't that just be making unnecessary enemies? Ku Tong Tong of the Thirteen Places was unrivaled among the younger generation, and the relationship between the Thirteen Places and the heads of the major sects was quite deep. In recent years, the disciples of the major sects who practiced in the mortal world had almost all received favors from the Thirteen Places, and many of them had gained practical experience there. It was said that Wu Wenzer also descended from Kunlun Mountain. Although his cultivation level was not high, his background was not insignificant. Also, modern weapons were unexpectedly powerful, even Foundation and Establishment experts would have a hard time facing a fully armed military force. Director Wu is joking. Mr. Su is just grieving the loss of his son and has no hostility towards you. The Thirteen Places have always been quite friendly towards us. Su Changmo stared at Wu Wenzer and asked, Director Wu, don't you know that besides Lan Hao, my son, Su Jinfu also fell in Qingzhou this time. And Tan Weng Su from the Tan family had his cultivation disabled by someone. Wu Wenzer's face also turned icy cold, saying, I only know that Long Hao tried to attack others first, but ended up being disabled himself. Long Hao Chu angrily shouted, You bullshit. What gives you the right to say my son attacked first? Wu Wenzer smiled lightly and said, The hotel has surveillance cameras. I have evidence. If you want evidence, it's in my car. Long Heo Chu was momentarily speechless, while Su Chan Mo continued. Then my son died at the hands of that Yi Shiak Suan. How do you account for that? And what about Ten Weng Su from the Tan family? Both incidents were caused by that woman. Wu Wenzer smirked and said, If everyone wants to know the cause of the incidents, I can help find the surveillance footage. Nowadays, Ching Zhou is full of surveillance cameras, Determining right from wrong should not be a problem, surveillance. I only know blood for blood. Su Chang Mo's eyes narrowed. By your tone, are you trying to shield that woman? I heard that she fought for the 13 places and won a spiritual area at Qing Zhou University. How do we know if the surveillance you find is authentic? Wu Wenzer asked. So Mr. Su, what do you want? Do you not accept my mediation? Mediation? My son is dead. That woman must pay the price. Su Chang Mo directly shut down anything Wu Wenzer wanted to say, not accepting any mediation and refusing to view the surveillance footage. The situation had reached this point. Did it matter who was right or wrong? Wu Wenzer was also angry, saying, I have recorded everything you've said and sent it back to the 13 places. Since none of you accept our mediation and refuse to view the surveillance footage, let's handle this according to the old rules of the cultivation world. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. From now on, the cultivators of Jinmen will not be protected by the 13 places. But if you dare to harm ordinary people during battles with cultivators, you will be killed. Wu Wenzer said coldly, Today, 
Everything you have sent and done will be circulated to every employee's phone in the 13 places. In addition, what I said today will also be communicated to all the allies of the 13 places. I hope you take care of yourselves. Wu Wen's words, when spoken, not only drew mockery from those around him. When do the cultivators of our Jinmen need your protection? Yet, their cultivation may not be high, but their temper sure is. We don't need your protection. Since it's come to this, in the future, don't bother with whatever we do. Even Tan Wenfei couldn't help but sneer. In all of the 13 sectors, you only have one natural-born douse that you can be proud of. The rest are just freeloaders. You really think highly of yourselves? Wu Wen stayed silent, while Su Chanmo's face drastically changed. He quickly reprimanded Tan Wenfei. Old Tan, what are you saying? You better apologize to Director Wu. Apologize? Apologize for what? I'm just speaking the truth. Tan Wenfei, a late-stage golden elixir cultivator, considered himself higher in cultivation than Wu Wen's hand didn't pay him any mind. In his eyes, even if someone like Gu Tang Tang came to their Jinmen, they should keep a low profile. After all, who doesn't have ancestors? Wu Wen's waved his hand. No need to apologize. The words I speak represent the entire 13 sectors. That's it, everyone. Goodbye. With that, he turned and left. Su Chang Mo hurriedly called out, Director Wu. With a decision like this, does Senior Yang know? Did you receive approval from your superiors? Wu Wen's didn't look back. The words you all just said have already spread to the entire 13 sectors. Senior Yang has retired. And now my word is law. I believe there will be no questioning from above regarding my decision. With that, he directly walked out. Su Chang Mo watched Wu Wen's departing figure, clench his fist, his eyes twitching. His gaze swept over everyone as he gritted his teeth and asked, Are you all fools? Losing the protection of the 13 sectors, how can we establish ourselves in the cultivation world? Ten Wenfei disdainfully said, When have we ever needed their protection? Su Chang Mo let out a heavy sigh, sat down, and with one palm, shattered the solid wood table next to him. He exclaimed, Have you all really not seen the light? In the Tiadi temple, everyone looked at Su Chanmo, unsure of what he meant. In their memory, it seemed like their Jinmen was a powerful group that never saw protection from the 13 sectors. Su Chanmo's expression was complex as he said, If I'm not mistaken, the words and actions we just displayed were recorded by cameras. We have offended the entire 13 sectors with our words. They've got it all on record. Tan Wenfei remained puzzled and joked, offended or not. So what? We can just avoid interacting with them in the future. They don't control us. Isn't that better? Better? Indeed. Within the 13 sectors, there are many disciples from major sects. Though most are not direct disciples, your words have offended them all. Su Chan Mo laughed. You've offended the entire cultivation world with just a few words. Quite impressive. The smile on Ten Wenfei's face instantly stiffened. His earlier remark about only one remarkable Dao physique in the 13 sectors implied that the disciples of major sects were all useless. Not only that, you should know that even the demonic cultivators must register with the 13 sectors. They are considered allies. Now that you've offended them all, the 13 sectors won't follow the same rules for us anymore. From now on, our Jinmen disciples going out will only abide by one principle, might makes right. Su Chang Mo glared at Ten Wenfei and asked, Do you think our Jinmen disciples are ready to dominate the world? Many demonic cultivators were allies of the 13 sectors too. Even though not direct disciples, they adhered to the 13 sectors rules on the surface and were cautious not to cross certain lines. But with Wu Wen's declaring that their Jinmen would no longer seek protection, wouldn't these demonic cultivators eye the loose cultivators of Jinmen? The eyes of the entire cultivation world would be on them, and no one would hold back due to legal constraints. It's possible that a large number of demonic cultivators were already heading towards Jinmen. While they did have ancestors who hadn't ascended, most of them kept to themselves and focused on cultivation. Also, among cultivators above the nascent infant stage, there were agreements not to act recklessly as their actions could have vast repercussions. In this situation, unless they all stayed within Jinmen, it would be challenging to establish their presence in the outside world. With matters having come to this, since we have decided to seek revenge from Ishiak Suan, let's set off now. Su Chang Mo took a deep breath and said, let's not beat around the bush. One family should send either one nascent infant cultivator or three golden elixir experts to Qingzhou. Kill, 
seize treasures, and immediately return without splitting up. After acquiring the treasures, we'll determine how to share them when we return. Su Changmo couldn't hesitate anymore. They had to take a risk. A group of experts going to kill a golden elixir cultivator shouldn't fail. Traveling in a group could also prevent ambushes along the way. A quick battle, they could return in two days. After all, Jinmen still had protection from various ancestors. As long as they stayed inside, there would be no danger to their lives. Su Yi returned from a friend's wedding and found Yi Xuan was still around. He saw the video sent out by Wu Wens. Initially planning to share it with Yi Xuan, he realized she had already received it. It seemed this video wasn't only for 13 sectors employees, but for all registered cultivators. Master, are they trying to kill me? What should I do? Yi Xuan was unused to dealing with such situations, finding it hard to believe someone wanted her dead. Su Yi, engrossed in watching anime, didn't even look up as you reply, either wait for them to come to you, or you go to them. UH go to them, Yi Xuan felt uncomfortable. I don't like killing, Su Yi said. This is your affair. My cultivation is crippled, and I can't unseal your sword spirit for you. What a straightforward way to say his cultivation was crippled. He made it clear he wouldn't intervene and left her to deal with it herself. They won't harm my family, will they? Yi Xuan suddenly realized this possibility. Give a call to Gu Tan Tan. Considering the circumstances, you can request protection for your family. Also dot 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 they probably think you possess something valuable and want to kill you for it, so they shouldn't target your family, Su Yi said. Still watching anime, they won't stay outside for long. At most, just these two days. Your survival is the priority. Yex Yaxuan was a bit convinced by her dear master. From the video sent by Wu Wens, it was evident that a group of people wanted to kill her. Moreover, Wu Wens's strength was not weak. In Jinmen, he had already been forced to cough up blood just by his imposing aura. Yet, with so many people wanting to kill her, her master didn't seem worried at all. He was still watching cartoons, even laughing. Master, can you tell what cultivation level those people are? Yex Yaxuan was fuming as she sat on a stone bench, staring at Su Yi with a sullen face. Su Yi didn't even bother looking up, casually saying, those who can become the head of a cultivation family should at least be at the Golden Core realm. If it were me, I'd send a dozen or so foundation establishment experts directly if I wanted to kill you. What? Yex Yaxuan's face turned green. A dozen foundation establishment experts. Are they overestimating me? I'm still at the Golden Core realm. So Yi finally pressed the pause button, lifting his head with a smile. Do you think they would send a few lower level experts first to gain experience? When you get stronger, they might send one or two slightly higher level experts for you to counter kill. Then you can become an unbeatable female lead and directly wipe them out in one go. Listening to her master's tone, Yaxiaxuan suddenly felt that her master seemed to have been studying a lot lately. Was this still the same teacher who couldn't even order takeout? Shouldn't it be normal? Yaxiaxuan murmured softly, how could they just send so many experts to kill me, soon as they come? Then raise your pillow a bit higher when you sleep at night, Su Yi said. Lowering his head again, pressing play, and continued, they have offended director with this time, they need to be careful when going out, not forming groups, their own safety might be a problem. Okay, so what should I do? Yex Yaxuan stare, saying, Master, you can't just watch your disciple being beaten to death by people, Su Yi said. Then cultivate well, think of ways to survive. I'm disabled now, don't count on me. At most, Su Yi could only analyze the current situation for Yex Yaxuan, unless the other party sent out cultivation experts above the foundation establishment realm, he wouldn't interfere. Yex Yaxuan took a deep breath, saying, but they will come to kill me in two days, even if I cultivate, I can't break through to the foundation establishment realm overnight. Find a way yourself, don't bother me. Su Yi furrowed his brow slightly, saying, you didn't put in the effort to cultivate diligently on normal days, and now that you face trouble, you realize how weak you are. Okay, I'll solve it myself. Yex Yaxuan didn't dare to have any more expectations of her master. How should she solve it? Honestly, she was not very clear about her own strength. She only knew that she was indeed quite strong, but how powerful she had become, and how far she was from experts at the foundation establishment realm, she was unsure. If, as Su Yi described, she was surrounded by dozen foundation establishment experts, what should she do? Hum, wait. Master, 
Did you just say they can't stay outside for long? At most just these two days. Yexiaxuan suddenly discovered a crucial point. Why won't they dare to stay longer? So you fell silent for a moment, saying, Are you a blockhead? You aren't from section 13. Yet you received Wu Wenzi's video. So as Wu Wen said, all the cultivation families registered with section 13 received this video. The people in Jinmen have already made enemies across the cultivation world. Why would they dare to stay outside for long? Are they tired of living? Oh. Yexiaxuan pondered for a moment and chuckled. Then I'll go cultivate. Master. Do you want to sleep? I'm not sleeping. I want to watch more anime. So he waved his hand, indicating that Yexiaxuan shouldn't bother him again. Thank you, master. Yexiaxuan wasn't stupid either. She could clearly feel that Suyi's cultivation speed was much faster in his bedroom than anywhere else. There must be something special about his room. Despite Suyi's proud and aloof demeanor, he stayed up all night watching anime. Wasn't this inviting her to cultivate in his bedroom? With Suyi's guidance, Yexiaxuan now had a clear understanding of the current situation. Perhaps the people from Jinmen would send many experts to kill her. However, since the people in Jinmen had offended the entire cultivation world, why should she panic? After entering the bedroom, Yexiaxuan called Gutantan. Gutantan. Yes, this is Yexiaxuan. Without waiting for Yexiaxuan to speak, Gutantan said, I've had people watching your family. If the people from Jinmen harm ordinary people or cause severe disruptions, I lacked. Yexiaxuan's mouth twitched. Wasn't Gutantan that naive girl? How come she seemed to have seen through everything already? She even started hinting at what Yexiaxuan should do. All right, thank you. Yexiaxuan quickly hung up. Earlier, when Suyi said there might be a dozen Foundation establishment experts coming to attack her, she was a bit flustered. But now, she not only felt calm but even wanted to laugh a bit. It was actually quite simple to deal with such a situation. The simplest way was to hide for a few days. If she couldn't win, was it not acceptable to hide? Another method was to stay in crowded places. Once the people from Jinmen entered Qingzhou City, they would definitely be watched by Gutantang and the others. If the people from Jinmen laid hands on her in crowded places and harmed ordinary people or caused severe disruptions, the people from Section 13 would intervene. After all, Wu Wens had said in the video, kill without fail. Yexiaxuan didn't want to harm ordinary people either, because she thought of a good place to go, Kingshan Bookstore. It was full of cultivators, and if anything happened inside the school, at the very least, Shanwu Wolin would help her and even ensure justice. In a one-on-one -on -one situation, she wasn't afraid of anyone. For now, she would focus on cultivating. With a rough plan in mind, Yexiaxuan began to cultivate peacefully. So he had taught her many techniques from other cultivators when they were on King Yun Mountain, but she hadn't comprehended much. Thinking about the sword intent she understood last night, she sat on the bed and began to try and comprehend other techniques. If she could comprehend other techniques tonight, it would also prove that the room had something special about it, and she could just annex Suyi's bedroom in the future. Suyi was indeed staying up all night watching anime. Currently, he had no interest in fighting or killing people. Wouldn't a peaceful life of watching dramas every day be fulfilling? Fighting and killing were simply uncivilized. When Yishak Suan emerged from Suyi's bedroom, she saw Su Dianian feeding the rabbits under the phoenix tree. Dianian, where's brother Suyi? Yishak Suan took out her phone and checked the time only to realize it was already past one in the afternoon the next day. Su Diandian squatted on the ground, lifted her head, and said, Brother Su Yi went to school. Indeed, her master really didn't intend to keep an eye on her. It's fine this way. She must prove herself in front of her master and show him with her ability that she is not worthless. The incident involving Yi Shiak Suan didn't have any impact on Su Yi. When Yi Shiak Suan didn't come out in the morning, he had his breakfast and went to school for classes. When he was about to go to the cafeteria with Wang Junlin and in Zhou College life, Yan Zhencheng unexpectedly was waiting for him at the classroom door. Coincidentally, the lesson was being taught by Yan Zhencheng's student Yan Bin. Yan Bin walked out of the classroom and saw Yan Zhencheng, hastening to greet him with respect. Teacher Yan, did you look for me? Yan Zhencheng's eyes were bloodshot, and he didn't look particularly well. Shaking his head, his gaze remained fixed on the classroom door as he weakly said, I'm waiting for someone. He had been waiting for Su Yi for several days, but had always missed him. Today, when Su Yi came to class, he rushed to the classroom door to wait. Yan Bin was curious. 
with his teacher Yan Zhengcheng's status, who was he waiting for at the classroom door? It was only when Su Yan Wan Jumlin walked out that Yan Zhengcheng's eyes finally lit up. He shifted his feet, but remained in place, opening his mouth but unsure whether he should call Su Yi or how to address him. If he called out to Su Yi's teacher Su in this situation, would it cause trouble in Su Yi's life? Su Yi met Yan Zhengcheng's gaze, told Wan Junlin and the others, then walked up to Yan Zhengcheng, smiling. Principal Yan, did you need me? Yes, yes, there is something. Yan Zhengcheng's eyes gleamed as he hurriedly spoke. Are you dot 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 available now? I am. Let's go. After over a month of living this way, Su Yi had become more amiable. Initially, he didn't have a good impression of the old man, but after several encounters, he found the old man not as detestable as he seemed. On the contrary, this old man was more interesting than many others. At least, he was a mortal with convictions, very persistent. It was for this reason that Su Yi's attitude towards him had also changed somewhat. When Yang Zhengchen looked for Su Yi, Wang Junlin and the others naturally left discreetly. Yan Bin was a bit puzzled. In his impression, Su Yi wasn't outstanding as a student and often skipped classes. In just over a month, he had skipped over 30 classes. The fact that he hadn't been expelled already was already commendable. Could it be that the reason he hadn't been expelled was due to his relationship with Principal Yang? Yang Zhengcheng didn't have many thoughts on this matter. As they walked side by side, he didn't speak much, knowing that Su Yi was low-key and didn't want to attract attention. Let's go to the bookstore. Su Yi probably guessed Yi Xiaq Suan's intention, so he decided to go see for himself. The second floor of the bookstore had always been empty. So if Yang Zhengcheng had something to say, they could do it there. Yang Zhengcheng nodded quickly. Recently, he had also visited the bookstore to look for Su Yi. But for some reason, every time he got close to it, he felt an inexplicable pressure, as if some instinctual warning told him to stay away from the bookstore. Upon entering the bookstore, Su Yi and Yan Zhengcheng immediately attracted the attention of the people. Two individuals even exerted invisible pressure on Yan Zhengcheng, perhaps trying to make him leave on his own. Su Yi was displeased and pointed at the two, saying, You two, get out. Initially, they had driven away the customers and disturbed the peace of the store. They were being arrogant, even daring to confront the people Su Yi brought in. It was like occupying someone else's territory. Why should we listen to you? A young man at the virtual Dan realm was also unhappy. Who was Su Yi to tell them to leave? According to rumors, he relied on his relationships with Yi Xiaq Suan and Gu Tong Tong, using them as a meal ticket. How dare he order them around? Su Yi couldn't be bothered with their questions because the next moment, John Luolin, with a stern face, said, You two, get out. John Luolin unquestionably obeyed Su Yi's orders. The reason why he didn't drive these cultivators away earlier was only because Su Yi hadn't spoken, and he didn't want to misinterpret the senior's intentions. Now that Su Yi had spoken, he naturally had to act. Master John, is there a misunderstanding? The two cultivators at the virtual Dan realm paled that being suddenly opposed by John Luolin. How come John Luolin was on Su Yi's side? Frowning, John Luolin said, don't force me to expel you. The two had no choice but to leave in embarrassment. Su Yi then continued, from now on, all of you should tone down your aura. This bookstore is for students to buy books. If you look fierce, you'll scare away my customers. Who will dare to come in? What's your status? How dare you speak to us like this? A disciple of a major sect coldly looked at Su Yi. In his view, the reason the two individuals were expelled by Zhang Luolin was because their qualifications were not good enough to impress Zhang Luolin. But he, as a disciple of a major sect, a proud son of heaven, naturally couldn't be compared. As for Su Yi, he didn't consider him worthy and simply saw him as arrogant. Before he could finish speaking, John Luolin appeared in front of him and threw him out. From now on, listen to what Su, Su Yi says. If not, do sit here. John Luolin pondered. These people foolishly sat in the bookstore for days. For what purpose? Su Yi was right here. And they didn't realize it. Since they didn't know they could gain immortal blessings from Su Yi. Why were they sitting here day by day? Were they just idling away their time? They wouldn't know that in the eyes of these people, Su Yi was like a deity. These people just wanted to gain a blessing from him. The people inside the bookstore nodded in agreement, with some even speculating that John Luolin was teaching them how to conduct themselves. Thinking it over, Su Yi was related to the 13th Bureau and had ambiguous ties with the great deity, Yi Xiaq Suan. 
Taking the easy road with those two women was a skill in itself. They shouldn't look down on him. These were the kind of people you didn't want to offend. The cultivators inside the bookstore finally appreciated Su Yi's authority here this time. A small cultivator who cultivates Che, yet can make John Luo Lin attach such importance, is indeed not simple. They no longer dared to oppress ordinary people with their momentum. Su Yi took Yan Zhengcheng upstairs and asked, Principal Yang, what's the matter? Speak up. Yan Zhengcheng could clearly feel that Su Yi's attitude towards him had improved a lot. After taking a deep breath, he said, Teacher Su, last time when we came down from Qingyun Mountain, the relics were robbed on the way. Su Yi nodded, saying, Yes, I heard about it. It's really regrettable. The dot 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 I think those relics must have been hidden by people from the 13th department. Yang Zhengcheng gritted his teeth and said, Although I know that thinking this way, somewhat suspicious, the people from the 13th department are all so powerful. The escort process is so secretive, and the security measures are also very tight. There should be no reason for them to be robbed. So he squinted his eyes slightly. This was indeed an ordinary person, but his guess was very accurate. In theory, the 13th department should handle things without leaking any information, but Yang Zhengcheng still guessed it. Yang Zhengcheng furrowed his brows and asked, Teacher Su, are those downstairs all cultivators? Hey, his insight was truly sharp, and he had seen through everything a long time ago, so he found it even more interesting. He did not deny it but nodded. Some things, even if Yan Zhengcheng knew about them, were not a big deal. With a thought, he isolated the sound on the second floor, ensuring that no one downstairs could overhear their conversation. The things I gave you from Kingyun Mountain were actually fake, but they were indeed taken by people from the 13th department. Fake. Yan Zhengcheng's eyes widened in shock. How can it be fake? So Yi sat on the chair and said, I made a replica of them. So, are the real relics on Qingyun Mountain or dot dot dot? Yang Zhengcheng didn't care about this question at all. He only cared about where the real relics were. He needed to confirm where they were now. They're all with me, Su Yi said, waving his hand slowly over the desk in front of him. The three treasures Jade Rui, the primordial heavenly sovereign appeared on the table. Yan Zhengcheng trembled all over, staring nervously at the three treasures Jade Rui on the table, and asked anxiously, Is this real? Su Yi picked up the three treasures Jade Rui and played with it, saying, The three treasures Jade Rui transformed from the red flower of the 12th grade cleansing world lotus, a prehistoric spiritual treasure. SS's. Yan Zhengchen took a sharp breath, pointing at the three treasures Jade Rui in Su Yi's hand. Trembling, he asked in agitation, How can you have it? Previously, this three treasures Jade Rui had caused an archaeologist who just touched it in the Wash Sword Mountain cave to turn into dust. Yet Su Yi was now holding it in his hand. Su Yi smiled and said, It was originally a spiritual treasure of the primordial heavenly sovereign, but then it fell into my hands. It should also be considered my possession. Is there any problem with me having it? You. Yang Zhengcheng's Adam's apple bobbed, and after being stunned for a while, he asked in disbelief, Are you saying that everything in that cave belongs to you? Su Yi said, The characters on that stone tablet were written by me. Yang Zhengcheng was breathless, his finger trembling as he pointed at Su Yi holding the three treasures Jade Rui. He asked excitedly, How can you have it? How long have you been living? According to the time you know now, it should have been about four billion years. At that time, there were no other creatures on earth. Yan Zhengcheng swallowed hard. If it were someone else telling him this, he would definitely not believe it. But when Su Yi said it, he inexplicably chose to believe. Su Yi said calmly, Many of the things on Wash Sword Mountain are spiritual treasures from the mythological period. If they reappear in this world, they will inevitably cause many troubles, so it's better to keep them safe. Yan Zhengcheng was dumbfounded, living for four billion years. What year was that? According to Su Yi, there were no living beings on earth at that time. Su Yi didn't know whether Yan Zhengcheng believed what he said or not. He just said, I really like this era now, there are many interesting things. But those things on Wash Sword Mountain, you shouldn't think about them anymore. Even if you were to take them, you wouldn't be able to research much, and if these things really spread, it might cause a lot of casualties. Not to mention, if any of those spiritual treasures fell into the hands of bad people, without Su Yi's intervention, the casualties would be impossible to calculate. Yan Zhengcheng clenched his fists, sat on the chair, looked at Su Yi with teary eyes, and tremblingly asked, 
Were you already in human form for billion years ago? So you looked into his eyes and said, The history you know now contains many unreal parts, but the past is the past. Even if it were confirmed, what would it change? After another long silence, a smile finally appeared on Yang Zhengcheng's face as he said, Thank you for clearing up my doubts. In that case, it's better to leave those things with you. After this conversation, Yang Zhengcheng had learned to many secrets. Although there were still many things he wanted to ask, he decided not to disturb Su Yi anymore. Got up, bowed to Su Yi, and then turned to go downstairs. Su Yi then lifted the ban on the second floor. Not long after Yang Zhengcheng left, Yi Xiaq Suan arrived at the store. While Su Yi continued to read on the second floor, Yi Xiaq Suan came up the stairs with two cups of milk tea and gave one to Su Yi, saying, So you're here after all. Here. Su Yi took the milk tea, took a sip, and continued reading his book. Yi Xiaq Suan grinned like a fool, thinking that if he didn't care about her, how could he be waiting for her here? Not to mention reading here, worrying even if he is worried. Yi Xiaq Suan smirked, and then she went downstairs, without saying another word to Su Yi, acting all proud. Who isn't a little proud? After going downstairs, Yi Xiaq Suan started getting close to Zhang Luo Lin. Zhang Luo Lin knew that Yi Xiaq Suan was Su Yi's disciple, so his attitude toward her was naturally different from others. Zi Yi, I heard that you are being targeted by the Jinmen people. You have to be careful, Zhang Luo Lin said, but he was not worried at all. Su Yi's disciple. Not to mention Su Yi's true strength, just those spiritual treasures on Wash Sword Mountain, if you randomly threw one out, it would be enough to wipe out the entire Jinmen. Although Yi Xiaq Suan looked pitiful and she said to Zhang Luo Lin, Master Zhang, I'm scared. Yi Xiaq Suan said she was afraid. Zhang Luo Lin just found it hard to laugh or cry. You have such a powerful master, what are you afraid of? It's okay, don't be afraid, it's just a few scattered cultivators from Jinmen, Zhang Luo Lin, after all, is a respected elder in the Zhengyi sect, and he didn't care much about a few scattered cultivators. Also, he really didn't think Yi Xiaq Suan had a reason to be afraid. The cultivators in the bookstore heard the conversation between Yi Xiaq Suan and Zhang Luolin and couldn't help but speculate a lot. Aren't they coming over to flatter Zhang Luolin? And this bookstore must have some secrets. The obvious relationship between Yi Xiaq Suan and Zhang Luolin and Yi Xiaq Suan's sudden rise in a short period of time made people feel that it must be related to Zhang Luolin and Yi Xiaq Suan was likely a disciple of Zhang Luolin. Aren't they staying in the bookstore just to have the same opportunity as Yi Xiaq Suan? Yi friend, rest assured, if those people from Jinmen dare to trouble you, we won't let them off, a cultivator at the Zudan stage said loudly. The people from Jinmen are really too arrogant. We also watched director Wu's video. Most likely, it was the people from Jinmen who provoked you first, but they didn't even bother with reason and were so conceited, thinking they were invincible. With this statement, the cultivators in the bookstore were indignant. Yes, ye friend, rest assured, we will stand up for you. They just want to bully the weak with their numbers, as if there were no one else around. Ha ha, they even dare to offend Director Wu. They really don't know their own strength. No matter what the cultivators in the bookstore said, without exception, they all had a negative opinion of the cultivators from Jinmen. Yi Xiaq Suan relied on her own abilities to secure the land of Qingzhou University for the 13th Division. However, the 13th Division did not prohibit other cultivators from entering. In this matter, the cultivators in the bookstore a favor to the 13th Division. Moreover, in the past when they encountered troubles, it was the 13th Division that intervened to resolve the issues. In addition, Wu Wenzifi is friendly and gets along well with many cultivators on a daily basis. Offending Wu Wenzifi is basically equivalent to offending half of the cultivation world. Coupled with Tan Wenfei's words, it can be said that almost half of the cultivation world has been offended by him. Ye friend, rest assured, I have received information that the experts from various sects are heading towards Qingzhou. If the people from Jinmen dare to come, they shouldn't plan on leaving Qingzhou alive. So Yi listened to their conversation upstairs, smiled lightly. It seems that this time Yi Xiaq Suan did not encounter any major problems. The cultivators from Jinmen are truly beyond redemption, actually playing tough with Wu Wenzifi. They could have simply compromised on the surface and assassinated in secret, but by making such a big fuss, they have instead put themselves in a difficult situation. As they expected, Su Chang Mo and others had just left the territory of Jinmen when they were immediately targeted by a group of demonic cultivators. 
These demonic cultivators were not the ones registered at the 13th Division. They were true demonic outsiders. I didn't expect there were quite a few cultivators in the mortal realm. It seems like I've come to the right place. A shriveled old man in tattered clothes behind a pile of rocks eyed Su Changmo and his group with eerie smiles. Another young man in a blue robe glanced at Su Changmo and said to the old man, Drunkard, don't mess around. Let's consider this group as your prey. For now, don't kill them. Ask them where they are going. Let's first familiarize ourselves with the environment. If there are any powerful beings still in the mortal realm, killing them might cause trouble. The old man chuckled. I know. I know. You think you're the only cultured one. But we've agreed that this group is mine. So none of you should intervene. There were a total of eight people in the old man's group. Men and women. Old and young. Dressed differently. But undoubtedly all extremely powerful beings. And Su Changmo and his group were unaware that they were being watched. You. Stop right there. The old man leapt out from behind the rocks, surprisingly stopping Su Changmo and 20 other people, including five Yuanyin stage experts. Su Changmo was suddenly startled. This old man was somewhat eerie. He wore tattered clothes and looked unremarkable. But when did he appear in his surroundings? He hadn't even noticed. Hunched over, holding an ugly black cane with a jug hanging on it, he raised his eyes and asked, who is currently the most powerful cultivator in the world. What realm are they in? Just a slight lift of his eyes and Su Changno felt an invisible pressure. This person's cultivation was definitely above the Yuanying stage. Could it be a flying ascension expert? Su Changmo quickly calmed down and bowed to the old man, saying, My ancestor is currently a flying ascension immortal. May I ask what the senior wants? The old man grinned with a mouthful of rotten teeth. Since when did the flying ascension stage dare to be called an immortal? Do you want to use your ancestor to intimidate me? The old man sneered, raised his cane and pointed towards the direction of Jinmen, saying, Isn't that your family over there? We happen to be heading that way. So you guys lead the way. Rest assured, this old man is very friendly. Whilst speaking, the old man's eyes shone with cold light. He was indeed very friendly, having already killed five cultivators in the past three days. The reason he didn't kill them was because their patron deity was in the direction of Jinmen. The more cultivators he killed, the more rewards he would receive. They naturally didn't mind engaging in a big slaughter, but at the same time, they were afraid of provoking some terrifying entities, so they chose to keep a low profile for the time being. As the old man spoke, the other seven demonic outsiders he was with had already surrounded Su Chanmo and his group. What do you want with us? My ancestor is in Jinmen. Tan Wenfei also became vigilant as this group of people seemed malicious, emitting a strange aura, each of them giving him an internal sense of fear. A glint of cold light flashed in the eyes of the old man. He lifted his cane and pointed it at Ten Wenfei. Ten Wenfei felt stiff all over and couldn't move. Then the old man opened the jug on his cane. A drop of black liquid flew into Ten Wenfei's mouth. Ten Wenfei suddenly felt an intense surge of power, knelt on the ground in agony, pounding the ground with force, creating deep pits, his aura also rapidly rising. What have you done? Su Changmo shouted, drew his sword from his waist, pointing at the old man from a distance. He didn't want to sit and wait for death, but he also didn't dare to act recklessly. What have I done? The old man chuckled, looking at Ten Wenfei, and said, I've given him strength. Before he finished speaking, Ten Wenfei's body suddenly expanded by three feet, his eyes turning red, strange sounds coming from his mouth. For a moment, a strong gale swept through the jungle. His strength had obviously taken a qualitative leap. But the next moment, his body suddenly split open, his eyes filled with fear. With a bang, Tan Wenfei's body exploded, blood, flesh, and bones scattering everywhere. The old man didn't mind being covered in blood, instead using his fingers to scrape off the blood from his face, put it in his mouth, licked it, took a deep breath, and laughed, too weak. It seems like he's not worthy of being my follower. Su Chong and others watched helplessly as Tan Wenfei die in front of them. Who are you people? Su Chong had considered that they might face attacks from other cultivators after leaving the sect, but he believed their group of five nascent soul cultivators and 18 golden core experts should be able to handle any danger, unless the major sects united to attack them. According to the agreements between major sects, cultivators above the deity transformation stage should not act recklessly, and those powerful individuals would not bother with intercepting them. A girl with twin ponytails and a youthful appearance approached Su Chong with a smile. We are divine messengers. 
If this statement had been made by the girl before Tan Wenfei's death, some might have believed it. However, the gruesome scene had left a strong impact on the group from the sect. What is your purpose here? Su Chang was not naive. Although the girl appeared lively and harmless, he sensed that she might be even more formidable than the old man. The girl circled Su Chang with her hands behind her back and said, Don't be afraid. We are not ruthless killers. As long as you obey, there will be benefits for you. Before Su Chang could respond, a boy with a golden dragon mark on his forehead coldly suggested, Why talk so much to them? Let's just search their memories. With a glint in his eyes, he reached out towards Su Chang, who found himself uncontrollably drawn towards the bow. The bow's eyes emitted a mysterious blue light, enveloping Su Chang. Su Chang felt like a puppet floating in the air, showing signs of discomfort. What are you doing? A nascent soul expert from Su's family couldn't help but shout. Irritating. The old man nearby sneered. In an instant, his cane pierced through the nascent soul expert's heart, killing him instantly without a chance to evade. A faint golden spiritual body flew out from the expert's body in attempt to escape, but the old man captured it in his hand and consumed it with a sinister laugh. Annihilation of spirit and form. Witnessing this, the other cultivators from the sect dared not move, finding it difficult even to breed. What kind of group were they? Weren't nascent soul experts considered top-tier forces in this world? Yet, they were easily dispatched with a single move. Drunker, I told you not to kill indiscriminately. The young man who looked like a scholar furrowed his brow, slightly displeased. Don't forget our mission. It was evident that their purpose was not mere killing. However, the old man nonchalantly remarked, What harm is there in killing a few people? We won't make a big fuss. Without arguing further, the young man turned to the girl and asked, Longwen, did you find anything? Longwen gently pushed Su Chan aside and said, This person's memories are limited to events within their small town. However, the divine avatar of the main god is indeed inside the sect. Let's directly enter the city and not waste time. They came out this time to seek revenge against a golden core cultivator. Longwen recounted all the information Su Chan had shared with them, including suspicions about Yi Shiak Suan possessing a secret treasure. And so, just as Su Chan and his group had left, they were all captured by Longwen and the others. Su Chan, I advise you not to alert your ancestral patriarch. The young scholar glanced at Su Chan indifferently. To us, the ascension stage is not a big deal. We just don't want to escalate matters. Of course, if you don't believe it, you can try. The scholar raised his eyelids and continued, killing a few ascension stage cultivators is just a small matter for us. Su Chan swallowed hard, not daring to doubt the scholar's words. Judging from the strength displayed by this group, they seem to be beyond this world. Were they immortals from the mortal realm? As Su Chang pondered, the girl beside him giggled. I already said, we are divine messengers, not weak mortals. Could this girl read minds? For cultivators, having such abilities wasn't uncommon. Yet, it was terrifying when directed towards him, a nascent soul cultivator. Considering the power displayed by this group, their intent to kill them seemed effortless. Su Chang appeared like a weakling in front of them. In the end, Su Chang could only say with an unpleasant expression, Rest assured, I won't alert the patriarch. Please, show mercy and refrain from attacking us. The scholar chuckled, Don't worry, as long as you behave, you will benefit, you seek revenge, right? I can assist you and make your group from the sect the most powerful force in the world. This statement seemed to strike a chord with Su Chang, who trembled. If it can make my Su family the top cultivation sect in the world, I am willing to serve you. The old man nearby seemed displeased and exclaimed, Si Chin, we agreed that this group would be my spoils. What is the meaning of this? The scholar glanced at him and chuckled. They're all yours. I'm not interested in these people. But what really happened in Qingzhou City? Long Wen muttered, Qingzhou is my concern. And don't you dare interfere. Before Long Wen could finish, the girl kicked him in the face accusing him of disrespect. They began fighting without any use of supernatural abilities, simply enjoying the physical altercation. This scene didn't surprise the onlookers, who were accustomed to their frequent, bickering and competitive nature, despite often being together. The girl, revered as a princess by many demons, stood as one of the strongest fighters capable of rivaling even the king of the immortal realm in combat. Stupid servant, Ching Zhou City belongs to me alone. You are not allowed to set foot there. Long Wen found himself pinned down and beaten, proving that he was no match for the girl in close combat. Foolish mate, 
Going alone will only get you kidnapped. After Longwen's taunt, the girl mercilessly stomped on his head until it disappeared into the ground. Tiadi Temple, Zi Qing and others, led by Su Changmo, walked in. Zi Qing and his companions also restrained their own aura, so much so that even the transcendent elder of the Su family could not sense their presence. Someone curiously asked Su Changmo how they returned, but Su Changmo just glared at the person and the Su family sealed off the entire Tiadi Temple. Zi Qing and the others looked at the stone statues before them, their eyes filled with awe. A young girl named Don Tai Yue stood at the front, turning around and pointing at an old drunkard, saying, Old man, you stay guard in this temple and do not allow anyone to approach. The old drunkard, now meek and submissive, nodded in agreement. Don Tai Yu's gaze then swept over Su Changmo and the others before saying, In consideration of their service to the ancestral god, no one is to harm them again. Yes, even Zi Chin. Upon hearing this, respectfully nodded in compliance. Only when Long nodded expressionlessly. When Long, come with me to Qing Zhou, and the others, dispersed to various places in the nine provinces. Don Tai Yue finished speaking and picked up three sticks of incense from the altar. The incense ignited on its own. And Don Tai Yue held it up towards the stone statue, offering a prayer, and then placed it. In Qing Zhou, Su Yi had been peacefully reading a book, until the moment he slowly raised his head and glanced in the direction of Jinmen. Things seemed to be getting interesting. Back in the day, he had also tried to cut off his own demons, but he didn't know what came out of it. In just 2,000 years, it seemed to have become significant. Foreign demon? Su Yi couldn't help but smile. He was curious about what exactly the thing he cut out was like. If it also had its own consciousness, should he cut a few more? It seemed quite interesting, but it seemed that only one could be cut out. If used the method of creating an independent clone, the consciousness would naturally be shared, but Su Yi didn't even know what that thing was. Could it be trying to kill him and take his place instead? If that was the case, it wouldn't be bad. Su Yi looked down again, took out his phone, and continued watching the anime he hadn't finished watching yesterday. He was too lazy to intervene in things he perceived. Let's see what tricks he could come up with. Yex Yaxuan was completely oblivious to what she was about to face. At this moment, she relaxed her guard, thinking that things were already so simple. Two days passed, and no one appeared in Qingzhou from Jinmen, nor did any news come about the immortal cultivators from Jinmen. During these two days, Yex Yaxuan was quite content, following Su Yi all the way, practicing at his house at night, and going to the bookstore to practice during the day, and she had built a strong relationship with the immortal cultivators in the bookstore. The wealthy woman had ordered a lot of delicious food online, and these cultivators already owed her favors, and now it was an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. If at this time, people from Jinmen came to kill Yex Yaxuan, it wouldn't be appropriate for them not to act. Master, do you think they won't kill me anymore? It's been two days. Yex Yaxuan sat next to Suyi, looking at him curiously. Could it be that the master had already solved everyone? Just like the immortals in Fengjing town last time. It seems like you're really free. Suyi put down his phone, glanced at her, and said, Do you think the people below can really help you? As he was speaking, Wu Wen's phone call came for Yex Yaxuan. Yex Yaxuan answered the phone and heard Wu Wen's asking, Miss Yi, are you at King Shan bookstore? Yes. Is there something? At this moment, Yex Yaxuan couldn't help but be nervous. Did someone come to kill her? The immortal cultivators from Jinnan want to apologize to you and hope that everyone can coexist peacefully in the future. Do you agree? Wu Wen's hadn't figured it out either. So Changmo found him today, and after a sincere apology, he almost knelt down, saying that Ten Wenfei had been punished and sent to face a wall. If he didn't forgive them, it might not be suitable, especially since the son of the family had died, and his emotions were high at the time. As things passed, there was no need to hold a grudge. I'll wait for you at the entrance of the bookstore, Yex Yaxuan said, and went downstairs. Let's go see together. So he put down his phone and stood up. He had already sensed the presence of those two peculiar energies nearby. It seemed that the aura was somewhat similar to his. Considering that he had no descendants for so many years, those two people could not possibly have any blood relations with him. Only sharing power, right? Moreover, they were two demons. Haven't seen demons in so many years? Yex Yaxuan thought Suyi was comforting her, smiled, and let Suyi go in front. Wu Wen's hand Su Changmo arrived at the entrance of the bookstore not long after. 
accompanied by Dan Ta Yue and Long Wen. These two had completely hidden their auras, even the late Yuanying stayed Zhang Lin could not see their true forms. Su Yi's gaze swept over the two of them, an ancient variant, the Ink Jade Kirin and the Blood Flame Fire Phoenix. Creatures like this still existed in the world. Could it be that they were not from this plane of existence? Just a while ago, Su Yi had scanned the entire world with his divine sense and had not discovered their presence, so they must have just emerged. Most importantly, the aura they exuded was likely the being Su Yi had severed, bestowing them with new life. Miss Yi, I'm really sorry. Today, Director Wu and I have reviewed the surveillance footage. It is indeed my unfilial son who wanted to harm you. He also died unjustly. Please consider everything before as a misunderstanding. Su Changmo said, Mr. Su, you don't have to be so eager to. Yek Xiaxuan was also embarrassed. Since he had apologized and they all felt bad, she had to give them a way out. All the cultivators in the bookstore also walked out, thinking that Su Changmo had come to seek retribution, but did not expect him to be so soft-hearted and apologize directly. It seemed like he was scared. Long Wen's eyes were always on Yek Xiaxuan, especially when he saw that Yek Xiaxuan's wrist was wrapped with a candle dragon tendon. He was completely shocked. Dragon tendon. How could this person have such a thing? Don Tai Yu realized that Wen Long was in an unusual state. When she followed Wen Long's gaze, she couldn't help but be dumbfounded. Both she and Wen Long were exotic beasts, and the dragon tendon wrapped around Yi Xiaxuan's hand gave them a natural sense of fear. It could be said that their current strength was already formidable enough not to be frightened by a single dragon tendon. After all, Yi Xiaxuan didn't seem like someone who could kill a divine dragon. If they could get the dragon tendon wrapped around Yi Xiaxuan's wrist, their strength would surely skyrocket. Yi Xiaxuan had previously hung the soul fragment around her neck, but upon consideration, it seemed like the sword spirit was a boy. Although she was unremarkable, she could not be considered completely useless, so she later wore the soul fragment on her wrist. Seeing the two children beside Su Changmo staring at her, she couldn't help but glance at them. Both children looked adorable, especially the girl. Compared to the clumsy little children like Su Dayandian, Don Tai Yu's eyes sparkled with a mischievous gleam. Don Tai Yu and Wen Long's attention were both focused on Yi Xiaq Suan, and both were certain that Yi Xiaq Suan, this mortal cultivator, had found some ancient relic. Otherwise, they wouldn't have something like this. However, they failed to notice that besides the dragon tendon of the candle dragon on Yi Xiaq Suan's body, the small wooden sword she wore was the true treasure. The two locked eyes, and Wen Long was ready to make a move on Yi Xiaq Suan. He only needed to forcibly search Yi Xiaq Suan's memories to know the location of the ancient relic Yi Xiaq Suan had found. Just as Wen Long's foot shifted, Su Yi's divine sense had already enveloped him and Don Tai Yu. At this moment, while Yi Xiaq Suan was looking at them, Su Yi was casually looking elsewhere. Naturally, Wen Long and Don Tai Yu thought that it was Yi Xiaq Suan who had locked onto them with her divine sense. Unprecedented sense of crisis. Even the divine kings from the heavens had never given them such a strong sense of danger. Intuition told Wen Long that if he acted, he would surely die a gruesome death. Don Tai Yu and Wen Long stood frozen in place, their faces pale, staring at Yi Xiaq Suan in horror. This person was definitely not just any ordinary cultivator. Could she have always been a great being surviving in this original world? After all, Don Tai Yuan Wen Long both came from the heavens beyond the heavens, and they now referred to Earth as the original world. Whether it was the celestial realm, or the heavens beyond the heavens, or any other plane, they all existed based on the original world. Don Tai Yu only knew of the legend in their realm. It was said that tens of thousands of years ago, a powerful being became angry and banished them from the original world, whether it be the celestial realm, or the heavens beyond the heavens. Countless ancient exotic beasts, celestial gods, primordial Buddhas, and ancient demons could only come together to establish other small worlds and leave this original world. Until now, Don Taiyu had always dismissed such legends with contempt. She couldn't imagine the kind of existence that could drive away those gods, Buddhas, and demons, as well as themselves, ancient exotic beasts, who could destroy the entire original world with a casual movement. However, she absolutely believed that, in the original world, there must be some terrifying existence that made the powerful figures of the celestial realm and heavens beyond the heavens fearful, preventing them from easily stepping foot into it. And obviously, she and Wen Lan had now encountered such an existence. Yi Xiaxuan couldn't even tell people's cultivation levels, 
How could she possibly see that the two children in front of her were actually anomalies that even troubled the divine kings of the celestial realm and beyond? Seeing that the two weren't looking too good, she couldn't help but ask weakly, Director Wu, are these two children sick? Should we take them to the hospital? Don Taiyu's eyes widened. Hospital? What's that place? Is that some place specially designed to contain beings like them? Is this woman going too far? When Long couldn't help but communicate with Don Taiyu. Miss, should we escape? Don Taiyu dared not move either. Transmitting. Are you sure we can get away? When Long remained expressionless, it might be difficult. Then don't move. Foolish servant, do you want to die? Don Taiyu was also frustrated as they were supposed to be targeting a cultivator in the Golden Core stage. But this woman in front of them didn't look like one. If she were in the Golden Core stage, her chest would certainly be as flat as hers when she grew up. The two children stood still, their faces not looking good at all. Wu Wens glanced at them and asked Su Chanmo, Mr. Su, are these two kids your relatives? According to their previous agreement, Su Chanmo replied calmly, Yes, these two children I met on the road seem to have lost their parents, so I took them with me. I think Director Wu, can you help find their parents, right? Wu Wens nodded and said, Shouldn't be a problem. With the capabilities of Section 13, finding the parents of lost children did not seem to be difficult. Hardly a strenuous effort. When Wen Lan heard Su Chanmo's words, his expression became even more unpleasant. Darn it. He just wanted to be as far away from this woman as possible. However, even if he communicated at this moment, she would probably overhear it. Forget it. At this moment, Su Yi walked slowly towards them, looking at the two children and asking, do you know the phone number of your family? Don Taiyu and Wen Long felt the increasingly oppressive feeling coming from their souls, believing that Yi Xiaq Suan had already harbored killing intentions towards them. However, that overwhelming feeling made them feel powerless to even escape. Although this man in front of them was just an ordinary person, he inexplicably gave them a sense of familiarity. Don Taiyu cautiously glanced at Yi Xiaq Suan beside her and suddenly hugged Su Yi's thigh, crying loudly, Big brother, could you please not let them take us to the hospital? Yi Xiaq Suan scratched her head and said, I think it would be better to go to the hospital. Su Yi chuckled. These two kids seemed genuinely terrified by him, but just earlier, that Wu clearly seemed ready to attack. If he had made a move against Yi Xiaq Suan, unless Su Yi also intervened, that girl would undoubtedly be dead. A little intimidation, but cry. These are ancient exotic beasts. After all, such a disgrace. Speaking of exotic beasts, so he still remembered a scent of an exotic beast called the Blue Phoenix Ice Phoenix, which didn't smell bad. These two. Ah oh well, at least these two little ones had taken human form. They couldn't possibly eat children. All right, let's not go to the hospital, So he said, withdrawing his divine sense. As soon as he said this, the pressure on the two children instantly dissipated. They glanced at each other, realizing they had found the right person, and that fierce flat-chested woman indeed seemed to obey this big brother. Big brother, can we stay at your place? Don Taiyu felt that Su Yi's scent was pleasant, giving her an inexplicable sense of closeness. Little did she know that the terrifying oppression she had felt earlier came from Su Yi. Su Yi suspected whether the little phoenix in front of him had been scared silly by him, as it actually took the initiative to go live in his house. He had tasted many ancient divine beasts before. Among them were a lot of creatures higher in rank than the Ink Jade Killin and the Blood Flame Fire Phoenix. Therefore, Su Yi wasn't particularly interested in the already human-shaped Don Taiyue. It must be noted that in ancient times, divine beasts looked down upon attaining human form. They possessed powerful bloodline legacies, and their strength was almost ruthless in crushing ordinary mortals. However, with the appearance of powerful gods, demons, and cultivators, many mysterious cultivation methods emerge. These methods required beings in human form for better cultivation. Ancient divine beasts, after experiencing battles with gods, demons, and cultivators time and time again, finally decided to transform into human forms and cultivate these methods, giving rise to the later great demons. So he also discerned that the reason Don Taiyue could transform into human form was because of something he had brought out. Beings like Don Taiyue were generally called demons by ordinary cultivators, but those related to the entity he brought out were collectively referred to as external demons are the divine beings in the celestial realm. Little friends, you can't stay at my house. There's not enough room. So he was a bit worried that one day he might lose control and end up steaming or bracing these to little fellows. 
This was the era of peace, after all, and ancient divine beasts were considered protected species, so consuming them was likely illegal. Then let's go with this uncle. Long Wen grabbed Su Changmo's wrist and sneakily glanced at Yi Shek Suan. He couldn't understand why Don Taiyue suddenly wanted to stay in that mortal's house. At present, he just wanted to stay away from that terrifying woman. Before Su Changmo could speak, Yi Shek Suan spoke up. Actually, you can stay at my house first, my rooms are quite spacious. Don Taiyue and Long Wen both stiffened almost simultaneously, looking pitifully at Yi Shek Suan. Was this woman changing her mind? and planning to keep them as pets. It was said that the eccentric strong loved to keep small pets, especially ancient divine beasts like them. However, Don Taiyue and Lan Wen simply didn't dare to refuse this woman. If the spiritual consciousness released by Su Yi earlier was only slightly stronger than theirs, even if it were just a higher realm above, the two of them wouldn't be so terrified. It was just too overpowering. Okay, the two little fellows had mournful faces, and Don Taiyue even reluctantly let go of Su Yi's thigh. Oh no. They had come from another realm to this source world, hoping to find some ancient ruins in Qingzhou, but before they could find anything, they became someone else's pets. It was too tragic. Long Wen gritted his teeth, preparing to confront Yi Shak Suan. When he heard Don Taiyue say, All right, let's go to your house. Long Wen frowned at Don Taiyue. They were, after all, top-tier divine beasts. How could they be enslaved and kept as pets? Don Taiyue conveyed, We can't die. The purpose of their journey to this source world was to bring about the arrival of their main god in this world. Regardless of the circumstances, they couldn't die. Enduring humiliation or serving as pets no matter what, they just couldn't die. Yi Shaxuan was also feeling quite frustrated. She had kindly taken in these to little fellows, so why did they look like they had deep-seated grievances? It must be that they were simply shy around strangers. They would get used to it after some time. Su Yi also understood that these two little fellows mistakenly believed that Yi Shak Suan was the one targeting their primordial spirits. What a delightful misunderstanding. Since that was the case, he couldn't be bothered with it. Whether it was a blessing or a curse, it was up to Yi Shak Suan to deal with it. The threat to kill Yi Shak Suan made by the Jin Ten martial artists had ultimately become a joke. Under Su Chan Mo's sincere apology, both parties had reached a complete reconciliation. However, Jin Tent had become a laughing stock in the entire cultivation world. Despite their earlier arrogance in not needing protection from the 13 divisions, the incident turned out to be like passing gas with no aftermath. Yet, Su Chang Mo still traveled all the way to Qingzhou to apologize. It was like releasing a fart, then putting it in a sack, leading others to believe he was going to light fireworks, only to suck it back in, making the situation utterly awkward. Su Chang Mo was feeling quite frustrated as well. Long Wen had promised that they would make the Su family the number one cultivation clan. However, after his sincere apology, he left without any follow-up plan. Not only was he looked down upon, but also the things previously said by Tan Wenfei couldn't be retracted. The entire Jin Ten was still unpopular among cultivators. After Su Chan Mo left, Wu Wens began to inquire about the names of the two little fellows and even asked if they remembered anything about where they lived or knew their parents' phone numbers. However, these two fellows, aside from their names, seemed clueless and looked foolish. Especially when Wu Wens asked how old they were. Don Taiyue counted on his fingers and said he was 13,800 years old. Beside him, Long Wen coldly said, I'm 13,801 years old. Wu Wens was speechless on the spot. Don Taiyue glared at Long Wen fiercely. If it weren't for fearing Yi Shak Suan, the two would have surely started fighting again. Miss Yi, I'll leave these two little friends in your care for now. I'll do my best to find their parents as soon as possible. Wu Wens had given up trying to communicate with the two little fellows. Being over 13,000 years old, they looked like 7 or 8 year old children not even remembering their own parents' phone numbers. And so, Don Taiyue and Long Wen were left at the bookstore. After Su Chan Mo's apology, Yi Shak Suan felt her crisis had been resolved and couldn't help but heave a sigh of relief. Everyone, I'm treating you all to seafood tonight. How about it? Yi Shak Suan returned to the bookstore and announced her treat. After all, she had gotten to know these cultivators over the past couple of days, and although they hadn't done anything, there was an agreement that if Su Chan Mo tried to harm her, they would help. Treating them to a meal was no big deal for Yi Shak Suan. 
A wealthy lady. Of course, Yi Xuan didn't forget to invite the 13 Division's personnel as well. Director Wu, please ask your colleagues from your unit to join us. Dinner is on me tonight. Let's eat our fill. Yi Xuan had briefly interacted with Gu Tan Tan. She felt that Gu Tan Tan seemed quite poor and had a big appetite. When Yi Xuan was in trouble, Gu Tan Tan immediately arranged for her family to be protected and even hinted at solutions. Regardless of whether it was helpful in the end, Yi Xuan felt she owed her a favor. Yi Xuan patted Don Ta Yue and Long Wen on their heads, asking, Little friends, do you eat seafood? Despite her friendly smile and gentle tone, in Don Ta Yue and Long Wen's ears, it seemed as though she was saying, if you dare not eat, you'll be eaten tonight. Yi Xuan hosted this time, directly booking a high-end seafood restaurant. Because she was well aware that this time, she was inviting all cultivators, many of whom not only had peculiar behavior and manners, but even their dressing was somewhat strange. If they were to dine with a group of ordinary people, who knows what kind of trouble they might cause. When it came time to eat, she finally felt lucky for her wise decision. Many of these cultivators had already entered seclusion and abstained from eating grains on regular days, but undoubtedly, their appetites were astonishingly large. The speed at which the waiters served the dishes was far behind their eating pace. Never mind Gatantan's group, what surprised Jexiaxuan the most was the two little ones, Don Taiyu and Wen Long. She still remember, when she walked with the two little ones to the hotel entrance, their expressions clearly resembled those of convicts heading to the execution ground. Even just sitting on the chairs a moment ago, they looked shy, not daring to touch the chopsticks, but now the two of them had transformed into the biggest eaters. A red king crab weighing 10 kilograms was eaten clean by the two within five minutes. Yaxiaxuan slightly opened her mouth, looking at the two in astonishment, she leaned towards Sui and whispered, could these two little ones also be cultivators? In this kind of occasion, Yaxiaxuan knew she couldn't call them master. If someone overheard, it would not be good. Sui smiled without saying a word, focusing on his meal. Cultivators? Who would look down on whom? If it wasn't for Sui making these two little ones feel threatened before, there would be no one in the room who could match their playfulness. Seeing Sui's smile, Yaxiaxuan felt like she didn't get an answer again, and her intelligence was insulted once more. Such a strong sense of defeat. Most importantly, facing these two children who could eat so much, aside from Yaxiaxuan, no one seemed to find it strange. Servants, just because of this little bit of food, you don't want to become someone's pet, do you? Long one rattled a big yellow fish while transmitting to Don Tell You. Stupid servant, do you think I'm like you? Don Tell You, with an oily mouth, disdainfully transmitted, if you're so tough, why don't you run? When Long fell silent, focusing on needing his own food, run? Where could they run? Unless they fled back to Chuan Waitia directly. Otherwise, think of that terrifying divine consciousness. As long as they were still in this world, there was no way to escape. In Wen Long's view, if Yex Yaxuan wanted to catch them, even if they ran to the ends of the earth, they would be brought back. With that in mind, it was better to sit here and eat. Thinking of this, Long Wen transmitted to Don Tell You, you can't just become someone's pet because you're afraid of death. Don Tell You rolled her eyes at him. What nonsense. She couldn't be bothered to respond. After everyone had eaten and drank their fill, Yex Yaxuan took the two little ones back to her home. If it were some children who hadn't seen the world, upon seeing Yexia's large manor, they would undoubtedly be full of curiosity and look around. But Longwen and Don Tell You didn't think the manor was anything special. The manor was fairly large, nowhere near the palace they had in Chanwaitia. After all, if they unfolded their cosmic appearances, this small manor wouldn't be able to contain them. There wasn't even a formation. Too ordinary. It seems this woman is the legendary reclusive powerhouse is she trying to experience life in the guise of an ordinary person? When no one else was around, Don Taiyu finally couldn't help but timidly ask, Sister, you're not going to eat us, are you? Yaxiaxuan was perplexed. Eat them? Did she look ferocious or evil? Seeing Yaxiaxuan remain silent, with a difficult expression on her face, Don Taiyu hastened to say, Sister, you should be able to see, I'm not fully cooked, and I might burn your mouth. That Wen Lan isn't appetizing either, he never baits. Yaxiaxuan couldn't help but cry and laugh, mouth burning. And what does it mean that he never bats? When Don Taiyu said that, Wen Long immediately frowned. It's you who never baits. Wen Long rarely bait, but due to his race, 
Dante Yu naturally disliked water and would bathe in molten lava. Yek Xiaxuan thought about it. These two were just acting like children playhouse. The kind of game children love to play. So, she put on a fierce look and said, If you two don't behave, I'll eat you both. We will definitely behave. Dante Yu nodded vigorously. She had already decided to temporarily compromise with this woman. When the Supreme God descended into the origin world, they wouldn't have to fear anything. Very well. On the way back, Yek Xiaxuan had the steward prepare new clothes and washing supplies for the two little ones. Once they arrived home, she opened the bathroom, filled the tub with water, and asked, Who wants to bathe first? Dan Taiyu's scalp tingled at the sight of the water in the tub. She swallowed hard and asked, Eyes wide open, use this to bathe. Of course, Yek Xiaxuan suddenly realized that these two children might never have bathed in a bathtub before and said, Don't be afraid, just lie down and wash. Sister will help you. Little Yue is a girl, so you go first. Don Taoyu was almost in tears, and whispered, Can I not bathe? Yek Xiaxuan smirked like a big bad Vol fan said, If you don't bathe, I may have to eat you. Let me think, should I steam or braise you? Yek Xiaxuan was indeed joking, but the two children were quite frightened. Dan Taoyu's face turned pale, and she said mournfully, can I bathe instead? You're a good girl. Yek Xiaxuan patted Dan Taiyu's cheek happily and led her into the bathroom. With Dan Taiyu's power, she could have instantly evaporated the water in the tub if she had wanted to, but she was too scared. Crouching in the tub, she looked utterly despairing. Yek Xiaxuan didn't think too much of it, she just thought the child didn't like bathing. However, children should be clean, and it was necessary to bathe. Little did she know that today she had completed the first instance in human history of forcing the blood flame fire phoenix to bathe. Long when outside couldn't help but tremble, this woman was truly vicious. She knew what Dan Taiyu's law avatar was, yet she still made her bathe with this kind of water. Yek Xiaxuan couldn't understand why Dan Taiyu was always unhappy, while soaking in the bath out, there was even a TV to watch, various snacks beside it. Why was Dan Taiyu constantly in a bad mood? After Dan Taiyu came out of the bathroom, she looked wilted, lying desolately on the bed. Then, Long Wen was also pulled in to bathe. Yek Xiaxuan had a taste of being a mother. Bathing children was truly challenging. If Dan Taiyu knew what she was thinking, she would cry like a northeastern lady and slam a tray of water dumplings on the table. She was the one who had it the hardest, right? Suyidu couldn't imagine that Yi Xiaxuan, a golden core cultivator, could actually scare to powerful demons. Of course, if it weren't for his previous intimidation, Dan Taiyue would not have obediently taken a bath. After the two little ones finished their bath, they lay pitifully on the soft big bed, especially Dan Taiyue, who looked just like a washed kitten curled up in the bed, looking miserable. It wasn't until Yi Xiaxuan brought the painting that Si had given her from another room into the bedroom that their eyes started to light up. Dan Taiyue didn't recognize the characters on the painting, but she could already sense that it was at least a spiritual treasure. Even in the heaven beyond heavens, it was something that could make people fight to the death to obtain. The painting seemed to be sealed with power, as they hadn't sensed its presence when they entered the estate. What was most terrifying was that when she looked at the painting, she could faintly sense the artistic charm within it. That familiar feeling, just like the artistic charm that Father God bestowed upon her when granting her divine powers. How is it? Do you like it? Yi Xiaxuan hung the framed painting on the bedroom wall and stood there clapping her hands in satisfaction. Her cultivation had improved, but her state of mind was still not enough to comprehend the artistic charm in the painting. She just felt that it was indeed well painted, just like wearing the candle dragon tendons on her hands. If it had been obtained by a powerful demon, they would certainly rejoice and directly go into seclusion to refine it. But she still just thought it looked shiny and pretty. Beautiful. Dan Taiyue became more and more shocked as she looked at it. Was this painting really done by this woman? Then her cultivation level was truly terrifying. Long Wen recognized the characters on it because he had probed Su Changmo's memories before. Apprentice Yi Xiaxuan. Long Wen was truly dumbfounded. He also knew Yi Xiaxuan's name. Such a perverted woman still had a master. What kind of existence must her master be? In any case, both of the little ones were terrifying. Yi Xiaxuan also sat on the bed, looking at the wall with the painting, laughing foolishly. The painting didn't hold much significance for her. After laughing for a while, she habitually glanced at her phone and sent a message to Su Yi. Master, let me tell you, 
These two little ones are actually afraid of baths, so ye didn't reply, but I still bait them. Hehe, <laughs> you don't know. These two little ones are now staring at your painting. It seems that art knows no age. Quite all-encompassing. So he still didn't reply. Just by looking at the message, he knew that Tanta Yue and the others probably wouldn't dare to lay a hand on Yishiak Suan no matter what. Dating a blood flame fire phoenix was truly perverse. However, it was unknown what had happened now. The surrounding small worlds were becoming increasingly unstable, indicating that it was not just a simple case of spiritual energy recovery. All those small worlds were built upon the origin world. If certain structures were compromised, it was very likely that those small dimensions would descend to Earth one by one, causing Earth to expand directly. And the beings from those dimensions will also descend. Was all this the doing of the thing he had severed? It wouldn't actually be too difficult for Suyi to stop all of this from happening. When a small world descended, he could simply flatten it with a slap. But would that be too bloody? Especially since some of those beings in those dimensions had already been stripped of their physical bodies, I him once before. And now after painstakingly rebuilding their primordial spirits, they would be eradicated again. Forget it. So he didn't dwell on it and continued watching his TV series. The next morning, Yishiak Suan brought on Ta Yue and Long went to Su Yi's courtyard. Yishiak Suan still couldn't calm down her mood because she woke up in the morning to find out that the two little ones hadn't slept. They had gazed at Su Yi's painting all night long, and their spirits were still very high. Reluctantly, Don Ta Yue and Long Wen left Yishiak Suan's bedroom. If it weren't for how terrifying Yishiak Suan was in their hearts, they wouldn't leave even if they were dragged out. In just one night, Don Ta Yue had made a breakthrough. Long Wen had also greatly benefited. In the heavenly realm, they could be considered top-level demons. Originally, it was difficult for the demon race to make breakthroughs, especially for their powerful bloodlines. Aside from relying on accumulated time, it was all about opportunities. So Yi's painting depicted the bird tribe, and the spiritual principles and laws imbued in it naturally aided Don Ta Yue in her insights. Faced with such a painting, how could they fall asleep? As a result, even though they were somewhat afraid of Yishiak Suan, they preferred to stay in her bedroom. The feeling of breaking through barriers was something that ordinary people couldn't comprehend. Sister, when are we going back? Don Ta Yue was now really obedient. Orcs will never be slaves, even if it's all expenses paid. But what if it can lead to a breakthrough in cultivation? Didn't we just come out? Yi Shiak Suan, holding various vegetables in her hands, said, You need to behave. After eating, sister will take you to the amusement park, all right? Amusement park too? Don Tai Yue now only wanted to stay in Yi Shiak Suan's bedroom. She didn't want to go anywhere else. How about that? Happy, right? Yishiak Suan didn't pick up on Don Ta Yu's feelings and smiled, saying, Sister will make you delicious food later. Oh, pretty happy. You don't sound very happy. Yishiak Suan glanced back at her. Don Ta Yue quickly put on a sweet smile. She perfectly demonstrated what it meant to be reluctantly engaging. Once they entered Su Yi's courtyard, the faces of the two little ones brightened up again. Different from the Yi family estate, although this courtyard was small, as soon as they stepped inside, they felt that it was extraordinary in every way. Even the Paulonia tree seemed to have a will of its own, and the chair beneath the tree carried an indescribable artistic charm. Did Ji Shiak Suan usually live here? And the rundown estate she took them to yesterday was just arranged for their stay. At this hour, Su Yi hadn't gone to school yet, and Yi Shiak Suan brought people over, so Su Yi had to reluctantly make breakfast for them. In order to show off, Yi Shiak Suan went into the kitchen to cook and let the two little ones play in the courtyard by themselves. Don Ta Yue eagerly sat on Su Yi's old armchair, feeling the artistic charm emanating from it. If she could sit on this chair and cultivate while looking at the painting, how fast would her cultivation break through? Long Wen stood beside her, his hand also touching the chair. He was now somewhat shaken. Following such a powerful being like Yi Shiak Suan seemed to be a good thing after all. So he made a simple breakfast, consisting of lean pork congee with preserved eggs, along with some pickled vegetables he had prepared. In the morning, he started cooking in a clay pot. Originally, he was only cooking a small portion for himself and Sudan Dian, but he didn't expect Yi Shiak Suan to show up early with a group to share the meal. The key was that she also bought so many vegetables that it would be difficult to turn her away from sharing the food. Regardless of the backgrounds and intentions of the two young kids, they were considered guests when they enter. A bowl of kanji should still be shared. Don't eat, 
Take a small bowl out for those two kids. So he scooped a small bowl for Su Dian Dian. He had promised John Ting that he would attend the parent teacher meeting with Su Dian Dian today, so he expected her to come over in the morning. Yi Xiaq Suan brought the whole pot of kanji out. When Dan Chi Yue and Lam Wen saw her, they thought she had made the kanji. The two usually enjoy meat dishes and lost interest when they saw the pot of kanji. Wait a moment. Dan Chi Yue stared at the clay pot on the stone table and his eyes almost popped out. There were faint patterns emerging on the clay pot. In a heavenly realm, this could be a treasure suitable for suppressing a god king. Such a spiritual treasure being used to cook kanji was truly wasteful. Try some. Yi Xiaq Suan scooped a bowl for each of them and then smiled at them. Her smile sent chills down Dan Chi Yue and Lam Wen's spines. After sitting down, they quickly started eating the kanji. They had initially thought it was just ordinary kanji, maybe even hard to swallow. But after the first bite, they couldn't stop. What? Even a bowl of kanji contained fragments of the laws of the Great Tao. Dan Chi Yue quickly finished his bowl and even lifted the pot to drink it all up. Hey, what are you doing? Long Wen's eyes widened. Could he do that? Dan Chi Yue put down a pot, glared at Long Wen, then licked his lips contentedly. Yi Xiaq Suan was dumbfounded. These two had a big meal just yesterday. Why were they eating like they haven't eaten for days? Little did she know, yesterday they only experienced a new taste. But today's kanji held extraordinary significance. Dan Chi Yue had shown faint signs of a breakthrough last night, and after eating this kanji, he was on the edge of a breakthrough. So he came out of the kitchen to see Dan Chi Yue holding the pot with both hands. He realized that the two kids could sense the aura of the Tao. Sometimes he felt helpless because anything he came into contact with underwent a qualitative change. Would Dan Chi Yue want to take his clay pot with him? So he held a bowl of kanji, and Lan Wen was almost in tears. But thinking carefully, it was better not to provoke this ordinary person, who was likely Yi Xiaq Suan's acquaintance. Dan Chi Yue stared at Su Yi. She didn't know why, but Su Yi gave her a familiar feeling. When Su Yi came out, Su Dian Dian was coming in wobblingly holding so milk. Want some kanji? Su Yi intuitively took the so milk and asked if she wanted kanji. Su Dian Dian curiously looked at Long Wen and Dan Chi Yue, then sat on a stone stool, leisurely sipping the kanji. Long Wen observed a human child in front of him. She seemed silly, and after eating, the kanji was just adjusted without any signs of refinement. As for the fragments of the great Tao within the kanji, it had almost no effect on her. Oh my god, this was truly wasteful. How could there be such simple human children in the world? No, this should be how human children are. Long Wen's mood was extremely complicated at the moment. He didn't know if this human child belonged to Yishiak Suan. So he dared not speak, Kan just looked at Su Dian Dian's bowl. After eating a few spoonfuls, Su Dian Dian finally noticed Long Wen's gaze. She hesitated for a moment, then asked, Brother, are you hungry? I'll share with you. She pushed her bowl slightly towards Long Wen. Long Wen quickly picked up the bowl, poured the kanji into his mouth, smacked his lips, then turned nervously to Yishiak Suan, saying, She gave it to me. Yishiak Suan nodded, awkwardly smiling, I saw that. Long Wen finally sighed with relief. He was a bit afraid of Yi Xiaq Suan. All right, take care of these two kids. I'll take Su Dian Dian to the parent-teacher meeting. So he sensed abnormal space near Qingzhou City, indicating a probable collapse of a small world landing nearby. There were at least 3,000 small worlds built upon the origin world, each hosting different creatures, not necessarily humanoid. So he had gradually grown fond of the current civilization, so he was unwilling to accept the sudden arrival of strange entities. How about we go together? Yi Xiaq Suan tentatively asked. So he expressionlessly shook his head. No need. Wash the bowls and do your tasks. Oh. Yi Xiaq Suan pouted slightly, feeling a bit dejected. Long Wen furrowed his brow slightly. He had heard in the heavenly realm that the face of certain important figures was quite powerful. And those figures always listened to the faces. So he seemed a bit arrogant. However, being an ordinary person beside Yi Xiaq Suan indicated Su Yi's poor qualifications. Perhaps it was due to inferior lineage. Let's go, Su Dian Dian, Su Yi said, and walked towards the courtyard. Su Dian Dian hurried after him, exclaiming, Wait for me, you're so slow. So he shot her a disdainful glance. As they took the bus to the school, the sky suddenly filled with dark clouds, numerous blood-red lightning snakes intertwined, and the black clouds formed a vortex. Countless strange cries mingled within the thunder, frightening many passers-by. 
Is this a mirage? I've never heard of mirages making sounds. Look, what kind of creature is that? The entire city fell into panic, as many witnessed giant beasts appearing in the sky. Their massive forms combined with the black clouds plunging several provinces into darkness around Qingzhou City. Had an alternative world descended, the terrifying scene that suddenly appeared in the sky above Qingzhou City made the people below feel an unprecedented fear, as the monstrous roar of the beasts brought a deep sense of dread. It was a fear that came from the heart. All the cultivators sensed this terrifying disturbance and looked up in that direction. The giant beasts had not yet descended, but their power could already be felt. Almost any one of them descending would be a catastrophe for ordinary people. Even for the cultivators, it would not be easy to survive. Yi Xiaxuan was out shopping with Don Tai Yue and Lan Wen, saying they would go to the amusement park later. The sudden drastic change left Yi Xiaxuan feeling bewildered as she looked up at the sky, gradually losing focus. Even with her current strength, facing the beasts in the sky made her tremble uncontrollably. Don Tai Yue and Lan Wen squinted slightly, taking a glance at the sky before focusing their attention on Yi Xiaxuan. Was her body trembling? Was she upset by these weaklings disturbing her peace of mind? However, facing so many ferocious beasts, even Yi Xiaxuan would probably be helpless. She couldn't possibly kill all these beasts, right? Don Tai Yue just wanted to see how Yi Xiaxuan would react, or perhaps to see what her temperament was like. At the same time, Su Yan and Su Dian were on a bus, feeling annoyed by the howling sounds coming from above. While most people couldn't understand what the giant beasts were saying, Su Yi code. These creatures were targeting the humans below as their food, just thinking about consuming them all. Such a bloody situation. Su Yi took a deep breath and slowly looked up, his powerful spiritual force soared into the sky, unfolding in the small world that was about to descend. In an instant, the giant beasts that were just roaring suddenly fell silent. Don Tai Yue and Lan Wen, who were being led by Yi Xiaq Suan, were completely dumbfounded. Did all the ferocious beasts just die like that? It should be noted that Don Tai Yue had already sensed the terrifying presence of a higher level demonic being above. Even the celestial kings of the immortal realm would likely struggle to deal with such a being. Yi Xiaq Suan just glanced up at the sky. And they all die. Billions of creatures in a small world, all killed in an instant. Now it was Don Tai Yue and Long Wen's turn to tremble. How powerful had Yi Xiaq Suan become? With the death of the beasts, Yi Xiaq Suan also felt the pressure suddenly decrease, heaving a sigh of relief and muttering softly, Are three defects so realistic now? This remark, in Don Tai Yue's ears, took on a completely different meaning. What 3D technology? Clearly, you killed them all, wiping out all the living beings in the small world, and still remaining so calm. This woman was truly ruthless. If one were to offend her, the consequences would be dire. While Don Tai Yue and Lan Wen could be considered formidable, they still had a certain distance to cover compared to the strongest beings that had just descended into the small world. If Yi Xiaq Suan could eliminate such a being with just a look, then she could surely annihilate them as well. The commotion in the sky didn't last long. Around an hour later, a new land suddenly appeared near Qingzhou, the area being more than twice the size of the entire Huaxia region. People around the world were going crazy, as through artificial satellites, it could be seen that the entire Earth suddenly expanded, with a new piece of land emerging within the Huaxia territory. Various news reports and the Huaxia authorities even dispatched drones to explore this new land. The results revealed never-before-seen vegetation and various huge ferocious beasts. Corpses. The cultivators had initially feared this suddenly appeared land, but when they received news that there was not a single living being inside, they couldn't resist stepping foot onto that piece of land. A small world had suddenly descended, releasing all its spiritual energy and causing the death of all its inhabitants. For the cultivators of this world, it was undeniably a good thing. Previously secluded major sects emerge, beginning to compete for resources in this small world. As a result, cultivators could be seen flying on their swords all over the country. Unscientific. Science could no longer explain it properly. The arrival of the small world had caused turmoil worldwide, but for Su Yi, it had no impact. He didn't want to change the world's balance with his emotions, nor did he want other things to disrupt his current peaceful life. The dark clouds in the sky dispersed, returning to clarity, and Su Yi continued on to the kindergarten with Su Dian. Su Yi, were those monsters in the sky just now? When Su Dian got off the car, the dark clouds had not yet dissipated, 
and she could still see the corpses of those beasts by looking up. Su Yi glanced at her and said, Yes, monsters, what of it? Was Ultraman there? Su Dian asked innocently as she looked up at Su Yi. Su Yi raised an eyebrow, having seen Ultraman and similar things on some video apps. Ultraman was killed by the monsters. When this was said, tears welled up in Su Dian's eyes. Su Yi rolled his eyes, children were so troublesome. He held her hand and said, the monsters above were all defeated by Ultraman. He had unexplainably become Ultraman, thinking about himself in that Ultraman suit. It was really twisted. Despite such a major event happening today, it didn't bring much change for ordinary people. Once the dark clouds disappeared, people in the city went back to their usual activities. As long as the world didn't end, mortgages had to be paid, families had to be supported. The kindergarten was still open, with many children already inside. Su Yi took Su Dian inside the kindergarten and found that when Qian Meng was actually a teacher there, and she was Su Dian's teacher. That was a bit coincidental. Su Yi stared at when Qian Meng and asked, What does this mean? Seeing Su Yi, when Qian Meng blushed, embarrassed and speechless for a while, would Su Yi think she had become a teacher here on purpose just to get close to him? I, I didn't know Su Dian was studying here. When Qian Meng said, Really? You can ask Li Yuai. I see. Su Yi resumed his normal expression. He could tell when Qian Meng wasn't lying, and her face lit up with a smile. He asked, Teacher Wen, how is Su Dian doing in school? This speed of changing expressions was quite admirable. When Qian Meng hesitated for a moment and asked, Are you Su Dian's guardian? I'm her neighbor, or you could say her brother. Her mother was busy today, so I came instead. Su Yi smiled. Moments before, he had noticed that Su Dian didn't seem to enjoy playing with other kids, although she didn't seem introverted. Su Dian Dian entered the kindergarten and sat alone playing. After a while, a little bow came to chat with her. Su Yi and when Qian Meng chatted for a while and probably understood the situation. Essentially, these kids were saying she had no parents, but Su Dian Dian argued with them, saying she did have parents and had even fought with someone about it. However, it was always her grandfather who picked her up after school. The kid who fought with Su Dian in the class was particularly charismatic and often brought snacks from home to share with the other kids. He told the other kids not to play with Su Dian. Kids fight and argue, but it will pass, when Qian Neng said. Actually, this time at the parent-teacher meeting, I also wanted to meet Su Dian's parents. And also, I have already criticized Wang Mingming, and he promised to apologize to Su Dian. Su Yi nodded because he saw a little bow walking shyly towards Su Dian with a small cake. He apologized to her and offered her the cake. Su Dian quickly started playing with the bow. See, I told you, how could kids have bad intentions? When Qian Meng said, But next time, can we have Su Dian's parents come to pick her up? Su Yi nodded. I will call Su Dian's mother and ask her to come pick her up. When Qian Meng also said, that's the best way. As they were talking, an old man exuding a sinister aura walked into the kindergarten. Su Yi turned to look at him and thought, Demon cultivator. He's also a immortal in the mortal world. When Qian Meng also noticed the old man, her eyes suddenly narrowed and her voice changed. Elder, this is my enemy. Please protect these children. Li Youayu suddenly came on the line, sensing danger. Su Yi furrowed his brow slightly. Wondering what was happening now. So many immortals in the mortal world. It seemed like the structure of all the small worlds was starting to become unstable. As soon as the old man made a move, Su Yi glanced at him. And then the man disappeared entirely. Li Yoayu was startled. Where is he? Did he use some sort of supernatural ability? Su Yi said lightly. I've taken care of it. Li Yoayu was truly shocked. Her enemy was not simple. He was a king among demons in the immortal realm. Even if he descended to the mortal world, his strength was definitely above the Yuan infant stage. Su Yi just glanced at him and directly wiped him out. This strength was a bit terrifying. If she knew that Su Yi had just effortlessly wiped out all living beings in a small world with just a glance, what expression would she have had? Thank you, Elder. Li Yoayu bowed to Su Yi and said, Elder, when Qian Meng really didn't know that Su Dian also goes to school here and didn't have any intention to approach you. I know, she told me. Su Yi replied. Li Youayu visibly relaxed, now having a new understanding of Su Yi's strength. At the same time, she felt some lingering fear. If Su Yi had acted against her from the beginning, her fate would have been similar, wouldn't it? Elder, you should know that a small world has appeared near Qingzhou. 
I want to persuade Wen Qian Meng to explore it, Li Youayu said. I'm also trying to find a way to leave her body. Do you have any good suggestions? Elder Su Yi thought for a moment and said, If you leave her body, you will soon dissipate. There's no other way. This is a matter of law. Unless your spirit is powerful enough, or you directly enter reincarnation. Li Youayu tentatively asked, You can't do anything either. Su Yi said, It's not completely impossible. But if you leave her body, you must find another body to survive. Does that mean you have to wipe out another person's soul? Unless you can find the dustless flower and the thousand-year mysterious vine, refine a cleansing pill, and then attach your soul to the thousand-year mysterious vine. You can cultivate into a human form using the vine, and your strength will be greatly enhanced, Su Yi said, closing his eyes slightly. His divine sense swiftly scanned the small world that had just appeared. The appearance of the dustless flower and the thousand-year mysterious vine is known in that small world. You can search for them yourself. If you can find them, I will help you refine a cleansing pill. But as a reward, you must do something for me. So Yi finally realized one thing. The heavenly Tao speaks of cause and effect. He could help others, but the condition was that the person must also pay a certain price. This way, he wouldn't incur the wrath of the heavens due to others' associations with him. What should I do? Li Youayu asked. I'll tell you when you find those two items, Su Yi said. And the images of the dustless flower and the thousand-year mysterious vine appeared in Li Youayu's mind. Li Youayu was over Zhou and quickly bowed to Su Yi. Thank you, Elder. Su Yi said, you must uproot the thousand-year mysterious vine and plant it in my garden. It should take about a month to take shape. Then I will have Wen Qian Meng go to the small world that just appeared tomorrow. Although Li Youayu was a demonic cultivator, her killing intent was not strong. Otherwise, the first thing she would have done when possessing Wen Qian Meng was probably to erase Wen Qian Meng's soul. Su Yi nodded, and at that moment, other parents of the children came to inquire about their kids, and he also approached Su Dianian's table. As there was a parent-teacher meeting, many parents of the children had come, taking the opportunity to socialize with and get to know each other. Su Yi looked quite young, and he was dressed plainly that day, so no parent took the initiative to talk to him. He is my big brother next door, Su Yi. His cooking is delicious, and he also knows martial arts. Martial arts? The nearby kids looked at Su Yi with admiring eyes. Su Yi smiled. I also know how to make paper airplanes. I can too. A kid named Wang Mingming said, already folding a paper airplane and sending it flying. To restore Su Dandian's face, Su Yi folded a plane, and after it flew out, it quickly returned to his hand, leaving a group of kids wide eyed this magic-like skill instantly won over the entire kindergarten children, and they surrounded Su Yi, wanting him to help them fold a paper airplane that could fly back to them. Having nothing else to do, Su Yi indeed folded one for each of them. A middle-aged man nearby, dressed in a suit and wearing a watch, looked down on Su Yi and chuckled softly. Brother, you don't want to become the chairman of the parent-teacher association with these petty tricks, do you? Su Yi was a bit confused. Was there still a parent-teacher association involved in school? The middle-aged man continued. Brother, what is your job now? I'm still a student. Why? Su Yi replied. Hey. The middle-aged man sneered with disdain and stopped prompting Su Yi. Su Yi is not interested in middle-aged man. It's like a giant dragon not caring about the disdain of ants towards it, and he has no interest in any parent association. When Kian Men is not the class teacher, when it's time for the parent meeting, Another teacher wearing glasses goes up on stage to speak. Towards the end, they mention the establishment of a parent association. At this time, the children are playing outside on the playground, with only parents left sitting in the classroom. Basically, they ask all the parents to fill out a form with their job positions and write what they can do for this parent association. It's time for the parents to show their strengths. The middle-aged man sitting next to Suyi takes out a Montblanc pen from his suit pocket and leisurely writes down his job. Chairman of the Shinshin Zoo can provide a place for the children in a class to play for free. Just then, the boss of a beef restaurant near the Qingzhou school, Yang Yang Shen, walked in. Manager Yang, why are you here today? Please sit. The middle-aged man hurriedly got up to greet Yang Yang Shen when he saw him and then said to Suyi, Brother. Can you give up your seat? Su Yi glanced at him. Why should he give up his seat? The seat he was in was previously Su Diandi's. Yang Yong Sheng also saw Su Yi and greeted him with a smile. Manager Lin, hello. Then he looked at Su Yi with a smile on his face and said, Teacher Su, 
Why are you here? Is your child also studying at this school? So ye had a good impression of Yan Yan Sheng. Nodding, my neighbor had something urgent, so I'm hosting the parent meeting for her child. Teacher Su is indeed enthusiastic. I thought you were too young to have a child. Yan Yan Sheng smiled, then sat in an empty seat nearby. The boss named Lin Yang was not ignored by Yan Yan Sheng when he saw him, so he sat down next to Yan Yan Sheng, not feeling awkward at all. Manager Yan. I don't know about the project in Pudong District. Lin Yang just started speaking when Yang Yang Sheng interrupted. Manager Lin, today is the parent meeting. Let's not talk about these private matters. Let's focus on the children's issues today. After greeting Yang Yang Sheng, so he didn't engage in much conversation with him. Instead, Yang Yang Sheng's gaze occasionally swept over Su Yi. Teacher Su, are you busy with your studies on weekdays? Yang Yang Sheng smilingly continued to find a topic with Su Yi. Su Yi shook his head slightly. Not really busy, or else I wouldn't have come to help Su Di Andy host the parent meeting today. He was a habitual truant, of course, not busy. Yang Yang Sheng sighed and said, Teacher Su, let me be frank with you. My child is quite a worrying for me. Do you have any time to tutor my child? or perhaps teach him to play the Gujan. So he didn't directly refuse but said, for these matters, you can directly find teacher Wen. She is more professional after all. Although Yang Yang Sheng was generous, so he wasn't interested in taking on another child. Yang Yang Sheng said, I've asked teacher Wen, but she's resigning tomorrow. I only have one son at home, and I've hired several teachers for him. But in my view, if you could be his teacher, that would be great. Listening to their conversation, Lin Yang on the side didn't dare to interrupt. Wasn't this young man a student? Why was Yang Yang Sheng valuing him so much? Considering Yang Yang Sheng's status, he could find any kind of teacher for his child. It didn't make sense to hire a student. Yang Yang Sheng not only owned the beef restaurant but also had real estate businesses nationwide, plus his ranches across the country and investments in the film industry. This was true capital. Although Lin Yang was considered a big boss, Compared to Yang Yong Shen, he was far behind. If Yang Yong Sheng was willing to share even a small business opportunity with him, his annual income would surely double. How could he not try to please such a person? Hearing Yang Yong Sheng's words, so he didn't budge and said, I am a bit lazy and don't really like teaching children. Also, your child should only be around for or five years old. He can't learn to play the Gu Zheng yet. Then it's a pity. Yang Yong Sheng didn't say much more. Seeing that Su Yi had declined, it wouldn't be right to insist or mention any monetary compensation. From their brief interactions, Su Yi seemed well off, at least judging by the watch on his wrist. It wasn't extremely expensive but still worth tens of thousands. Most importantly, with his years of experience in reading people, Su Yi's demeanor was exceptionally unique to him, giving him the impression that having his son study under Su Yi would lead to great achievements. He also recalled the girl, Yi Shiak Suan who had dinner with Su Yi last time. He remembered who she was. She was Yi Lin's granddaughter. Rumor had it that she would be the future head of the Yi family. Thirds of a feather flocked together. How could the people who dined at his small restaurant with Yi Shiak Suan be ordinary? Ling Yun listened with his mouth twitching on the side. He couldn't quite figure out this young man. Su Yi had declined Yang Yang Sheng's request. In Qingzhou City, countless individuals would want to befriend Yang Yang Sheng. Gaining Yang Yang Sheng's approval would mean wealth and prosperity for a lifetime. Teacher Su, aren't you a student? Lin Yang couldn't quite read this young man. Su Yi glanced at him but didn't answer. By the time school was out, Su Yi called John Ting and briefly explained Su Diandi's situation. John Ting finally drove to the school gate to pick up Su Diandi. She was shocked to see her daughter had suffered such grievances because Su Diandi had never actively asked her to pick her up from school. Previously, she hadn't paid much attention to Su Diandi, oh running the bar, as time slipped away and she left everything to her father. Now, as a breakfast stall owner, she had to wake up at four in the morning. Combined with recent events, John Ting was physically and mentally exhausted and had no time to pick up Su Diandi. Standing at the kindergarten gate and seeing Su Diandi, she couldn't help but cry. Su Diandi ran over on her little legs and hugged her, asking in a sweet voice, Mom, why are you crying? John Ting lifted Su Diandi, saying, Diandi, from now on, can mom come to pick you up every day? Su Diandi shook her head. No. It left John Ting momentarily stunned. She asked, why not? Su Diandi replied, Mom, you wake up too early. Don't come to pick me up. 
Su Diandi never told John Ting about how the children at school talked about her not having a mom or dad. John Ting was speechless, feeling a lump in her throat, and finally remained silent, holding Su Diandi and thanking Su Yi. It's nothing. Su Yi looked over to find Yi Xiaq Suan with Dan Tai Yue and Long Wen standing at the school gate. Yang Yong Sheng and Lin Yang also noticed Yi Xiaq Suan. Even Yang Yong Sheng couldn't resist going over to greet Yi Xiaq Suan. If Yang Yong Sheng represented real capital, then Yi Xiaq Suan could be considered a noble family. It was never a mistake to build a good relationship with her. Yi Xiaq Suan asked Su Diandian which kindergarten she attended while they were chatting aimlessly before and they found their way to the school after taking a walk on the street with Don Taoyu and the others. What she didn't expect was to find, when Qian Meng also, at the kindergarten, Yi Xiaq Suan had a deep impression of this woman, who was both pure and tempting, with an explosive figure. Originally, Su Yi opening a parent-teacher meeting for Su Dianian was no big deal, but now it seemed there was something fishy going on. It was highly likely that there was more than meets the eye. Yang Yongsheng greeted Yi Xiaq Suan who absentmindedly nodded and replied, Hello, Boss Yan. As she spoke, her gaze couldn't help but wander between Su Yi and Wen Qian Meng. When Lin Yang, who had been following Yang Yang Sheng closely, saw Yi Xiaq Suan, his eyes lit up. He thought to himself, This is the big shot. Given his status, it would be almost impossible for him to have any interaction with someone like Yi Xiaq Suan unless by coincidence. Finally meeting her today, he quickly approached with a smile, Miss Yi. Are you here to pick up your child too? Yi Xiaq Suan's mood was already complex, and Lin Yan's words only added to the ambiguity. She didn't know Lin Yan at all, and suddenly being asked if she was there to pick up her child was confusing. Did she look like a married woman, especially a mother who had given birth? Yi Xiaq Suan even forgot that she was currently holding a child's hand, furrowing her brows and asking Yan Yong Sheng, Boss Yan, is this your friend? Yang Yongshen, having been in society for decades and possessing a keen sense of observation, noticed Yi Xiaq Suan seemed a bit upset. He smiled slightly and said, Not really. This person is also a student's parent. He didn't introduce Lin Yan at all, as he could tell that Su Yi also didn't seem to like Lin Yang. Yi Xiaq Suan noticed Su Yi's gaze was peculiar. Though she didn't necessarily need to make friends with Yi Xiaq Suan, she definitely couldn't afford to offend her. Yi Xiaq Suan coldly told Lin Yang, Sir, I'm sorry, but we seem to be strangers. While she wasn't short-tempered, she always appeared aloof to most people, just as she was when she first met Su Yi. Lin Yang felt embarrassed, but he still handed his business card to Yi Xiaq Suan, introducing himself as the chairman of the Xinchen Zoo. Out of politeness, Yi Xiaq Suan took the card, glanced at it, and nodded slightly. I see, Mr. Lin. I have something to attend to now, so I won't chat with you. With that, she walked past Lin Yang and approached Su Yi with Dan Taoyu and Long Wen Chao. Lin Yang stood awkwardly, watching Yi Xiaq Suan walk towards Su Yi. The girl appeared to have transformed her demeanor, smiling as she walked up to Su Yi. Miss Wen, what a coincidence, are you teaching at this school? Yi Xiaq Suan's smile was radiant, but based on a woman's intuition, when Qian Neng could clearly sense the jealousy in her tone. When Qian Men, who was quite introverted, blushed deeply upon being asked by Yi Xiaq Suan. Despite having already explained things to Su Yi, she found it difficult to give an explanation to Yi Xiaq Suan. During a previous meal, she had already noticed that Yi Xiaq Suan likely had feelings for Su Yi. Without answering, she simply deferred to Li Youayu to handle the situation. Li Youayu, who moments ago had a shy and blushing expression, suddenly transformed herself. She greatly admired Su Yi but wasn't afraid of Yi Xiaq Suan. She blinked her eyes, her expression shifting from shy to flirtatious. She chuckled and gazed at Yi Xiaq Suan before pausing at her chest and teasing. Isn't this Miss Yi? What a coincidence, are you picking up the kids after school? Yi Xiaq Suan's smile froze on her face, picking up the kids again. Before Yi Xiaq Suan could respond, Li Yoayu teasingly remarked, are the kids well fed? This almost choked Yi Xiaq Suan, and when her eyes fell upon Li Yoayu's chest, she was momentarily speechless. This woman was truly like a seductress. Don Taoyu and Long Wen Chao didn't quite understand what the two women were talking about and assumed they must be good friends, not catching Li Yoayu's playful questions about the child's well-being. Seeing through Li Yoayu's implications, Su Yi decided it was time to leave. Despite being Yi Xiaq Suan's master, he couldn't interfere in the girl's discussion on such matters. Earlier on, 
He had promised Yi Xiaq Suan a secret formula, but he had forgotten it when he returned. Observing how considerate she was of others' opinions, he felt it was better to leave. Yi Xiaq Suan was at a loss on how to counter Li Yuayu, and after the abrupt departure of Si Yi, she felt frustrated and followed him with a heavy heart. Throughout the journey, Yi Xiaq Suan was still holding Dan Taoyu and Long Wen Chao's hands, but her displeasure was evident on her face. Si Yi led Su Diandian, then turned to glance at Yi Xiaq Suan with a smile. Upon their eye contact, Yi Xiaq Suan's mind replayed Li Yuayu's earlier words. Are the kids well fed? Oh no. She was fuming. Yi Xiaq Suan took a deep breath, feeling utterly furious. And what was the meaning behind Su Yi's smile earlier? Yi Xiaq Suan couldn't find Zhou in anything as she had intended to go to the amusement park, but feeling dejected, she took Dan Taoyu and Long Wen Chao straight back home. Dan Taoyu and Long Wen Chao were eager to go back, and once inside Yi Xiaq Suan's room, they immediately began to study Su Yi's painting. Due to the signature on the painting, they wanted to gain a deeper understanding, which was impossible, but even so, Dan Taiyu's cultivation was progressing at an astonishing rate. Due to his racial background, Long Wen Chao wasn't progressing as quickly. When Su Yi returned with Su Diandian, John Luolin was already waiting for him in the yard. What's up? Su Yi reclined in his chair, looking up at John Luolin. Taking a deep breath, John Luolin said, Senior, I want to know, can I go to that coming little world? Su Yi chuckled, If you want to go, just go. Why ask me, Senior? Thank you for your guidance during this time. John Luolin bowed deeply to Su Yi. Senior, during this period, everyone in the realm of cultivation should be heading to that new land. Please excuse my intrusion. Su Yi nodded slightly. It seemed like the cultivation practitioners from the Green Mountain Bookstore would all be departing. Great. Let the cultivation practitioners go to play in their world to avoid them flaunting around here and being so eye-catching. Cultivators pay attention to opportunities. For John Luolin, Meeting Su Yi was definitely a huge opportunity, but he really felt awkward just staying in Su Yi's shop all the time. During this period, he would sometimes take out Su Yi's calligraphy to study, and he had already made a breakthrough into the nascent soul realm, stepping into the divine transformation stage. He didn't dare to expect Su Yi to bestow anything on him, so he planned to go see the newly arrived small world. After John Luolin left, Su Yi also saw some information about the new world's arrival on his phone. Because the area of that small world was too large, and the commotion caused by the cultivators from major sex was too great, it was now impossible to hide it from ordinary people. Pictures of various cultivators were leaked, and some people even took photos at the periphery of the small world and uploaded them online. For a while, the hot searches on various platforms were filled with information about cultivators and the small world. The traffic celebrities that used to trend on Weibo every day disappeared. With such events happening, what most ordinary people were concerned about naturally was whether they could cultivate. In the past, if you talked about cultivation with ordinary people, you would probably be seen as a fool. But now, with so many cultivators appearing, if one could truly cultivate, then life would naturally undergo a great change. If the cheat code is activated, the reversal of destiny, isn't this kind of plot attractive? Who wouldn't want to become the male or female lead from fantasy novels? So he looked at his phone for a while, then raised his head to look at the stars in the sky. The celestial patterns were chaotic now, with countless fortunes descending. Was someone deliberately causing this disturbance? The person responsible need not be said. It was the existence he had slain. So he squinted his eyes slightly. What did that thing really want to do? Did it really think it could kill Su Yi and take his place? Regarding such matters, Su Yi just found it somewhat interesting. As long as he wished, with a sweep of his divine sense, he could clearly know where that entity had bestowed fortunes, and he could even instantly wipe out all those individuals. But that would be too dull. Since it wanted to play, then let's play. Just a moment ago, in the entire Huaxia, no less than a hundred people gained mysterious systems or inheritances, and their ultimate task was to kill Su Yi. The next morning, as Su Yi had just arrived at school, Lao Yang from Section 13 found him. Lao Yang already knew that Su Yi was extraordinary in strength. Given this kind of situation, he naturally wanted to consult Su Yi. Mr. Su, I wonder if you are interested in going to the newly arrived world with Tong Tong and the others, Lao Yang said. This time the commotion is too significant. Almost all sects have sent experts to seize territory. Tong Tong's strength is still not strong enough, and I'm afraid there might be danger 
if they go there. Section 13 was backed by the state, but in terms of strength, they definitely could not compare to those major sects. In the new world that had just emerged, they had no advantage to speak of. Si Yi smiled at Liu Yang. Are you thinking that I care a lot about Pong Tong? Of course not. Liu Yang was also caught off guard by that remark. In his view, Si Yi coming to work at Section 13 was likely because of Tong Tong. Because Si Yi was interested in Tong Tong. With Si Yi staring into Liu Yang's eyes, it was obvious he had seen through everything. Liu Yang felt his heart skip a beat from Si Yi's stare. Denying now seemed pointless, so he could only smile awkwardly. Go ahead, Si Yi shrugged, not bothered by it. The difference between cultivators and ordinary people wasn't significant for him, and Tan Tan had already reached the door by now. Si Yi, come with me. Tan Tan didn't bother to say much to Su Yi and just dragged him away upon entering. Initially, Si Yi didn't care much about many things. Watching dramas daily was fine and following them to meet those cultivators from Sext was also fine. Liu Yang stood behind, his back already soaked with sweat. The pressure Su Yi's gaze brought with it was too intense. He could now be 100% sure that Su Yi's cultivation level was at least in the divine transformation stage, and possibly even a cultivator from the ascension stage. Also, Su Yi did care about Tong Tong. Since that was the case, he could relax a bit. After Su Yi and Tong Tong got into the car, Tong Tong said, Wen's resigned, so you should stay by my side from now on. Isn't he doing well? Summoned by the sect, he was originally a disciple of the Linky sect. With this situation now, naturally, he has to return to the sect to serve. Tong Tong said, Today, half of the people from Section 13 have resigned. They are disciples of some sects, and now they all have to return to their sects. Su Yi nodded. Those disciples from major sects coming to work at Section 13 were mostly for experience. Now that they had a better place for cultivation, it was only natural for them to leave. You know there are things I can't handle well, so stick by my side from now on. I'll raise your salary, Tong Tong added. Tong Tong was a reincarnated deity from Yangshao. Although she had lost her memories, she had a strange sense of closeness to Su Yi. Previously, with Wu Wenzi's help, everything was fine. But now that Wu Wenzi had resigned, other than being good at fighting, Tong Tong was a bit slow in other matters, so she naturally wanted Su Yi by her side. How much of an increase? Su Yi asked, agreeing to help Tong Tong by asking this question. Tong Tong tilted her head and thought for a moment, how about 2000? Su Yi liked earning money with his own skills, so he was quite happy about the salary increase. Teal. Su Yi smiled. Tong Tong continued, following me to that newly appeared land this time should also benefit you, as you're still cultivating chat. And I don't know why you can't break through. Encountering some opportunities should help. Su Yi nodded. Following Tong Tong, they arrived at IG's training base with a group of Section 13 employees and headed to the New World. Except for Tong Tong who had higher cultivation, the current employees of Section 13 surprisingly didn't even have a Golden Core cultivation level. However, they brought all the high-tech equipment along with the 089 battle armor. They were going to explore new lands, and without sufficient powerful force, it was naturally impossible. Liu Yang and Su Yi sat in a car, seemingly casually discussing with Tan Tong, other countries are now coveting this land. They do not recognize this land as belonging to Huaxia. Although the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is firm, with all countries eyeing this land, if we are too firm, we might end up against the rest of the world. This was actually said directed towards Su Yi. Tan Tong listened without any reaction, her gaze fixed on Liu Yang not understanding his intention. Su Yi chuckled. Do they dare to strike? Letting them in should be fine. Quaxia was a true ancient country. Previously, before cultivators emerged, everyone coexisted peacefully. How dare those countries try to vie for territory with cultivators? Are they tired of living? After hearing Su Yi's words, Lao Yang fell into contemplation, fell silent for a moment, and said, this land is within our territory. How can we let other countries intervene? Su Yi calmly said, Don't you have connections with those immortal cultivation sects? Just go in, kill one, and that's it. Although Su Yi was not consciously aware of the concept of a nation, having lived in the Huaxia region for thousands of years and being of yellow skin, black hair, and black eyes, he naturally felt a sense of belonging to the country. Well, it seems possible. Lao Yang's mouth twitched. In this way, it would really be immortal cultivators helping them to strike at other countries. Even if Waxia agreed to let people from other countries in, 
they naturally would not allow them to enter with heavy firearms or planes and cannons. Letting them in would most likely only bring forth some supernatural abilities users. But when those foreign supernatural ability users met the immortal cultivators from major sex, it could be said they would be in mortal danger. Lao Yang felt this was a bit ruthless, but in any case, whoever comes, comes, and they could deal with it as they saw fit. After such an incident occurred yesterday, many countries proposed to send their people to explore new lands, but Huaxia's leadership did not agree. And the top figures in Huaxia's Ministry of Foreign Affairs were increasingly firm and assertive. According to a certain minister, that land was within Huaxia's territory, so it belonged to Huaxia. If someone dared to intervene, there would only be war. In recent years, Huaxia had rapidly developed in both economic and military power and no longer fear any hegemony. The people of Huaxia loved peace but were not afraid of any war. Lao Yang reported Su Yi's words to the leaders above, who quickly made a decision. As a result, each country could send a team of 100 people into this land, but they were not allowed to bring firearms. One month later, depending on how many people survived, they would be allocated a corresponding area in square kilometers. They would be monitored by satellite throughout, with Waxia guaranteeing not to use firearms against them. But the immortal cultivators were not under such restrictions. In reality, it was quite simple. Each country's 100-person team would probably be scared witless if they encountered immortal cultivators, especially the strong experts from major sex who could easily wipe out such a team. Su Yi and his group entered a small world from Qingzhou and saw a forest over three Zhang tall. These were all resources. Now, vegetation resources were also scarce. And in this current forest, every tree's age exceeded a hundred years, some even thousands. Not far ahead, they came across some dead fierce beasts. Most of these fierce beasts were large and frightening, with no visible wounds on their bodies, maintaining their pre-death postures. Even Lao Yang couldn't help but feel excited upon seeing these fierce beasts' bodies. If these bodies were brought back for research, they would be of extraordinary value. As cultivators, they understood that these fierce beasts' bodies might contain treasures. Leading the way, Lao Yang approached a fierce beast's body, took a three-foot ancient sword from a guard's hand, and slowly unsheathed it. The ancient sword was translucent, with a sharp ejaminating cold light, undoubtedly an extraordinary weapon. Lao Yang, a high-level Yuan Ying realm expert, slowly slashed the fierce beast's body with the ancient sword, increasing the force gradually. However, even though the fierce beast's body was covered in thick, sturdy scales, at most, he could only produce a few sparks and leave shallow white marks on its surface. This, Lao Yang was horrified, and began frantically mobilizing his cultivation energy. The ancient sword was emitting a faint white light. At this moment, those standing nearby could clearly feel the terror emanating from the sword. Yet, even so, the scale-covered body of the fierce beast only had a slight crack, failing to break through its skin and flesh. And this was just a corpse. If it were alive, the beast wouldn't lie still to be cut, its defenses would be even more formidable, and it would retaliate. Lao Yan knew inwardly, that if he encountered such a fierce beast alone, he truly wouldn't stand a chance at breaking its defense let alone killing it. Next, he tried to dissect a few more fierce beast corpses, but couldn't pierce their skins either. It appeared that it wasn't that the first fierce beast he selected was particularly strong, but rather, he was far lacking when compared to these fierce beasts. Fortunately, they are all dead. Lao Yang forcibly swallowed, feeling a shiver of fear and a sense of whirring crept into his heart. These fierce beasts were dead, but could there be any still alive? What if they encountered living fierce beasts and were annihilated? This concern was not unfounded. Although Su Yi appeared strong to him, the strength of these fierce beasts was equally unknown. If faced with a group of such beasts, could Su Yi handle them all by himself? Subconsciously, Lo Yang glanced at Su Yi, only to find him looking as surprised as others. Ah, could it be that Su Yi was also shocked by the strength of these fierce beasts? How would he know? given that Su Yi was currently portraying a chair of finding realm weakling. Seeing everyone's astonishment, if he had remained composed, wouldn't it contradict his role? Su Yi had always been good at role-playing. Also, he was indeed a bit surprised. Lao Yan, who should have been regarded as a standout among human cultivators, never expected that he couldn't even penetrate these fierce beasts' skin. The disparity in strength between the creatures of the two worlds was indeed significant. It was fortunate that they had exterminated these beasts. 
Otherwise, with the current level of Earth civilization, it would likely be destroyed in an instant. Zihi. Take some colleagues to transport these to bodies back and see if there's a way to dissect them. All research personnel will return. Tauntaun, put on the battle armor. The 089 battle armor was certainly not a decoration. Otherwise, they wouldn't have brought it along. After some further modifications, when Tauntaun wore the battle armor, she should be able to battle against experts in the nascent soul stage. Additionally, the battle armor had numerous reconnaissance functions. In this unfamiliar and mysterious land, Danger loomed everywhere, and without a clear understanding of the surroundings, accidents were likely. Why not let me try on this battle armor? Si Yi was full of curiosity about new things, especially the battle armor. He had been eager to try it last time, and now that he had the chance, he naturally wanted to experience it. Lao Yang was overjoyed. If Su Yi was willing to wear the battle armor, it meant he was ready to help. However, before he could speak, a robust middle-aged man beside them suddenly said coldly, What's your cultivation level? Can you handle the battle armor? Young men, don't overestimate yourself. Lao Yang's smile had just started to appear, but upon hearing the man's words, his face turned pale with a hint of fear and unease. He squinted and stole a glance at Su Yi, relieved to see that Su Yi didn't seem angry. Han Wenfu, what kind of words are you using? Lao Yang's expression was serious as he spoke. Su Yi's cultivation is already enough to control the battle armor. We are colleagues, it's not right for you to speak this way. Don't you think you should apologize to Su Yi? Han Wenfu glanced at Lao Yang and said, Lao Yang, you have retired now. Logically speaking, you shouldn't interfere in the affairs of the department so much. Lao Yang furrowed his eyebrows slightly. He had retired, but this guy seemed quite dissatisfied with him. Han Wenfu raised his eyelids and said, Lao Yang, 40 years ago from the Jitty Sword Sect to the 13th Department, I have handled numerous big and small cases. I admit that I may not be as powerful as Gu Tan Tan, but is the position of the director of the 13th Department solely judged by martial strength? Han Wenfu said angrily, what can Gu Tan Tan do besides fighting? What can she handle? If you insist that there was Wu Wen's helping her before, I have nothing to say. But now Wu Wen's has also resigned. You want a guy who has just entered the chair of finding realm to assist her. I cannot accept this. Han Wenfu expressed his discontent in a long speech. He was not satisfied that Lao Yang had retired but was still meddling in the 13th department. He was not satisfied that Gu Tan Tan could be the director. And he was especially not satisfied that someone like Su Yi could be given such importance. After listening to him, Lao Yang fell silent for a moment, then suddenly smiled and said, so you have so many grievances. Needless to say, he couldn't explain to Han Wenfu. Should he tell him that Su Yi was actually hiding his true abilities? If this incident angered Su Yi, he wouldn't know what to do. Of course, I'm dissatisfied. Han Wenfu pointed at Su Yi and said coldly, If this guy surpasses me in any way, I'll bow down to him. Su Yi met his gaze and said, I'm more handsome than you. Silence filled the surroundings. Han Wenfu gritted his teeth and said, do you think this is the entertainment industry? Looking like a pretty bow, if you have the guts, let's have a fight. If you win, I'll kneel in front of you and count out three times. So you laughed, you just said that strength doesn't mean everything. Why should I fight you then? Han Wenfu clenched his fist, his aura rising, a heavy giant sword suddenly appearing in his hand. Die, you pretty bow, enraged by Su Yi. Han Wenfu let out a roar and slashed his sword towards Su Yi. Su Yi didn't even bother to move throughout the whole interaction. In the instant Han Wenfu made a move, Lao Yang also intervened. With a much higher cultivation level, Lao Yang's sword flew out, shattering Han Wenfu's hand, causing blood to flow. The giant sword flew out a hundred meters away and stuck into the ground. Han Wenfu, have you lost your mind? Lao Yang stood in front of Su Yi. Glaring at Han Wenfu, Han Wenfu stared at Lao Yang and said, angrily, you're the one who's lost your mind. I don't know why you're keeping this pretty boy around. What can this waste do? He can't do anything. Good looking, serving as a mascot. The more Lao Yang defended Su Yi, the more resentful Han Wenfu became. He just couldn't understand what was so great about Su Yi. Su Yi also understood that this guy was being hypocritical. Yes, hypocritical. He looked down on those with higher cultivation than him saying that strength doesn't represent everything. Yet, he also looked down on Su Yi for having lower cultivation and insisted on comparing their strengths. Let's do this. You said I can't control this armor, right? 
Su Yi smiled. Do you think I can defeat you if I wear this armor? Hey. Han Wenfu sneered. With a smile on his face, Su Yi said, What now? Recently, he had learned some civilized language. He didn't find arguing embarrassing. When he was a scholar, he found verbal sparring quite enjoyable. But now, insults were blunt and straightforward. If someone cursed someone's ancestors, it was usually just a verbal exchange. But Su Yi, perhaps he had actually done that. After Su Yi straightforwardly insulted him, Han Wenfu's face darkened. He picked up the giant sword from a hundred meters away and said to Lao Yan, This is his idea. You wouldn't interfere, right? Lao Yan's mood was also very complicated. This foolish kid didn't realize that he was actually protecting Han Wenfu. Who was Su Yi? An expert who wiped out numerous worldly cultivators overnight. How could Han Wenfu be so blind to provoke Su Yi? Imagine if Lao Yang hadn't stopped Han Wenfu just now, wouldn't Su Yi have retaliated against him? If Su Yi fought back, Han Wenfu would undoubtedly die. But these were things he couldn't say without Su Yi's consent. However, Han Wenfu was relentless. If he wanted to pick a fight, Lao Yang could do nothing about it. Don't worry, I won't interfere. Lao Yang said sternly, since Su Yi chose to wear the armor and fight Han Wenfu, it showed that he didn't intend to kill Han Wenfu. Young and arrogant, a little setback would be good for him. How do I operate this? Su Yi was already preparing to wear the armor. The technical personnel who had accompanied them taught Su Yi how to operate it. Once Su Yi put on the armor, he quickly grasped how to control it. The armor was amazing, it could be controlled directly with divine sense. Despite looking cumbersome, once worn, it responded to his thoughts like an extension of his body. Whether running or flying, he could do it with just a thought. And it also had various high-tech weapons. As Su Yi familiarized himself with the armor, he praised its design. An ordinary person had created such a thing. Dr. Lee from the 13th department was truly a genius. Come. After putting on the armor, Su Yi was completely enveloped in it from head to toe. Standing up, his three-meter tall body and a special aloe giant sword were a sight to behold. As Dr. Lee had said before, the armor's defense could already ignore attacks from Golden Core Realm cultivators, while Han Wenfu was only at the middle stage of the core formation realm. And now, being controlled by Su Yi, a mental powerhouse, how would he play? No. 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 Now it should be said. Let's see how Su Yi intends to play this out. Su Yi is absolutely unmatched in role-playing. Now, since he has to play the role of a Che training disciple at Site 13, unless absolutely necessary, he naturally doesn't want to reveal his true strength. Putting on the No. 08 9 battle armor, Su Yi was rarely excited. With this battle armor, there's no need to worry about revealing his strength, and it exudes a sense of freshness everywhere. Han Wenfu held a giant sword, standing three meters away from Su Yi, his eyes cold and sharp. He had to admit that this battle armor was powerful. He had tried it before and found that wearing it, he could withstand attacks from Gudon for half an hour. Why half an hour? Because this battle armor consumes a huge amount of mental energy. He could only maintain it for half an hour at most, but Gudon seemed like an indestructible force. He started by avoiding with all his might, but after half an hour, he was as weak as a man entering a sage moment, unable to even lift the arm of the battle armor and fainted directly. Because of his previous experience, Han Wenfu immediately thought of how to deal with Su Yi. With his virtual den post peak cultivation, he could only control the Mecha for half an hour, while Su Yi, a novice disciple, would not last more than a minute. What can a minute of attacks achieve, no matter how fierce it is? Which woman can't withstand a minute of attack? However, Su Yi was unaware of just how simple Han Wenfu's thoughts were. Controlling the Mecha, he slowly drew out a two-meter long aloe sword. And with a thought, electric waves danced on the aloe sword like a snake, exuding a terrifying aura. Practitioners below the golden elixir realm could only use their own chaffer attacks, finding it difficult to manipulate the power of heaven and earth. However, this no, 089 Mecha used the latest technology source, and as long as the mental strength was powerful enough, full firepower could be unleashed. Han Wenfu who had worked at Site 13 for so many years and personally experienced the power of the battle armor, was stunned to see Su Yi activate thousands of electric waves, making his mouth twitch and quickly retreat over 10 meters. Lao Yan also hurried to have the people at Site 13 step back. If some Che practitioners were entangled by electric waves, they would definitely die on the spot. Standing inside the Mecha, 
so he also fully felt the power of technology. He could even use the Mechut to conduct thermal imaging of surrounding living beings and then launch tracking missiles on the Mechut. He remembered Dr. Lee saying that these missiles seem capable of killing golden elixir cultivators. Even if Dr. Lee had exaggerated, could Han Wenfu, a virtual den master, be unable to handle it? With a thought, a fist-sized missile suddenly shot out from the Mecha arm. Damn, let's see how long you can pretend. Han Wenfu cursed and swiftly avoided the missile's attack like lightning. However, the missile was designed to track the target, even if it missed, it would continue to follow. Despite his good footwork, the missile followed closely behind him like a bone maggot. So Yi saw and thought it was not bad at all. Wearing this battle armor, wasn't he invincible against anyone below the nascent soul realm without using his own strength? This was great. Han Wenfu wasn't a fool either. He had chosen to confront Si Yi while wearing the Mechao, naturally considering this step. Thermal imaging tracking. What if he just lowered his body temperature? But he hadn't done this at first, he intended to tow with Si Yi, make him feel that he was winning, then crush him, mocking his intelligence, pressing him to the ground, making him understand that even with the battle armor, he was useless. Although Han Wenfu appeared to be evading the missiles awkwardly, he was already holding a coin between his fingers. Dealing with these missiles only required a coin. Once the distance was increased, a coin hitting the missile would detonate it. Han Wenfu smiled, with the giant sword falling to his feet before flying off on his sword aura. Being able to control the flying sword was already a sign of a nascent soul cultivation, he could be considered a genius. In an instant, he shot into the sky, exceeding the speed of sound. Glancing down, he thought he had already distanced himself from the missile, yet it still closely followed. Damn. Why couldn't he increase the distance? He remembered Dr. Lee saying that the tracking missiles on the Mecha could at best reach the speed of sound, and he was already exceeding it. Little did he know, Dr. Lee's proudest creation in his life was this battle armor, repeatedly modified to make it more formidable. The tracking missiles had increased speed again. Han Wenfu was unable to distance himself from the missile for a moment, so he dared not detonate it. He took a deep breath and forcibly lowered his body temperature using Che. No more showing off. Continuing would lead to disaster. By reducing his body temperature to zero degrees, the missile finally stopped tracking him and exploded the instant it lost its target. Dang. A huge fireball suddenly erupted in the sky. And even though several kilometers below could feel the powerful shockwave, although Han Wenfu promptly raised his sword energy and swiftly moved aside, he was still blown hundreds of meters away by the violent shockwave, with his clothes burnt to a crisp and his skin char. Li Qingyuan, you old bastard! Han Wenfu raged helplessly, cursing Dr. Li Qingyuan in anger. Another improvement. Are you doing research or weapons development? The missiles didn't automatically explode after losing target before. Dr. Lee, at the base, was studying how to reduce the Mecha's mental energy consumption or convert it to unmanned operation. Suddenly, he sneezed. Seems like I'm getting old. Dr. Lee rubbed his neck and continued his research. After all, controlling the Mecha with mental energy made it more agile. Remote operation might lack flexibility and be more susceptible to other electromagnetic interferences, easily rendering it useless. Forget it. Let's think about it later. In this small world, a huge fireball erupted in the sky, catching the attention of other cultivators. Many cultivators began to approach this area. If there was a battle, good items might be presented, which was their usual logic. Han Wenfu, floating on his sword a kilometer above, gazed coldly at the mecha below. Su Yi, since you seek death, don't blame me. Han Wenfu gritted his teeth as he ran his hand over the black tortoise sword. Drawing on his blood, he unleashed the Shinji sword a profound grade technique taught by the G Emperor Immortal Sect. By now, about a minute had passed, and Suyi so might not be able to control the Mecha anymore. So, all he could do now was to withstand this strike. Han Wenfu not only wanted to kill Suyi so but to destroy the decade-long efforts of Li Qingyuan. This battle armor, not needed anymore. No one else would be able to use it in the future. Above the small world, after the exploding heat dissipates, a phantom of a blue giant sword immediately appears. Lao Yan looks up at the giant sword above his head, furrowing his brow slightly, and quickly transmits sound to Su Yi. Senior, please spare his life. Su Yi pays no attention to Lao Yan. If he truly wanted to kill Han Wenfu, no one could stop him. But right now, he simply wants to play with this mecha. Killing. 
If Han Wenfu were to die under the attack of this battle armor, it could only be attributed to his ill fate. The giant sword that Han Wenfu has condensed to Nier has fully formed, descending like thunder. A hint of a smile appears on Su Yi's face. This mecha really has a variety of weapons, including something called a miniature Ion Cannon. He slowly raises the mecha's arm, and with a thought, a white beam suddenly bursts out from the mecha's fingertip. Lao Yang can't help but gulp down a mouthful of saliva at the sight. When did Dr. Li install the Ion Cannon? It's worth noting that the Ion Cannon is a celestial weapon deploy in space to strike targets on the ground or even in space. Its attack power is definitely no weaker than a full force attack from a Yuan infant or even a nascent soul stage expert. Han Wenfu, using his late void and cultivation, expands almost half of his assassin's blood. The power of this sword is roughly equivalent to a full force attack from an early stage Yuan infant expert. Both of them act simultaneously, and Han Wenfu's sword appears more intimidating. The sword energy descends like a heavenly light pillar, while the Ion Cannon's beam is no thicker than a thumb. The sword energy and the Ion Cannon beam collide instantaneously. A terrifying roar echoes in the air, audible within a radius of 10 miles. Clang! The Ion Cannon beam penetrates the sword energy, directly hitting the blade of Han Wenfu's Zhuanwu sword. How is this possible? Han Wenfu's face is full of horror. He can barely imagine how an Czech cultivation practitioner can still control a battle armor. The sword energy continues to fall, slamming onto the No. 08 Nide battle armor. However, Han Wenfu's Zhuangmu sword is shattered by the impact. It was only thanks to his many years of premonition that he narrowly escaped disaster. Otherwise, with this blow, he would have likely perished. Su Yi, how long do you think you can remain arrogant? Han Wenfu grits his teeth in hatred. He used to have some admiration for Li Qingyuan, but after Su Yi, wearing the No. 08 Nide battle armor, nearly killed him twice, he felt various unpleasant emotions. He also doesn't believe Su Yi can fire the Ion Cannon several times. Moreover, he seemed to not have dodged that last sword strike. By now, the battle armor should have been damaged. On the ground, Su Yi does not avoid the sword energy. Instead, he wields the Alo Lan sword configured with the battle armor, directly facing the sword energy. Clang! The Alo Lan sword emits a crisp sound, and shows some cracks. Not bad. Su Yi doesn't use his own law power. Otherwise, not only could he use the Alo Lan Sword, but he could also directly obliterate the Sword Energy even with a straw. He looks up at Han Wenfu. This guy didn't die after all. It seems he managed to dodge it. If the first shot misses, then let's try two more. Su Yi doesn't intend to directly kill Han Wenfu. He is more interested in the battle armor. The more Han Wenfu can resist, the more interesting it becomes. There's still a new function to try, right? Han Wenfu probably thought Su Yi would only use the Ion Cannon once at most. But just after he narrowly avoided the last shot, another shot comes towards him. Oh. My god. Han Wenfu's face turns pale, hastily trying to dodge. But the speed of the Ion Cannon is close to the speed of light, making it nearly impossible to evade without predicting in advance. He managed to dodge the first two shots, but the third one could no longer be avoided. The Ion Beam's power is terrifying hitting him directly in the calf. Ah. Han Wenfu's calf is instantly turned into bloody foam. In excruciating pain, he can no longer fly through the air and falls straight down like a shot bird. So he clicks his tongue and mutters under his breath, no more fun. As soon as he finished speaking, a blue rainbow light slashes through the sky, and an old man flying on a sword catches Han Wenfu in midair. Han Wenfu, are you okay? The old man grabs Han Wenfu and feeds him a yellow pill. Elder he, after swallowing the pill, Han Wenfu's face remains pale and unsightly. He clenches his teeth, staring at Su Yi in the battle armor with a resentful gaze. Elder He, you must avenge me. This old man is none other than He Zhang Fan, the fifth elder of the Supreme Emperor Immortal Sect, a late stage Yuan infant cultivator. Han Wenfu is indeed an employee of Section 13, but he is also a disciple of the Supreme Emperor Immortal Sect. Now that Su Yi has crippled his leg and He Zhang Feng happens to be present, if he cannot seek revenge for his disciple, where would the face of their sect be in the immortal cultivation world? Especially since there are many immortal cultivators present watching the commotion. If He Zhang Feng swallows his anger, he will only become a laughing stock. In terms of seniority, He Zhang Feng can be considered Han Wenfu's grand teacher. With his disciple being bullied like this, how could he stand idle by? After bringing Han Wenfu down, Lao Yang quickly approaches, 
expressing his concern. He asks, Han Wenfu, are you all right? With a cold sneer, He Zhang Feng says, Director Lao Yan, you wield such great authority. My nephew has lost a leg, and you think he's fine. If the Section 13 doesn't give me an explanation today, no one present will leave alive. Ah, Elder He, I did try to advise. Lao Yan is truly helpless. It was Han Wenfu who provokes Yi. And now that he can't win and has been injured by having a leg crippled, it's a disadvantaged group. However, he knows Zhu Yi's strength. While Section 13 upholds the law, strong individuals like Zhu Yi are beyond their jurisdiction. Hence, they must follow the rules of the immortal cultivation world where the strong are revered. You tried to advise. He Zhang Feng turns his head slowly, gazes at Zhu Yi, and sneers, I don't want to waste words with you today. Let him pay for it. Lao Yan's face does not look very good. Let Su Yi pay with his life. He knows Yi Zhang Feng, one of the five elders of the extreme emperor mortal sect in the later stage of the Yuanying realm, a master. In today's cultivation world, he can indeed be considered a top expert. But it depends on who you are dealing with. Lao Yan, also in the later stage of Yuanying realm, naturally respects Su Yi greatly after guessing that Su Yi wiped out thousands of mortal and immortal beings overnight. Now, he Zhang Feng actually wants Yi to pay with his life. Isn't that seeking death? Lao Yan is also annoyed. He didn't want Han Wenfu to provoke Su Yi. It was for Han Wenfu's own good. Although Han Wenfu was somewhat at fault, Lao Yan didn't want him to die. Su Yi's hands over such trivial matters. Now that he only lost a leg, it's already considered lucky. Lao Yan couldn't even bear to think about what would happen if they really angered Su Yi. Mr. He, regarding this matter, Han did have faults first. If possible, I hope we can downplay it and resolve it peacefully. Lao Yan sighed, hoping to salvage the situation for He Zhang Feng. He Zhang Feng chuckled and said, Lao Yan, are you overestimating the war armor of your 13th division? Today's matter, as long as you don't intervene, if I kill him, there will be no grievances between our sect and your 13th division. He Zhang Feng didn't want to directly conflict with the entire 13th division over this matter, but in his view, so he had to die. Lao Yang furrowed his brows, shook his head, and said, Mr. He, I have advised you before. If you insist on killing him, then go ahead. As for the consequences, it has nothing to do with our 13th division. He had said everything he could, even mentioning the consequences at the end, clearly indicating that there were hidden implications in his words. Consequences. He Zhang Feng burst into laughter, loudly saying, are you suggesting that the kid has a powerful background? Perhaps a disciple of some sect? Fellow Daoists present, which sect does that kid belong to? Speak up. At this point, many cultivation experts from major sects were already watching, some whispering among themselves. It seems that the junior inside the war armor has only cultivated Jet. By wearing that set of armor, he was able to overpower opponents of a higher realm, even breaking Han Wenfu's leg. It seems that technology has indeed advanced. But what's the use? He Zhang Feng is in trouble. Can a junior at the Czech cultivation level stand up to a master in the Yuanying realm by wearing that armor? What's the point of our cultivation then? That's true. A cultivation expert shook his head, not optimistic about Su Yi. If He Zhang Feng takes action, it'll be over with just one move. He Zhang Feng waited for half a minute and seeing no cultivation expert coming down to confront him, he slowly approached Su Yi. In the current situation, Major Sex had dispatched experts to the small world. He had shouted so loudly, if Su Yi was really a disciple of a big sect, someone would have come down by now. In this sense, Lo Yan was just painting a tiger skin for Su Yi. The kid was just his relative. HMPH. He Zhang Feng thought he was being very cautious. Without further ado, he grunted and moved to steps towards Su Yi, striking out with his palm. This strike contained eight layers of inner energy. Even if wearing armor, the person inside would be instantly crushed. Defense. Mortals wouldn't understand the insidiousness of a cultivation expert's attacks. Su Yi didn't make any moves to block, or perhaps he didn't move at all. The old man in front of him was just at the Yuanying realm, right? Dr. Li said that the war armor no. 089 could withstand attacks from a Yuanyin cultivator. So he also realized that the strike was mainly about transferring inner energy, which wouldn't cause any harm to the armor itself. So why bother hiding? So he didn't even blink. With a dull thud, he Zhang Feng's fleshy palm landed solidly on Su Yi's chest. I'll be merciful and leave you with an intact corpse. After striking, 
He Zhang Feng slowly withdrew his hand. In his view, even if the armor's defense was extraordinary, the person inside would have already had their vital organs cut off and would not survive. The cultivation experts above also shook their heads. Let's go. It's not interesting anymore. Just one strike. And it's the end. I thought that wearing that armor would make him invincible. Are you joking? A Czech cultivator challenging a master in the Yuan Ying realm. What's the point of cultivating then? Just as all the cultivation experts were about to disperse, so he raised the Allo Lawn Sword on the war armor and made a single strike. The sword was surrounded by electricity. And with this strike, he severed He Zhang Feng's arm. Ah. Oh. He Zhang Feng cried out in pain. Due to the high temperature on the Allo Sword, not a drop of blood flowed from the wound, which was instantly seared. What? That kid actually survived. What's going on? He actually cut off He Zhang Feng's hand. He Zhang Feng was too careless. He probably thought the kid was already dead. I can't believe it. He Zhang Feng messed up. A Czech cultivator actually cut off the hand of a Yuan Ying cultivator. Those cultivation experts were saying various things, more of them mocking He Zhang Feng. If Su Yi had been killed with just one strike, it would indeed have been uninteresting. There wouldn't have been any excitement. In contrast, now that He Zhang Feng had his arm severed, the situation became more intriguing. How is this possible? He Zhang Feng also stared at Su Yi in disbelief. He had used 80% of his strength in that strike. Even with the armor's defense, it shouldn't have been able to withstand it. Su Yi smiled. You said what's impossible? You. You're not injured at all. The war armor cover evened his face, leaving only a pair of eyes visible. However, the aura Su Yi emitted was only at the Czech cultivation level. Although He Zhang Feng couldn't see Su Yi's expression, he could tell from his voice that Su Yi was unharmed. This was beyond belief. Shouldn't I be severely injured? Su Yi retorted and then pondered the strength that had been directed at him earlier. Hum. If he really was just a Czech cultivator, he should probably be dead. At least that's what most people would think. Damn it. He Zhang Feng quickly regained his composure. Having only lost one hand, with his cultivation level, Killing Su Yi should still be a piece of cake. Cursing under his breath, He Zhang Feng raised his remaining left hand, a fairy sword appearing in it. This fairy sword wasn't particularly good, as it hadn't manifested a sword spirit. With a swing of his sword, he aimed to decapitate Su Yi. He Zhang Feng is a cultivator of the late Yunyang stage at least. The Sword of Rage. Even if there is a small mountain in front of him, it can be split in half. If Su Yi is really just a cultivator at the chair finding stage, even if he is wearing battle armor, he definitely won't be able to escape. And even if the battle armor's defense is astonishing, it cannot withstand several attacks from a Yuanying expert, especially experts like He Zhang Feng in the late Yuanying stage. With one sword strike, the battle armor will likely be destroyed. At the moment when He Zhang Feng strikes, Su Yi has at least a hundred ways to kill him, but he hasn't had enough fun yet. This battle armor has many functions, so since He Zhang Feng wants to play, Let's play along with him. Just hoping to play for a bit longer. Su Yi is mindful that he is only at the chair refining level, and his movements are much slower compared to He Zhang Feng, but the Allo Lan Sword in his hand is already blocking in front of him. To outsiders, it seems like Su Yi leisurely raised his sword first, and He Zhang Feng's sword then struck that sword. Break. He Zhang Feng shouted loudly. Sword energy swirled, sending Su Yi flying hundreds of meters, even dragging out to long gullies beneath his feet. However, Su Yi's Ao Long Sword surprisingly did not break, and the cracks caused by Han Wenfu's attacks had already repaired. Su Yi's techniques are exceptional, as long as he doesn't want the sword to break, he can simply let his consciousness reassemble the sword's molecules. Now he quite likes this battle armor. How could he allow someone to destroy it? Damn. Is the battle armor Dr. Li made this powerful? It's a bit terrifying. Actually blocking a strike from a Yu Ning expert, Su Yi is also impressive. Facing a Yuanying expert, he still dares to strike first. The people from the 13 territories were also excited, watching Su Yi fighting a Yuanying expert in battle armor. Although he was at a disadvantage, he managed to sever one of He Zhang Feng's arms. Does this mean that as long as they put on this battle armor, they too can challenge Yuanying experts head on? Can the gap in cultivation be compensated for by technology? Useless. I've tried that set of battle armor. It's powerful but it drains too much mental energy and in use. In that case, Su Yi's defeat is certain, right? Isn't that obvious? With hundreds of years of cultivation, 
Does someone really think they can surpass it with just a piece of battle armor? The people from the 13 territories were excited, but mostly felt that the outcome was already decided. Moreover, Su Yi's set of battle armor would probably be destroyed here. Only Lao Yang and Gu Tong Tong remained silent as they watched. Lao Yang was the only one on the field who knew what it meant for the outcome to be decided. Gu Tong Tong's attention was fully focused on Su Yi. She was somewhat worried, but for some reason, her intuition pulled her that Su Yi would win. She didn't know what gave her this intuition, but her intuition was usually correct. Apart from thinking Su Yi was a skilled practitioner, don't worry, he'll be fine. Lao Yang whispered to Gu Tong Tong, fearing she might be unable to resist taking action. Gu Tong Tong's strength was probably slightly inferior to that of Yi Zhang Fen, and she would likely get injured if she engaged in a fight, so she had no need to act, mm. Gu Tong Tong remained calm without any intention to act. So he backed off hundreds of meters, breaking numerous giant trees in the process. He did this to play his current role well and also because he hadn't fully explored the other functions of the battle armor yet. Can it still fly? So he thought. And with a burst of energy from his feet, he flew into the air, firing three ion cannons simultaneously. These were his last three ion cannons, and if he wanted to use them again, he would have to return to Li Qingyuan to replenish the power source. Insects tricks. Qi Zhang Feng made no attempt to dodge. He wielded his sword, intending to stop these three ion cannons head on. Clang. When Yi Zhang Feng's immortal sword struck these three ion cannons, it shattered directly into pieces. What did I just witness? Has technology advanced to this extent? Breaking Yi Zhang Feng's own immortal sword. Yi Zhang Feng spewed blood and his eyes were filled with disbelief. Human weapons could actually shatter his immortal sword. Remember, this was his life treasure nurtured by his Yuanchen for 200 years. His immortal sword shattered, his Yuanchen was severely injured, and he was in bad shape. He had never experienced the power of Aan cannons, which were heavenly weapons, and like ordinary guns, cannons, he always felt that human weapons couldn't harm him, let alone break his life treasure. Hehe. <laughs> So he couldn't help but laugh. The power was quite big. It's just a bit energy consuming. He couldn't even come up with another powerful shot. So he was like an old child who had been lonely and bored for decades, finally finding an old toy he loved. He began exploring the other functions of the battle armor. Plutonium. Wearing this battle armor would naturally inform him of its functions. Surprisingly, there was one gram of plutonium store at the tip of the index finger of the battle armor's left hand. So he couldn't help but say, Li Qingyuan really was a madman. Remember, one piece of plutonium as big as an aspirin is enough to kill two billion people. Five grams would be enough to kill all of humanity. Li Qingyuan had actually stored one gram of plutonium in this battle armor. Those who conduct research are really crazy. He actually attempted to use mental power to control the release of plutonium to kill people. If this one gram of plutonium were to hit a person, not to mention the late union stage, even a cultivator in the ascension stage would have their physical body directly destroyed. But who, aside from having extremely powerful mental control, could manipulate this gram of plutonium to attack people? And what if there was a leak, causing death and destruction within a hundred miles? As for other functions, such as spraying fire and temperature control, these were not substantial injuries for a union expert. So he had seen enough, and then he Zhang Feng suddenly flew over his figure as fast as lightning, grabbing for Su Yi's throat. You're dead. Qi Zhang Feng didn't want any accidents. This move could break Su Yi's neck. However, Su Yi calmly raised his finger. Dang. Su Yi simulated the sound of a gunshot in his mouth, and 0.1 grams of plutonium was accurately fired out, hitting Qi Zhang Feng's eye directly. The next moment, Su Yi dodged Qi Zhang Feng's attack, causing him to draw a graceful arc in midair before crashing heavily on the ground and sliding 7 or 8 meters before coming to a stop. The entire scene fell into a shock silence. What happened? Is he Zhang Feng dead? Did he die at the hands of a chair refining cultivator? And what on earth did this little cultivator just do? The cultivators who didn't understand science were bewildered. They couldn't fathom how he Zhang Feng had died. Does the battle armor that Su Yi is wearing really have such power? Can a chair refining cultivator wearing it defeat a powerhouse in the late union stage? Then, what kind of cultivation have they been practicing all these years? He Shang Fun is dead, but his Tao is not extinguished. As a powerful Yuan Ying expert, even though he died from a strong poison, 
His primordial spirit remains intact. Just when everyone believed that everything was over, He Shang Feng's primordial spirit suddenly transformed into a white light and collided with Su Yi. It's over. This kid is doomed. I wonder if He Shang Fun wanted to possess Su Yi directly or what. Either way, that kid's consciousness must have been erased. Nearby cultivators saw He Shang Feng's primordial spirit enter Su Yi's body and assumed Su Yi was doomed. After all, even the most powerful armor, physical attacks could rival Yuan Ying experts. But what about spiritually? Many even thought that if Yishang Fun had directly attacked Su Yi's soul from the beginning, there wouldn't be so many complications. He actually involved his own physical body, which is the most embarrassing Yuan Ying in the world. Yishang Fun was quite regretful at first, but when his primordial spirit collided with Su Yi's body and attempted to possess him, that was true regret. To possess someone, one must confront the soul of the other. A tiny Yuan Ying dared to attempt to possess Su Yi. Isn't that a huge joke? How? At the moment of impacting Su Yi's soul, He Shang Fun finally understood who he was dealing with. Such a powerful soul. A chair refining junior. Who the hell said that? Damn it. If He Shang Fang's primordial spirit tis like a grain of rice, then Su Yi's soul is like a vast universe. Incomparable. A grain of rice trying to destroy a universe. How ridiculous. Almost instantly, He Shang Fang's primordial spirit disintegrated, with no possibility of survival. Su Yi, too, was helpless. He concealed his strength and had never planned to obliterate He Shang Fang's primordial spirit. But he brought this upon himself. Who else could he blame? In today's terms, He Shang Fang's behavior could be called faking an accident, except it wasn't a scam. He ended up playing himself. While there was no disturbance on Su Yi's side, the other cultivators outside were eager to watch the show. They hadn't realized that He Shang Fang's primordial spirit was already finished. They still thought he was trying to possess Su Yi. Even if the possession is successful, that physical body is too weak. Ha ha. That's true. A Yuan Ying becoming a chair refining cultivator. Who knows if that body has any hidden flaws. It's indeed a huge loss. Ha ha ha. The cultivators were still laughing. Su Yi had already controlled the armor and flew over to Old Yang's side. I must say, this armor is not bad. Su Yi smiled. He was quite satisfied with the armor. Old Yang was prepared for this. In his opinion, Su Yi's cultivation was definitely not just Yuan Ying. Coupled with this set of armor, what chance did Yi Shang Fun have against him? Senior Uncle. My thanks to Senior Uncle for this. Han Wenfu still thought Su Yi had been possessed and was thanking his senior uncle, He Shang Feng, who actually extended a gesture of respect towards Su Yi. Su Yi glanced at him. Who is your senior uncle? Han Wenfu was dumbfounded. Uncle. Uncle, don't joke with me. Han Wenfu's mouth twitched. He couldn't believe this person in front of him was still Su Yi. If he was Su Yi, then where was He Shang Feng? A Yuan Ying expert. Su Yi also smiled. Don't joke with me either. I don't know you. Han Wenfu was stunned. How is this possible? Shaking all over, Han Wenfu stared at Su Yi and said, You're just a chair refining junior. How can you control this armor for so long? What about my senior uncle's primordial spirit? The primordial spirit of a Yuan Ying expert is incredibly powerful, yet it couldn't handle a junior chair refiner. This was utterly absurd. What primordial spirit? Su Yi played dumb outright. How would I, a mere junior chair refiner, know anything about primordial spirits or not, I'm fine. As for the rest, let them guess however they please. Even if they were to guess Su Yi's true strength, there wouldn't be any rewards. That damn Li King Yuan, did he upgrade the armor again? Han Wenfu could only guess that Li King Yuan had upgraded the armor to target attacks on the primordial spirits of cultivators. After all, that scientific weirdo could do anything. In his lifetime, he was probably doing one thing allowing ordinary people to go head to head with cultivators. If he had designed something like this, it wouldn't be surprising at all. Ah Chu. Li King Yuan sneezed in the base, not concerned. He wiped his nose with his sleeve and continued working. Su Yi, of course, didn't explain. Han Wenfu could guess all he wanted, it had nothing to do with him. Old Yan, surrounded by cultivators, said loudly. Fellow cultivators, today's incident started with Han Wenfu's provocation. Now that the fifth elder of the Supreme Emperor Immortal Sect has fallen, I deeply apologize for this. But amongst cultivators, the strong are respected. Elder He, as a Yuan Ying expert, attacking a junior chair refiner. This matter should end here.
He couldn't help trembling as he mentioned, and the term junior. He wouldn't be naive like Han Wenfu, thinking that Armor 089 was powerful enough to kill a Yuan Ying expert's primordial spirit. It was just that Su Yi was too abnormal. Qi Shang Fun brought this upon himself. What? Qi Shang Fun is dead. Could it all be because of that armor? Many cultivators looked at the armor on Su Yi's body with envy. If a chair refining cultivator could wear it and battle Yuan Ying experts, even achieving a miraculous reversal, then how formidable would it be if worn by Yuan Ying expert? However, due to their relationships with the 13 bureaus, they hesitated to make a direct move. As they were about to depart, Old Yang spoke up again, Fellow cultivators, since we are all gathered here today, let me share something with you. The cultivators paused upon hearing this. Old Yang continued, Due to international pressures, our leaders have allowed each country to send a group of a hundred individuals into this land. After one month, the surviving members will be granted territory based on their numbers. Ha ha ha. Director Yan, are you referring to those barbarians from other countries? Even if the leaders agree, do we, the major sects, also agree? As long as they dare to enter, they shouldn't expect to leave. No big deal. Why say more? It's we who are going to start a slaughter in this small world. These cultivators, who were once independent, had to confront this issue since they were gathered together for this matter. Were they going to fight and kill each other to claim territory? Old Yang quickly added, Fellow cultivators, this land is vast with spiritual opportunities everywhere. Why must we fight when we can simply claim a piece of land first? Everyone can mark an area, and in the future, we can bring our disciples here for cultivation. Isn't that better? Cultivators are not demon cultivators. Whether it's hypocritical or truly righteous, at least in public, there needs to be a reason for fighting. Just like just now, when he Zhang Feng went to trouble Su Yi. First, he had to gain the moral high ground, and then openly fight. It is said that only in this way can the heart of Dabian obstructed on the cultivation path. As Old Yang said, this region is vast and boundless. There are only about a dozen major cultivation sects in the entire Huaxia region. What's there to fight over? If a real fight breaks out, it's not good for anyone. However, these experts from the cultivation sects are just giving old yawn face. They may talk about seeking harmony, but if they find any treasures, they will definitely end up in a bloody battle. The idea of first come, first serve doesn't exist. In the cultivation world, it has always been the one with the biggest fist who calls the shots. The other cultivators quickly dispersed, but some disciples of the Jidi Xianzong remained, seemingly reporting back to the sex experts. How could they just let this matter go? One can only say that this time, Yi Zhang Feng led the team out. Since Yi Zhang Feng is dead, the remaining people dare not confront Yi head on. Moreover, Old Yan is a late stage foundation establishment expert. If they really start a fight, the people from the Jidi Xianzong will definitely not come out unscathed. What they need to do now is keep an eye on Old Yan and his group. Friends from Jidi Xianzon, you might as well disperse, Old Yan, acting as a peacemaker, suggested. In his view, even if Jidi Xianzon sends more experts, it would be futile. In Old Yan's view, even if Jidi Xianzon sends an expert of the flying ascension stage, they may not necessarily be a match for Su Yi. Why make things difficult? Facing Old Yan's advice, a young man from Jidi Xianzon coldly said, What? Director Yan intends to keep us all here? Old Yang was momentarily speechless. This kid was probably taught by He Zhang Feng no discipline. Hearing this, Su Yi also smiled and pulled out his phone to call Yi Shak Suan. Zhu Xuan, come help me fight. Su Yi has always been kind and naturally dislikes fighting. But now that someone wants to pick a fight, he naturally calls his disciple over for some practice. Another fight. Yi Shak Suan felt frustrated upon hearing Su Yi's words. She had been helping others since she was a child and before meeting Su Yi. She rarely even argued with someone, let alone fought. Now, every time Su Yi calls her, it's always to fight someone. She's just a girl. After all, Su Yi even claimed to have lost all his cultivation, which was simply deceiving. I'll send you my location, curry over, or I'll be beaten to death, Su Yi said before hanging up and sending his location to Yi Shak Suan. Hearing Su Yi's provocative tone, the people from Jidi Xianzong thought he was calling a powerful ally. They anticipated at least a strong expert in the late foundation establishment stage to arrive. Humph, if you have the guts, don't leave. I want to see who you can bring here. The disciples of the Jidi Xianzong were not afraid at all. 
They had already informed their sec leader via a messaging Jade Slip, and they had received a message saying he would be coming over soon. The sect leader of Jitty Xianzon was a strong expert in the early flying ascension stage. Not to mention unrivaled in the world, at least in this secular world. No one was his match. Experts from other sects probably wouldn't interfere in this matter. Si Yi sneered. Once you see him, you'll be scared. Old Yan was also impressed by Su Yi's playful behavior. This big shot was acting all innocent while asking Yi Shek Suan to fight on his behalf. Su Yi. Jitty Xianzong has a strong expert in the flying stage. Old Yan had to remind Su Yi. He knew Su Yi was powerful, but he didn't have a clear idea of how powerful he really was. It was just a friendly reminder so that Su Yi could prepare himself mentally. Su Yi raised an eyebrow arrogantly, saying, Just a young cultivator in the flying stage. Yi Xiaxuan can handle it completely. The people around were left speechless. Since when did they put just before a powerful expert in the flying stage? Brother, you're too arrogant. You're just a small chair refining practitioner. And many in the 13 departments knew that Yi Xiaxuan was only at the Golden Core stage, and it seemed she was still in the early stages. Although her combat skills were relatively strong, Calling upon a Golden Core stage cultivator to fight a flying ascension expert seemed like a confused decision. Old Yan didn't say anything more. Since he seemed so carefree, he probably didn't fear the expert in the flying stage. Old Yan couldn't be bothered anymore about what Suyi planned to do. If Yi Xiaxuan could really defeat a flying ascension expert at the Golden Core stage, that would be truly interesting. Time passed, and the people from the 13 departments didn't leave. The people from Jitty Xianzong kept their eyes on Su Yi and his group, until a sword light flew from the sky. It's the sect master's master. The people from Jitty Xianzong got excited at the sight of the sword light, and some couldn't help but shout. When the sword light dissipated, a tall man stood on a flying sword, hovering in midair. The people from the 13 departments felt immense pressure. It was as if a huge mountain was pressing down on their chests, making it hard for them to breathe. Even the cultivators who had dispersed earlier were watching from a distance. Wow. Jitty Xianzong really has some influence. Han Sor, immortal came in person. Don't you know, it's said that Han Wenfu is Han Sor, immortal's adopted son. With Yi Zhang Feng being his disciple, it's not surprising for him to personally intervene in such a big event. That's a flying ascension expert. It's been so long since we've seen a flying ascension stage expert make a move. This time, I'm afraid they're going to directly wipe out the group from the 13 departments. Hey, it's not impossible. A late stage foundation establishment cultivator chuckled softly. Even old Yan, the strongest in the 13 departments, is only in the late foundation establishment stage. If Han Sword Immortal wants, with a single strike, no one from that group will survive. The cultivators called Han Sword to Mortal had long flowing hair, stepped on an immortal sword, and had eyes like a sword exuding a majestic aura. Who killed my junior brother? Han Sword Immortal raised an eyebrow, and everyone below felt the pressure intensify, as if they were surrounded by sword chat, with life and death hanging by a thread. Of course, Su Yi was an exception. In Su Yi's eyes, this Han Sword Immortal was just average. If he wanted to, he could still defeat him. I did. If you have the guts, wait. I'll bring someone over. Su Yi, still in his battle armor, raised his head and shouted. How dare you boast, you brat. Han Sword Immortal didn't bother with Su Yi's talk and sent down a wave of sword intent, intending to strike Su Yi down immediately. The sword intent materialized into substance, falling like silver threads, but it had no effect on Su Yi. He laughed, what's wrong? Are you scared? Can't wait? Han Sword Immortal looked at Su Yi in confusion. How could a small cultivator withstand his sword intent without a scratch? Had he lost his killing edge after all these years? What did Han Jiangxian just do? It seems like a strand of sword intent fell on that chair refining disciple. Isn't that chair refining disciple already dead? Hehe. <laughs> Look at that kid jumping around. I think that sword intent must have infiltrated somewhere in his body, and it will erupt later. Initially, the immortals in the distance were dispersing, but for a peak ascension expert to take action, how could they not watch? It had been many years since a peak ascension expert had made a move. This time it was all because of a chair refining cultivator. Han Jiangxian stared blankly at Su Yi for a long time, not knowing where he had gone wrong. With his sword intent, not to mention a chair refining level cultivator, even a master at the Yuanyin realm would undoubtedly perish. This was the gap in realms for a peak ascension expert to eliminate a chair 
or finding cultivator was as simple as an ordinary person stepping on an ant. It was as if someone had cruelly stomped on an ant on the ground, lifted their foot to find the ant still trying to attack them fiercely. Who could accept this? The issue must have arisen from the battle armor he was wearing. Han Jiangxian stared at Su Yi, compared to the 13 individuals around him, who were already overpowered by his presence, so he seemed particularly unusual. He believed that no one could deceive him into thinking otherwise, leading him to attribute the situation to the battle armor. Having cultivated for over 2,000 years, from the Qin dynasty to the present, Han Jiangxian, although infuriated by the killing of his junior, had not lost his rationality. He asked with interest, Did you call someone over? So he replied, Yes. Just wait. All right. I'll wait. Let's see who you can call over. Han Jiangxian stared at Su Yi with a neutral expression. Although he was only at the early stage of ascension, as a sword immortal, his attacking power far exceeded that of other cultivators. Even if Su Yi were to call a later stage ascension expert, he would not be afraid. Furthermore, in his view, this situation was entirely Su Yi's fault. Which peak ascension expert would be willing to offend someone for Su Yi's sake? All 13 individuals were extremely tense, and even old Yan, aware of Su Yi's strength, found it challenging to hold his head up before Han Jiangxian. Su Yi was powerful, but he emitted no aura of intimidation. On the other hand, Han Jiangxian's appearance shrouded everyone in his sore intent the moment he appeared. As the sun set, Yi Xiaq Suan finally drove over in her car. Han Jiangxian had long noticed Yi Xiaq Suan's whereabouts, but he had not paid attention to her. After all, Su Yi mentioned he had called someone over. So in his eyes, the person who could challenge him must be a high-level ascension expert. Yi Xiaq Suan was just a cultivator at the initial core formation stage, someone Han Jiangxian naturally did not concern himself with. What fight are you having again? Yi Xiaq Suan left Don Tai Yue and Longwen the two little guys at home, and drove over alone. She got out of the car and asked. By now, Su Yi had removed the face mask of the battle armor and made a face at Han Jiangxian standing in the sky. Yi Xiaq Suan looked up at Han Jiangxian innocently and waved at him. Hello, what hello? I'm telling you to fight him. If there weren't so many people around, Su Yi would have slapped Yi Xiaq Suan on the head in frustration. How could she be so foolish? Ow. Yi Xiaq Suan glanced at Han Jiangxian and felt her master had set her up. He clearly looked like a skilled individual. She didn't know how to fly on her sword yet. Was she supposed to fight with her head? Is this the person you called? Han Jiangxian was almost shaken by anger. He waited for a long time, expecting a formidable opponent, but ended up facing a cultivator at the early core formation stage. It was a great insult to him. It was not only an insult to his strength, but he felt his intelligence was being dragged down. Despite constantly adjusting his breath earlier to maintain his peak state, Han Jiangxian was now contemplating how to deal with these two individuals. Suddenly, the immortal sword beneath his feet dim, and the surrounding sword intent scattered. If he hadn't acted quickly to retrieve the immortal sword, it might have struck him. A sword immortal couldn't control his own sword. Han Jiangxian was astonished, slowly descended with his immortal sword in hand, and carefully examined Yi Xiaq Suan. Even a later stage ascension expert would never be able to render him incapable of invoking sore intent and attacking. The appearance of this woman made him realize that he couldn't even conjure sword intent, much less sword aura. The cause of this phenomenon was naturally the soul breaker hanging on Yi Xiaq Suan's wrist. Although the power of the soul breaker had been sealed by Su Yi, it had followed him through countless battles and was considered high grade. Even the first swords of the Juxian sword arrayed dared not act recklessly before it. Han Jiangshan's sword spirit had only existed for a hundred years. In the presence of the soul breaker's sword spirit, it was inconsequential. Playing with a sword in front of the soul breaker, could that be possible? For sword cultivators, facing the soul breaker may even drawing their swords difficult. Yi Xiaq Suan was not nervous, she thought the man in front of her was a sparring partner arranged by her master. Tentatively, she asked, shall we have a match? Han Jiangxian felt a sudden panic. Everything that had just happened was to bizarre and must have had to do with this woman before him. If Yi Xiaq Suan's cultivation level were at the ascension stage, he would not be afraid. But she was only at the core formation stage. How could she possibly be at the core formation stage? Han Jiangxian could only assume that Yi Xiaq Suan's cultivation level far exceeded his, making it impossible for him to discern her true strength. Sigh, Han Jiangxian took a deep breath. 
His expression complicated as he said, I never thought there would be someone like you in this world. But regarding today's events, he killed my junior brother first, and I seek justice for him. Do you really want to get involved? When encountering someone with a higher cultivation level, it was customary to address them as senior. However, Yi Shaq Suan's appearance made Han Jiangxian consider her unfathomable. Though he hesitated to fight, leaving now would make their sect lose face. Yi Shaq Suan was unaware of why the man called her senior. However, she thought for a moment, it must be because her cultivation level was too high. Although the man could already fly on his sword, he was nothing but a facade. No match for her. He was the one who killed people. What do you want now? Naturally, I want him to pay with his life. Although Han Jiangxian did not sense any terrifying aura from Yi Xiaq Suan, he believed she embodied true strength, as the previous events were unimaginable. He absolutely refused to believe that Yi Xiaq Suan was merely a core formation stage cultivator. Make him pay with his life. Yi Xiaq Suan looked at Han Jiangxian with a nearly intellectually disabled look in her eyes. A flower rack who called her senior actually said, so you should pay with his life. Isn't that ridiculous? Han Jiangxian furrowed his brow slightly and said, of course. An eye for an eye, it's only fair to pay for killing someone. Although the woman in front of him appeared mysterious, a high-level practitioner like her shouldn't have been protecting a lower-level cultivator. In his opinion, cultivators at the Czech cultivation level were no different from Ats and Yishak Suan. Being even stronger than him, should care even less about life. I don't care about what you want to do to him. I came here today to fight with you. Yi Xiaq Suan couldn't be bothered with all the details, since Su Yi called her over for a fight. As for the man in front of her wanting Su Yi to pay with his life, as long as he had the ability, it was fine. So, are you trying to stand up for him, senior? Han Jiangxian gritted his teeth and asked. He's just a cultivator at the Czech cultivation level. What does the senior see in him? As the two spoke, the people around them were all confused. The head of the extreme emperor immortal sect called Yi Shaq Suan Sr. Yi Shaq Suan was still so arrogant. Could it be that she was really a hidden expert? I see in him that he's handsome. Yi Shaq Suan couldn't be bothered with further discussion. Since you've called me senior, I'll show you one move. After saying that, her soul-severing sword transformed into a wooden sword in her hand, standing slanted behind her. Han Jiangxian also held an immortal sword, carefully watching Yi Shaq Suan. Flaws. All flaws. Although the sword intent emanating from Yi Xiaq Suan was pure, standing there, she seemed full of flaws. Two voices rang in Han Jiangxian's mind. The first voice told him that this woman in front of him could kill with just one sword. The second voice told him not to draw his sword, or he would die. How could this situation be possible? As a swordsman, Han Jiangxian had never encountered a situation where he dared not draw his sword no matter how strong the opponent. In just a short moment, Han Jiangshan's sword spirit was already beginning to waver. Yi Xiaq Suan stood there, looking somewhat impatiently at Han Jiangshian. She just thought Han Jiangshian was all talk and no action, not taking him seriously at all. Someone who called her a senior at first sight couldn't be that powerful, right? Seeing cold sweat on his forehead, she tutted to herself. Just now he seemed like a high-level expert flying his sword, but in reality, he was just a paper tiger. It seemed like it would only be one move. Are you going to draw your sword or not? Yi Xiaq Suan rubbed her temple in slight annoyance. She couldn't figure out why her master had called her such a long way to fight against such a weak opponent. Wait. Something's not right. A glint flashed in Yi Xiaq Suan's eyes. Could it be? The fight was fake, and her master truly missed her. Had he? Confirmed. So he must have missed her, but just couldn't say it. Thinking this, a small smile couldn't help but appear on Yi Xiaq Suan's face. Girls couldn't help but lose control of their expressions when thinking about these things. After all, Yi Xiaq Suan wasn't like Su Yi, who could hide everything inside. With this smile, the pressure on Han Jiangxian, standing across from her, increased. His hand holding the sword trembled uncontrollably. This smile, if I draw my sword, I might die today. But if he didn't dare to draw his sword against a strong enemy, this woman would become a demon in his cultivation journey. What should he choose? Han Jiangxian clenched his teeth. Having reached the ascension stage in his cultivation, he shouldn't fear anyone. Yet, he couldn't even summon a shred of sword intent now. Draw the sword. A resolve flashed in Han Jiangxian's eyes. Even if death awaited him, he had to draw his sword. 
Even if he couldn't gather any sword chat, he had to draw his sword. Han Jiangxian raised his hand and stabbed with the sword. This strike didn't have any sword chat gathered, let alone any sword intent. But as a strong man at the ascension stage, the speed was so quick that Yi Shaxuan couldn't even see his figure. In the previous moment, Han Jiangxian was still 10 meters away from Yi Shaxuan. Before she could react, his sword had already pierced within half a centimeter of her neck. Gulp. Han Jiangxian swallowed Hark, quickly retreated several meters, then solemnly bowed to Yi Shaxuan, and nervously said, Senior, I have offended you. The extreme emperor immortal sect will not pursue this matter any further. Please forgive me for my wrongdoing. Yi Shaxuan didn't even know what had happened. Just now, did this person come close to her? She hadn't even seen the process of Han Jiangxian drawing his sword. All she saw was him suddenly appearing in front of her, bowing to her, then apologizing for something, you're not fighting anymore. Yi Shaxuan was confused. She didn't even make a move herself, and didn't know if Su Yi was satisfied with her performance. It seemed like she didn't really have to do much. Han Jiangxian sheathed his sword, clasped his hands together, bowed his head, and said, I won't fight anymore. Thank you, senior, for sparing my life. Yi Shaxuan twitched her mouth. What had she done? It seemed she was too strong already to compel others to yield without fighting. Or perhaps she had an aura of dominance now, causing opponents to surrender at the sight of her. If that's the case, then forget it. Yi Shaxuan put away her soul-severing sword, walked over to Su Yi, and asked in a low voice, How was it? Was my performance just now good? It was fine. So he couldn't help rolling his eyes. Was that ascension stage guy scared to death? Actually, it wasn't entirely his fault, as Yi Shaxuan wielded the soul-severing sword, unmatched in the world. Just now, Han Jiangxian mustered up the courage to strike, only for his immortal sword to inexplicably veer off track. Yi Shaxuan remained composed and didn't do anything, naturally making Han Jiangxian see her as a supreme expert. With even his sword beyond his control, for Han Jiangxian, Yi Shaxuan's strength had reached an unimaginable level. Senior, then I'll take my leave. Han Jiangxian didn't even dare leave directly, standing at a distance and seeking permission. Yi Shaxuan waved her hand and said, Goodbye. Your flying sword technique just now was kind of cool, actually. Han Jiangxian felt like a dagger had pierced his heart. His flying sword technique was kind of cool, that felt like she was mocking him. After Yi Shaxuan appeared, he couldn't even master flying with his sword, truly showcasing the power of a genuine master. Han Jiangxian took a deep look at Yi Shaxuan and Su Yi before sneaking off with his sect members. Since Yi Shaxuan arrived, all the cultivators who could fly with their swords had lost control of their immortal swords, but they thought it was all Han Jiangxian's doing. The leader of the extreme member immortal sect personally took action, but in the end, it ended up being anticlimactic, just a lot of sound and fury signifying nothing. Han Jiangxian had just gathered up the courage to strike with a sword, but almost no one saw it. After all, the difference in realm was just too vast. The vast majority of people only saw Han Jiangxian inexplicably bowing to Yi Shaxuan, asking for forgiveness for his rudeness, then leaving with his tail between his legs. When they left, even the people of the extreme emperor immortal sect didn't dare to fly their swords. Miss Yi, are you a bit too strong? A staff member from the 13 divisions couldn't help but approach Yi Shaxuan and exclaim in admiration. They all thought Su Yi was doomed today. After all, the other party was the leader of an immortal sect, a strong person in the ascension phase, and also the most powerful swordsman. Who would have thought that after Yi Shaxuan arrived, she directly declared that she would defeat the other party in one move? and Han Jiangxian conceded without even drawing his sword. In the face of the praises from the 13 Division's staff, Yi Shaxuan coldly said, It's not that I'm too strong, it's that my opponent is too weak. The staff member couldn't help but ask Yi Shaxuan, Miss Yi, what realm are you in? Me? Yi Shaxuan raised her small face and smiled, just at the golden curse stage. Although she seemed modest in saying so, that touch of arrogance was evident to anyone. Su Yi casually remarked from the side, that person just now seemed to be in the ascension phase. Yi Shaxuan had never heard of the ascension phase before, so she casually asked, What is the ascension phase? As soon as the words came out, she was stunned. Ascension? Ascension phase? Yi Shaxuan's small mouth slightly agape, she looked at Su Yi with a puzzled expression. Su Yi smiled and explained, Now you're at the golden core stage. The stages after that are nascent soul, 
followed by foundation establishment, core formation, divine transformation, and tribulation crossing. Then it's the ascension phase. It took Yishiaksu on a full five seconds to react. Just hearing Suyi say this seemed unremarkable, but having cultivated, Yishiaksuan could keenly feel how great the difference in power was from before her cultivation. Furthermore, she knew how vast the gap between realms was. Ascension phase. Just thinking about it was terrifying. Are you trying to kill me? Yishiaksuan belatedly realized, feeling apprehensive. A Golden Core Stage Junior Cultivator had just confronted a powerhouse in the Ascension phase head-on, and even made them can see, in one move, such audacity. Well, you've won. Haven't you? So Yi smiled. All of this was actually within his expectations. With the life-severing sword in hand, none of the swordsmen in the world could harm Yi Shaq Suan. Even if a fight truly broke out, he could directly suppress Han Jiangshan's cultivation and reduce him to the Golden Core stage. What he hadn't expected was for the leader of the extreme Emperor Immortal sect to be scared off by Yi Shaq Suan. This newbie in the Golden Core stage. The Ascension Phase powerhouse was frightened away. It could only be said that Yi Xiaxuan's cluelessness had its benefits. You're right. Yi Xiaxuan didn't have much to say. She had already won. Miss Yi. Thanks to you just now. Would you like to join us? Lao Yang knew that Yi Xiaxuan and Su Yi had a close relationship. They hadn't encountered any danger here, and having Yi Xiaxuan along wouldn't be a bad idea. Sure. What are we going to do here? Yi Xiaxuan looked at the nearby carcass of a fierce beast and furrowed her brass. When did such a place appear near Qingzhou City? And what are those things? Su Yi explained. Don't you know? This piece of land suddenly appeared within the boundaries of China. Haven't you heard those fierce beast roars in the sky before? And recently, the news has been reporting it. Even the hot searches are all about this piece of land. I rarely use my phone. Yi Xiaxuan said, in realization. Yesterday. I saw those things in the sky and thought it was just 3D technology. So Yi then realized that Yi Xiaxuan seemed even more out of touch with this era than he was. Yi Xiaxuan asked, Did you all kill these monsters? Lao Yang replied, When we arrived, these fierce beasts were already dead. Ah. Yi Xiaxuan wasn't like other cultivators. Upon seeing this situation, her first thought was whether she could find new cultivation resources here. Seeing so many unfamiliar trees around, she wanted to search for unknown herbs. You can dissect that body. I want a piece of thigh meat. So Yi pointed at the carcass of a fierce beast in front, instructing Yi Xiaxuan. Thigh meat. Yi Xiaxuan looked at the carcass of the fierce beast lying over three meters tall and couldn't help but pout. You don't actually want to eat it, do you? Was there even a need to ask? When Su Yi saw these carcasses, his first thought was not eating them. Even though technology was advancing, Many meats were farmed and lacked texture. In terms of cuisine, a creature like the one in front of them, a fierce beast, it had been a long time since he had eaten something like this. All right. Yi Xiaxuan pouted, looking somewhat resentful. First, he had her fight a powerhouse in the ascension phase, only to win without a battle. Now he's asking her to dissect a body. She was a girl. After all, dissecting a body would get her all covered in blood, wouldn't it? In fact, Su Yi was doing this for Yi Xiaq Suan's benefit this fierce beast's body was just food to him. But to these cultivators, it was entirely precious, especially the demonic core inside the creature's body. If refined into medicine, taken internally, it would have significant benefits. But if Yi Xiaq Suan did nothing, the karmic debt would fall on her. To lessen both her and his karmic debt, dissecting the body and requesting a piece of thigh meat was what Yi Xiaq Suan needed to do. Like when he'd promised Li Yuayu to help her rebuild her body, he would also ask her to do things in return. Miss Yi, the body of this fierce beast is tough on the outside. Can you try dissecting it? Lao Yang felt a bit embarrassed. The body of the fierce beast was right there. And he, an expert in the later phase of the nascent soul stage, couldn't even pierce through the beast's skin. Yi Xiaxuan took out the life-severing sork, pondered for a moment. It turned out that the body wasn't as easy to dissect as she thought. It seemed her master was offering her a chance to train. She held the life-severing sork and mobilized the internal energy within her body, staring earnestly at the fierce beast's body ahead. And with a tender shout, she slashed. Sout. The life-severing sword fell on the body of the fierce beast, slicing through it as if it were cutting through tofu unlike Lao Yan's earlier difficulty. Ah, isn't it supposed to be tough? Yi Xiaxuan also blanked, expecting the body to be hard. All the staff members from the 13 divisions were impressed. In that moment, 
They no longer believed Yi Xuan was just at the Golden Kur stage, D4. Lao Yan had tried, and even a master in the later phase of the Nasan Soul stage couldn't cut through the beast's body. Yi Xuan's strike was effortless. Combined with Han Jiangshan's series of reactions, Yi Xuan was definitely a peerless expert. One couldn't think that the powerhouse in the Ascension phase was foolish, could they? If Yi Xuan wasn't truly powerful, how could he have reacted that way? At the Golden Core initial stage, Han Jiangshan probably would have been eliminated in one strike. Zia Zun inexplicably became a top expert in the eyes of everyone surpassing even those at the ascension stage in terms of strength. Therefore, the members of the 13th department were not too worried about their safety. With a powerhouse stronger than those at the ascension stage accompanying them, they had no reason to fear any situation. As they traveled inward, they collected some fierce beast corpses, as well as soul and plant specimens. Being a national unit, the 13th department used various high-tech devices for analysis and had a well-organized and disciplined collection process, far more professional than those of the cultivators. Yizia Zun made a name for herself in a battle, already becoming a sage in the eyes of many cultivators outside the world, and also becoming the guardian deity of the 13th department. Even the head of the Jidak Sciencing was not Yizia Zun's match. Other cultivators who saw them naturally didn't dare to act rashly. No one believed that Yizia Zun had really reached the Golden Curse stage, as no one among them was stronger than the head of the Jidak Sciencing. These shiny beads look pretty good. They should make nice jewelry when we get back. Yizia Zun changed into the 13th department's protective suit in the car. She had already dissected over a dozen fierce beast corpses along the way, with her left pocket full of demon cores. Little did she know that these shiny beads, if placed in the cultivation world of the past, would be so precious. However, given the abundance of fierce beast corpses now, even a single demon core could cause cultivators to fight over it. Yizia Zun effortlessly dissecting fierce beast corpses along the way left all the cultivators who witnessed it in awe. Some people followed behind to scavenge. The 13th department would leave the dissected fierce beast corpses behind for cultivators to take. With Yizia Zun around, dissecting fierce beast corpses became incredibly easy for them, almost being a few swords per corpse. Old Yang asked tentatively while walking by Yizia Zun and Seu Sai. Miss Yi. I wonder if you could join our unit, even if it's just an honorary position. I can apply for an honorary instructor position for you, with a monthly salary of a million. We won't assign you any work, and there are no working hours. You can come whenever you want. Old Yan took a deep breath and said, I know you don't need money, but just hanging a title should be fine. You H you mean, do nothing and receive a million a year. Yizia Zun looked at Old Yan in confusion not understanding his intentions at all. You can understand it that way. Old Yang said solemnly, you must have noticed that our 13th department doesn't have strong combat power. Even Gu Tantan can't deter those cultivator sects now. Many major sects have ascension stage experts. If our enforcement agencies don't have strong individuals, they won't consider us at all. If a fight breaks out, what we say will be pointless. Old Yang also firmly believed that having power was the only way to have a say. But, I'm really at the Golden Core level. Yizia Zun almost cried. She had understood Old Yang's suggestion to have her name associated with the 13th department to deter cultivators in pursuit of peace. This idea was go, but the premise was that she really had to be stronger than those at the ascension stage. However, she was just a small fry at the Golden Core level, lacking even the ability to fly on a sword. She still didn't understand why Han Jiangson referred to her as a senior and showed such respect. Perhaps it was mostly because of Se Day beside her. Other than this possibility, she couldn't think of any other reasons. Your cultivation level doesn't matter now, Old Yang said in a low voice. As long as those sects believe you are stronger than Han Jiangson, that's enough. Yizia Zun lamented, if they really start fighting, do I have to mediate? Don't worry, ascension experts generally won't act. Old Yang added, that wasn't there an incident today. Yizia Zun was genuinely anxious. Today, she didn't know Han Jiangson's cultivation level and was a bit frightened despite trying to remain calm. The ascension stage. If they were really out to kill her, she wouldn't even know how she would die. Today was an exception. Old Yang tried to reassure her, but Se Bei timely chimed in, I think this idea is quite good. Others didn't know that Se Bei was the real powerhouse, 
But Old Yan was well aware. He couldn't say these things to Se Bei directly, so he chose to approach Ezia Zun. Now that Se Bei had spoken, Ezia Zun couldn't refuse Old Yang's request. All right. Ezia Zun reluctantly nodded. What more could she say? She realized that whenever Se Bei called on her, trouble was brewing. Previously, she even pondered if Se Bei missed her. How naive. This master always pushed her towards trouble. Se Bei. However, paid no heed to Ezio Zhuan's thoughts. She did acknowledge that this was an opportunity presented by Old Yang, especially since Ezia Zun had sailed smoothly in her cultivation without facing much adversity. Old Yang's proposal today was indeed a chance. Sometimes, when facing those with higher cultivation levels, it didn't always mean resorting to violence. Not being able to win in a fight was not shameful. Scaring off ascension experts with a golden core cultivation, like today, was also a skill. Night fell, and unexpectedly, Old Yan ordered a fire to be lit. In the wilderness, this seemed quite inappropriate. A message came from headquarters. According to satellite images, in this area, aside from us and those sect members, all the animals have died. It's unknown what happened. Old Yan looked serious, saying, superficially, there seems to be no danger, but everyone needs to be cautious. Beneath this calm, who knows if there might be more significant dangers. The fact that all the animals had died was tremendously eerie. If it weren't for S.C. Bay being there, Old Yan definitely wouldn't have stayed the night in this place. Old Yan also arranged for people to keep watch. Regardless, discipline had to be maintained. Yuzia Zun and S.C. Bay walked to the side and whisper, Master, why did you agree to him? S.C. Bay raised an eyebrow and said, Getting a million a year for free, doesn't that make you happy? I don't lack that money. Yuzia Zun pouted. You should know how troublesome this kind of agreement can be. Se Bei looked coldly at her and said, I know. So what? Since you agreed, take that salary and do your part. Mr. Yan has already said, I'm just hanging a position. I don't need to do anything. Yi Xiaxuan really didn't know what tasks she would have to do after agreeing to the position. Is it really just hanging a position as agreed? Are you just looking to receive a salary without doing anything? So Yi glanced at Yi Xiaxuan and said, since you agreed to the position and you are hanging a position as a high-level expert above the ascension period, if there are some matters that Section 13 can't resolve, you will still need to step in. Yi Xiaxuan muttered, Aren't you just trying to find trouble for me for no reason? Su Yi's face turned cold. Exactly. I am finding trouble for no reason. Do you have any objections? How would I dare to have any objections? Yi Xiaxuan really felt pitiful, like Yang Beilao being exploited by Zhou. A small golden toe must pretend to be a high-level expert above the ascension period. Yi Xiaxuan dared not refute what Su Yi said, as she had already understood. If a high-level expert of the ascension period were to cause trouble, wouldn't her master be there to help her? Let's set up the tent first. Yi Xiaxuan didn't want to think too much. Wasn't today their first time camping in the wilderness with Su Yi? Hehe. <laughs> this was indeed rare. The night is dark and the wind is high. Ah. Uh. Yi Xiaxuan looked up at the sky and could see the countless stars. There was a hint of sweet grass and wood fragrance in the air. If they could set up a tent here, sit with Su Yi and watch the stars, that would also be nice. Everyone sleeps in one tent at night. Dot dot. Let's set up the tent. Su Yi had been watching for a while and had a rough idea of how to set up the tents. Although he could go without sleep, he still preferred having a sense of daily routine. Let's set up a tent together, I. I don't know how. Yi Xiaxuan suddenly felt smarter at this moment. A girl had to show some weaknesses to gain a man's sympathy and help. Are you stupid? Su so Yi gave Yi Xiaxuan a look. I've been standing here for a while and already figured it out. Don't you know? I'm just stupid. Yi Xiaxuan wasn't too upset. As long as she could share a tent with Su Yi. Being deemed stupid was fine. Su so Yi had no choice but to set up the tent with her. Su so Yi was quick and skilled. And Yi Xiaxuan basically just watched from the side, occasionally handing him tools, enjoying herself in the process. After the tent was finally set up, Yi Xiaxuan was about to get in when Gu Tan Tan walked over. Yi Xiaxuan, come sleep in the tent with me later. Ha, huh, that's not necessary. Our tent is already set up. Yi Xiaxuan never expected that Gu Tan Tan, who had an average relationship with her, would invite her at this moment. So Yi also said to Yi Xiaxuan, you should go with Gu Tan Tan, there are only the two of you girls in the team. Even if Yi Xiaxuan had entered the tent, so you wouldn't sleep in the same tent as her. 
they had a master-disciple relationship. After all, they had to avoid suspicion due to gender differences. Sleeping in the same tent in front of so many people would be inappropriate. Yishiaksuan pouted and could only follow Gu Tantan into her tent helplessly. Yishiaksuan didn't actually dislike Gu Tantan. After all, when the people from Jinmen wanted to harm Yishiaksuan, Gu Tantan stood by her side and even protected her family. In this regard, Yishiaksuan thought Gu Tantan was pretty good. Two girls in one tent naturally meant there were things to talk about. Gu Tantan took off her clothes and unbound her chest, and Yishiaksuan couldn't help but comment, you have such a good figure, hot. Gu Tong Tong usually tied her chest for convenience in fights. But now, with her chest untied, her figure was truly attractive. And your skin is so good. Yi Xiaq Suan came from a wealthy family and hadn't done any tough or dirty work growing up, so her skin was naturally excellent. But Gu Tong Tong was always exposed to the sun and rain, often getting into fights and coming back with bruises all over her body. Yet, not a single scar was visible on her. Her skin was pale and smooth, making Yi Xiaq Suan jealous. Gu Tong Tong didn't say anything, just stared at Yi Xiaq Suan. When Yi Xiaq Suan also took off her clothes, Gu Tong Tong couldn't help but frown, somewhat surprised, and asked, You didn't tie your chest. I thought you did. Yi Xiaq Suan almost burst into tears. Was this even human language? Wasn't this more insulting than what Li Yuayu said yesterday? I thought you did. How humiliating. Yi Xiaq Suan hung her head and said, Let's just go to sleep. Gu Tong Tong earnestly asked, How can I be as petite as you? Wu Wu, that's too hurtful. Yi Xiaq Suan was at a loss and reached out to Gu Tong Tong. Whatever. Even if she didn't have it, she had to experience it. Gu Tong Tong didn't resist. Among girls, this wasn't considered inappropriate. Yi Xiaq Suan turned off the lights and hugged Gu Tong Tong. She couldn't help but smile. The touch was really nice. No wonder those rotten men like big breasts. Didn't her master say he would give her a secret formula? It had been a while now, so she would ask him in the morning. Yi Xiaq Suan was tough-skinned. With Gu Tong Tong in her arms, she quickly fell asleep. Meanwhile, Su Yi found that Lin Yun had also entered this area, their distance about a thousand kilometers apart. Lin Yun was accompanied by a group of earthly immortals, easily defeating many wandering cultivators. Even some high-level experts from sex were no match for them. With their numerous secret techniques and overwhelming numbers and strength, Lin Yun and her group were dominating. Surprisingly, Lin Yun's group encountered Li Yuai. Li Yuai had come to search for the dustless flower and the millennium black vine, so encountering Lin Yun was unexpected. Lin Yun had inherited the legacy of the Blackwater Zhuangming Emperor and refined a drop of Su Yi's blood, advancing to the later stage of Yuanying. With more than 30 earthly immortal followers and dozens of wandering cultivators under her command, Li Yuayu had only two choices when facing her. Either die or submit to Lin Yun as a subordinate. Lin Yun's current goal in life was to become the queen of this era. With wealth and power at her fingertips, her next step was to establish her sect and become the most prominent one. Such a life was truly extraordinary. Li Yuayu, a dominant figure in the immortal realm, asked to serve Lin Yun? How could that be possible? If she had been willing to submit, she wouldn't have descended to the mortal realm. Kill her. Now, no longer the timid little girl, Lin Yun ordered decisively. To become a queen, one had to act decisively. Li Youayu, unwilling to submit and also an earthly immortal, had no choice but to be swiftly dealt with. Of course, Lin Yun hoped Li Youayu would change her mind before her impending demise. Li Yuayu arrived in the mortal world quietly and her strength was not just halved. She had no magic weapon, and her physical fitness was not as good as before. Not to mention the heavenly and earthly dharma she had in the immortal realm. All of that was gone. She was able to match evenly with Gu Tong Tong before because of her strong mental power and unique attacking techniques. Now her true strength was at most in the late Yuanying stage. The human immortals around Lin Yun all had the strength of the Yuanying realm. And Lin Yang herself was a genuine powerhouse at the late Yuanying stage, just a step away from transcendence. Surrounded by this group of people, Lin Yun issued a kill order, and Li Yuayu really didn't know how she could survive. When Qian Men, I'm sorry, I might really have to kill you this time. Li Yuayu appeared charming on the surface, but was actually very resolute. Facing the encirclement of the crowd, she said to Wen Qian Meng after a moment of courtesy, I came to the mortal world precisely because I couldn't kneel down. Not even the demon gods could make me submit. You, 
A little Yuan Ying, actually want me to be your subordinate. That's simply a joke. In the immortal realm, Li Yolayu could easily kill Yuan Ying Cultivator with a wave of her hand. Now she might be at a disadvantage, but dying was the worst that could happen. As Lin Yun slowly turned around without even looking at her, the people under her command were fully capable of killing Li Yuai. Meanwhile, Su Yi borrowed a sword from Lao Yang and disappeared into the night. Just as Lin Yun's subordinates were about to attack Li Yuai, a plump man suddenly appeared before them. Why don't you all give me some face and spare this girl? Su Yi used an illusion, making everyone believe he was Lao Yang from the 13 places. This illusion was to manipulate people's psychic perception and change their understanding of what they saw. If they saw Su Yi as Lao Yang, then nobody could see through Su Yi's true identity unless their mental power was stronger than Su Yi's, which was highly unlikely. Director Yan, Lin Yun knew Lao Yang and was aware of the 13 places as a cultivator. She remained calm and composed, saying, Director Yan, this matter is not within your jurisdiction. Su Yi smiled. What if I insist on interfering? Then everything stays here. Lin Yun didn't care much. She had a feud with Li Youyu today. And if she didn't kill her, who knew if she might become a threat in the future? Despite the reputation of the 13 places during the day, Lin Yun believed that both Su Yi and Yi Shaxuan would spare her due to their previous relationship. She had also scanned the surroundings with her divine sense and found no one besides Lao Yan. As long as she acted swiftly and decisively, Disposing of the bodies would leave no evidence behind. Give it a try. Su Yi thought that what happened during the day would make Lin Yun think twice, but Lin Yun was no longer the same person after the death of Lao Lin. She was now as cold as ice when it came to life and death. In the late Yuan Ying stage, a human immortal sneered, unable to understand where this plump guy got the courage to speak like that. Why try? What was there to try? He and Li Yuai were both going to die. The subordinates of the Blackwater Shadow Emperor had been in the mortal world for some time, consolidating their strength and most of them were at the Yuan Ying stage, with knowledge of insidious arts that were hard to guard against. Just after Su Yi spoke, a dark figure silently appeared behind him like a ghost. The human immortal wielded a sharp play and aimed for Su Yi's neck. Fatty. Be careful. Li Yuai reacted quickly and shouted to Su Yi calling him fatty. Swiftly, the human immortal behind Su Yi fell to the ground. Su Yi used a simple and an adorned sword technique to sever his neck. He didn't have to worry about causing death or keeping a low profile since he had a sword in his hand and was not planning on sparing anyone. Anyone who dared to act today would die. Lin Yun. Su Yi felt that if she had to intervene, he might spare her life. Whether it was because of Guo Shentong, Lao Lin, or the previous Lin Yun, Su Yi felt that he should spare her. Sure enough, this seemingly ordinary sword strike stunned everyone. All present were not weak in strength and could see the weirdness of the human immortal's appearance earlier and that he was also at the late Yuan Ying stage. To assassin using immortal realm skills at the same level, a be defeated in one move was truly surprising. Shall we continue? So he flicked the blood off his sword and walked slowly to Li Yuayu Sai. Another human immortal made a move. Hundreds of poisonous needles shot out with astonishing speed, almost impossible to avoid. Su Yi raised his hand with the sword, and the needles were instantly dispersed by the sword energy, even some were redirected to hit the attacking human immortal. The next moment, Su Yi's sword was already in the man's chest. Was he killing? Su Yi had killed so few in his life, anyone who attacked him would be killed. This was his standard for killing. In the eyes of everyone, this kind-looking chubby man had an incredible swordsmanship that transcended realms, Lin Yun even felt that she couldn't completely understand Lao Yang anymore. Killing one person every 10 steps. I didn't expect Director Yan's swordsmanship to be so superb. Lin Yun's face showed little emotional fluctuation even after losing to subordinates. She just said nonchalantly, since Director Yan wants to protect her, then take her and go. Face. Lin Yun didn't need to argue about that because she wasn't sure if she could handle another strike from Su Yi. Thank you very much. Su Yi squinted at Lin Yun. Did this woman receive all of Guo Shengtan's memories? Guo Shengtan had also known when to retreat back then. Let's go. Su Yi turned slowly, and Li Youyu quickly followed suit. Thank you so much, Director Yan, Li Youyu said. Today, I owe you a favor. Su Yi added, have you considered joining the 13 places? Not for now. I still need to find some things. Politely declining, 
Liu Ai and Su Yi went their separate ways after walking a little farther. She was a stubborn person. Su Yi saved her life in the guise of Lao Yan, but she wasn't going to rely on others for protection to survive. As long as she remained cautious and avoided encountering Lin Yun's group, she would be fine. Su Yi returned to the camp of the Thirteen Places and lifted the obscuring method again, returning Old Yan's sword to him. Old Yan took the sword and walked to the side with Su Yi. He finally found the opportunity to speak to Su Yi. Senior Su, a while back you gave me that elixir, can I take it now? Su Yi pondered for a moment, then smiled and said, Yes, I remember now. That elixir is called Yu Su I Pill, it helps refine the body. If you take it, you might even lose weight. Refine the body? Old Yang's eyes lit up. Elixirs that forcibly increase cultivation might have side effects, such as unstable realm or difficulty in advancing in the future. But if it's an elixir for refining the body, then it would be very comfortable. With old Yan's cultivation at the late stage of Yuan Ying, it would have been enough if those immortal sex hadn't emerged. However, now it was obvious that he was falling behind. If he didn't increase his strength, he would no longer be able to cope. At this moment, Su Yi slowly took out his phone and found the payment code. That elixir, 10,000 yuan. Transfer it. Old Yan couldn't help but be stunned. What did this mean? However, he didn't dwell on it and without asking anything, he took out his phone and transferred 10,000 yuan to Su Yi. Settled. Su Yi put away his phone, without explanation as well. Old Yan suddenly realized. As a cultivator, he naturally understood the concept of cause and effect. With Su Yi's immense power, Getting such a big benefit for free could lead to unforeseen consequences in the future. Settling the causal relationship with 10,000 yuan was simply perfect. Thank you, senior. Old Yang nodded slightly, knowing that Su Yi didn't want to ask for any more favors from him. Even if Su Yi had asked for a million yuan for the Yusui pill, it would have been worth it. I said it's settled, you don't need to thank me anymore. Su Yi said lightly and then went to rest in his tent. The people in the 13 places were unaware that just a few minutes earlier, Su Yi had impersonated Old Yang and killed two mortal immortals. The next day, as soon as the day broke, many foreign teams entered this realm. Every person who entered couldn't help but be amazed by this new world before their eyes. Naturally, they wanted to get a piece of the pie here. Countless videos and photos were sent abroad, further solidifying the determination of these foreigners to control this realm. However, at noon, a team from M Country encountered a certain sect of cultivators. The members of this sect were ruthless. Without saying a word, they used various magic tools to attack. In less than 10 seconds, the 100-member team was all severely injured. Cultivators generally dislike killing, but they place a higher value on territorial consciousness than ordinary people. Even if someone intruded without permission, basically, they wouldn't avoid a life and death battle not to mention a group of blonde and blue-eyed foreigners who entered their territory and attempted to claim land here. Wasn't that seeking death? The M Country team was still relatively lucky, as they were simply thrown out after being injured. The team from our country, on the other hand, was a bit unlucky. They happened to encounter Lin Yun's team. Yesterday night, Lin Yun was taken away by Su Yi from under their noses, and he was still simmering with anger, hearing them babbling in a strange language. Lin Yun was reminded of the wars that China had experienced in the past, which made him furious. Kill them all. With these words, the fate of the hundred-member team was sealed. The mortal immortals under Lin Yun were all demon cultivators and they enjoy killing. In just a few minutes, this group of foreigners were all buried here. There was no way to escape. The ninjutsu that the foreigners were proud of seemed like a joke in front of these mortal immortals and they were completely defenseless. The other teams that entered also had no qualifications to claim this land. The methods of cultivators spread through various videos and pictures, startling the foreigners, who couldn't help but exclaim at how terrifying the Chinese people were. Let's not forget that even if they had brought advanced weapons this time, it wouldn't have changed anything. Planting flags and claiming land in this place. To put it bluntly, even if the leaders of China invited them, they wouldn't dare to come after these videos spread. After all, the elite forces they sent this time were reluctant to stay for even two hours in this terrifying place. Being thrown out, they should be thankful for others' mercy. Look at how miserable the talented individuals from our country were. Elite forces from multiple countries had entered this land, and within half a day, they all retreated, 
with no one from any country willing to enter this mysterious land again. Even with abundant resources, one needs to have a life to enjoy them. At the same time, many countries' diplomatic statements demanded that China provide the resources of that land. The Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs responded bluntly, the resources are there, take them if you want. Such statements naturally made other countries unhappy. And they strongly condemn China for condoning the actions of cultivators to kill. The Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs responded even more straightforwardly, we are all mortal beings and cannot control those cultivators. If you want to control them, you can send cultivators from your respective countries to govern. However, regardless of the country, if any military forces step into China, they will be killed. Today's China is powerful, with advanced military technology, no longer the decaying country that could be bullied and exploited. If someone wanted war, let the whole world hear this roar. China's dominance made the world wary, and no one dared to send military forces into Chinese territory. What about the cultivators? Did those talented individuals and experts dare to come in today? Today's experience was definitely a lifelong nightmare. Anyone who lived through it would probably have a thought in mind, never to set foot in China again in this lifetime. Su Yi was not concerned about these matters. The plan was his, and the results were within his expectations. During the day, they swept through this realm again, bringing back a lot of things. After old Yan had taken the Yusui pill given by Su Yi the night before, his whole being exuded a sense of radiance. Although his realm did not improve, his previous ailments from work had healed, and his overall vitality had improved significantly. Finally, they met Lin Yun's group in front of a thousand year Zhuan vine. At the same time, they also encountered Li Yuai. This could truly be called fate. While other cultivators might not be interested in the thousand year Zhuan vine, it could be considered a supreme treasure for mortal immortals. When they descended to the mortal realm, the flesh they chose was not top notch and their cultivation speed was not fast. If they had the thousand years Zhuan vine to reshape their bodies, their cultivation speed would be astronomical. Li Youaiu was a mortal immortal, and Lin Yun's subordinates were also mortal immortals. When encountering such a good thing, who could easily give it up? Li Youaiu was also feeling extremely depressed. She had been trying her best to avoid people like Lin Yun, but unfortunately, her luck was just not in her favor. She had finally managed to find the thousand-year mysterious vine and was carefully handling the roots, planning to pull it out. Before she could even finish halfway, Lin Yun and his group arrived. She wanted to escape, but how could she possibly get away? Just when she was about to make a desperate move, Su Yi and his group arrived. Lin Yun's gaze lingered on Su Yi for a moment before slowly moving away. Let's go. Lin Yun decisively spoke. She knew she was no match for Su Yi, or else she would have already made her move to kill him. Young master, what about the thousand-year mysterious vine? One of the human immortal disciples unwillingly hinted that Lin Yun could compete with them for it. In their view, although old Yang's swordsmanship was terrifying, they were not fake either. With so many experts, could they still be afraid of them? Let's go. Lin Yun decisively turned around, not bothering to negotiate with her subordinates. If it was just old Yan, no matter how skilled his swordsmanship was, Lin Yun and her group could still handle him in battle. But Lin Yun's true worrying was Su Yi. Last time Su Yi visited the office looking for her, just the faint aura he emitted made her feel deep and mysterious. Even now, with her increased strength, the thought of Su Yi's aura still made her instinctively scared. Moreover, Su Yi had mentioned and that he was Liu Zhu, not some reincarnation, which further deepened the mystery. Lin Yun with the wisdom of two lifetimes, would not engage in a direct conflict with Su Yi until she was absolutely certain she could handle him. Young master, since you are unwilling to compete for the thousand-year mysterious fight, we will fight for it ourselves. A young-looking human immortal signaled to the others, deciding to disobey Lin Yun's command. Lin Yun was not a human immortal, so she naturally did not need the thousand-year mysterious fight. Her concession to old Yun the previous time, failing to avenge their fallen brothers, had already caused some dissatisfaction among the group. Now, with their vital interests at stake, the human immortals would not simply follow Lin Yun's commands. Yes, our fate is in our own hands. Young master, if you are afraid, we don't blame you. Another human immortal declared loudly, we will first take back the thousand-year mysterious vine, and then come back to apologize to you, young master. Disobedience. 
They only followed Lin Yun because she was a direct disciple of the Blackwater Dark Emperor. Now, faced with such an opportunity, how could they give up just because she said to go? There were a total of 36 human immortals present, all with powers above the Yuanying realm. Even if they used secret techniques from the immortal realm, how would they fare against beings in the divine soul realm? Lin Yun paused and looked at the human immortals present with narrowed eyes, casually stating, Whoever is willing to follow me can do so. Those who are not, I will not force them. The human immortals hesitated for a moment, but eventually only six and a group of scattered cultivators who were subdued on the way followed Lin Yun. There were still 30 human immortals left. Today, they not only had to obtain the thousand-year mysterious vine, but also avenged the deaths of their two brothers from yesterday. Fatty, come on. Let us see your swordsmanship. The same young human immortal who spoke before swung a curved blade, surrounded by a black mist, pointed threateningly at Old Yan. Old Yan was taken aback. What was going on? Why were they targeting him suddenly? It seemed like he hadn't said anything. Most importantly, he had no intention of competing for the thousand-year mysterious vine. Are you misunderstanding something? Old Yan smiled and said, If you want this vi, take it. There's no need for swords to be drawn. Stop the nonsense. The young man felt that Old Yan was just acting. Last night, he had killed their two brothers to protect Li Yuayu. And now he seemed to be playing games again. After the young man spoke, the group of human immortals behind him collectively began to display their secret arts, causing the surrounding spiritual energy to erupt madly. In a short moment, a massive demonic shadow appeared behind the 30 human immortals. This demonic shadow was a hundred meters tall, holding a dark and ominous curved blade, exuding a terrifying aura. Lin Yun had not gone far and couldn't help but look back. These human immortals were truly beyond redemption. If such a terrifying demonic shadow appeared, wouldn't it attract the attention of the entire cultivation world? It was possible that there were powerful beings in the ascension period in this region. This was why she had prevented any action from the human immortals yesterday. There was no need to attract than wanted attention. Even if they had not fully recovered their strength, their high-profile actions might invite calamity. It was just a thousand-year mysterious vine. If it couldn't be found here, wouldn't it be available elsewhere? Did they really need to fight to the death here? From afar, Lin Yun looked at Su Yi, feeling her heart rate increasing. The 30 human immortals had summoned a demon through their secret arts. At this stage, they should be able to confront beings in the ascension period. I wonder if Suyi can handle it. Her emotions were complicated at this moment. If Suyi died under this demon's illusion, could she truly sever her emotions and continue on the path of cultivation? It seemed, deep down, she didn't want him to die. But if even such a powerful demon couldn't kill Suyi, how strong would he be? Lin Yun's eyes showed a complex expression. At this moment, she herself didn't know what she was hoping for. Was she expecting Su Yi to fight back, or for Su Yi to die here? She didn't know. Her mind was in chaos. The demon summoned by the thirty human immortals roared, and the air around them churned as countless giant trees collapsed. The black giant blade in the demon's hand descended with world-shattering force. The light in the air seemed to distort, as if this strike had the power to cleave heaven and earth. Lin Yun's heart was in her throat, realizing that she was having trouble maintaining her composure. Even if Su Yi died, would she be able to continue her cultivation journey? The people from 13 spots were bewildered by the demon strike, some still lost in fear. Only when the dust settled did they realize that they had won the battle. Lin Yun glanced deeply at Su Yi, turned around, and said to the people beside her, Let's go. Turns out you're really amazing. Ku Tong Tong looked at Yi Xiaq Suan, unable to help but admire her. She naturally knew that just now, it was Yishiak Suan's sword that killed the demon, delusion, and those immortal beings. As for her palm, it didn't cause any substantial harm to the demon. Yishiak Suan herself didn't expect that her sword would be so powerful. Could it be that the towering monster from earlier was completely destroyed by her sword? And the group of people in front, are they all dead? It's... it's nothing much, Yishiak Suan subconsciously swallowed and sneakily looked at Su Yi. Su Yi's face showed no expression his gaze calm, as he glanced at Yishiak Suan and asked, Why are you staring at me? You're handsome. Yishiak Suan grinned foolishly, not knowing why, but even with Su Yi's cold and aloof appearance, she didn't think he was truly aloof. There was probably something fishy about that sword from earlier. Yishiak Suan stood with her hands behind her back, raising her head, 
a faint smile on her lips. She didn't ask any further questions since she didn't have the strength to defeat something so horrifying with just one sword. So he turned his head away. Regardless of whether she had guessed it right or not, he wasn't going to acknowledge it. The commotion here naturally attracted the attention of many cultivation practitioners. The fact that the terrifying demon was shattered confirmed the presence of a nascent soul strong cultivator at 13 fragrances. Previously, the reason why the sex gave face to 13 fragrances was mainly due to the leader of Huaxia. Legend has it that the emperor of the people in antiquity, now with Huaxia's unprecedented power and prosperity, the effervescence of the capital city, even nascent soul cultivators, must be respectful when meeting that leader. A nation's fortune was something no cultivator dared to neglect. Now, due to the strength of 13 fragrances, they were compelled to show this respect. Lao Yang felt more enlightened after surviving the tribulation. Yi Xuan sword could be considered the stabilizer of the cultivation world of Huaxia. This sword, it could make the cultivation practitioners continue to uphold their previous agreement without disrupting the lives of ordinary people. This sword could bring peace to the world. Li Yolayu finally obtained the thousand-year mysterious vine as she wished, and after thanking Lao Yang and Yi Xuan. She continued her search for the dustless flower alone. They wandered in this territory for a few days, and the elites of various major sects had already begun to delineate their areas. Lao Yang also visited them one by one, making agreements with them. Cultivators must not slaughter ordinary people. If they entered the mortal realm for cultivation, the 13 Fragrances members would entertain them, ensuring they felt at home. In addition, there was a new regulation that cultivators were not allowed to monopolize the businesses of ordinary people. Conducting some small-scale businesses or family enterprises was acceptable, but disrupting the market or monopolizing was forbidden. This regulation was also aimed at Lin Yun. Although the immortalists under Lin Yun had perished, Lin Yun himself was a strong late nascent soul cultivator. If she engaged in commerce using cultivator methods, it would be detrimental to other merchants. These conditions weren't significant for cultivators. Before, they might have engaged in business dealings or supported some people in business secretly to acquire the resources they needed for cultivation. But now, with such vast land appearing out of nowhere and abundant cultivation resources everywhere, who would still engage in business? Ordinary currency was easily obtained by them. If they wanted to earn millions, there were plenty of methods available. Alchemy, exorcism, or simply deceiving people were effortless ways to make money. However, these means didn't hold significant meaning for them. According to Lao Yang, if the cultivation friends needed money, they just needed to ask him, and tens of thousands wouldn't be an issue. At the same time, with the sudden appearance of new land and the abundance of resources, the interests of various major sects became active. They proposed to Lao Yang that they wanted to recruit more disciples. Lao Yang mentioned that he would report back to the leadership before responding. In the past, the resources for cultivation were insufficient. Unimaginable costs were required to cultivate a cultivator. Now that resources were plentiful, why not recruit more disciples? After visiting the major sex and collecting some items, the 13 Fragrances team selected a 50-hectare area as their base and then headed back. It seems that apart from plants, all the animals in this newly appear area have perished. Lao Yang clenched his fist, even considering what would happen if the entire Huaxia populace ascended to cultivation and integrated cultivator methods with technology. That would be an extraordinary scene, just like the 089th battle armor. If there were more such things, Huaxia would reach an unprecedented height. Thinking about this, Lao Yang deliberately walked to the side of Su Yi and whispered, Sir, how do you view the matter of the sex recruiting disciples? Su Yi pondered for a moment and said, That has nothing to do with me. You don't need to ask me. How many ordinary people don't want to cultivate? Even if you disagree, is it useful? In Su Yi's eyes, the difference between ordinary people and cultivators wasn't significant. He simply preferred the stable and prosperous society now. If the appearance of those cultivators would cause chaos in society, forget it. Even if it caused chaos, he wouldn't bother. Regardless of the type of life, he had experienced them all. He preferred to live quietly as an ordinary person. Hearing Su Yi say that, Lao Yan nodded silently. With the sudden appearance of this land and the surge in spiritual energy again, the trend of sex recruiting disciples was inevitable. He could only report the situation to his superiors. Su Yi returned to the school. Today, King Shan Bookstore was surprisingly quiet. 
The cultivators, who used to gather here had all gone to the newly appeared small world, no longer treating this place as a treasure trove. The news of the major sects preparing to recruit disciples must have spread, and those independent cultivators would rather try their luck at the sects than wait here for some cultivation encounters. So ye rarely found some peace, sitting in the bookstore and reading for a while, but Yuan Haoran walked to the doorway of the bookstore, hum? So ye looked up at Yuan Haoran and noticed that his cultivation had advanced, probably due to some insight he gained in Fenjing Town. What was particularly notable was the aura radiating from Yuan Haoran, which made Su Yi's lips curve slightly. It was the same aura as the one he eliminated. This meant that Yuan Haoran was also chosen by that thing. Is Missy not here? Yuan Haoran's gaze towards Su Yi was also quite strange. He asked, then sat down opposite Su Yi. Su Yi smiled. Within 10 meters, seems like there's no one around. Well, I want to kill you. Yuan Haoran had undergone some insights in Fenjing Town and his cultivation had advanced rapidly. Unexpectedly, he even had a system in his mind. The system informed him that Su Yi was the great demon lord of this world. If he killed him, he would gain 1 billion experience points and could directly become a god king. Yuan Haoran had been unable to understand why Su Yi was the great demon lord. He was just an ordinary young man. Killing him would be an easy task, right? Was it that the great demon lord hadn't grown up yet? Why haven't you started yet? Su Yi smiled slowly closing the book. At this moment, reading became quite boring. Yuan Haoran stared at Su Yi, silent for a while. Finally, he sighed deeply and said, I really can't see anything special about you. If I had to point out something special, special and annoying. Su Yi interrupted. His impression of Yuan Haoran was not too bad, but as the master of Yi Xuan and the pursuer of Yi Xuan, he naturally had to be strict. He also didn't look favorably upon this guy. Doesn't this sycophant realize that licking to the end would lead to nothing? Well, that's mutual. So Yi didn't ask why Yuan Haoran wanted to kill him. He had figured it out. If he killed Yuan Haoran, the thing entwined with him would disperse. If he didn't stop it, it would probably merge with another chosen one. Until Su Yi killed the last person, cutting off that thing would revitalize the fortunes of over a hundred chosen ones. Perhaps in the eyes of that thing, even if Su Yi saw through it, he wouldn't easily kill. Yuan Haran's visit could also be seen as a declaration of war. He wouldn't really think Yuan Haran could kill Su Yi, right? On the contrary, Yuan Haran was sent to be killed by Su Yi. If he didn't kill him, Yuan Haran would grow stronger. Under this declaration of war, Su Yi would be defeated without a fight. Killing Yuan Haran seemed like falling into a trap. Is it a clever scheme? It's just a boring child's play. Su Yi didn't care about anyone's growth. If that thing he cut off really could regenerate, it wasn't a big deal in his eyes. Yuan Haoran tried to leave several times, but in the end, he couldn't help but ask, Su Yi, what realm are you in the end? Su Yi smiled, just a little higher than you. Yuan Haoran frowned, you were slightly higher than me before, but now, still just a little bit higher than you. Su Yi interrupted, it was quite obvious that no matter what realm you were in, he would still be a bit higher. Yuan Haran's face turned red. Was this what someone would say? Slightly higher than me before, and now still slightly higher. Did he waste the past few days in cultivation? Yuan Haran directly activated the innate Dagwa formation to envelop the entire bookstore. He stood at the position of Qian, Su Yi in the position of Kun. He appeared like a god, emitting a faint golden light, looking coldly at Su Yi. I'd like to see how you break the formation. Yuan Haran truly couldn't believe it. Did he think his innate Bagua formation was just for show? Yuan Haran's current cultivation had advanced, making the innate Bagua formation even more substantial. Su Yi smiled slightly, turning the pages of the book. Cough. Yuan Haran didn't know what had happened. He coughed up blood suddenly. The surrounding green light dissipated abruptly, and the innate Bagua formation under his feet crumbled, vanishing in an instant. Su Yi looked down at his book and casually said, I'm in a good mood today, you can go. Yuan Haran's face turned pale, his eyes full of disbelief staring at Su Yi. This is slightly stronger, just a tiny bit. He didn't even know, and Su Yi made his move. Did he really just flip through the book and break his formation? Isn't that a bit too unbelievable? Yuan Haran wiped the blood from his mouth, gritting his teeth. Who are you exactly? Su Yi kept his head down, reading. At the same time, he was also thinking about a question. Since the thing he cut off wanted to play, he might as well play along. Do you want to become a true chosen one? Su Yi couldn't help but laugh when he mentioned the chosen one. What chosen one? 
just some people with extraordinary luck. But speaking of luck, Su Yi's luck could truly be described as extraordinary. However, if the luck of over a hundred chosen ones were concentrated on one person, wouldn't that person appear somewhat special? Yuan Haoran clearly didn't understand Su Yi's meaning, looking puzzled at Su Yi. Until Su Yi turned the pages of the book, he had always thought of himself as the pride of heaven. So thinking of himself as a chosen one was not an exaggeration. But just now, his thoughts changed. Compared to the abnormal demon king Su Yi, he seemed like a weak crawling insect. If Su Yi had wanted to kill him just now, it probably would have been as simple as breaking his formation. Just as simple as turning a page of a book. Forget it. Just go. Let me see how impressive you can become. After a while, Su Yi had made up his mind. If he wanted to play, might as well play a little open. That guy had distributed his luck and power, right? That's simple. Just erase all the other hundred plus people leaving only Yuan Haoran to see how strong he would become. Yuan Haoran didn't dare to ask any more, deeply looked at Su Yi, and then turned and left the bookstore. Su Yi was alone in the bookstore, finishing War and Peace, and it was already 8 o'clock in the evening. He scanned the entire Qingzhou with his divine sense and found more than a dozen people with the luck of that person. And they were familiar faces. At this moment, Qin Lin was immersed in the surprise of suddenly gaining power. In his mind, a mechanical voice suddenly appeared an ordinary person inherited the immortal Tao, becoming a Che or finding cultivator overnight. He finally understood why he couldn't beat Su Yi. That bastard Su Yi should also be a cultivator. Chin Lin sneered. Now that I have the immortal Tao inheritance, when I become stronger, I'll see how I can defeat you. And you, you Hui An, you disdain me. After receiving the inheritance, Chin Lin became more arrogant. The immortal Tao inheritance also gave him a task. The first thing was to defeat Yu Hui An. Such a wonderful task made him excited just thinking about it. At this moment, Yu Hui An had just finished school and was driving home. Shortly after starting the car, she noticed another car following her. As a rich girl, she had learned anti-tracking and some self-defense martial arts from an early age. Upon realizing she was being followed, she immediately called her father. Within just over 10 minutes, the Yu family's fleet appeared on the road near Yu Hui An. Chin Lin finally realized he had been discovered. Even becoming a cultivator couldn't improve his tracking skills. However, he did not give up. The immortal Dao inheritance told him that he could become a golden core stage cultivator by toppling Yu Hui An. He called Yu Hui An directly. Hui An, it's me. Chin Lin was still following behind and said, I have something to tell you. What's the matter? Just say it directly. Yu Hui An genuinely had no good feelings towards Chin Lin, finding him as annoying as a plaster. Chin Lin, thinking quickly, said, I'll tell you a secret about Su Yi. If you have a meal with me, I'll tell you. I'm not interested. Yu Hui An stopped halfway, paused, and said, Okay, you have half an hour. Yi Hu Ying herself didn't know what kind of feelings she had towards Su Yi. The man who looked younger than her younger brother seemed to be full of secrets. You could say he was poor seemed quite poor. But when they first met, she gave Su Yi her grandfather's bank car, but Su Yi didn't seem interested at all. If it was another young person, receiving appreciation from her grandfather, they would have been so happy. But Su Yi did not seem to care much about her grandfather. After some recent incidents, Yi Hu Ying even felt that her grandfather did not appreciate Su Yi. It was more like a deep-seated respect or fear. Whenever she asked her about Su Yi's identity or anything related to Su Yi, her grandfather would always change the subject. At first, Xi'an by Miao Miao even thought that Su Yi might be an old acquaintance of some old men and wanted to choose one of them to marry Su Yi too. Yi Xiaq Suan seemed to disdain Su Yi in the chat group, but in just over a month, Yi Xiaq Suan was already going to Su Yi's house every day, and their relationship seemed very complicated. Yi Hu Ying couldn't help feeling a little depressed. Clearly she was the first one to interact with Su Yi. Of course, Yi Hu Yin didn't think she had fallen in love with Su Yi. She just felt that Yi Xiaq Suan was two-faced. Chin Lin claimed to know Su Yi's secrets, and Yi Hu Yin was still somewhat skeptical. But she didn't know how she agreed. Go ahead. What's the secret? Yi Hu Yin didn't really care about Chin Lin. With so many bodyguards around her, plus her own skills were not bad, she was naturally not afraid of Chin Lin playing tricks. Chin Lin glanced at the bodyguards around him and said with a smile, Yin Yin. The thing I want to tell you may be a bit shocking, so let's find a quiet place to talk. I know there is a Chinese restaurant ahead. The food is good, 
We can talk while we eat. What do you think? Yi Hu Ying frowned and said. Why so mysterious? I don't know what you want to say. Chin Lin smiled. You'll know once you come with me. Are you afraid I'll do something to you? So many people watching us go. Okay. Let's go. Yi Hu Ying dismissed her concerns. The Chin family originally prospered through their family. Even though Chin Lin was like a plaster, at least there was some basic respect. At least he wouldn't lay a hand on her. The two arrived at a nearby Chinese restaurant called John Hu Tsai. Chin Lin arranged a private room. And after the dishes were all served, Yi Hu Yin finally couldn't help but ask, What do you want to tell me in the end? Chin Lin's mouth revealed a sly smile. He suddenly reached out his hand. And there was a metal pendant hanging above his middle finger. Hum. Yi Hu Yin was bewildered at first, not knowing what Chin Lin meant by this. You love me the most. From now on, you are my wife. After we go back, you have to tell your grandfather about our marriage. Chin Lin's cultivation was not high. But in the Immortal Way inheritance, there was a method of hypnotizing people. Yi Hu Yin had some martial arts skills, but Chin Lin was now also a cultivator. Using hypnotic techniques, Yi Hu Yin's pupils quickly lost focus, and she chanted in a daze, I love you the most. I am your wife. I will tell Grandpa about our marriage when we return. Chin Lin looked at Yi Hu Yin's current state. His smile became even more sly. Damn it. What if the eldest daughter of the Yu family? He was a cultivator. And according to some plots, suddenly obtaining the Immortal Way inheritance made him the male lead. Pushing down Yi Hu Yin was just the starting point of his life. As long as he pushed down Yi Hu Yin, married her, he would definitely gain the support of the Yu family and rise from there. After that, whatever by Miao Miao, Yi Xiaq Suan, all would be his harem. His future would be vast. They say there's an immortal gate coming down now. If he enters a certain immortal gate, he will surely be a top genius. Learning everything in one shot. His life from then on will be exceptional. Chin Lin. Yi Hu Yin's eyes gradually returned to normal. But she had been completely hypnotized. When she saw Chin Lin. Her face blushed and she said. How did you get here? Chin Lin's eyes were full of evil intentions. But he said affectionately. Yin Yan. Don't you remember? We came here to dinner together. Is that so? I'm sorry. I forgot. Yi Hu Yin's intelligence seemed to have dropped a lot. In the past, she would never speak to Chin Lin in such a tone. Chin Lin looked at the beauty in front of him, couldn't help swallowing saliva. Before, Yi Hu Yin was like a distant icy goddess to him. Now that he finally succeeded in hypnotizing her, he naturally wanted to have some fun with her. He thought about how enjoyable tonight would be. And his hand even reached towards Yi Hu Yin's chest. Surprisingly, Yi Hu Yin did not refuse, but instead lowered her head with a shy look on her face. Hehe. <laughs> Chin Lin chuckled strangely. Isn't this the appearance of someone to be plucked at will? Just as his hand was a few centimeters away from Yi Hu Yin, the door of the private room was knocked. Yi Hu Yin's eyes suddenly flashed with clarity. She furrowed her brow, raised her head abruptly, looked at Chin Lin's anlishan like hand, and shouted. Chin Lin, what are you doing? Chin Lin was slightly stunned. Looking at Yi Hu Yin, his smile remained. And with an obscene tone, he said. What else can I do? I'm just checking your body. Smack. Yi Hu Yin raised her hand and slapped Chin Lin on the face. Her face turning red and white alternately. Scolding. Shameless. Chin Lin was directly stunned. With his current strength, he could definitely dodge if he wanted to. But he never expected Yi Hu Yin to really hit him. Wasn't she hypnotized? Where did things go wrong? At that moment, the door of the private room was pushed open, and Si Yi stood at the door, smiling at Chin Lin. Si Yi, both Yi Hu Yin and Chin Lin exclaimed. Yi Hu Yin was now completely awake, even recalling being hypnotized by Chin Lin earlier. She clenched her fists, gritted her teeth, glared at Chin Lin, then asked Si Yi, Did you save me? Si Yi walked into the private room, smiling, It's not so much saving you, I just came to pick a fight with him. Damn it. Always ruining my good deeds. Chin Lin now harbored deep hatred towards Su Yi. There had never been anything go when it came to Su Yi. Today, after finally successfully pushing down Yi Hu Yin, this bastard showed up again. Persistent. Su Yi chuckled. Since you speak to me like this, should I apologize to you? F asterisk 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 you. Today you won't leave here alive. Chin Lin sneered. Do you think I'm the weakling I used to be? I'm a cultivator now. With that, he suddenly launched an attack. His right hand turned into a claw, grabbing towards Su Yi's throat. This move was tested by him. K 
capable of snapping a steel bar the thickness of an arm. In his eyes, Suyi was already a dead man. After Suyi die, another hypnosis would do the trick. Chin Lin's speed cannot be said to be slow. If you were facing an ordinary warrior, this move would definitely have been fatal. It is a pity that his opponent is Suyi. Chin Lin felt like his life was like cheating in a game. And Suyi was undoubtedly the one who was playing wildly in the game. Disconnecting the network cable, cutting off the power, or even smashing the host to pieces. Before Chin Lin's claws could reach Suyi's neck, Suyi merely extended to fingers and lightly flicked them. In an instant, Chin Lin's wrist was broken and bent at a strange angle. The intense pain caused Chin Lin to involuntarily let out a painful scream. However, this scream did not escape the room. Suyi did not want people outside to hear that unpleasant sound. A cultivator? Sorry, I am not a cultivator. Suyi smiled, stared into Chin Lin's eyes, and Chin Lin's eyes lost their vitality, and the screams abruptly stopped. Hypnosis? With just a glance, Suyi could completely mesmerize him. Chin Lin stood there like a wooden puppet, and Suyi glanced at Yu Huian and asked, Do you want to know my secret? Yu Huian blushed Tan said, Who wants to know? But quickly regained composure and asked, How did you know? Suyi smiled and said, I will take him with me first. You can pay the bill yourself. After speaking, he turned and walked out. Chin Lin followed Suyi expressionlessly. Yu Huian couldn't help but ask, What are you going to do to him? Suyi did not turn back and said, You probably won't see this person again. After that, he opened the door of the room and walked out, followed by Chin Lin. After guiding Suyi and the others out, Yu Huian stood there dazed. Chin Lin had just claimed to be a cultivator and could even use hypnosis, seemingly displaying a significant enhancement in strength. But in front of Suyi, he was still weak and powerless. Suyi seemed to also be able to use hypnosis. She didn't know what got into her, but she found herself thinking, what if Suyi were to hypnotize her? Thinking about this made her blush and her heart race. What are you thinking? Yu Huian took a deep breath to clear her mind. Soon, she realized that the world seemed to have changed. This was not her first encounter with cultivators, and she had also seen online that some sects were recruiting disciples. Should she give it a try? In this era, news spreads worldwide overnight. If in ancient times a sect recruited disciples, perhaps only locals would know, but now, the news would spread to the entire world almost instantaneously. As Suyi and La Yang said, who wouldn't want to cultivate in this world? After all, there are so many works of fiction and movies about cultivation. In the 5,000-year history of China, which emperor wouldn't want to attain immortality? If emperors dreamt of it, how could commoners resist being tempted? After the explosion of information online, the government quickly realized a problem. Within a day, millions of people had resigned or skipped school to venture into the newly arrived alien world in search of immortal opportunities. Problems were indeed arising. The next day, as soon as the day broke, Lao Yan stood at the gate of Su Yi's yard. When Su Yi woke up, he made his breakfast as usual. Senior, chaos has erupted in the world. Lao Yan walked into the yard and couldn't help but shout. Su Yi entered the kitchen without even acknowledging Lao Yang and asked, Have you had breakfast? Lao Yang had a lot to say, but Su Yi's question made him speechless. I, I haven't eaten. Su Yi asked, Rice porridge, would you like some? Yes, I'll have some. Ever since Lao Yang learned that Su Yi was a powerful senior, he became more reserved. Su Yi cooked the porridge while asking, what do you mean by chaos in the world? Lao Yang said excitedly, Many people are not going to work now. Instead, they are going into the mountains to seek enlightenment. If this continues, the civilization of ordinary people will be disrupted. Su Yi glanced at him and chuckled. What's the use of telling me about these things? What would you do if you didn't know me? This. Lao Yang was taken aback. Why did he come to find Su Yi? If he didn't know Su Yi, he should have found a solution on his own. But after learning about Su Yi's power, his subconscious seemed to have changed. It was like relying on a higher power when things go wrong. In his eyes, Su Yi was that higher power. Faced with such a situation, seeking advice from Su Yi seemed reasonable. After a moment of silence, Lao Yang said, If I were to handle it, I think sending the military to block the newly arrived alien world can prevent all this from happening. Su Yi remained silent and continued to cook the porridge. Lao Yang stood there, pondering for a while, and then asked, I know it's better to be accommodating than confrontational, but how can we do that? An hour later, the porridge was ready, and Su Yi took out some pickled vegetables from the jar in the kitchen, 
filled a bowl of porridge for Lao Yan, and said, Serve it yourself. Lao Yan eagerly stepped forward to serve the rice porridge. Being served porridge by a powerful senior like Sui left him pleasantly surprised. The two sat in the yard with their bowls of rice porridge. It was then that Sui slowly said, To deal with the current situation, it's quite simple. Just have those sects issue some requirements for recruiting disciples. It's not very meaningful to send troops to stop them, Sui said. In fact, there's no need to worrying about this matter at all. Those sects will soon realize and set up barrier formations. They definitely wouldn't want ordinary people crowding their sex. Ah. Lao Yang was stunned. Su Yi blew on the porridge in front of him and said, So right now, those cultivators of the sex should be the ones facing headaches, not you. Ah. Upon hearing Su Yi's words, Lao Yang suddenly felt enlightened. Indeed, not everyone could cultivate. Not every sect accepted disciples. With so many people rushing to the sex, seeking enlightenment today, only a very few would be chosen. Even during ancient times, not everyone could cultivate. The ones facing headaches now should be the cultivators of those sects. Senior, I understand. Lao Yan put down his rice porridge and was about to head to those sects. By discussing solutions with the sect leaders, the current chaos could soon be settled. Bring Yi Shiaxuan with you, Su Yi said. You can ask her how to handle the situation. This is a test of Yi Xuan's judgment as my disciple. Cultivation isn't just about becoming stronger. It's also about developing one's thoughts. A newly descended small world, with the news of various sects, recruiting disciples, and videos of cultivators beating up foreign friends circulating on the internet, more and more people are coming from all directions. The major sects also establish their sects at an extremely fast speed. In just one day, the major sects have already built the most basic buildings within their designated areas. Occasionally, cultivators flying on their swords can be seen flying towards this newly descended land in the sky above China. You should note that those who can fly on their swords are basically cultivators above the Golden Kerr realm. Very few cultivators, like Han Wenfu, who can fly on their swords in the late Void Dan stage. This is also why the Golden Core Dao is mentioned. Once reaching the Golden Core Realm, a person's lifespan will see a significant increase, and they will be able to truly harness the power between heaven and earth. The Jitty Immortal Sect has also divided its influence in this region. After Han Jiangxi and Hanzen selected an area with abundant spiritual energy as the mountain gate of the Jitty Immortal Sect, guests have been coming continuously. Other strong individuals from various sects keep visiting, mostly subtly inquiring about the strength of Yishak Suan. Friend Han, could it be that there are immortals in the mortal world? The one asking this question is the head of the Huyin immortal sect, Huyin Daoist. Both of them are cultivators from the Qin dynasty period, and now there are only about 20 strong individuals in the ascension stage in the world. But what about those after the ascension stage? It is said that after ascending, one must abandon the physical body, and the primordial spirit ascends to the immortal realm, which is called becoming immortal. Even if the immortals descend, after becoming immortals, their strength cannot possibly exceed the ascension stage, or be like those earthly immortals, such as Li Yuai. Huyin Daoist is the founding ancestor of the Huyin immortal sect, so naturally, he knows about this. It's as if it's a rule of heaven and earth. If one's strength surpasses the ascension stage, logically speaking, they shouldn't exist in this world. But Hanzen is a sword cultivator. Although his cultivation level is only in the early stages of ascension, his combat tower is astounding, and he ranks in the top 10 among these ascension stage experts. Yet now there is someone who can make him admit defeat after just one move. It's terrifying to think about. Hanzen took a deep breath, stood up, paced around the hall, waved his hand, and summoned his life-bound immortal sword, saying, Huyin, you know me. Although my hunt shadow sword is not a peerless treasure, I have tempered it with my own essence blood for more than 600 years. Now, it has already given birth to a sword spirit. The other day, I met someone who did nothing but made the sword spirit break off contact with me, I couldn't even muster a bit of sword chat. Hansen chuckled bitterly and said, Do you remember my sparring with John Jezen from the spirit chess act 200 years ago? Zhang Jezen is already in the late period of ascension, almost stepping into the immortal realm. Although I was at a disadvantage when fighting him, I shouldn't be unable to even use my sword, right? Hearing him say this, Huyin Daoist couldn't help but twitch at the corner of his eye. As the most powerful immortal sect currently, the elder of the spirit chess sect, Zhang Jezen, is acknowledged as the number one in the world. 
According to Han Zhen's words, the person he met the other day is even stronger than John Zhezhen. Isn't that an immortal then? As they were talking, the Hun Shadow Sword, which had been emitting a faint blue light while suspended in midair, suddenly lost its radiance and fell to the ground. Hansen was taken aback as the sword was already stuck in the blue stone on the ground. Huyan Dao and Hansen looked at each other. Muscles on Han Zhen's face twitched slightly, and he said with great difficulty, Here he comes. Huyan Dao looked at the celestial sword stuck in the blue stone on the ground and couldn't help but take a deep breath. Even before the person arrives, Hansen couldn't even control his own celestial sword. What kind of power is this? It was said that after the person called Yishiak Suan arrived the other day, no one was able to even fly on their swords. Huyin Daoist also tried to summon his sword but was shocked to find that he couldn't even do so. Don't try. I can't even retrieve my sword now. Hansen chuckled bitterly, drew out his celestial sword in front of him, then looked towards the entrance. Huyin Daoist was now personally experiencing the horror of Yishiak Suan. Just a kilometers away from the Jitty Immortal sect, Lao Yang and Yishak Suan had already arrived, so he was also dragged out by Yishak Suan. The three of them were walking in this area, and occasionally people would fly on their swords in the sky, only to suddenly fall from midair, their celestial swords losing control, leaving them all bewildered. The sword spirit of the soul couldn't help but say to Yishak Suan, someone dared to fly on their sword in front of me, they're asking for death, ha, huh? what's wrong? Yishiak Suan didn't understand what soul meant. The sword spirit also began to boast. Master, believe me, in the past, even the saints of the primordial era dared not play with swords in front of me. Have you heard of the four swords of extermination? Soul proudly said, the sword spirits of those four swords could only kneel before me, and even the number one killing formation in the world, in front of me, couldn't release even a hint of sword intention. Yishiak Suan listened in astonishment. And of course, she had heard of the Four Swords of Extermination, which were the sacred treasures of the Tonshin cutting religion in mythical legends. It was said that a saint laid down the extermination sword formation and it couldn't be broken without the cooperation of the Four Saints. Its power could be imagined. But according to Soul's words, it seemed that it was much more powerful than those Four Swords. Yishiak Suan glanced secretly at Suyi. She knew that the things Suyi had given her were all treasures, and she also knew that Soul was very powerful. But she never expected Soul to be so amazing to this extent. But Suyi treated it like an ordinary item he gave her, 